Hi guys, I want to invite you to join the Patreon where you will get some benefits as well as audiobooks that will not be uploaded on YouTube. Chapter 141 When he saw Xiao Yuan was defenselessly sleeping in the inner part of the bed, Yan He Qing raised his eyebrows with light surprise, you're quite at ease with me around. Xiao Yuan was so tired that he had already entered a state of shallow sleep, he didn't care whether Yan He Qing will understand his words or not, Yan Ji. Even though you're a tyrannical president, I know you're not the type of tyrannical president who thinks with the lower half of his body. Yan He Qing, on the other hand, no longer bothered him and blew out the candlelight placed on the low table. Then, he continued to read the military book with the help of the moonlight shining down from outside the tent. Although Xiao Yuan was so sleepy that he couldn't speak well, he still said after feeling that the light had dimmed, light up the candle, I I can sleep, you. Don't damage your eyes light, light it up. However, Yan He Qing didn't light the candle, so Xiao Yuan kept talking until the tent was lit by candlelight again. The next morning, when Xiao Yuan woke up, he found that last night he was sleeping alone when his eyes closed, and after opening his eyes, he was still sleeping all by himself. The tent was also empty, and Yan He Qing was nowhere to be seen. Xiao Yuan put the mask on his face and walked out of the tent quite confused. Outside the tent, he found that the entire barracks was empty, so he went to a station guard and asked, Where's your emperor? Xiao, physician Xiao. His majesty led his troops to battle early this morning. The guard replied. In such a hurry. But he's still wounded. Xiao Yuan shouted. Ah. Isn't it a common thing to be wounded in a war? The guard was dumbfounded by Xiao Yuan's sudden outburst. Xiao Yuan found that he was being a bit impolite, so he covered his mouth and coughed. Then he bowed his head and waved his hands, but didn't say anything else as he got up, walking towards the tent where the injured and disabled soldiers were resting. For the next few days, the wounded soldiers were constantly sent from the battlefield to the military tent. Most of them were covered entirely in blood, and the lucky ones would only suffer from knife and arrow wounds. The unfortunate ones will lack arms and legs, and the most unfortunate of them will directly lose their lives. Xiao Yuan can easily smell the blood in the air, making him feel nauseous. At one time, a soldier whose face was cut open to the point that the jawbone was visible, was sent into the military tent. Xiao Yuan had desperately tried everything he could to save him, but in the end he still failed to pull that soldier back from Goyemen Pass. The only thing he could do was watch the soldier dying in pain after losing his vital energy. After the corpse of that soldier was wrapped in white cloth and carried out of the tent, Xiao Yuan couldn't help but hold his throat outside the tent as he vomited for a little while. A soldier helped him, patting him on his back, Physician Xiao, are you alright? Xiao Yuan waved his hand and then wiped it clean with clear water. Then he patted the young soldier's shoulder and said earnestly, If in your next life you become a CEO, remember to support the medical system when you do charity. The young soldier was very confused, huh? Wah. What? Ah. Before Xiao Yuan could recover his strength, someone entered the tent while shouting out loud, Physician. Save him. Quickly save him. Physician. T. This way. After vomiting, Xiao Yuan's voice was a little weak, so he simply shut up and directed the soldier carrying another soldier to put him down. He then took the gauze and the medicine to stop the bleeding, but when he saw the soldier's face, he was stunned, Deputy General Chen. Chen Ge's right shoulder was pierced by a sharp arrow and his abdomen was also hit by another arrow. He must have passed out due to the blood loss, so Xiao Yuan didn't dare to neglect him and began to take out the arrow. Unexpectedly, the arrow of the Eastern Wu Kingdom had a hook and couldn't be taken out without cutting the flesh open, worsening the wound. At this, Xiao Yuan grit his teeth and used a knife to take out the arrow. Probably because it hurt so much, Chen Gu surprisingly woke up in the middle of the process, and then he began to howl. Xiao Yuan almost lost his hearing by Chen Ge's howling, so he knocked him unconscious with a knife hand strike one, which had stunned the young soldiers around them. When Deputy General Chen woke up for the second time, his first words were, Don't knock me out. I have something to say. 
Xiao Yuan was wrapping the final bandage, so he raised his chin to indicate that Chen Gu could say it. Then, Deputy General Chen howled, this battle will soon be over. We're about to win. Ah it hurts. Motherfucker it really hurts. Holy shit. Xiao Yuan rubbed his ear, and without hesitation, he knocked Chen Gu out with a knife hand strike again. Chapter 142 When Deputy General Chen woke up for the third time, it was already the middle of the night. Once he was conscious, and he was about to begin shouting again, Xiao Yuan covered his mouth, don't scream, everyone's sleeping right now. Chen Gu looked around the tent and found that the wounded soldiers lying around were sleeping soundly, so he had to bear the pain and groan silently, Physician Xiao, your hand is too strong. After hitting me I'm afraid you've twisted my neck. Xiao Yuan, you should be glad I stopped you from shouting just now. Chen Gu shrunk his neck and asked, Physician Xiao, why aren't you sleeping? Xiao Yuan's eyebrows showed how tired he was, as he pointed at a young soldier next to him. The young soldier's body was covered in cloth, looking extremely pitiful, he has a fever, and I have to constantly change the wet cloth on his forehead to cool him down. I have to watch his progress. Chen Gu replied, Physician Xiao, if you overwork yourself, his majesty will feel distressed once he comes back. Xiao Yuan was stunned at first, but then he replied with a smile, how did you find out? Chen Gu, I've been following his majesty for so long, and yet, I've never seen him get close to anyone. However, not only did you two ride a horse together, but he also invited you to his tent at night. That has never happened before. Xiao Yuan removed the cloth from the forehead of the young soldier, which was warm due to the bodice fever, and placed it in the basin with cold water, riding together may be because I saved his life. As for him asking to see me late at night, that may also have been because he felt pain from his wounds and called for me to check on them. Your two arguments are too far-fetched. Chen Ge's eyes were wide, Physician Xiao, his majesty wasn't injured to the extent in which he couldn't stand, so he would never call a military physician to check on him. He would just get over it by himself. And, do you know how much he has changed ever since you appeared? He used to lead his troops to war, rushing to the forefront as if he didn't care about his own life, hoping that Yama Wan would take his life as soon as possible. Now, he's taking care of his life. Xiao Yuan, who was rubbing the cloth in the cold water, became stunned at Chen Ge's words. After a short while, he folded the cloth and put it back on the young soldier's forehead, all right, all right, don't speak about it. No, I must say it. Otherwise, you won't understand his majesty's feelings. Chen Gu didn't give up. Xiao Yuan raised a smile, and with his hand, he gestured at Chen Gu that he would knock him out again, making Chen Gu shrink on the bed and shout, I'm an injured patient. Injured. Xiao Yuan then pretended to wave his hand at him, scaring Chen Gu into shutting up. Once he saw that he finally had quieted down, Xiao Yuan asked, You said that you're afraid of pain, so why did you want to become a soldier? Chen Gu replied sheepishly, In fact, I know that although I look big and strong, in nature I'm actually quite weak. But, you know that the Northern Kingdom attacked the Southern Yan Kingdom some years ago? My family was slaughtered by those bastards, and when they thought that I might some strength, they wanted to capture me as well. At that precise moment, General Shui Yan saved me, so I have been following him ever since. Before, the only thing I thought about day and night, was about how to avenge my people but now that the Northern Kingdom has been conquered by His Majesty, I feel less hatred inside of me. Xiao Yuan, do you hate the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom? Chen Gu slapped his leg, I definitely hate him to the core. Damn, back then, when their iron cavalry trampled into our town and set it on fire, they didn't leave any survivors. They're a bunch of beasts, so all of the northern emperor's descendants should have been fucking evil. Xiao Yuan then asked again, then, what do you think of me? Chen Gu replied, Physician Xiao, you're the most gentle person I've ever met. You're so nice, no wonder his majesty would be attracted to you. Xiao Yuan, damn, you're a big pig's hoof too. Then, Chen Gu was, once again, struck unconscious by the most gentle person he had ever met with a knife hand strike 3. Chapter, 143 When Chen Gu woke up again, he was awakened by a round of cheering. His eyes were full of sparks as he asked, Huh? 
What happened? Someone shouted in his ear, the front line has won. The army is already stationed there. Well leave tomorrow and follow the troops there. Oh. After cheering for a while, Chen Gu turned his head around to look for someone, and when he didn't find that person, he asked, Hey, where's Physician Shell? Someone replied, I don't know why, but as soon as His Majesty won the battle, he rushed back overnight, leaving a few generals stationed at the front line. Just now, Physician Shao asked if His Majesty was injured after that, he hurriedly went to find His Majesty. Deputy General Chen, who was a single person by nature, sneered, My heart is so lonely, it's really fucking sour. Yen Heqing's shoulder was cut by a sharp blade, even though it had already been bandaged, Xiao Yuan disliked the roughness of the bandage and was currently reapplying medicine on him. Xiao Yuan brought a basin with clean water, carefully wiping away the dry blood and sticky dirt from Yen Heqing's wound, does it hurt? Yen Heqing slightly lowered his head to look at the person in front of him, unwilling to look away, it doesn't hurt. Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, I can't help you if it hurts, so you have to bear with it. Yen Heqing, I know a way to stop the pain. Xiao Yuan, oh. You mean a compress with herbal medicine to stop the pain? The effect of that method is not that good. I applied it to Chen Gu before, but he still kept on squealing like a pig. Yen He Qing shook his head, no. Xiao Yuan, then what else can I do? Yen He Qing slightly leaned over and whispered in Xiao Yuan's ear with a soft seductive voice, if you kiss me, it won't hurt anymore. Xiao Yuan. You, why you don't flirt with me? Independent Illinois tell you how to apply a herbal medicine, while well, wait. I, and my hand is trembling, you have to PR press it into the wound, the then I it will won't hurt anymore. The corners of Yen He Qing's mouth raised slightly, you do it, you're responsible for stopping the pain. Why is this phrase so similar to you stirred up the fire, you have to extinguish it yourself. So you showed me that you decided to be a considerate and protective man, but you secretly decided to become a tyrannical president? Xiao Yuan didn't reply to him, he just lowered his head and proceeded to clean Yen He Qing's wound. Then he applied the medicine, bandaged it with clean cloth, and half supported Yen He Qing's shoulder, then gently kissed his wound. The candlelight in the tent was flickering slightly, making their shadows move. Somehow, these shaking shadows were reflected into the bottom of his eyes, making his eyes become extremely deep and dark. As soon as Xiao Yuan raised his head, his chin was pinched by Yen He Qing's hand, who also tightly wrapped his other hand around Xiao Yuan's waist, as he raised his chin up. Xiao Yuan's eyes gradually widened until he ended up closing them the moment he thought he would be kissed. I've come to report. A soldier outside the tent suddenly lifted the curtain and ran inside, then he proceeded to kneel down with one fist clasping his knee. When he saw the situation inside the tent, the overbearing soldier instantly turned shy, I I've co come to re re report good general Hu Huang, he, 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 he asked to see his majesty. Xiao Yuan. Yen He Qing. The soldier's hands were shaking, his legs were shaking, his internal organs were shaking. He has lived for 35 years and reported news for 7 years now. But, for fuck's sake. He has never. Seen. A situation like this. What should he do? Would it be useful to hit his own tiangling acupuncture point one and then pretend to faint? Xiao Yuan coughed lightly and with a small voice he said, Yen, Yen Ji can you re-remove your ha hand? Yen He Qing let go of Xiao Yuan's chin and wrapped his arms around his waist instead. Then he turned his head to look at the reporting soldier and said, Let the general know that he can come in. The soldier's voice trembled as he replied a small yes, and then he ran out of the tent in the blink of an eye. As soon as the soldier ran out of the tent, Yan He Qing quickly turned his head around, looking at the corner of Xiao Yuan's mouth, who had not yet reacted, and kissed him before he had to reluctantly release him. Chapter 144 When General Huang Yu lifted the curtain and stepped into the tent, he saw Yan He Qing solemnly sitting at the low table. A man wearing a silver mask, with his head lowered, was carrying a basin to go outside. Huang Yu couldn't help but look at him for a few moments. Hey. Are you physician Xiao? Xiao Yuan raised his head, hmm. Yes, that's me. I've heard about you. 
Recently, the battlefield is burning, and you've been working hard, but why are you wearing a mask? Are you perhaps ashamed to show your face to others? Even though this was the first time they met, Huang Yu's reproaching tone wasn't hidden. Before Xiao Yuan could answer, Yan Heqin spoke coldly, General Huang, what did you come to report? Huang Yu no longer embarrassed Xiao Yuan, and quickly reported the war situation to Yan Heqin. Xiao Yuan took advantage of this, and with the basin in hand, he walked out of the tent. After he poured the water out of the basin, Xiao Yuan suddenly remembered something after he muttered General Huang a few times. Then he turned his head to ask the soldier guarding the tent, Xiao Ge Wan, let me ask you, is the general who went in just now named Huang Yu? After receiving an affirmative reply, Xiao Yuan frowned slightly. In the original book, Huang Yu was a general who thought he wasn't successful enough. As one of the generals of the Southern Yan Kingdom, he acts with undue confidence of his own ability, and looks down upon others too. He's also arrogant and conceited, always thinking that he's the most powerful general beside the emperor, but then, Li Wuding appeared. Huang Yu despised Li Wuding, because to him, Li Wuding was nothing more than a dirty traitor. However, Yan Heqing thought very highly of him, and discussed everything with him before making a final decision. These acts made Huang Yu develop a grudge towards Li Wuding. The final straw occurred when Yan Heqing gave Li Wuding the position of great general after he conquered the Four Kingdoms and unified them into one great country. A general, who was once an enemy, was now granted a powerful position. Huang Yu didn't say anything on the surface, but in fact, he was secretly colluding with his allies seeking power and wanting to usurp the throne. Naturally, Yan Heqing cut his head off with his sword, and his attempt of rebellion became a failure. This man, with his own strength, slightly pulled the second part of this harem novel back to the plot of a historical novel. Even though his death was extremely stupid, this self-sacrifice and high dedication was worthy of respect. So, in order to express their respect for this canon fodder, the readers filled three whole pages of the comments section with nothing more than ha 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 ha. Xiao Yuan hugged the basin, thinking that now that Li Wuding was dead, Huang Yu won't feel frustrated, or at least, he won't become a villain, right? Meanwhile, inside the tent, Huang Yu was analyzing the current situation with Yan Heqing, Your Majesty, although we have won the battle this time, the enemy's main general still hasn't been caught. I think that we should take advantage of the victory and pursue another attack, annihilating them in one fell swoop. Yan Heqing frowned, this victory was a bit too easy. I'm worried that something is wrong. Your Majesty, you must not hesitate. Huang Yu advised. Yan Heqing rubbed his eyebrows, he'll think about it. Huang Yu couldn't help but retire. He walked out of the tent, and his deputy general, who had been waiting for him for a long time, greeted him, General, what's the situation? Will His Majesty chase down the deserters? Humph. Huang Yu snorted and gave him a disdainful look, the emperor is actually quite indecisive. If he cut the grass without removing the roots, there are bound to be problems in the future. By the way, you should pay more attention to the new physician in the barracks. I have a feeling that his body resembles the former emperor of the northern kingdom. Besides, he's wearing a mask as if he shouldn't be recognized. Something is definitely not right. What? But if he really is the former northern kingdom's emperor, how could his majesty not recognize him? The deputy general stared at him with wide eyes. Huang Yu, with his hands hidden behind his back, deliberately dragged out his words as he said meaningfully, I'm afraid that it is because he was recognized, that he can stay around. In the past, the emperor was indeed, cough, it doesn't matter, you just have to pay attention to him. Don't let him disturb the emperor's mind. If it's true that the northern emperor is hiding here, and he tries to take an opportunity to get revenge, then that would be a huge problem. The deputy general cupped his fist, showing that he understood what he should do. Huang Yu waved his hand, watch over him more. All right, you can go rest now. The deputy general saluted him with respect, turned around and went to his tent. The moon was dark and the wind was high. There weren't many guards inside the barracks, so when the deputy general suddenly looked around, he saw no one. At that moment, he silently ran out of the barracks. After running for about a quarter of an hour, he found an ancient tree. 
the deputy general took a piece of cloth from his sleeve, bit his finger, and wrote something on it with his blood. Then he buried it under the tree, got up, and went back to the barracks. Chapter 145 Xiao Yuan returned to the tent where the wounded soldiers were recuperating. However, when Chen Gu saw him, he asked incredulously with wide eyes, Physician Xiao, why did you come back? Shouldn't you be sleeping in the emperor's tent tonight? Xiao Yuan. Did I hear wrong, or did you mean it in that way? Chen Gu replied straightforwardly, I mean it, shouldn't you be with his majesty at this moment, ow. Xiao Yuan slapped Chen Gu on the wound before he could say anything embarrassing. While he heard Chen Guess howling, Xiao Yuan said with a smile, If I don't come back, then who will change your bandages and apply the medicine? Chen Gu shouted, Ah physician Xiao Ah. I'm not begging you to change my bandages. I only beg you to not hit my wounds. After Chen Gu finally calmed down, Xiao Yuan carefully applied the new medicine. They were silent for a while, until Chen Gu whispered, Physician Xiao, have you expressed your feelings for His Majesty yet? I can see you didn't, otherwise, you wouldn't be back here tonight. Xiao Yuan laughed, you have the appearance of a two meters tall, rough man, but you're actually someone with a soft and delicate heart. Chen Gu hummed twice, taking it as a compliment. Xiao Yuan finished applying the herbal medicine, and then said, I can't help it. After all, in this world one must be very careful. The more you care, the more you will hesitate. In fact, I'm not someone who worries a lot, and I'm not concerned about myself but when I think about him, I can't help but worry all the time. We have different statuses, and I'm afraid that gossip will drown him. Chen Gu replied, Physician Xiao, you shouldn't care about this. You just need to know that His Majesty is fond of you. If you think that you're helping him by worrying this much, in fact, you're harming him. Right now, you two are in front of an abyss, in which His Majesty won't hesitate to jump into. But if you're too worried thinking about this and that, you'll turn around at any time, and then you will leave him alone, wandering in the depths of the abyss. Sigh, His Majesty is so pitiful. Xiao Yuan. My friend, you're awesome. If you were to open a relationship consulting shop in modern times, you will definitely become famous. Chen Gu pressed down on Xiao Yuan's shoulder, as he shook him back and forth while yelling at him, Physician Xiao, stop talking nonsense. Did you even understand what I just said? I understood, I understood. Xiao Yuan, who was shaken back and forth by Chen Gu, was so dizzy that he leaned backwards and then forward. After steadying himself, he clenched his fist bravely and said, All right then. Tomorrow I'll go to Yan He Ching and I'll strip his clothes. Then I'll make love to him, this way and that way. Chen Gu no longer tried to shake him, but he still shouted out loud hesitantly, Physician Xiao, what? I thought you were under his majesty. Xiao Yuan slapped his wound again, Do you have to expose me like this? Comrade Chen. A man should have aspirations. And a great man should have high aspirations. Chen Gu inhaled and exhaled, he still couldn't help but cover his wound and rolled around on the ground. It was so painful that he almost lost his breath, so he said unforgivingly, Physician Xiao, those who suit their actions to the time are wise one. Xiao Yuan stopped talking as he went forward and swung his arm, mercilessly beating Deputy General Chen with a broken cloth. The next day, Xiao Yuan really went to find Yan He Qing. However, the war situation unexpectedly changed, and Yan He Qing was discussing major decisions with several generals. The reason behind this was that the scouts had found traces of the remaining Eastern Wu troops. The report mentioned that they were retreating to the next line of defense, which was at a town in the Eastern Wu Kingdom. If these news were to be true, then as long as they lead elite soldiers to chase after them, they can effortlessly attack them in one fell swoop. However, some generals felt that these battles were one way too smoothly, so they suspected this was actually a trap. Their next movement should be extremely cautious. For a moment, the tent was so noisy that it seemed the people inside were quarreling instead of having a conversation. Naturally, Xiao Yuan couldn't disturb Yan He Qing at this time, so he simply turned around, and left. Huang Yu's deputy general, who had been guarding the gate of the tent, narrowed his eyes slightly, and quietly followed behind him. Chapter, 
146. Outside the tent, Deputy General Chen, who was now basically healed, was twisting his waist and swinging his hands to stretch out his stiff body. When he saw that Xiao Yuan came back, he couldn't help but ask, Physician Xiao, why did you come back? Weren't you going to look for His Majesty? Xiao Yuan shrugged his shoulders and spread out his hands, Yen Ji Yi is busy, I didn't see him. How come he's never been busy in the mornings or late at night until now? But he happens to be busy right now. Chen Gu howled. Xiao Yuan laughed out loud, I'm not in a hurry, so why are you acting all impatient for? It's all right, the guard in front of Yen Ge's tent said that once Yen Ji Yi finishes discussing with the generals, he would inform him that I went to go see him. Chen Gu wanted to say something, but stopped himself the moment he saw a young soldier running out from the tent. When the young soldier saw Xiao Yuan, he quickly pulled him inside, Physician Xiao, you're here. I finally found you. It seems that one of the soldier's wounds became extremely serious. Quick, go to check on him. Xiao Yuan didn't dare to be slow as he quickly opened the curtain and walked in. The wounded soldier was the one who had a poor healing ability, and since the weather was hot, the wound didn't scab over instead, it turned into pus. Fortunately, it wasn't very serious, so Xiao Yuan simply asked someone to bring him a strong wine so that he could clean the soldier's wound. After several tosses, the wounded soldier was finally better, but Xiao Yuan ended up dirtying himself. Xiao Yuan felt disgusting, so he took some clean clothes in a wooden basin, intending to go to the river half a mile away from the barracks to clean himself. No officer below the rank of a deputy general was allowed to leave the barracks without permission, so Xiao Yuan took a permission slip given to him by Yan Heqin, which stated that he could wander in and out of the barracks at will. After such a busy day, in the twinkling of an eye, the moon and stars appeared in the night sky again. Xiao Yuan then untied his clothes, took off his mask, and scooped a handful of water to wash his cheeks. Then he scooped more river water and slowly poured it on his body, slowly adapting himself to the slightly cool water temperature. The temperature was slightly cold in the countryside, and the moonlight shining on the surface of the river was gently stirred by Xiao Yuan's movements. Because of the sound of water, Xiao Yuan didn't notice the strange soft sound coming from the grass behind him. Huang Yu's deputy general rushed back to the barracks, heading towards the tent where a group of generals argued from day to night, until finally, they were finally able to make a final decision. At that moment, the deputy general leaned over Huang Yu and whispered a few words in his ear. Huang Yu's eyes widened and led him to a deserted place, then he asked, Did you see him clearly? Are you completely sure that he's the former Northern Kingdom's emperor? The deputy general nodded with certainty, General Huang, should we take him? No. The emperor will never allow such a thing. Tomorrow His Majesty will personally go after the Eastern Wu deserters, so we can't do anything right now. Huang Yu frowned, stroked his chin, and whispered, We shall wait until we defeat the Eastern Wu Kingdom, and then discuss this matter with General Shui. The deputy general's eyes suddenly lit up for some unknown reason as he hastily lowered his head in order to suppress his thoughts, then he cautiously asked, General Huang, is His Majesty really going to chase after the Eastern Wu deserters tomorrow? Yes, the emperor intends to lead elite troops to sneak attack. Even if there's a trap, he can still catch them off guard. I think that his majesty is being too cautious. The enemy's army is already in ruins and their general has already been defeated once, so why bother? Huang Yu said. The deputy general saluted him, the general is wise, wise, wise. He said three times in a row, and every time he said it, his head would lower a bit more his tone would be a bit higher, and the last letter would be a bit longer. All right, let's have a rest. The matter concerning the former Northern Kingdom's emperor will have to wait until the war is over. Huang Yu waved his hand and turned around to leave. On the other hand, the deputy general bent down and clasped his fist. Once Huang Yu was long gone, he got up and took advantage of the night's darkness, once again going to the ancient tree outside the barracks. This time, there was a remnant of the piece of cloth he buried under the ancient tree last time, and with the help of the moonlight, the deputy general saw a big word written on it, Withdraw. As the white moonlight fell, the deputy general showed a sinister smile, then he bit his finger and wrote, Don't worry, we have a scapegoat. 
Chapter, 147 Xiao Yuan was shivering while he was taking a bath in the river under the cool night, and illuminated only by the moonlight, the water turned even colder. Xiao Yuan was in a hurry to rub himself clean, stirring the water from the bottom of the river. Then, he half walked, half swam towards the shore, where he had put his clean clothes only to find a monkey playing around with his clothes. Xiao Yuan threw a small stone next to the monkey, trying to scare it away, my clothes aren't food, so why are you so curious about them? The monkey was startled at this, and he bared his teeth while screeching at Xiao Yuan. Then he picked up one of Xiao Yuan's shoes and threw it towards the river with force. Hey! Xiao Yuan shouted and turned around to catch the shoe mid-air but in the end, he couldn't catch it, and the shoe floated away. That monkey was still on the shore, making threatening screams at Xiao Yuan, you're mean, really mean, but you can't be evil. Without a shoe, would it be difficult to jump back to the barracks on one foot? Xiao Yuan walked up the shore with a headache and reached for his clothes. However, the monkey unexpectedly picked up the clothes on the ground and ran away, screaming all the way into the woods. Xiao Yuan was stunned for a full second, and when he reacted, he wanted to chase after the monkey, hey! Stop! At that moment, he saw that a man was approaching this place, and Xiao Yuan immediately thought that it might be a soldier who came to take a bath in the river. Instantly, Xiao Yuan didn't care about the monkey anymore, turned his head around, and jumped back into the river. Yen He Ching. Xiao Yuan got out of the river and wiped off the water on his face, Yen Ji. A monkey stole my clothes. Quick, quickly help me chase after it. Yen He Ching looked at the direction he pointed, but after a while passed, he didn't see any monkey around. At that, Xiao Yuan submerged himself in the river, hoping that he would drown due to the embarrassment. Yen He Ching leaned over the river and stretched out his hand, Come up, the water is cold. Xiao Yuan came to the surface of the water again, spat out a mouthful of water, and said, I'm not wearing any clothes, and I don't have any clothes to wear. Yen He Ching coughed lightly, took off his outer robe, and handed it to him. Then he said, You can wear this for now. Now, come out. Xiao Yuan hesitantly walked up the shore, took Yen He Ching's outer robe, and quickly put it on, then hurriedly walked towards the barracks, let's Ji go back to find clothes, it's cold. Yen He Ching, with a few steps, caught up with Xiao Yuan and picked him up, there's no need to rush back. Besides, you don't have any shoes. If you go back like this, you'll hurt your feet. For a moment, Xiao Yuan unconsciously reached out and hugged Yen He Ching's neck to prevent himself from falling. When he came back to reality, he found that he was thinking too much, and Yen He Ching was walking like a flying, stable and steady horse. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but say, Yen Ji Yi, I'm a full-grown man, so if I hug you like this, wouldn't that make you lose face? Even though you're really cool, this is still about saving face, wouldn't it be better to carry me on your back? Yen He Ching replied, You're not wearing any pants, I can't carry you like that. Xiao Yuan, Oh alright, alright. Yes, that's reasonable. I suddenly miss my own body, because even though you'll still be able to lift me, at least I can make you stumble a little. At that moment, Xiao Yuan inexplicably remembered the prince of the Western Shu Kingdom, who looked exactly like himself in his past life, and immediately shook his head. Yen He Qin glanced at him and asked him, Are you feeling cold? Huh? What? Xiao Yuan came back to his senses and said, Cold. Ah, I seem to feel a little bit cold. When he came out of the river, Xiao Yuan didn't dry off his body. Unexpectedly, Yen He Ching's outer robe, which was wrapped around Xiao Yuan, wasn't soaked but since the outer robe couldn't cover his entire body, he could still feel a little chill run through his body. Without saying a word, Yen He Ching hugged Xiao Yuan tightly, and started to walk faster towards the barracks. When the patrolling soldiers saw the emperor hugging an almost naked boy, dressed only in a thin robe, they were so surprised that their long spears fell to the ground. Xiao Yuan looked at the sky and then at the ground, coughed two times, and shouted at them, I went to take a bath and a monkey stole my clothes. What are you looking at? Me being held. What's wrong with being held like this? This only shows that your emperor is very kind towards other people's circumstances, am I right? 
Did you know that your emperor adheres to the leadership method, and working policy, of from the masses, to the masses one? Don't think of strange things only because you're still young. The young soldiers were characterized as being selectively deaf and blind, but they still couldn't help roaring inside their minds, who the hell would believe you? Chapter, 148 Yan He Qin carried Xiao Yuan towards his tent and Xiao Yuan was surprised, Yan Ji, the tent in which I'm resting for the moment is not this way. Yan He Qin hummed but didn't stop walking. Xiao Yuan, I know that you want me to sleep in your tent, but my clothes are in my tent. You must let me get my clothes, right? Yan He Qin looked at him, you can wear mine. Xiao Yuan. Your clothes don't fit me. Yan He Qin, yes, I know. Wear my clothes. Xiao Yuan. All right, fine. Yan He Qin continued carrying Xiao Yuan towards his tent, and when they arrived, he placed Xiao Yuan on the bed. Xiao Yuan dried himself with the already wet robe, and his body was trembling as he covered himself with the warm blanket. Then he looked up and saw that Yan He Qin was getting him a pair of clothes. Yan Ji, did Chen Gu tell you that I was at the river? Yan He Qin hummed as he gave him a clean pair of outer garments and white inner clothes. Xiao Yuan took the clothes and asked again, Yan Ji, didn't you say that you wanted to show me something last time? Yes. After he said that, Yan He Qin took out a small wooden box from a relatively secret place. The wooden box was padded with red silk cloth when he opened it, and on top of the silk cloth, laid a transparent white jade flute. The red tassels on the jade flute were slightly old, as if they could describe the joy and sorrows from more than a year ago. Xiao Yuan had just put on the inner clothes and was still holding the outer robe in his hand, when he stood frozen in place, with his mouth slightly opened out of surprise. When he gave that jade flute to Yan He Qing at the time, he hadn't thought too much about it. But now, when he recalled that moment a bit more, there really seemed to be some other kind of thoughts inside his mind. Yan He Qing took out the jade flute from the wooden box and asked Xiao Yuan, Would you listen? Xiao Yuan grabbed Yan He Qing and made him sit beside him, He'll listen. Yan He Qing nodded his head and then proceeded to place the jade flute on his lips. That year, when they were at the market decorated with lanterns, the sound of the flute spoke about his feelings, but no one knew about them. Later, when he was all alone, the sound of the flute spoke about his grieving love, and again, no one knew about it. And now, seeing Xiao Yuan in front of him, the corners of his mouth raised with a gentle smile, and his eyes were imprinted with a lifetime of spring warmth as well as the cold of autumn. After playing a song, Yan He Qing removed the jade flute from his lips and flipped the flute with his opposite hand toward Xiao Yuan, handing it over without saying a word. Ha! Huh. Do you want me to give it a try? Even though he was puzzled, Xiao Yuan reached out to take the jade flute regardless. Then he followed Yan He Qing's instructions on how to hold the flute and placed it on his lips. However, in the end, he couldn't produce any sound even though he blew air for a while. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan He Qing helplessly, and when their eyes met, Yan He Qing suddenly leaned down to kiss the other end of the jade flute on top of Xiao Yuan's lips. Their lips and tongues were separated by a flute who was only a finger bone wide. Xiao Yuan's eyes suddenly widened, as he unconsciously tried to move back. However, Yan He Qing pressed the back of his neck, and the only thing he could do was watch how Yan He Qing stretched out his other hand to hold the end of the flute, and little by little, he began to move it away. The cold body of the jade flute slowly passed by Xiao Yuan's lips, and every time a flute hole passed over, Xiao Yuan's heart jumped a bit. When Yan He Qing moved the flute away, their breaths immediately mixed together, however, their lips were still an inch away from the other which made Xiao Yuan feel that if he moved a little, he could touch Yan He Qing's lips. The cold flute that was held by Yan He Qing, slowly touched the corner of Xiao Yuan's mouth, gradually passing past his chin, until it finally reached Xiao Yuan's Adam's apple which was rolling up and down due to his nervousness. Xiao Yuan opened his mouth slightly as if he wanted to say something, but at that moment, Yan He Qing lifted his chin with the jade flute and leaned over to kiss his lips. At first, the kiss was tentative and gentle, tender and loving. But then, as if he couldn't get enough, Yan He Qing pressed the back of Xiao Yuan's neck and gradually deepened the kiss, beginning to invade Xiao Yuan's mouth with his tongue. 
After a while, Xiao Yuan could no longer breathe due to the intense kiss, and Yan Heqing mercifully let him go. Yan Heqing lightly licked the corner of Xiao Yuan's mouth, straightened up, looked at him and said, Xiao Yuan, I need an answer. Chapter 149 Xiao Yuan covered his face with one hand, taking some time to calm his breathing. When he finally lowered his hand, he mumbled something and then said, Yan Ji, I just think that after I made you wait for an answer for so long, if I give you such a simple reply, then I will be too insensitive. Yan Heqing held Xiao Yuan's shoulder with one hand, while with the other hand, which was still holding the flute, he started opening Xiao Yuan's undergarments. Then, Yan Heqing slowly slid the flute down Xiao Yuan's abdomen, making a slow circle around his belly button, only to gradually go down to his lower body. Xiao Yuan blushed, and when he was about to stop Yan Heqing's mischievous hand, he saw Yan Heqing leaning over his ear. Yan Heqing's voice was raspy and his breath was slightly hot, since a simple answer would make you look too insensitive, then would it be too insensitive of me if I press you against the bed? If I make you tremble with pleasure until you can't cry anymore, to the point in which you'll have to beg for mercy, until you can give a concise answer. Would that make you seem less insensitive? Xiao Yuan. Damn, why couldn't I figure out the essence of the 300 quotes of a tyrannical president at that time? But you're able to say such golden sentences the moment you open your mouth. Xiao Yuan, tth this, mme, you, hh he. Yen he qng, he. Xiao Yuan, no no no. It's not he. It's your hand. Your hand. Yen He Qin withdrew his hand and hugged Xiao Yuan tightly. While resting his forehead on Xiao Yuan's shoulder, he said, I always feel like this is just a dream, and that if I wake up, you'll be gone. Xiao Yuan's throat constricted as he reached out to stroke Yen He Qin's back, Yen Ji Yi. Yen He Qin interrupted him and continued, When we parted ways in the Northern Kingdom, you left with such determination, and at the time I felt that this was the way it should be. However, now that you're clearly beside me, I'm worried all day long, afraid that I will lose you. Xiao Yuan's heart was filled with mixed feelings for a moment. How can you speak as if you were an arrogant, cold and ruthless man? When in fact, you're showing such a soft and tender attitude, as if you were afraid that one single sentence would hurt you? Xiao Yuan stretched out his hands and hugged him back, Yan Ji I how about why don't you just fuck me? Yan He Qing Xiao Yuan coughed twice as his eyes shifted around, and then finally said, Um I just think that after you said all that stuff, then you might as well take action, right? Who human efforts can achieve anything one? Yo you can't be an empty talker, after all, PR. Practice is the source of knowledge. It's the driving force of cognitive development. It's a standard to test whether the knowledge is correct or not. It's the ultimate goal of knowledge. Yan He Qin couldn't bear it any longer as he pressed Xiao Yuan down and fiercely kissed him on the lips. When the kiss ended, Xiao Yuan was short of breath and his chest was violently moving up and down. Then, when his clothes were torn open, and his bare snow white chest was half exposed, Yan He Qin nibbled on his collarbone and shoulders trying to calm himself. As he relaxed his breath, Yan He Qin showed an extremely patient expression on his face as he backed away. Xiao Yuan's voice was still trembling as he asked, WH what's wrong? Yan He Qing scolded himself angrily, covered his mouth with one hand and said, Not tonight. Ah, uh, yes, you're going to lead the army to war tomorrow morning, right? Xiao Yuan sat up on the bed as he fixed his clothes. Wait, shouldn't I be the one who's worried about not being able to get up? As if understanding Xiao Yuan's doubts, Yan He Qing put his hand on Xiao Yuan's head, and while rubbing his temples, he said, leaving aside one sleepless night. For the next few days, they'll be thinking about you all the time, and they'll be unable to think about anything else. A sleepless night? Night? A whole night? Is that what he understood? Inexplicably, Xiao Yuan remembered the episode in which Yan He Qing spent a whole night with ten women in the original work, and his face suddenly became unnatural. Can we go back? Can we stop practicing? How about I give you an answer instead? Communication is very important after all. Yan He Qing's face showed reluctance as he impatiently weighed the pros and cons inside his mind. 
Xiao Yuan thought about it for a moment, patted him on his shoulder and said, Yan Ji Yi, you can go. I'll be here anyway, so I won't leave you. I'll wait for you to come back, and when you come back, well make things clear. I'll give you a proper reply, and well do everything that we should do. Yan He Qing looked at him but didn't say anything for a long time. He still looked as if he couldn't wait, so Xiao Yuan thought about it and gave him a kiss on the lips. As soon as Xiao Yuan kissed him, Yan He Qing's eyes darkened, kissing Xiao Yuan again and again. However, because he was afraid that he won't be able to control himself, he let Xiao Yuan go back to the physician's tent. Since Yan He Qing was in a bad mood, he poured cold water on his body to calm himself down. Old Hax Xiaxwei was all brave acting like well if you want to bang me then fucking do it. But then. YHQ insinuated that they will do it all night long and XYA remembered one infamous scene from the original novel, in which I'm sure YHQ's banging abilities. Chapter, 150 The next day, Xiao Yuan woke up early in the morning, since he wanted to look at Yan Heqing's battlefield appearance from a distance and feel how strong he was. However, who would have thought that they would set out when the stars and the moon were still out in the night sky? So in the end, Xiao Yuan couldn't bid him farewell and had to return to his tent feeling a bit unhappy. In the next few days, Xiao Yuan treated the soldiers' wounds as per usual, looking the same as always. However, Deputy General Chen had something to say. A lot to say. Deputy General Chen hesitated to say it, but in the end, he couldn't help but stammer, Physician Xiao, what's this? I have a wound on my right shoulder, so why are you putting medicine on my arm? Xiao Yuan calmly and unhurriedly applied medicine to his shoulder, only to say next, the medicine can be used in many ways. It can be applied to the shoulder ten times, and be delivered to the arm once. Chen Gu, Physician Xiao don't worry, His Majesty will be back soon. Xiao Yuan chuckled. I'm not worried. Yan He Qing has the aura of the male lead, so what should I be worried about? Chen Gu grimaced, Physician Xiao, my right shoulder is the injured one, not the left shoulder, and yet you're still saying that you're not worried. You've been restless the past few days, you. Before he could finish saying what he wanted to say, Xiao Yuan took some medicine and pressed it on Deputy General Chen's wound. Instantly, a miserable howl came out of his throat and his next words were immediately blocked. Suddenly, from outside the tent, a young soldier lifted the curtain and screamed, Is Deputy General Chen here? General Huang is urgently requesting his presence. What happened? Chen Gu stood up in a hurry. The young soldier's face was extremely pale, and his forehead was full dripping with sweat as he rushed towards Chen Gu. Then he leaned over to his ear, and whispered a few words. Meanwhile, Xiao Yuan, who was cleaning the medicine jar, vaguely heard the words His Majesty in front line. At this, he couldn't help but raise his head to look at Chen Gu, only to see his face suddenly turning blue. How could this happen? Chen Gu stood up abruptly. He was so shocked that he didn't even pay attention to Xiao Yuan as he quickly followed the young soldier. Chen Gu, with his upper body naked and his shoulders wrapped with cloth stained with blood, rushed towards General Huang Yu's tent, where several generals and deputy generals were still present. At that moment, Chen Gu ignored the proper etiquette and shouted in a trembling voice, What happened? What do you mean that the elite troops were ambushed by the enemy and the emperor was killed? Where did you get this information from? Lying about military information without any confirmation is a huge crime. Huang Yu's face was also extremely distorted as he scolded Chen Gu, Deputy General Chen. I called you over here but I didn't summon you to yell. Calm down. Chen Gu was still very agitated as he waved his arms and began shouting again, How can I calm down? What do you mean His Majesty has died? Where on earth did this news come from? Next to him, the other generals came forward and patted Chen Ge's shoulder, trying to calm him down. Then, they explained the situation with a sullen face. It turned out that Yan He Qing, who led a small elite team, originally wanted to launch a sneak attack on the defeated soldiers of the Eastern Wu Kingdom. However, who would have thought that the enemy's arrival to that Eastern Wu town was in fact a trap? Everything was done to make the Southern Yan Kingdom ease their vigilance, but because Yan He Qing was extremely cautious, this trap shouldn't have been a problem for him. 
But in reality, the enemy seemed to know everything about their tactics, managing to ambush Yan Hichin early on the road he must have traveled on. The elite team, which was supposed to sneakily attack the Easter Wu soldiers, had entered the enemy's encirclement and was immediately surrounded by 100,000 elite enemy soldiers. After hearing this, Chen Ge's body trembled and he didn't know what to do. He had to take several deep breaths before he could recover from the shock, why don't we send troops to support them? Huang Yu shook his head, it's too late, the only soldier who could escape death said that he saw with his own eyes how the emperor, in a desperate attempt to escape, fell off the cliff. He's already Huang Yu sighed heavily and then continued, the emperor has been ambushed by the enemy, so sending troops right now would be a careless move, and it will cause unnecessary casualties. The several generals and deputy generals present at the moment took a long breath, everyone showing expressions of shock, grief and indignation. At one moment, a general began to curse with an extremely angry face, there's a spy in our barracks. A traitor? A spy? Chen Gu asked incredulously. Huang Yu clenched his teeth and tightened his jaw for a long time before saying, I should have done it earlier hey, you don't need to worry, I already know who the spy is, and I won't let him go. Please appease your mood first, we still have a few vicious battles to fight ahead of us. You must not feel dejected. The most important thing right now, is to think about how to stabilize the military situation and appease the morale of the army. He'll inform General Shui about this and he'll ask him how to deal with the Emperor's affairs before making any decisions. Chapter 151 At the hazy dusk of twilight, Xiao Yuan finished bandaging the last wounded soldier in the tent. He then went out to wash the dirty cotton cloths stained with blood, when unexpectedly, as soon as he stepped out of the tent with a basin in hand, two soldiers approached him with straight postures. With a rude tone of voice, one of them said, Are you physician Xiao? Yes, that's me. Xiao Yuan replied suspiciously. What's the matter? After finishing that sentence, Xiao Yuan suddenly remembered something and his eyes glowed. He then covered his mouth and after coughing lightly, he asked, Has your emperor returned from war? Does he want to see me? The two soldiers looked at each other, and one of them finally said, General Huang is summoning you. General Huang. Huang Yu. What does he want with me? Although Xiao Yuan was confused, he still put down the basin, wiped his hands that were stained with blood from treating the wounded soldiers, and followed the two soldiers towards Huang Yu's tent. The two soldiers didn't have any intention to follow him inside the tent. Instead, they let Xiao Yuan enter the tent with cold expressions on their faces. Xiao Yuan was puzzled with their treatment as he lifted the tent's curtain and walked in. Huang Yu, who was standing in the center of the tent with his hands behind his back, heard the sound of the curtain being lifted and turned around. When he saw Xiao Yuan, he frowned slightly as he stared at the silver mask on Xiao Yuan's face. After staying completely silent for a while, he said, the former emperor of the northern kingdom was actually hidden deep inside our southern yen barracks. Suddenly, his former title was said in such a cold manner. Xiao Yuan, who had long since gotten used to getting addressed with his original name, couldn't react for a while. However, when he came back to reality, he opened his mouth slightly. Huang Yu saw that there was a faint confusion in his eyes, and he couldn't help but sneer, the former emperor of the northern kingdom is not trying to pretend to be dumb, right? I don't know if you acted like this when His Majesty told you about the Southern Yan's sneak attack plan. Maybe you made him feel safe with this amazing act of ignorance. The Emperor. Yan Heqing. What happened to Yan Ji? What sneak attack? Xiao Yuan's mind was in turmoil, as he stepped forward to desperately ask one question after the other. Who could have thought that Huang Yu would suddenly snap and swing his arm, slapping Xiao Yuan across the face, which resulted in his mask falling off. Already knowing that he was the one to blame for his identity being exposed, Xiao Yuan had long expected this would happen. Even though he felt extremely uncomfortable at the moment, he appeared calm on the surface as he bent down to pick up the mask from the floor. Huang Yu stepped forward. Without any hesitation, he reached out his hand and grabbed Xiao Yuan's throat, forcing Xiao Yuan to straighten up and look at him. Xiao Yuan frowned and grasped Huang Yu's wrist, stopping him from exerting too much force. 
his eyes couldn't help but stare at the silver mask on the ground. Huang Yu narrowed his eyes as he looked at the man in front of him. I've once heard that the former emperor of the northern kingdom was so beautiful, that he didn't look like a human. Now, I'm able to see that his skin is as beautiful as the snow, and his eyebrows and eyes are extremely charming. He looks just like the vivid painting of an immortal. Huang Yu sneered, the emperor is also a mere mortal that is deceived by beauty. Xiao Yuan withdrew his gaze, frowned and then coldly looked at Huang Yu, I know that you're a general of the southern Yan kingdom, so you must hate everything about the northern kingdom. In that case, what do you have to say to me? Is it that interesting to insult others behind their backs? Insult? Huang Yu narrowed his eyes as his hand lightly squeezed Xiao Yuan's throat, he hid the enemy, the former emperor of the northern kingdom, by his side. He disregarded the southern Yan kingdom's homeland hatred. He disregarded the soldiers and the people, whose families were destroyed by the northern kingdom. And disregarded the blood, tears, and bones of the former southern Yan emperor buried in the ground. Aren't these an insult for the emperor? His majesty used to be a male concubine while he stayed in the northern kingdom, his pride has long since been shattered into pieces and it will remain so for the rest of his life. It's extremely sad and pathetic but. Before Huang Yu could finish his speech, Xiao Yuan suddenly twisted Huang Yu's hand with some force, and then fiercely punched him in the face, causing his face to turn sideways. At that moment, Huang Yu felt a burning pain in his face. Huang Yu was extremely stunned. He didn't expect that the former emperor of the northern kingdom, who seemed weak and defenseless, would actually punch him in the face. It was so sudden, that he was caught off guard. What the hell do you know? Xiao Yuan grabbed Huang Yu's collar, and his eyes were wide open when he started to scream with a great amount of anger, do you even know how much humiliation and abuse Yan He Qing had to experience while in the northern kingdom? Can you even guarantee that you won't collapse if you were put in his position at that time? But he survived. Isn't he working extremely hard for the rise of the southern Yan kingdom right now? When did he forget all the hardships the southern Yan kingdom went through? What makes you say such things about him? Chapter 152 Now that Huang Yu's face was punched, he no longer tried to pretend in front of Xiao Yuan and attacked back. Even though the body of the former northern emperor was too weak, and even though Huang Yu was an experienced general, Xiao Yuan was able to deal with Huang Yu's several moves with the self-defense skills he learned in his previous life. However, in the end, he was still trampled by Huang Yu after all. Huang Yu mercilessly kicked Xiao Yuan's body twice, and then he stepped on Xiao Yuan's head. Xiao Yuan's chest and lungs hurt after being kicked with such great power, and suddenly he began to cough fiercely. Just when he was about to struggle to free himself, he heard Huang Yu sneer, former emperor of the northern kingdom, your goal has already been achieved, you don't need to keep acting anymore. Look at you, showing the appearance of someone who's in love even now. I wonder, how will the deceased emperor feel when he finds himself under the Nine Springs One? Xiao Yuan, who was stepped on by Huang Yu, suddenly stopped struggling and his body stiffened. His face showed disdain as he laughed out loud, as if he had just heard a big joke, destined to die. Yen Ji Yi is destined to die. Are you kidding me? 2. Huang Yu didn't have the intention to entangle with him anymore, so he fiercely kicked Xiao Yuan's lower abdomen. After he kicked him with great force, Xiao Yuan ended up rolling several meters away. At that moment, Huang Yu called the soldiers who were outside the tent. That kick was so heavy that Xiao Yuan felt an immeasurable amount of pain, as if his abdomen was being stabbed a hundred times by a sharp knife. He had to press down on his abdomen, laying on his side to slowly inhale and exhale air, trying to relieve the pain. Before the pain could disappear, Xiao Yuan was sent to where the captives were held. His hands and body were tied up with ropes, and his whole body was suspended in the air. He didn't know how long it had been, but at that moment, Xiao Yuan's eyes were extremely blurry, and he felt sick. He could feel a burst of nausea coming from his aching abdomen all the way to his throat. To make things worse, his hands were tied on the hook from which he was hanging from, and the ropes were rubbing his wrists raw, making him feel tremendous pain. Suddenly, he heard the sound of footsteps coming from outside, and when Xiao Yuan raised his head, the person he saw in front of him wasn't the one he wished to see. 
Chin Gu walked slowly toward Xiao Yuan, until he stood in front of him. His face was pale and he seemed to be thinking about what to say for a while before he finally said, Physician Xiao, you. Are you really the former emperor of the Northern Kingdom? Xiao Yuan slightly smiled at him, but he didn't reply. So what if I am? So what if I'm not? Even if I want to be myself, even if I want to tell everyone that my actual name is Xiao Yuan, I'm still stuck inside this body. Even if I could explain everything, all the sins that this body has made are still on my shoulders. When Qin Gu saw that he didn't want to answer, he slowly drew out a long sword from the scabbard around his waist, and with his eyes lowered, he asked, Physician Xiao, answer me. Are you really the former emperor of the Northern Kingdom? However, Xiao Yuan remained silent, and Chen Ge's expression collapsed a little. He clasped his head with one hand and said anxiously, Physician Xiao, are you really the spy they said you are? Why aren't you trying to defend yourself? You can say something, even by shaking your head. Xiao Yuan laughed, and raised the corners of his mouth with a trace of bitterness, If you don't believe me, will it be useful for me to say anything? If you believe me, is there anything that you need me to say? Chen Gu froze in place as he put down his hand holding his head, hesitated for a while, looked straight into Xiao Yuan's eyes, and slowly raised his sword. The silver light crossed over the blade, its glow was so piercing that one couldn't look directly at it. Chen Gu tightly squeezed the hilt of the sword, and his hands were vaguely trembling because of his inner struggle. However, in the end, he finally made a decision. Chen Gu took a deep breath and dropped the sword violently. As soon as the sword fell down, Xiao Yuan's hands were loosened and he fell to the ground. Chen Gu then put the sword away and reached out to help him. At that moment, Xiao Yuan regained consciousness and looked at Chen Gu with slight surprise, You. Physician Xiao, even though I don't know if you're the former emperor of the Northern Kingdom or not, I've seen you treat the wounded soldiers of the Southern Yen Kingdom for the past couple of days, and I can clearly see that you're sincere. Our Southern Yen soldiers aren't ungrateful, so there must be some kind of misunderstanding. Chen Gu said seriously. Forget it. Xiao Yuan removed the rope from his hands and slowly rubbed the red marks on his wrists. Physician Xiao, you can't stay here. General Huang thinks that you're a spy, and he will probably issue a military order to get rid of you tomorrow. The guards at the door were already distracted by me, so you better go right now. Chen Gu urged. When Chen Gu was about to lead the way for him, away from the land of right and wrong three, Xiao Yuan suddenly grabbed his arm, I can't go. Where's Yan Ji? When will he come back? Is there any news from the front line? I want to see him. Chen Ge's face showed a complicated expression for a moment. He took a deep breath, mumbled something for a while without knowing what to say, and then he finally replied, Physician Xiao, it's better for you to not ask about it. You must leave quickly, if you don't, then it will be too late. At that instant, Xiao Yuan remembered what Huang Yu had said earlier and realized that something must have happened at the front line. He grabbed Chen Ge's hand and refused to go, what is it? What happened? Chen Gu couldn't stand being questioned at this, and he hesitantly said, His Majesty. He. Something bad happened to him. Xiao Yuan pressed Chen Ge's shoulders with both hands, straightening him up. His tone of voice was anxious as he spoke, Is he hurt? Is it a serious injury? Is he unconscious in his tent? Chen Gu took a deep breath, having to use all of his courage to blurt out, Physician Xiao. His Majesty is dead. There was a spy in our barracks, and the team led by His Majesty was ambushed. All all of them are. Chen Gu suddenly clenched his fist and his face turned pale, not being able to say another word anymore. However, there was no shock or denial coming from Xiao Yuan as Chen Gu expected, nor was there any crying as he had anticipated. Instead, Chen Gu saw how Xiao Yuan slightly opened his mouth and slowly withdrew his hands from Chen Ge's shoulders. As if he could finally understand the meaning behind Chen Ge's words after a long time, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath and then looked straight at Chen Gu, no, Yan Ji will not die. Even though Xiao Yuan's voice was trembling, his words and eyes were firm. As if the faith and adoration that had been firmly established for many years, couldn't be easily shaken by a mere statement without any basis. 
something must have happened to Yen Jie. I have to go find him. Where was he ambushed? Tell me right now. Xiao Yuan's voice was still faintly shaking, and yet it carried a sobbing calmness. He was anxious but not desperate. Physician Xiao. Chen Ge's voice was helpless and sorrowful. Or you can simply show me the direction, indicating to me which way I should go. Xiao Yuan said while walking out. If not for the fact that Xiao Yuan's eyes began to gradually turn red, Chen Gu would actually believe that Xiao Yuan was as calm as usual. Anyway, I can't stay here any longer. Give me directions, is it in the south, west, east or north? Yen Jie is really not dead, you have to believe me. He can't die, but he must be in trouble right now. Maybe he's seriously injured and he's not able to move anywhere, so he might be waiting for someone to find him. Xiao Yuan gradually lost his voice, and when he saw Chen Gu standing in place looking at him with indifference, he said, Chen Gu, just tell me in which direction I should go. I'll go by myself, I. I beg you. Physician Xiao don't. Don't do this. Chen Gu rudely rubbed his own hair, only to finally ruthlessly say, well, Physician Xiao, to be honest, there are many generals who don't believe that His Majesty has died. Chen Gu took out a scroll from his pocket, in which the surrounding terrain was scribbled, spread out the map, and pointed at a certain point, His Majesty fell off the cliff here, but the terrain of the cliff isn't high, and there are several caves underneath. As the saying goes, we must see the body of the dead to know they're dead. Until we see the dead body of His Majesty, we won't believe that he died. However, because General Huang is afraid that the troops would be ambushed again by the enemy, considering that the enemy's troops are still nearby that area we decided that instead of sending a large army, we should send one single person to search under the cliff, since it won't attract the attention of the enemy. Hey! Physician Xiao, where are you going? Physician Xiao don't be in a hurry. Hey! Don't pull me, I will stop talking bullshit, alright? Let's go. Ah, uh, by the way, you can't ride a horse, right? It'll take you. Wait a minute, I remember that last time. All right, all right, I won't force you. Let's hurry up and get going. Chapter, 153 The night was long, the city was far away, the trees were pale and the twilight was dark. In front of a cave, several soldiers were carefully searching for someone with torches in their hands. After confirming that there was no one there, a soldier rushed out of the cave and knelt down on one knee in front of a general on horseback, reporting to General Yang. There's no sign of the enemy's emperor, Yan Heqing, in this cave. General Yang, whose name was Yang Liya, frowned and coldly asked, Have you searched every inch of the cave? Every cup of soil, every blade of grass. If there's any spot unchecked, your stupid head won't be on top of your shoulders anymore. It will be on the grass and used as a ball for the horses to play with, since it's useless anyway. The kneeling soldier clenched his hands and replied, replying to General Yang, I've searched everywhere. All right then. Let's go to the next cave. Yang Liya pulled the reins of his horse tightly and turned the horse's head around to leave. However, before he could move, a general beside him asked him in a low voice, General, perhaps after falling off the cliff, the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom ended up getting eaten by wild dogs, and no bones were left Beihai. Before the general could finish his words, he was whipped by Yang Lai's horsewhip, making him immediately shut up and sweat in fear. Yang Liya glanced at him and replied, even if the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom was eaten by a wild dog, and only one finger bone was left behind, you must find that finger bone for me so that we can tell the world about it, and then we will bury that bone. Stop talking bullshit and speed up the progress of the search. Right at that moment, Yang Liya suddenly saw the corpse of a southern Yen soldier leaning against the cliff in front of him. The cliff had just experienced a vicious battle, so it wasn't a surprise to see a corpse like this. Yang Liya simply rode past the corpse, completely expressionless. Once he passed the body, he whipped it, making it fall unsteadily on the road. Then, Yang Liya deliberately pulled the horse's head, letting the horse step over the corpse. Yang Liya had a satisfied and penetrating smile on his face, as he led the Eastern Wu Kingdom's army to continue looking for the body of the Emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom, Yan Heqing, near the cliff. 
From a distance, two dark shadows were hidden behind the leafy branches of a tree, watching from afar what Yang Liya had just done. At this, that dark shadow couldn't help but curse, motherfucker. After the army of the Eastern Wu Kingdom had disappeared from their sight, the two shadows climbed down from the tree. As they climbed down, Chen Gu said, the Eastern Wu Kingdom won't stop until the Emperor is found. They were afraid of being defeated by His Majesty before, right? It wasn't easy for them to successfully ambush our elite troops, so they're desperate to kill everyone. Physician Xiao, we have to find His Majesty before they do. Mm -hmm. Xiao Yuan nodded. They've already searched the caves behind us, so we must move forward. Chen Guk climbed down the tree and planned to go around the mountain stream path, so that they would be ahead of the Eastern Wu army. At this proposal, Xiao Yuan didn't have any objections. Once they started walking, and passed by the trampled corpse, they stopped at the same time. The corpse of the southern Yen soldier, that was mercilessly trampled on by the horse's hooves, was so deformed that it was hard to see what the man used to look like. Chen Gu sighed a long sigh, dragged the corpse towards an uninhabited path, and casually dug up a pit, fearing that Xiao Yuan would be in a hurry. However, when Chen Gu turned his head to look at him, he saw Xiao Yuan nodding his head, so Chen Gu started to dig out a shallow pit with all his might. Once he was done with the pit, he put the corpse inside. After that, Xiao Yuan bent down to pay his respects. When he raised his head, he saw that the corpse was holding a wooden plate tightly in his hand. At that moment, Xiao Yuan carefully pulled out the wooden plate from the corpse's hand. He would hand it to Chen Gu later, so that he could take it back to the southern Yen barracks. At least this way the people who once knew this soldier, would know that he died fighting for his country knowing that his body didn't end up in the wilderness of the battlefield, where his bones couldn't be found. Chen Gu patted off the dust from his hands, and asked Xiao Yuan, what's his name? Xiao Yuan looked at the wooden plate in his hand with the help of the bleak moonlight. As soon as he read the characters engraved on the wooden plate, his breath stagnated, and his eyes suddenly shrank. Physician Xiao, what's wrong? Chen Gu saw that something was wrong with Xiao Yuan and confusedly asked him. Xiao Yuan's chest fluctuated sharply, and he was short of breath. He was unable to say a word for a long time. The only thing he could do, was to hand over the wooden plate to Chen Gu. At this sudden action, Chen Gu took the wooden plate with a confused expression, seeing that there were some barely recognizable words engraved on the wooden plate, at the back the roof of the cave save his majesty. Chapter 154 The two of them stared at each other and hurriedly ran towards the cave that the Eastern Wu soldiers had just searched. The cave wasn't large, but it was dark, damp, and cold. Chen Gu acted quickly to make a simple torch to illuminate the whole cave, but there was nothing inside the cave that could work. There were only leaves and mud. The roof of the cave The roof of the cave Xiao Yuan looked up at the roof of the cave, which was formed by the erosion and dissolution of groundwater, and saw that it was full of holes. Some of them were higher, and some were lower. Since there weren't any kind of light inside the cave, it was so dark that the roof looked extremely creepy. Yen Ji Can you hear me? Yen Ji Yi, are you here? Xiao Yuan put his hands around his mouth and started to shout loudly. His voice echoed every corner of the cave, over and over again. However, as if a stone sunking at the bottom of the sea too, no one replied. Physician Xiao, do you think that the words roof of the cave written on that wooden plate mean something else? Chen Gu yelled as he knocked at the walls of the cave, only to end up disappointed when he found out that every wall was as solid as stone. Chen Gu then turned around to discuss this with Xiao Yuan, but saw him standing in place, quietly looking up without saying a word. Physician Xiao Chen Gu walked closer to him, what are you looking a? Chen Gu couldn't finish what he wanted to say, because Xiao Yuan suddenly pressed hard on his shoulders, making him squat down. Help me go up. Xiao Yuan firmly said as he stepped on Chen Ge's shoulders. Chen Gu, while exerting some strength, replied, Physician Xiao, be careful. It's so dark in here, that I'm afraid of making you hit your head against the roof of the cave. Xiao Yuan jumped up and went into a specific hole at the roof of the cave the hole in front of him was more spacious than what he thought it would be. 
And since the inside of the hole was vertical, Xiao Yuan had to rely solely on the strength of his arms and feet to support himself. However, because he wasn't careful enough, he ended up falling. Hey, hey, hey. Chen Gu couldn't react in time, and only saw how Xiao Yuan fell heavily on the ground, raising a cloud of dust. Xiao Yuan immediately propped himself up, because he didn't have the time to check on himself. Without saying a single word, Xiao Yuan pressed Chen Gu down again and stepped on his shoulders one more time. In the end, Chen Gu didn't have any other choice than to help him go up the hole again. This time, Xiao Yuan took a posture that allowed him to move bit by bit. At that moment, Chen Gu lit up a torch with what he could find at the last minute, and held it high to help Xiao Yuan see what was inside the hole, Physician Xiao, be careful. It's too dark to see clearly. What if there's a stone wall at the end of the hole? Won't you end up hitting your head? However, after a while passed, Chen Gu could barely see Xiao Yuan's ankles, until he suddenly heard Xiao Yuan express an awe. Followed by Xiao Yuan disappearing from sight. Physician Xiao. Oh wow oh, 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 where are you? This is awful. Can you hear me? Answer me ah. Uh. Chen Gu, who held the torch as high as he could, began to swing it back and forth, while he kept on stubbornly staring at the hole, not daring to move his eyes away. I can hear you. I'm not deaf. Xiao Yuan's voice suddenly came from the depths of the hole, across the stone wall, sounding distant and hollow, Chen Gu, since you're there, you have to catch him. Chen Gu replied confused, catch catch what? He soon discovered what Xiao Yuan meant when he heard a sound coming from the hole and saw a pair of feet appearing at the entrance of the hole. Such a scene was so bizarre that Chen Gu blurted out oh for my mother dash, and then the torch in his hand fell on the ground, as he raised his hands to catch the man coming out of the roof of the cave since Xiao Yuan wasn't able to hold on any longer. When Chen Gu finally caught that person, his weight instantly caught Chen Gu off guard as he fell on the ground, ending up acting as a human cushion. Ouch! Ah mother, it hurts. It hurts. Chen Gu subconsciously reached out to push that person away from him, but when he saw who it was, he suddenly froze and stared at him wide-eyed, Your Majesty. As soon as he said this, Xiao Yuan fell down from the roof. He fell so heavily, that he ended up rolling twice on the ground. However, he couldn't care less whether he was hurt or not. He simply turned over and grabbed the man, who had just fallen on top of Chen Gu, into his arms. Xiao Yuan's hands were shaking as he held that man tightly. He was so lost in thought, that he murmured something a few times. Then he took a deep breath to force himself to calm down, lowered his head, and gently kissed Yan Heqing's closed eyes and cold lips, Yan Jie, it's me, can you hear me? I found you. I finally found you. Chapter, 155 The Emperor, how is the Emperor? He is he Chen Gu couldn't say it. He's still alive. Xiao Yuan untied Yan Heqing's clothes and started to treat his wounds. Yan Heqing's face was extremely pale due to the excessive blood loss, making him fall into a coma. His pulse and breathing were very weak, so Xiao Yuan treated him with some herbal medicine to stop the bleeding. Then he took off his coat and wrapped Yan Heqing tightly with it. After Chen Gu saw this, he quickly did the same thing. We have to get him back to the barracks as soon as possible. When Xiao Yuan finished speaking, Chen Gu instantly carried Yan Heqing on his back. Physician Xiao, it's not too late outside, let's go now. Xiao Yuan nodded, took the torch, and followed Chen Gu towards the exit of the cave however, before they could step outside the cave, they saw a distant firelight shaking, and they heard the sound of disordered footsteps. Xiao Yuan was so frightened that he hurriedly put out the fire, and Chen Gu quickly returned to the cave they then held their breaths, hiding inside the depths of the dark cave, not daring to make a single move. From the outside, they could faintly hear the voice of a man passing through the entrance of the cave, General Yang is too cautious ah. He's making us search through the first caves again. Do you really think that hell make us spend the whole night here? I heard that General Yang doesn't have the intention of resting until he finds that emperor. Even though it's a boring and hard job, I can understand why General Yang is doing this. After all, he has to cut the grass to get rid of the roots. Anyway, 
this place is already covered with traps. It's not like the emperor of the southern Yen kingdom can grow wings and fly away. All right, all right. You two, stop gossiping around and hurry up. General Yang will personally come back here at any given moment, and if he catches you two gossiping around, instead of doing your job, you two will lose your heads. After the soldier said that, the outside of the cave was surrounded by complete silence. Only the sound of footsteps could be heard from afar and near the cave. On the other hand, inside the darkness of the cave, Chen Gu gritted his teeth as he said in a low voice, Physician Xiao, what should we do? Should we hide on the roof of the cave? Xiao Yuan rubbed his hands until they were warm, and then covered Yan Heqing's cold cheeks. Then he said with a worried voice, the roof of the cave can't hide three people. Besides, we don't know when the Eastern Wu soldiers will retreat, and Yan Ji won't survive much longer in his current condition. The burning light outside the cave drove away the moonlight, meaning that the soldiers were wandering around the cave with this, the two of them clung to the stone wall as much as they could, not daring to come out of the dark. It was a good thing that the soldiers of the Eastern Wu Kingdom were mainly paying close attention to the outside of the cave, rather than the inside. No, if we continue like this, we will be discovered. Chen Gu put down Yan Heqing, who was resting on his back, and said, It'll make them go away. Once I do that, Physician Xiao, you have to run away with His Majesty. Before Chen Gu could rush outside, he was stopped by Xiao Yuan, who held his arm tightly, and then said, Make them go away. Chen Gu gritted his teeth, Yes, Physician Xiao. When there's no firelight coming from the outside, and you don't hear any noise, then you have to immediately carry His Majesty and take him to the east. Don't look back. And don't wait for me. Xiao Yuan looked at him and calmly replied, Let me do it instead. Chen Gu immediately spoke out with an urgent and angry tone of voice, Physician Xiao. How can I possibly let you do it? You. Chen Gu, I'm not interested in this rotten entanglement bullshit, you can go and play your role. Besides, you should also know that Huang Yu wants my life. Since Yan Ji is still in a coma, he can't protect me, so I can't simply go back to the southern Yan barracks just like that and even if I did go back, it will only be a dead end for the both of us. Yan Ji can only be carried back by you. Chen Gu, you're a wise man, think about it more carefully. Xiao Yuan calmly analyzed the situation. His tone of voice and attitude were so soft, that even Chen Gu felt that he was being suffocated. Chen Gu wanted to defend himself, but in the end he couldn't speak. He was so angry at this, that he punched himself on the head. Then he held his head and cursed several dirty words one after the other. Xiao Yuan looked at Yan Heqing for a moment as he interlocked his fingers with Yan Heqing's hand, and softly caressed Yan Heqing's face with his other hand. Xiao Yuan's fingertips were like a paintbrush made out of clouds as he fondly depicted Yan Heqing's eyebrows, Chen Gu, he'll have to trouble you with one more thing. Chapter 156 Xiao Yuan tried to smile, but his eyes stung and his mouth was bitter. As he pursed his lips, he took a breath, and said, if if there's no news of me being alive before Yan Ji wakes up. Physician Xiao. If there's no news of me being alive, then you have to write a letter for me. Yan Ji Yi doesn't recognize my handwriting, so you don't have to worry about that issue. As for the content of the letter. Xiao Yuan paused for a moment. The hand that was interlocked with Yan Heqing's fingers clasped slightly, and his lips began to tremble, you have to tell him with the letter that I'm gone. And that I don't like him that I was only willing to be with him because that way, I could enjoy the glory and the wealth without any worries. However, since my identity was exposed, I found that being by his side was not safe after all, so I chose to leave him. You also have to let him know that I'm asking him to not come find me. With this letter, you have to let him understand that he's human after all. Tell him, you said that you'll search all over the world for me. Even if that means that you'll have to dig three feet underground to get me. But, the world is so big, and there are so many paths, where is he going to dig those three feet to begin with? Chen Gu choked with sobs, almost unable to speak, Physician Xiao, do you have to be like this? His Majesty he he. Xiao Yuan wiped his face, and continued, you must write decisively, 
don't leave him any trace that could make him have doubts. It's best to show him my disgust and tell him that I won't ever let him find me again. Let him walk his own path, I already have my own unique road. Tell him that without him around, I will definitely live a happier life than now. It's been said since ancient times, that the imperial family is the most ruthless and heartless of all, and that I've been longing for a life of idle clouds and wild cranes too. But his destiny is to be the emperor. I just hope that I won't have to get entangled with these things for the rest of my life. Chen Gu, please, make sure to write all these words for me in the letter, and tell him to forget about me. Chen Gu smashed his fist against the stone wall, hitting his hand so hard that it turned bright red. After this, he managed to calm down, Physician Xiao, I. I understand. Xiao Yuan nodded his head, cupped Yan Heqing's face in his hands, and kissed his cold lips. After that kiss, tears fell down his cheeks, crossing over the corners of his mouth, and when he licked them with the tip of his tongue, he felt that they tasted bitter and astringent. In going now. At the distance, they were able to hear the faint sound of horse hooves approaching, so Xiao Yuan didn't dare to be slow. He hurriedly got up, and ran towards the entrance of the cave. One step, two steps, three steps. Xiao Yuan's footsteps were slow to fast, and fast to slow. Once he stood at the entrance of the cave and looked at the outside, he saw that in the twilight, the moon and stars were dim. Seeing how this frost light fell on the wilderness, Xiao Yuan took a step forward. As the cold wind blew by, he felt that this wind couldn't blow away the loneliness and coldness he felt right now. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan wasn't able to stop his tears. As if he could see the interminable yellow sand of that day, in which Yan Heqing had chased after him on horseback, only to say to him, I won't forget, I would definitely never forget. There are eight hardships in life three you can't avoid them, and you can't stop them. But, why do I have to become Yan Heqing's life hardships why? Xiao Yuan wiped his eyes and suddenly turned around, running back to the cave he then tightly grabbed Chen Ge's shoulders, who was extremely shocked, and said, forget about everything I just said. When Yan Ji wakes up, you have to tell him that I, Xiao Yuan, likes him. I really love him. I don't even know when this feeling began, but as long as I'm with him, I'm extremely happy. I want to stay by his side all the time, and whenever he goes, he'll go as well. I'm not afraid of the ruthless imperial family, nor am I afraid that the deep palace will feel like a cage. As long as he's around, as long as he's with me. The last few words have turned into choked sobs. After this, Xiao Yuan took advantage that Chen Gu hasn't fully regained his senses, and turned around, rushing outside the cave. It was like a drama filled with joys and sorrows. At the end, the guests left a lonely scene, but the actors on the stage kept playing their roles, and singing their stories. As the main actor waved his sleeves, he sings, I was surprised to find that my feelings weren't visible, but it was because my love was already deep-rooted in my bones. I don't even know where these feelings came from, I just know that they exist. This song was so lingering and incessant, that one can listen to it without end. However, it was such a pity that no one was listening. No one heard. No one knew. Chapter, 157 General Yang We've captured a suspect. The soldiers of the Eastern Wu Kingdom, who were searching the first caves, suddenly came back in a hurry to report. Once Yang Liye heard this, he snorted, only one person. Answering to the general, yes. Yang Liye rubbed his chin and replied, bring that man over here first, and then send someone to search the surrounding area carefully. After receiving their orders, the soldiers hurriedly got up to comply. After a while, they brought back a man, whose hands were tightly tied. One of the soldiers kicked the man's knee, making him fall down and kneel. Yang Liye dismounted, bent down and reached out to pinch the man's chin raising his head and twisting it from left to right. After looking at his face with the help of the firelight, Yang Liye hissed meaningfully, You don't look like a soldier, with such thin skin and tender flesh. Tell me, who are you? Xiao Yuan pretended to be afraid, and while lowering his head, he trembled like a leaf, answering to Darren too, him from a nearby village. I don't know what I have done that offended Darren. Please spare my life. 
Yang Liye retracted his hand and stood up straight. He then paced back and forth around Xiao Yuan, oh, a villager. As far as I know, all the nearby villages have been emptied because of the war. Young brother three, you said that you're a mere villager, but what are you doing walking around this battlefield at night? Hmm. Xiao Yuan, with his head still lowered, replied, Darren, I wanted to take refuge in the western Shu kingdom, so I just happened to pass by here. I didn't expect to cause such a big misunderstanding. Yang Liye paused and nodded his head approvingly, yes, that's reasonable. But, why didn't you bring your relatives with you? Xiao Yuan replied, Darren, I'm on my own. One person eats and the whole family doesn't have to worry for. All right, all right. Yang Liye waved his hand, in that case, let's have a good time. Where's my sword? Xiao Yuan lowered his head even more, have a good time. What does Darren mean by this? Yan Liye smiled and nodded his head, young brother, don't worry. I can kill you with one single slash, you won't feel any pain. A deputy general beside Yang Liye came over with his sword and asked him, General Yang, what if this man is really just a villager? What if he's a villager? I'd rather kill a thousand by mistake than let a suspect go. Yang Liye said with disdain on his face, as his smile turned terrifying. His words were extremely poisonous, and his tone was very vicious. Once he grabbed the sword, he suddenly heard someone yelling report. Coming from the other side. Reporting to the general. We didn't find any other abnormalities around there. The soldier, who had just knelt down with one knee, finished his report when he was suddenly kicked by Yang Liye, who had a fierce look on his face. Yang Liye then started to curse out loud, did you all hear the commotion this man made and you decided to go after him? The soldier was confused by the sudden kick, and even though he answered in time, his voice trembled, they in answering to the general, we thought he was he was an enemy from the southern Yan kingdom, so. Oh. Yang Liye turned back and walked toward Xiao Yuan. He then took a deep breath, squatted in front of Xiao Yuan, and again changed his expression into a smiling face young brother, you are a villager, right? Answering to Darren, yes. Xiao Yuan couldn't finish his sentence when his eyes suddenly narrowed. Yang Liye had raised his sword with one hand and mercilessly stabbed him in one leg. Xiao Yuan violently bowed and fiercely bit his lips, to the point of almost making his lips bleed but in the end, the pain he felt from his lips couldn't relieve the pain coming from his leg. You went away from home, all alone, but you don't have any luggage with you. Are you really a refugee? Yang Lai's tone was relaxed, and his words were also kind of light-hearted, as if he wasn't the one holding a sword still stained with blood. Xiao Yuan gasped several breaths before he could slightly recover, Darren, him really. Yang Liye didn't even hesitate when he slashed Xiao Yuan's leg once again. The cut was so deep, that the bone near his knee was vaguely exposed. A painful scream finally overflowed from Xiao Yuan's throat, unable to suppress it anymore. He then gritted his teeth with such force, that he was covered in sweat. He was in so much pain, that he could no longer say a complete word. Xiao Yuan suddenly was amused. After all his efforts, he thought that he had finally escaped the fate of ending up being tortured to death. However, he didn't expect to end up buried here. In the end, the heavens are so merciless, they just like to play with people. When Yang Liye pulled the sword out of Xiao Yuan's wound, the blood splashed and splattered all over him, but Yang Liye didn't care to wipe the side of his face. When the sword dropped down again, Xiao Yuan's hands were free, and the rope that bound his hands fell to the ground. Yang Liye stood up, and he slowly wiped the blood off the blade with his fingers. Young brother, I've untied you, so why don't you show me the way? I can see that you're a smart man. You should know which way I'm talking about. The pain in his leg was piercing, as Xiao Yuan pinched on his wound, and breathed heavily. He then dry swallowed a mouthful of air, and didn't make a sound. Yang Liye wasn't in a hurry, and as he wiped off the blood from his hand with his sleeve, he began to count slowly. Five, four, three. Yang Liye was unhurriedly counting down the numbers, purposely dragging the word's intonation to make the countdown seem longer. However, it didn't matter how much he dragged saying the numbers, they were only five, 
so it was obvious he would finish counting immediately. At this, Xiao Yuan finally moved. He took a quick breath, as if he was struggling inside his heart, and finally raised his hand hesitantly and slowly pointing in a direction. When Yang Liye looked towards the direction that finger was pointing at, under the vast starry sky, at a road far away, Yang Liye nodded with satisfaction. He then kicked Xiao Yuan, pulled out the dagger hanging on his waist, and pinned Xiao Yuan's hand to the ground, the one that had just pointed a direction. The dagger pierced through Xiao Yuan's palm, and plunged into the earth. The blood and the painful screams penetrated into the soil together, as Xiao Yuan unconsciously grabbed his wrist with his uninjured hand, and slightly curled his body, due to the pain he was feeling. Young brother, please show me the way once more. You should understand the consequences of pointing the wrong way, am I correct? If you point the wrong way, then what it'll do next won't be as simple as cutting out your flesh and stabbing your hand. So, you must show me the right path, and grasp your last chance. Yang Liye played with the dagger in his hand and said slowly, as if he was talking to Xiao Yuan about his family matters. Xiao Yuan put his head against the ground. The rough sand and small stones were hurting his forehead, but he kept it that way, as if that other pain could relieve the pain coming from his palm and leg. In the end, he didn't dare to make a big move because if he moved even for a little bit, then the dagger pinned to the ground piercing his palm would cut his hand even more, and the pain that would follow that action would also increase drastically. Yang Liya expressionlessly looked at the trembling man on the ground. As he stared at him, Xiao Yuan slowly raised his hand again, and pointed in the same direction he pointed a few moments ago. Certainly, there was no doubt. Xiao Yuan's voice was shaking, as if he was crying, and said, I really don't want to die. There's someone that I want to see more than anything. I want to see him again. Yang Liye stared at him without saying a word. After thinking for a while, he turned around, mounted his horse, and led his soldiers towards the direction Xiao Yuan had just pointed at. At that moment, no one knew that the end of the direction pointed by Xiao Yuan, was actually a cliff with no road at all. And, in the opposite direction, Chen Gu was running as fast as he could with Yan Heqing on his back. Xiao Yuan half hugged himself with his uninjured hand, as he kept murmuring to himself, I really, really, really want to see him again. His thin words gradually dissipated in the cold night air, wasted under the three thousand floating worlds five. More often than not, the words you say might not match your actions, and sometimes, you might even talk insincerely six. Chapter, 158 Is General Yang not relieved yet? How long have they been beating him? If they continue to beat him, that man will be killed, right? You're still asking about this when you know how General Yang's temper is. That man will certainly die. TSK, General Yang has been kicking that man's stomach for so long, that sooner or later, he'll end up vomiting blood. Didn't you see how angry General Yang was when he came back just now? He even made his horse step directly over that man's leg. Even if he survives, how can his leg recuperate? He'll be destined to become a cripple for the rest of his life. After all, the Emperor of the Southern Yen Kingdom slipped away from under his nose. Right now, General Yang's temperament is even worse. Sai. Ha. Huh. Where's Xiao Bao? I didn't see him today. Under the starry sky in the wilderness, the morning light in the sky was dim. Yang Liye, who was ruthlessly venting his anger, finally got tired of kicking Xiao Yuan and stood aside to rest for a while. Then, he squatted down in front of Xiao Yuan, pinched his chin, and said, What was it that you wanted to achieve? Was it worth it? Wouldn't it have been better to not lie to me? You wouldn't have been in this situation if you were sincere. Xiao Yuan couldn't hear what Yang Liye was saying to him. After all, his ears were full of lingering hissing sounds. His hands were nailed to the ground with daggers, and the exposed skin of his body was covered with black and purple bruises. Because of the strong beating, almost all of his internal organs were displaced, and the blood he spit out, who knows how many times, had stained his chin and chest. Except for his eyes that could barely see, his whole body was numb with pain, and Xiao Yuan felt that none of his limbs and bones were under his control. Naturally, Yan Liye didn't get an answer. He was filled with anger, 
but he was also tired of beating Xiao Yuan. So he simply stood up, put his arms on his hips, and took a long breath. Then, he reached out and pulled out the dagger from Xiao Yuan's left hand. A faint whimper came from Xiao Yuan's mouth, which was more like he didn't even have the strength to complain about the pain rather than try to suppress a scream. Let me think. Yang Liya grabbed his sleeve with one hand and wiped the blood on the dagger with it. It would be too easy to end your life with just one strike. Would you prefer to bleed to death? Or would you rather have your flesh cut out bit by bit? Maybe I should cut out your flesh, because this way it will hurt even more but, can you even still feel the pain? Hmm. After Yang Liya said this, he used his foot to turn Xiao Yuan over and kicked him in the knee again, hmm? If I ask you something, you have to answer it. Xiao Yuan's knee had been trampled by the horse before, and the bone had long been fractured. At this point, when he was kicked again, he unconsciously shrank up in pain. As a result, his right hand, which was still nailed to the ground by a dagger, was inevitably cut open a bit more. Yang Liya looked at Xiao Yuan laying on the ground, as if he were looking at a dead man, and while doing so, he was playing with the dagger in his hand for a while. Then he finally made a decision, squatted down slowly, gesticulated something, and finally moved his hand towards Xiao Yuan's eyes. Report General Yang Suddenly, a deputy general came to report. He knelt in front of Yang Liya, clasped his fists, and shouted, the rear urgently summoned General Yang back to discuss matters. However, Yang Liya continued to squat irrationally in front of Xiao Yuan. After a while, he finally stood up, patted the dust on his body, and heard the deputy general say, General, we shouldn't be late. We must hurry. Yes, we've already used that trick, so it's time to reorganize the troops and snatch back the towns that were taken away before. Yang Liya muttered to himself. Then he waved at the deputy general, and pointed at Xiao Yuan, find some people and bury him alive. Remember to bury him alive, you hear me? The deputy general nodded and bowed head. Satisfied with the response, Yang Liya squatted down and patted Xiao Yuan's face, young brother, have a nice trip, I want send you. You see, I'm being merciful to you. At least, I didn't let your body be exposed to the wilderness where the wild dogs would eat your flesh, didn't I? Xiao Yuan was still unable to hear anything, when he suddenly felt as if the sky was spinning and struggled to open his eyes to look upward. It was daybreak, and there was no moon nor sun in the sky. There was only one star shining in the east. Xiao Yuan swallowed a mouthful of blood and felt that his body heat and consciousness were being pulled away from his body. At this, Xiao Yuan tried to raise a hand and reach for that lonely star in the sky, but in the end, he could only move his fingers. He then exhausted all the strength he had left to murmur, Yan Ji. After he managed to say that, he fell into the chaos of darkness. A clarification to what the general meant with we already used that trick he most likely meant the trap they put YHQ into, surrounding his army at a cliff. Chapter, 159 When consciousness returned to Xiao Yuan's body again, it took him a while to realize that he was being carried on someone's back. At this, Xiao Yuan struggled to understand what was going on but his head was exploding in pain from a strong headache, and the pain of his injured body, that was numb before, was now devouring him relentlessly. His mouth was bitter and his eyes were blurry. In the end, Xiao Yuan couldn't help moaning in pain. When the man carrying him noticed that Xiao Yuan had regained consciousness, he said, Are you awake? Don't talk, it's better for you to save your strength. Well be in Tao Yuan village soon. You who are you? Xiao Yuan opened his mouth, and of course, he wanted to say more, but right now he was only able to let out a few whispers. The chi and blood in his chest gradually surged up, and he felt the bitter taste of blood on his mouth. There was also more than a trace of the taste of blood, as if he had tried to say anything else, he would have coughed up blood. At this, Xiao Yuan had to shut up. Benefactor, is me. Bao Yinqin. Do you still remember me? The young soldier surnamed Bao was walking as fast as he could, and his feet were quite steady. It took Xiao Yuan a while to remember that name, ah yes. It's you why. Benefactor, several of the soldiers of our eastern Wu kingdom were saved by you in the past, 
do you still remember? How could we let you die like this? So we thought of a way to save you and send you back to Taoyuan village. Bao Inchin explained. But but him already. South coughed before Xiao Yuan finished what he wanted to say, he suddenly began to cough violently. Benefactor, we don't have the heart of a wolf nor the lungs of a dog one. No matter who you're now, you still saved our lives. A drop of kindness should be repaid with a spring too, so please, stop talking and take a good rest. He said, concerned for Xiao Yuan after seeing him cough so violently. Thank you. Xiao Yuan stopped coughing and replied almost whispering. After a long time, he vaguely said, I can't let him down. Can't let down. Thank you. What? What did you say? Bao Inchin couldn't hear Xiao Yuan's last words clearly, since Xiao Yuan had fallen unconscious again. Once he realized this, Bao Inchin didn't dare to waste any more time, and hastened to speed up his pace. When Xiao Yuan woke up again, he saw the sunset on the horizon, making the bamboo shadows look inclined. It hurts, there wasn't a single spot in his body that didn't hurt. He felt a stabbing kind of pain coming from his abdomen, a dull pain coming from his legs, a terrible headache, and a tear-like pain coming from his hands. Xiao Yuan then took a deep breath, when suddenly, a shout exploded right next to his ear, Xiao Ji is awake. A few seconds ago, Xie Chungui was lying on the edge of the bed, with his hands acting as a pillow, taking a nap. When he heard some noise, he woke up and rubbed his eyes as he raised his head to see what was going on, only to see Xiao Yuan with his eyes wide open. At this, he excitedly jumped up and ran outside. Xiao Yuan, on the other hand, couldn't help but be puzzled. Didn't Xie Chengui go to the Western Shu Kingdom for medical treatment? Why is he still acting like a child? Xiao Yuan wanted to speak, but soon he realized that he wasn't able to produce any sound. He then wanted to raise his hand and touch his throat, but when he saw the white cloth wrapped around his injured hand, he stopped midair. After a short while, a group of people entered his room. All of them were familiar faces. Young master, you've suffered. Yang Liuan's face showed how distressed he was. As Xiao Fengyue patted Yang Liuan's back soothingly, he softly said to Xiao Yuan, Don't worry, young master, we will take good care of you until your body heals. Third aunt rubbed her eyes as she kept sobbing, I, I said, Wu Wu Wu, I told you that there isn't any war without any danger. You child, why couldn't you be more careful? You had us worried to death, you know. You better get well soon. Didn't you say that you wanted to eat auntie's braised pork, roasted chicken and marinated duck? How can you eat all that if you don't get well soon? Lin Shenling supported third aunt and told her not to be too sad. Zhang Baizhu, who has always been heartless, when he saw Xiao Yuan's tragic state, his eyes turned red, didn't you say that you'll be my baby's godfather? You better get well soon, I want you to help me organize the one-month banquet three, you have to attend. Xiao Yuan tried to smile at them, but because he was under an immeasurable amount of pain, his smile was distorted, startling everyone present, where does it hurt? What's wrong? Why are you showing such a horrible expression? Then, a wide and warm palm caressed the top of Xiao Yuan's head. When Xiao Yuan raised his eyes to look at the owner of that hand, he pouted at his shifu. Zhang Changsong, who has always been a grumpy man, and was rarely amiable, patted Xiao Yuan's head with tenderness. Then he stroked his white beard, and said, If you don't die after a great disaster, then you'll be blessed in the future. Rest well and don't worry, because we're all here for you. There's nothing to be worried about. For some reason, Xiao Yuan suddenly felt as if all the pain he felt in his body had greatly diminished. Remember the Eastern Wu soldier XYA saved a while ago? The one that had a feminine name? He's our BBY Bois savior. Chapter 160 Xiao Yuan made a few sounds, and Zhang Changsong half guessed what he meant Are you trying to ask why you can't talk? Xiao Yuan nodded his head. Zhang Changsong replied, You have internal injuries. Your qi is disorganized and is pressing against your throat. Since your chest and lungs are wounded, if you try to speak, your chest will tighten, and you will be short of breath which will make you cough, and even breathing would bring you pain. 
I have prescribed medicine for you. This medicine will make you temporarily unable to speak, but you don't have to worry. After some time, when your body has slightly recovered, you won't need to keep taking this medicine, and you'll be able to speak normally again. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized something as his eyes fell on Xie Chen Gui, who was playing on the side, and made some sounds at Yang Liuan and Xiao Fengyue. Yang Liuan rubbed the back of his head, unable to understand what Xiao Yuan wanted. But since Xiao Fengyue was more perceptive than him, he immediately understood what Xiao Yuan was trying to ask them, Young master, do you want to ask about Chen Gui? And why is he sometimes depressed, and sometimes acting like a child? Originally, Liuan and I took Chen Gui to the Western Shu Kingdom to look for a miracle physician. That miracle physician said that Chen Gui's obsession and resentment was too deep, and that if he were to recover consciousness, he might collapse. The miracle physician told us that we should let Chen Gui live the rest of his life as a child. Xiao Fengyue then sighed helplessly. Xiao Yuan nodded his head, and looked back at Xie Chen Gui again. The twenty-year-old young man was standing in front of the window, observing the afterglow coming from the window. The sunset looked like melting gold, and as the dust flew in front of the sunlight, the young man curiously reached out his hand, letting the golden glow fall on his palm. The glow was slightly hot and bright, making the young man giggle, just like an innocent child, extremely carefree. Xiao Yuan's eyes were bitter as he retracted his gaze, and sobbed something unintelligible to the crowd. However, this time, no one could guess what he tried to say. Xiao Yuan, MHNN, Wa, Buhu. Third Ant, What? Do you want to eat? But physician Zhang said that you shouldn't eat greasy food ah. Xiao Yuan shook his head, Wawa. Lin Shenling said, Is Xiao Gongzi thirsty? Xiao Yuan shook his head again. Zhang Baizhu clasped his hands and said, Why don't we give him a pen and let him write? Zhang Changsong glared at him, Look at his hands. If he writes, the wounds on his hands will tear open again. He's not allowed to write. Xiao Yuan, Wu Wu. Does your body hurt somewhere? Does the bedding feel uncomfortable? Is it too hot? Are you feeling cold? Neither. Ah, uh, I can't guess. Zhang Baizhu suddenly smashed his fist, and his tone was very certain, I know. Everyone looked at him in unison. Zhang Baizhu proudly said, Xiao Yuan. He. Everyone, he. Zhang Baizhu sank his chi into his Dan Tian one as he shouted word by word, he. Must. Be. Having. One. Of. The. Three. Urgency two. Xiao Yuan. If it weren't because Xiao Yuan's body wouldn't allow him to, he would have jumped up from the bed at this moment to choke Zhang Baizhu, shaking him back and forth. Three urgency my ass. Who will send a letter to Yan Heqing for me? Letting him know that I'm not dead ah. It wasn't until the eleventh day that Xiao Yuan was able to speak. After he struggled to express what he wanted to say, Xiao Fengyue and Yang Liuan looked at each other, both unable to speak for a while. Yang Liuan finally couldn't help himself as he spoke, Young master, why do you? Why did you have to put yourself in such a situation, because of Yan Heqing? You used to be why do you have to treat yourself like this? Xiao Yuan, what? Imperial bodyguard Yang. What kind of sadistic and deep love drama are you imagining right now? Xiao Fengyue immediately sighed afterwards, however, he didn't try to persuade him. Xiao Yuan looked at the expression on their faces, and felt that the current version of himself in their eyes, should be close to the Scum Gong X Cheap Show 3 relationship in a Cheap Show novel. In this scenario, even though his dignity was humiliated, he was still unable to let go of that Scum Gong. Unable to forget about him, even after years had passed, and in order to get in contact with him again, he had taken the place of Zhang Changsong as a military physician. Now, when he was finally saved from an incident, he was quickly trying to shamelessly send that scum gong a letter. Xiao Yuan tried to explain, Yan Ji is not what you think. Xiao Feng Yue sighed, and Yang Liuan knitted his eyebrows. Xiao Yuan continued, I'm quite happy with him really. Xiao Fengjia's face was unforgiving, so he lowered his head. 
Yang Liuan, on the other hand, sighed and looked at the sky in grief. Can you two stop being like this? Can you stop acting like you two are sad and angry? So, in the end, my own words have become empty and unconvincing. If I don't show him properly, you two would never know how capable my Yan Ji is. Chapter 161 Even though they couldn't tolerate it, Yang Liuan and Xiao Feng Yue always tried their best to do what Xiao Yuan wanted. In the end, Xiao Feng Yue said, Young master, they're still fighting on the front lines, and it won't be easy to send a letter to the barracks. Moreover, the front line is so dangerous that no one is willing to deliver a letter at this time. Not to mention that this Yan Heqing, or the Emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom, given his status, how could he care about letters from an unknown source? Xiao Yuan's face immediately wrinkled into a bitter expression. Yang Liuan, who had previously sold salt, knew some merchants who had contacts, so he comforted Xiao Yuan and said, Don't worry, young master, I know someone who can send a letter to the barracks. However, I don't know if they can be delivered to Yan Heqing, and it will also take some time for him to get here. Xiao Yuan's eyes brightened as he said anxiously, It's good enough if they're able to send the letter. How long will it take for him to come here? Yang Liuan replied, It might take several months. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but clutch the bedding, several months ah. Send him a letter, we have to ask him. The next day, Xiao Feng Yue wrote a letter for Xiao Yuan, and sent it to Yang Liuan's friend. This was the beginning. Then, Xiao Yuan was longing for the stars and the moon one, waiting two whole months, hoping for any news to arrive. By then, his injuries began to heal little by little, and his internal injuries also slowly recovered under Zhang Changsong's care. However, Xiao Yuan was still unable to leave the bed. His kneecap was crushed by Yang Lai's horse, and even though it said that it takes 100 days for a broken bone to recover, his condition was very serious. Xiao Yuan waited for another 10 days, and finally, Dong Liuan's friend arrived. That friend boldly sat down on the stool, took a bowl for himself, and filled it with cold water. Then, he asked, who's the one that wants to deliver a letter? That would be me. What is it? Can you deliver it? Xiao Yuan sat up straight as he leaned his body forward, and asked in a hurry. Oh, alas. Hey, do you even know who you're trying to send that letter to? The friend waved his hand at Xiao Yuan with a look of disgust, but after feeling like his words were unreliable, he said instead, after all, Yang Liuan is my friend, and this matter will also give me a good reward. So, to tell you the truth, I can send that letter to the Southern Yen Barracks. However, since you want that letter to be delivered to the Emperor himself, ah that's too difficult. You may not know this, but rumors say that the Emperor of the Southern Yen Kingdom has fallen into madness. Xiao Yuan's heart suddenly thumped, what does that mean? Yang Liuan's friend replied, you may not know, but ten days ago, the southern Yan kingdom won the war and invaded the eastern Wu kingdom. This Yan Heqing, Sai, seemed like he was possessed by a demon, and became extremely cruel. In the end, the eastern Wu general Yang, TSK TSK, died a miserable death. People say that Yan Heqing cut him into a human stick, and others say that his flesh was cut open with a sword ten thousand times. But it's also said that he simply took a type of poison that made his skin itch irritably, making him scratch himself to death. Anyway, in the end, his body was dismembered. His head was hung outside the city gate, exposed to the wind and sun, and the rest of his body was left in the wilderness to be eaten by wild dogs. Not a single part of his body was left intact. That general's subordinates were almost slaughtered by the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom as well. So, tell me, given the current temperament of the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom, wouldn't it be extremely impressive if I were able to send a letter to the barracks? Xiao Yuan covered his face with one hand, and his shoulders trembled slightly. He then gasped heavily until he could calm down. After that, he looked up to Yang Liuan's friend, and said, If you can't deliver the letter directly to the Emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom, then who will take this letter? Yang Liuan's friend touched his chin, tilted his head, raised his feet and said, I can't really guarantee you that. Bull knows the horses too, but the horse itself has to be a fine steed 3, am I wrong? As for commoners like us, who will never leave our towns in a lifetime, 
how can we have the opportunity to contact such a famous figure? If you really want to reach such a high and powerful person, you must have a token at least, right? Yang Liuan's friend wanted to let Xiao Yuan know the difficulties and back down, but contrary to what he thought, Xiao Yuan's eyes brightened up instead, a token. I do have one. YHQ conquered the Eastern Wu Kingdom. And look at that, what a coincidence that the one being tortured to death wasn't the Emperor of the Eastern Wu Kingdom, but. Chapter, 162. After Xiao Yuan said that, he gestured at Xiao Fengyue, who was by his side. When he saw this, Xiao Fengyue understood immediately and grabbed a wooden box. Yang Liuan's friend thought to himself, what? A treasure? Am I really going to be so lucky, and get to see the Emperor of the Southern Yin Kingdom? At this thought, he couldn't help but stretch his neck straight to see what was inside the box, only to see that there was a white jade hairpin. That jade hairpin was broken and glued back together. When he saw that the joints were rough and ugly, he couldn't understand what was the mystery behind it. Xiao Yuan took the white jade hairpin from the wooden box, and as he remembered the past, he sighed bitterly. When he took the white jade hairpin, he rubbed it carefully for a while, fondly touching Yan Heqing's characters engraved on the hairpin. As Xiao Yuan's gaze was fixed on those engraved characters, the corners of his mouth rose slowly. After a while, Xiao Yuan had finally seen enough, and reluctantly printed a kiss on the Yan character. Then he put it back in the wooden box, and handed it to Yang Liuan's friend, here. This is my token. This way, you can deliver the letter to the Emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom. All right. Yang Liuan's friend was a reliable person, so he put away the wooden box, and said, if this token is useful, then I will be able to deliver the letter directly to the Emperor. However, my friend, you may also have to wait patiently for a while. Xiao Yuan said, Ah. How long will I have to wait? Why? Yang Liuan's friend then stood up and said, The Eastern Wu Kingdom has just been conquered by the Southern Yan Kingdom. Now this land is a great big country and a small country. The Emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom has just won a war, so he must give a feast for his army to celebrate the victory. So how could he have the time to focus on other things? Anyways, he'll deliver the letter for you, don't worry. All right, let's stop talking, he'll be going. After saying that, Yang Liuan's friend clasped his fist, and left with the token given by Xiao Yuan. A few days later, in order to celebrate the victory, the southern Yan kingdom had set up a banquet in the imperial city of the former eastern Wu kingdom. Originally, that day everyone should have sung a song of triumph and celebrated with the local people. However, the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom unexpectedly left without saying a word. Dressed in white, he rode alone for thousands of miles, passing through the mountains and crossing over the sea. These past few days, Xiao Yuan was being taken care of by everyone, to the point where his bones became idle and limp. One day, Third Ant cooked a nourishing porridge, purposely letting it cool before bringing it to Xiao Yuan. At this, Xiao Yuan couldn't help but howl, Auntie. I wasn't beaten to the point of becoming a cripple. At this rate, I'm going to be spoiled rotten by you guys. Third Ant even went tisk a few times before saying, At such a young age you don't even know what you're talking about. What nonsense are you saying? You're not ruined. Tsk 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 as soon as she said this, Xie Chengui ran in from the courtyard and rushed over. He was holding a sugar-coated fruit on a stick, and as he raised it, waving it back and forth, he said, Xiao Ji Yi. Look, it's Sugar Fulu 3. After saying that, and without waiting for Xiao Yuan to answer, Xie Chengui ran out of the wing room again to show off his sugar fruit to the others. Xiao Yuan felt inexplicably worried and heartbroken, to the point in which he didn't know what to say. When third aunt looked at his face, she said, in the past, when Chen Gui used to return to his senses, he would be in constant pain, so this outcome isn't necessarily a bad thing. Everyone in Taoyuan village are kind-hearted and simple, so no one would laugh at him and call him dumb. He simply sleeps when he's feeling tired, he eats when he's hungry, and if he's unhappy, he would simply cry. Everything will be all right. Mm -hmm. Xiao Yuan nodded but the sadness pressed deep inside his heart hadn't dispersed at all. All right, all right. 
don't think about it anymore. Third aunt couldn't bear to watch him like this and persuaded him to eat, drink the porridge quickly before it gets cold. After Xiao Yuan finished his porridge, third aunt took good care of him. Xiao Yuan thought that it wasn't good for him to go on like this, and that he wasn't living up to his identity as a disciplined fourth-generation CEO of the 21st century. So the next day, when Zhang Changsong came to feel Xiao Yuan's pulse, Xiao Yuan kept asking him if he could get out of bed and go for a walk. In the end, Zhang Changsong couldn't stand Xiao Yuan repeating the same question over and over again, so he asked Zhang Baizhu to cut two wooden sticks for Xiao Yuan to use as crutches. Xiao Yuan is the restless type, so the moment he received those crutches, he immediately got off the bed. Even though his knee was still vaguely aching, most of his body had already healed. Since Xiao Yuan didn't want to trouble other people, he walked back and forth inside the small courtyard with the crutches. Everyone advised Xiao Yuan to slowly recuperate and recover from his injuries, but how could they know that Xiao Yuan's heart was anxiously hoping that his body would hurry up and get better sooner? In case Yang Liuan's friend wasn't able to deliver the white jade hairpin to Yan Heqing in person, then he will have to go to Yan Heqing himself. After all, he made Yan Heqing wait for him too long, he cannot afford to make him wait any longer. Xiao Yuan limped for a while until he began to feel pain in his leg. Since he couldn't stand it anymore, he sat by the stone mill and massaged his knee. After taking a long breath, he rested his chin against the crutches, tilted his head, and looked at the silky clouds floating in the sky. I wonder what Yan Jie is doing right now Xiao Yuan muttered with a long sigh. As if he had regained some strength, he stood up without fear of the upcoming pain, wanting to continue walking a few more rounds. It was an early autumn day, the western breeze was cool on its own, and the wudong tree dropped its leaves in the courtyard. Without the wetness of the spring, and without the dryness of summer, it's said that the days of autumn are cool and pleasant. Suddenly, Xiao Yuan heard the sound of horse hooves approaching from a distance. The sound was so urgent and fast that it crashed right into Xiao Yuan's heart. At this, Xiao Yuan immediately turned his head to look at the distance, and his eyes widened for a moment as his shoulders began to tremble uncontrollably. The man didn't even have the time to stop his horse, so he simply turned over and landed on the ground. The horse tilted his head and bumped its head against the wall outside the courtyard. It took a while to stabilize its pace as it swung its tail and stomped his hooves with dissatisfaction. Xiao Yuan threw away his crutches as he stumbled towards that man. However, before he could even walk two steps, Xiao Yuan was tightly hugged by that man so tight that he wished he could blend into his blood and bones, so that they would never be apart from each other, for the rest of their lives. Xiao Yuan hugged him back as he raised the corners of his mouth, laughing happily that some tears began to fall down from his eyes, Yan Ji. I missed you so much. For the past few months I've been constantly thinking about how to find you. Yan Ji, you know I'm sick. I can't sleep without anyone around me at night. After so many years, instead of being cured, I've been getting worse. I can't sleep without you anymore. If I can't sleep then I won't be in a good mood, and I can't eat if I'm not in a good mood. If you're not with me, maybe someday you'll suddenly die because of this sickness. Yan Ji, did you hear me? The arms of Yan He Ching that were holding Xiao Yuan were trembling slightly. As he nodded slowly, his voice was already a bit choked with sobs, yes, I heard you. Xiao Yuan then continued, Yan Ji, I'm sorry for always making you wait. You've even been waiting for such a long time, and you even had to look for me everywhere. I really owe you too much love. In that case, it'll compensate you, alright? It'll compensate you for the rest of my life. Ah wait, it'll compensate you for the rest of my next life as well, alright? Al, all right. Yan Ji, I love you. Xiao Yuan wanted to point to heaven and earth and say this sentence three times, but as soon as he said it the first time, Yan He Ching had already blocked his mouth with his own. As the heat gushed out of his chest, his unspoken words intertwined between their lips and tongues. The autumn breeze is clear, and the autumn moon is bright for. There's so much tenderness in the world, and now, they are all in Xiao Yuan's arms. How sad we were when we were apart, and how happy we will be when we meet each other again. I wish to be like the swallows on the beam, 
so that we can see each other all the time. 5. Chapter, 163. When Third Aunt gently pushed open the door of the wing room, bringing medicine, she saw Xiao Yuan sitting beside the bed, looking at Yan Heqin, who was sleeping peacefully. Xiao Yuan had a smile on his face, it was like the sun at dawn, and the exquisite breeze of the morning. In order to get here as soon as possible, Yan Heqing didn't sleep for several days and nights, but in the end, his body couldn't withstand such exhaustion. So at this time, when he finally arrived, he was able to rest and sleep soundly beside a familiar presence. Third aunt, while holding the medicine bowl in her hand, went forward and patted Xiao Yuan's shoulder, saying in a low voice, Yuan, why aren't you in bed? Quickly, go to the other bed and lie down. Your own body hasn't fully recuperated yet, how can you be foolishly wandering around? Xiao Yuan gestured at her and said, Auntie, I'm fine. I'm not tired, and I don't feel any pain. Since third aunt knew that it wasn't easy for these two kids to see each other again, she didn't try to persuade him too much. She simply handed over the bowl with the medicine to Xiao Yuan, then you should drink the medicine while it's still hot. Xiao Yuan nodded, took the medicine bowl, and drank it all. Third aunt then put away the bowl, advised him two more times that he should rest, and then walked out of the wing room, gently closing the door behind her. Xiao Yuan pouted, trying to swallow the bitter taste in his mouth left behind by the medicine, when his eyes fell on Yan Heqing's face. After thinking about it, he leaned down and stole a kiss, suddenly feeling that his mouth wasn't bitter anymore, and instead, it was replaced by a sweet taste. Xiao Yuan touched his chin with one hand, and tilted his head. Suddenly, an idea came to him. When the tyrannical president woke up early in the morning, only to see his wife lying next to him this must be how he's feeling right now. Hmm. This man's taste is unexpectedly damn sweet. President Xiao put his hands on his legs, while thinking when will his wife wake up. Then, he planned on continuing kissing his wife, but as soon as he raised his eyes, he saw that Yan Heqing had opened his eyes, and was looking at him. Ah, did I wake you up? Xiao Yuan hurriedly put down his hand. Yan Heqing shook his head, I've slept enough. After saying that, Yan Heqing moved inside the bed, and stretched out a hand to Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan, who was quite feisty just now, coughed lightly. When he lay down on his side, he rolled into Yan Heqing's arms, being comfortably held as he leaned against Yan Heqing's chest. Yan Heqing, who had just woken up, was still a little bit confused as closed his eyes, then kissed Xiao Yuan's temples and eyebrows. After a long while passed, he asked, Does your body hurt? Xiao Yuan laughed, No, I don't feel any pain. After a long time passed, Yan Heqing replied with a hum. He closed his eyes in a trance as he began to kiss Xiao Yuan's forehead again, but this time, Xiao Yuan tilted his head, directing his mouth to him. The lingering kiss had the bitter taste of traditional Chinese medicine, and when the kiss ended, Yan Heqing was finally completely awake. Xiao Yuan then said, Yan Ji, I think this scene feels kind of familiar. Hmm. Ah. It was that time, in the imperial bedchamber in the northern kingdom, where you were dazed while on the imperial bed. At that moment, you wanted to choke me to death as soon as you woke up. Xiao Yuan deliberately emphasized the words choking to death. Yan Heqing. At that time I. At that time you wanted to kill me, hmm. There's no mercy under your hands. You just wanted me dead. Aren't we grown men? There's nothing to be bothered about. Let's just settle the score. How do we settle it? Xiao Yuan saw how easily Yan Heqing fell on his trap. He was so proud that his tail was up in the sky one. As he stretched his legs towards Yan Heqing, he said, The first time we do it, you have to restrain yourself, and, can we not do it all night? Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan continued, It's settled then. After he said that, Xiao Yuan showed a smug expression. However, as a result, Yan Heqing stretched out his hand and tapped on Xiao Yuan's spine, where his invisible tail should be. Then Yan Heqing started to rub not so lightly anymore, causing Xiao Yuan to feel a shiver travel around his body. Yan Heqing came closer to Xiao Yuan's earlobe and licked it carefully. At this, 
Xiao Yuan immediately felt his body burning up. Then Yan Heqin said in a low and provocative tone of voice, Then, will we do it all night, without any restraint, except for the first time? Xiao Yuan. No. Yan Heqin fell down, next to Xiao Yuan's ear, and laughed softly. He laughed so much that his waist went soft. Xiao Yuan thought, What the fuck? I, at least, had studied the path of the tyrannical president. But, how come the one who ends up jumping right into the trap is always me? No, no, I can't be passive. At this, President Xiao said, You, you, you don't laugh. I dash, I, I will recite the party constitution. If you can't restrain yourself in the future, then. Ill. Recite. The party. Constitution. Yan He Ching, block it. 2. Xiao Yuan then memorized a paragraph and recited it. Yan He Ching. Xiao Yuan's original plan failed, but then, he came up with another one, wait. I've another way. I also know the great compassion mantra. 3. Yan He Ching. The great what? Xiao Yuan then recited a mantra for a while, and when he was done, he asked Yan He Ching, do you feel like a Bodhi tree, or that your heart is as clear as a mirror? Do you still have those thoughts on your mind? Yan He Ching, yes, there's only one left. Xiao Yuan, one. No way, even after my perfect recited mantra. So, you are unable to convert into a Buddhist? Yan He Ching, no. Xiao Yuan, then what is the thought inside your mind? Yan He Ching, I want to hold you until you faint. Xiao Yuan. Hey, all right. Bring it on. Xiao Yuan was ready to throw himself into Yan He Ching's arms, when suddenly, there was a knock on the door of the wing room. The knocking sounds were three short ones, and one long. Then, Zhang Changsong's old but spiritual voice came from the other side of the door, the kidney is the master of dormancy, and is also the foundation of hiding, sealing, and storing the essence. Besides that, daytime lustful activities are. The internal activities would make the patient lose his essence, and if the essence is emptied, the kidneys will suffer, and the patient would become weak. 4. Chapter, 164. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but shout. Shifu, you're kidding, right? Zhang Changsong replied slowly, Hmm, young people are energetic, so there's no need to worry. Xiao Yuan, Shifu, are you taking revenge on me for eating your candied fruit? Zhang Changsong, Humph. I'm not that stingy. Do you want me to keep checking on your pulse? Don't you want to get well? While they talked, Yan He Ching had already got up and got dressed. Then, he went to open the door, since Xiao Yuan wanted to do it himself, but Yan He Ching had pressed him back to bed, wrapping him tightly with the bedding. Zhang Changsong stroked his white beard as he walked in with a medicine box. Once he sat down, he took out a small pillow and patted it under Xiao Yuan's wrist to check on his pulse. For a while, Zhang Changsong remained silent as he frowned slightly. Xiao Yuan chuckled, Shifu, don't make a face as if I won't be able to survive. Zhang Changsong glared at Xiao Yuan as he angrily pushed his hand forward, put away the small pillow, and replied with anger, not able to survive. If you can't survive this, won't you be insulting my reputation? Xiao Yuan replied, then I'll have to get better quickly, so that I won't ruin my Shifu's reputation. Zhang Changsong gave him a blank stare, and asked, are you still feeling pain in your knee these days? Xiao Yuan secretly glanced at Yan He Ching, who was standing aside, and replied, it doesn't hurt anymore. Zhang Changsong rolled up the medical book and smacked Xiao Yuan on his wrist, nonsense. If you don't say the truth, how can I cure you? Xiao Yuan, it hurts a little bit, not much. Zhang Changsong wasn't in the mood to call out the nonsense Xiao Yuan was saying. When he simply pressed Xiao Yuan's knee gently, Xiao Yuan immediately stiffed his smile, and secretly clenched the bedding. At this reaction, Zhang Changsong understood his level of pain, withdrew his hand, and asked, Are you drinking the right dose of internal medicine? Have you been applying the external medicine on alternate days? Xiao Yuan nodded his head, Yes, yes, yes. 
I do both. Zhang Changsong then said as he packed up his things, All right, you're recovering fine. You just need to rest well these days, stretch your arms and move your waist. But you can't walk all the time. Xiao Yuan, yes, Shifu, it'll do as you say. Zhang Changsong stood up with the medicine box on his back, and said to Yan Heqing, Yan Gongzi, can I talk to you? Xiao Yuan was surprised, Shifu, is there something you want to ask him? Could it be that you want Yan Ji to propose marriage? Shifu, I understand, I'm in a hurry too. However, Yan Ji traveled all the way here alone, and he didn't bring anything, so you shouldn't make him lose face. Zhang Changsong rarely didn't pretend to be angry at Xiao Yuan's imprudent words, but this time he simply glanced at him, and said, if he wants to propose marriage, then he won't be asking me. All right, I have to talk with Yen Gongzi about some serious matters. Then, Yan Heqing and Zhang Changsong walked out of the wing room together, and closed the door behind them. Zhang Changsong then asked softly, Yen Gongzi, I apologize to ask this but, are you and Yuan? Yan Heqing guessed what Zhang Changsong was going to ask, so he nodded his head, and replied, yes. Zhang Changsong immediately understood, and said, Yuan is always talking nonsense and loves to joke around so much that old me hasn't been interested in believing it. However, since Yan Gongzi has given me an honest reply, then indeed I wasn't mistaken. In this case, Yan Gongzi, regarding Yuan's body health matters I don't want to lie to you, Yuan's leg may develop into the root of a disease. Yan Heqing's eyes darkened, as the hand hanging on his side slightly clenched in a fist, the root of a disease? Zhang Changsong sighed, and replied, I don't dare to say too much now. In any case, I'd better let you know about this first. But, there's one more thing. Zhang Changsong's face suddenly became a little uneasy. His fist touched his lips as he coughed lightly, and his eyes were wandering around, there's also another thing about Yuan's body, it's. Well, you two can't have sex yet. He's too weak, he has a deficiency of qi and blood, which means that his internal injuries are prone to re-emerge. Yen He Ching. I understand. I've troubled you. Zhang Changsong could see that Yen He Ching was a decent person. After having this conversation, he didn't have any more to say, so he bid his farewell, and left. Yen He Ching calmed his emotions and pushed open the door of the wing room. When he walked in, he saw that Xiao Yuan wasn't lying down, but was sitting on the bed cross-legged with a quilt over his legs. When he saw that Yan Heqing was about to say something to him, Xiao Yuan waved his hand, and was the first one to speak, I've been lying down every day for the past few days, to the point that I'm already tired of lying here. I might as well sit than move around, this way you'll be relaxing my muscles and bones, but it'll be more comfortable. Yan Heqing didn't reply, and simply walked to the bed. Once he reached the bedside, Xiao Yuan smiled at him, and asked, What did my Shifu say to you? Nothing, he just said that he'll have to take good care of you. Yan Heqing's voice stopped abruptly. While Yan Heqing was talking just now, Xiao Yuan had put down his crossed legs and touched Yan Heqing's lower thigh with the tip of his toes, as if nothing was wrong. Yan Heqing took a step back quietly, and asked, do you want to drink some water? Xiao Yuan was stupefied for a long time. Then, he replied, Ah. What? Water? No, I don't want to. Yan Heqing nodded his head, You can rest for a while, it's almost time for dinner. I'll go see if Auntie needs any help. After he said that, Yan Heqing turned around, and walked out of the wing room with hurried steps. Suddenly abandoned, Xiao Yuan sat on his bed scratching his head with confusion. As he recrossed his legs, he supported his head on one hand, and thought to himself, it seems that the 21st century style doesn't work on Yan Ji. Come on. The tyrannical president route was already useless, and now, is the act of the seductive president also useless? Perhaps I should ask him about his Marxist principles one. That may be somewhat useful. Xiao Yuan then muttered to himself out loud, how could he hold back? It seems like he's preparing for the night. As he said, he covered his head with the quilt and lied on his back, wrapping himself into a ball with the quilt. Then, he closed his eyes, and went to sleep. Chapter, 
165. When Yan Heqin walked out of the wing room, he sat down on the cold stone steps for a long time. It wasn't until sunset that he got up and went towards the kitchen, which was filled with a white mist, and emitted the tempting smell of food. As Third Aunt lifted the big wooden lid on the iron pot and bent down to stir-fry the vegetables, she saw Yen Heqin coming, and enthusiastically said, Yen Gongzi, you've come right in time. Go and call you on for dinner. Yen Heqin replied with a yes, but just when he was about to turn around, a person suddenly ran in. That person shouted in an exaggerated voice, Wow! Auntie, it smells so good. My mouth is drooling. Huh? Who is this? As Xie Chengui stood beside third aunt, he bit his finger and looked at Yen Heqin strangely, A stranger, how can there be a stranger in our house? Third aunt hurriedly replied, He's not a stranger, and you can call him Yen Jie. Before Xie Chengui could reply, Yen Heqin suddenly said, he can't call me like that. Because the white vapor emerged from the boiling pot, overflowing the whole kitchen, third aunt wasn't able to see Yan Heqing's expression clearly. The only thing she was able to see was the setting sun shining in from the outside, showing the flying dust that was present everywhere, ah. Uh, why? Yan Heqing was silent for a long time before he said, it would be humiliating for him. Xie Chun Gui, who was stuck in a childish nature, naturally didn't care about what the two of them were saying. He simply took a chicken leg from the stove and chewed happily. Third aunt was at a loss for words as she stood frozen in place, until she heard Yen He Ching saying that Hell Go call Xiao Yuan for dinner. After he said that, he turned around, and left. Oh, dear. Third aunt patted herself on the head and then took a clean cloth to wipe Xie Changui's mouth, slowly, eat slowly. There's no need to rush, once you're done eating, auntie will cook another one for you. Mmm. Xie Chengui smiled very cheerfully. It was night, the insects were chirping, and the moon was setting. But Xiao Yuan couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep because he didn't understand how Yan Heqing could fall asleep. Xiao Yuan thought to himself, should I be relieved that Yan Heqing fell asleep after spending the whole day feeling anxious about the night activities? He simply fell asleep, just like that. Asleep? He's also sleeping on the bed close to mine, he's not sleeping with me. He even has his back facing me. If it weren't because the mere thought of it was impossible, Xiao Yuan would begin to doubt whether Yan Heqing had cheated on him with a random woman outside. However, Xiao Yuan suddenly had an epiphany. Maybe Yan Ji wants to perform a night attack. Yes. It's a night attack. If that's the case, I wonder if I should cooperate properly. Xiao Yuan tightened the blanket, pretending to be asleep, and then he really fell asleep. He comfortably slept until dawn. Wait a minute. I slept till dawn. What? What's going on? What happened to the night the night attack? Xiao Yuan thought that Yan Heqing might not be ready yet, so he patiently waited for another day. In the end, the following night Yan Heqing watched him drink the medicine, took the empty bowl, and went out. When he came back, he extinguished the candlelight, and lied on the bed next to Xiao Yuan's. Xiao Yuan couldn't stand it anymore. He got up, lit the candle, and said, Yan Ji, you're not even trying to kill this chicken with a knife. You're just waving it back in front, right before the chicken's eyes, because you don't want it to have a good time one, right? Yan Heqing knew that sooner or later Xiao Yuan would have asked about it, so he simply turned over, sat up on the bed, and told him the truth, your body won't be able to stand it. Xiao Yuan's eyes widened, who's unable to stand it? Who's claiming that a man can't stand it? Who said that? Believe it or not, I will fight with him. Physician Zhang. Then he'll fight with Zhang Baizhu. Xiao Yuan then said wistfully, Yan Ji Yi, I'm not in a hurry, it's just I wonder why every time there's an opportunity to do it, it doesn't work out. Every. Single. Time. At that, Yan He Qin got up from his bed and sat beside Xiao Yuan. He then gently touched Xiao Yuan's hair, lifted his chin, and planted a kiss on the corner of Xiao Yuan's mouth, well wait for your body to recover, and then. Alright. After all, 
it would be so humiliating if I were to pass out. Xiao Yuan said. Yan Heqing slightly raised the corner of his mouth for a brief moment. When he was about to go back to his bed, Xiao Yuan grabbed his clothes, and said, Yan Jie, don't go over there, just sleep here with me. Yan Heqing thought about it for a second, blew out the candle, and laid down beside Xiao Yuan stretching out his arm to embrace Xiao Yuan and protect him in his arms. Since it was still early, it was inevitable to start a small conversation. Xiao Yuan couldn't stop himself from asking, Yan Jie, did you think that I was dead? Surrounded by darkness, Yan Heqing's body became stiff. Xiao Yuan hurriedly reached out to pat his back, and gently caressed him. Yan Heqing's body gradually relaxed, no. Because I didn't find your corpse. Xiao Yuan was surprised at this, you searched for my corpse. Yan Heqing hummed and said, they said that you were buried alive, so I dug up that piece of land for Ten Li too. Your body wasn't anywhere, so I didn't believe that you were dead. Xiao Yuan was unable to speak when he heard this. He simply reached out and hugged Yan Heqing tightly. Yan Heqing stroked his hair, and placed his chin against Xiao Yuan's forehead, go to sleep. I hope you'll have sweet dreams. That night, a strong wind blew. That wind hit against the window, and lifted the withered yellow leaves off the tree's branches. However, this wind wasn't able to blow away the warmth surrounding Xiao Yuan. The next morning, Xiao Yuan woke up before Yan Heqing. As he moved his body, he felt how his consciousness was slowly returning to his four limbs. However, at that moment, Xiao Yuan felt that something was wrong. As he moved his body, the wrongness became even more obvious, to the point in which he couldn't ignore it anymore. Even though his body was still pretty much injured, as a man with no erectile dysfunction, Xiao Yuan knew that many men had the issue of finding themselves with an early problem. Yan Heqing's hand was still around his waist, maintaining a protective pose, and Xiao Yuan cursed inside his mind. Filled with embarrassment, he slightly moved backwards. Unexpectedly, as soon as he moved, Yan Heqing opened his eyes. Xiao Yuan was completely dumbfounded, frozen in place, as his heartbeat sounded like a loud drum. The sound was so loud that it could almost tear his eardrums apart. The part where YHQ doesn't want XCG to call him Yan Ji isn't BC he just wants XYA to call him like that which giving his status, XYA is the only one allowed anyways but BC he recognized XCG. And he knows that ITLL be humiliating for XCG to call his enemy GE, given that his army killed all his friends and was the reason behind LWD's death. Chapter 166 Yan Heqing didn't understand what was wrong at first, but they were very close to each other, so as long as one moved a little, everything could be detected by the slightest move. So, Yan Heqing quickly moved his eyes to Xiao Yuan's crotch. Xiao Yuan blushed deeply as he placed his hands against Yan Heqing's chest, Yan, Yan, Yan Yan Ji Il, I, I'll take care of it. When Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan was about to get up, Yan Heqing turned over and pressed Xiao Yuan on the bed. Then, he said, I'll help you. Before Xiao Yuan could say wait a minute. His belt had already been taken off by Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan was only wearing a pair of thin undergarments, the front piece of his undergarment was half opened, revealing his chest, which was as bright and clean as white jade. Even though the clothes on his body were gradually being stripped away, Xiao Yuan felt that his whole body was burning, as if he was thrown inside a stove. Xiao Yuan admitted defeat as he tilted his head away, which was immediately turned back by Yan Heqing pinching his chin. Yan Heqing looked at those bright eyes, lowered his head, and kissed him gently. Xiao Yuan, who had to close his eyes because they were kissing, suddenly felt that Yan Heqing's palm was rubbing his chest. The pressure wasn't light nor too heavy, and it made him feel lightheaded and numb. Of course, only the hard lower part of Xiao Yuan was teased, making his whole body curl up. Don't. Xiao Yuan subconsciously put his hands against Yan Heqing's chest. At this, Yan Heqing simply grasped his forearm, and then Xiao Yuan's wrist was marked with bite marks. Feeling slight pain from his wrist, he chuckled, Yan Ji, you were thinking that since other places would be covered by clothes, you could indirectly leave a mark here, don't you? Yan Heqing didn't reply, 
he just lowered his head and kissed Xiao Yuan's arm all the way up, until finally, he sucked and nibbled on Xiao Yuan's neck. Meanwhile, his mischievous hands were repeatedly rubbing and circling around Xiao Yuan's waist and buttocks, but he didn't touch the right place. Xiao Yuan was so irritated by this that he couldn't help but raise his hips forward, trying to rub himself against anything. The moment he did this, he heard Yan Heqing chuckling in his ear. President Xiao had lived for two lifetimes, and for the first time he understood what it meant to fly into a rage out of humiliation one. However, before he could have the time to get angry, his lower part fell into the hands of the bad man who was repeatedly teasing him, until the irresistible pleasure arrived. The trace of pleasure in Xiao Yuan's body crashed through his sanity, until finally, it tickled the strings of the greedy pleasure, playing a song of moans. Yan Ji Xiao Yuan gasped as he put his hands around Yan Heqing's shoulders, pressing their bodies together. Yan Heqing knew he was close to finish, so he lowered his head and kissed him fiercely, blocking the soft sobs back to Xiao Yuan's mouth as his hand accelerated the speed. Xiao Yuan's mind suddenly went blank, and his vision became blurred. His entire body suddenly arched up and then went limp. Even though he wasn't able to think right at the moment, the hands around Yan Heqing were never loosened. Yan Heqing kissed him and then got up to boil some water. Once the water was ready, he brought a clean cloth and cleaned Xiao Yuan. Then Xiao Yuan pulled Yan Heqing back to bed, half hugged, half pressed against him, and slept contentedly. Xiao Yuan spent half a month in Taoyuan village, recovering from his injuries. At this, Zhang Changsong reluctantly agreed to let Xiao Yuan get out of bed and walk around. Early in the morning, Xiao Yuan propped up his crutches, and walked around the small courtyard as exercise. From a distance, he saw Yan Liuan and Xiao Fengyue coming in from outside the residence. The two of them were looking at each other as they laughed and talked about something. Yan Liuan waved his arms as he exaggerated his story. At this, Xiao Fengyue covered his lips and laughed happily. The autumn breeze was gently blowing past, making the leaves of the willows in the courtyard fall on Xiao Fengyue's hair. Yang Liuan reached out his hand to remove the leaves for Xiao Fengyue, as he raised a smile. When the two of them stepped forward, they saw Xiao Yuan in the courtyard, and greeted, Young master. Why are you in the courtyard? Why aren't you resting in bed? Xiao Yuan waved his hand. It's all right. I'm tired of staying in bed for so long. Where have you two been? Xiao Fengyue replied, Young master, a group of monks came down from the foot of the mountain, not far away from here, and repaired a temple. We went to pay our respects. Xiao Yuan replied with a ah, uh, oh, and rolled his eyes thoughtfully. Yang Liuan stepped forward and said, Young master, shall I help you go back? Xiao Yuan waved his hand, I'm fine, don't worry. I should move more from time to time as well. Moreover, Shifu said that walking it's good for recovery. While they were still having a conversation, Yan Heqing walked in. The recent relationship between Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing made Yang Liuan and Xiao Fengyue see the sincerity of Yan Heqing's feelings toward Xiao Yuan, so they no longer showed hostility towards him. After nodding to each other, Yang Liuan and Xiao Fengyue saw that it was the right time to go, leaving Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan alone. Does your leg hurt? Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan was standing, with the help of the crutches, and his eyes fell on his knee. Xiao Yuan smiled and waved his hand, it doesn't hurt, it's just that I stumble while I walk, so I can't walk fast. Yan Heqing put away the crutches for Xiao Yuan and helped him sit on the stone mill. Xiao Yuan had been feeling suffocated these days, due to having to rest and letting his health recover, so when he heard that there was a temple at the foot of the mountain, a thought came to his mind. At this, he smiled and said to Yan Heqing, Yan Ji in my last life, before a couple got married, there was an extremely important thing to do. Guess what it was? Yan Heqing replied, propose marriage. Xiao Yuan shook his head, winked at him, and replied with a playful smile, no, they would be dating. A trace of doubt flashed through Yan Heqing's eyes, talk talk about what too. Xiao Yuan simply smiled and stood up. Without the help of the crutches, Xiao Yuan would stagger as he walked, so Yan Heqing hurriedly reached out to hold Xiao Yuan, letting him lean on himself. 
Xiao Yuan playfully leaned his entire weight against Yan Heqing. Then, he waved his hand, and said, Let's go, we'll have a date. Chapter, 167 The temple has just been renovated, so it didn't have much of a reputation yet. The incense wasn't strong, so naturally, there weren't many visitors. A young monk, no more than seven or eight years old, who was wearing grey-blue clothes and carried a broom, was sweeping the fallen leaves on the steps in front of the temple. Probably because he was bored, he began to sing a song, Once upon a time, there was a mountain, and in the mountain there was a temple. In that temple, there was a young monk. Suddenly, a man came over. With a smile on his face, that man said, Who was really pretty? The young monk was stunned. As he raised his eyes, he saw that there was a very beautiful man in front of him. However, what attracted the young monk the most, other than the sound of his voice, was the spiritual warm light found in the bottom of that man's eyes. The man was accompanied by another man with the same extraordinary appearance. That man had a pair of very dignified eyebrows, and handsome eyes, which were extremely rare. Really pretty. The young monk touched the back of his bald head, benefactor one, is this what you think it follows? Xiao Yuan looked at the silly appearance of the young monk, and thought that he was so cute that he couldn't stop himself from teasing him, this is how I think that poem goes. Look, he'll recite the whole poem to you. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat and sang, Once upon a time, there was a mountain, and in the mountain there was a temple. In that temple, there was a young monk who looked really pretty. But beauty doesn't compete with spring, it only announces its arrival. When the flowers in the mountain bloomed, he would laugh in the bushes too. Hey! In the bushes! Laughing in the bushes! Laughing! The young monk scratched his head, recited Amitba 3, and asked, Benefactor, why do I feel that what you said, and what my Shixiang 4 taught me, seem a little different? Xiao Yuan nodded his head, and replied, We have to adapt to the development of time. Combine theory with practice, persist and develop in the new era, cough, I missed the point. Anyway, this is the newest version, come, come, it'll teach you. An old monk appeared in time to stop Xiao Yuan from continuing to poison the mind of the young disciple of his own Buddhist sect. The amiable looking old monk led Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing to the Hall of Great Strength 5, and asked, what can I help these two benefactors with? Xiao Yuan chuckled, Master, why do you ask? The old monk put his palms together, and said, Amitba, in this world, who doesn't have something on their minds that's weighing on their hearts? The more difficult the request, the more sincere it is. Xiao Yuan praised, Master is indeed an understanding person. The old monk replied, Benefactor is very complimentary. When the two of them arrived at the hall, they were surrounded by the fragrance and the smoke of the incense. A golden statue of Buddha, with a solemn appearance, was sitting in the hall. Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing knelt on the futon, one to the left and the other to the right, and worshipped devoutly three times. When it was time to go back to the residence, Xiao Yuan couldn't stop himself from teasing the young monk again. Unfortunately, the young monk had to ring the bell six, so Xiao Yuan could only go back feeling a bit unhappy. While they were on their way back, Yan Heqing was worried about Xiao Yuan's injured leg, so he didn't allow Xiao Yuan to walk by himself, insisting on carrying him on his back. In the end, Xiao Yuan couldn't say no to Yan Heqing, and allowed him to carry him under the dark twilight. The sunset light was making their shadows look extremely long. Yan Ji, do you want to know what was on my mind, while I was worshipping, in the temple just now? Xiao Yuan said as he laid on Yan Heqing's back, with his hands around his neck, smiling happily. Yan Heqing, what were you thinking about? Xiao Yuan cleared his throat, and while copying the intonation used in the TV dramas, he shouted from the top of his lungs, a worship to heaven and earth. Well, I don't know if Buddha could hear me. Yan Heqing gently raised the corners of his mouth. Yan Ji, what did you ask Buddha? Before Yan Heqing could reply, Xiao Yuan continued, wait a minute, let me guess. Did you wish for my injury to get better soon? Yan Heqing nodded his head, yes. Xiao Yuan, Yan Ji, I may become a cripple. Yan Heqing's feet stopped. Xiao Yuan continued, 
even though Shirfu didn't told me, I still know my own body. I used to be a bit afraid of becoming a cripple, because then I'll have to walk slowly, and that it would take me too much time to find you. But you came, so I'm not afraid anymore and even if I do become cripple, ITLL mean that I would have a good excuse for you to carry me around. When I think about it, I feel a little proud. Yen He Ching, don't talk nonsense, you'll get better. Then, he added, it'll still carry you, even if your leg is fine. Xiao Yuan smiled as his eyes curved and he patted Yen He Ching's shoulder, Yen Ji Yi, turn your head. When Yen He Ching tilted his head, he was kissed on the lips by Xiao Yuan, who gave him a tender and lingering type of kiss. After the kiss ended, Xiao Yuan licked the corner of his mouth, and said, that winter, when it was cold outside, and I carried you on my back as I walked you back towards the Taiyi Hall. When we still were in the palace of the Northern Kingdom at the time, I didn't expect that you'll be carrying me for the rest of my life. But it was worth it. Yen He Qing knew that he wasn't a smiling type of person. However, when he was with Xiao Yuan, the corners of his mouth would raise unapologetically but also, he was unwilling to restrain himself. After Yen He Qing carried Xiao Yuan on his back for a long time, Xiao Yuan felt sorry for his tiredness and refused to keep being carried. Since Yen He Qing was unwilling, Xiao Yuan said that Yen He Qing either let him walk on his own, or they take a rest. Yen He Qing had to find a nice place in the grass by the side of the road, and let Xiao Yuan sit down. Xiao Yuan pulled Yen He Qing to sit beside him, as he comfortably laid on his side. Half of his upper body was resting on Yen He Qing's legs. Then, he began to count the stars that gradually appeared in the night sky, I wasn't able to see so many stars in my last life, and they weren't this bright either. Yen He Qing hummed, pondered for a while, and then, with some hesitation, asked, What was that, that you mentioned before, about what a husband and wife had to do before marrying in your last life? Ich ich they're so cute. I can't. Chapter, 168 Xiao Yuan didn't expect that Yen He Qing would suddenly ask this. He was stunned, but then he suddenly got up, looked at Yen He Qing, and said with a smile on his face, Yen Ji Yi, do you want to marry me? Yen He Qing didn't deny, um mm hmm. Xiao Yuan crossed his legs, folded his fingers, and counted them while he said with a smile, if you want to be old-fashioned, then you have to give me a diamond ring of a few dozen carats, and if you want to be a little more sophisticated, you can give me a fish pond. If not, then take me to the most famous tower building in a helicopter, and light up billions of fireworks for me that won't stop until it cracks open a hole in the ozone layer. Xiao Yuan waved his hand and said, Oh, I know that you can't do these kinds of things, but it's okay. In my previous life, if two people wanted to get married, there's another method, but this one is the most difficult one. Do you want to know what is? Yen He Qing nodded. Xiao Yuan clenched his fist and cleared his throat. As he looked at Yen He Qing's face illuminated by the light of the moon, he saw that Yen He Qing looked somewhat nervous, and Xiao Yuan couldn't help smiling as he quickly said, the thing you need to do is Xiao Yuan said slowly as he dragged his words. Yen He Qing, who was waiting for the answer on the side, slightly clenched his fists. Suddenly, Xiao Yuan straightened his shoulders and turned his body towards him. Under the starry sky, the two of them looked at each other, their eyes seemed like they were shining with the moonlight, you'll have to stay with me for a lifetime. Yen He Qing looked at him. The feelings hidden in the depths of his eyes were now bright and clear as he replied, I will. Xiao Yuan's eyes curved as he replied with a smile, good. Ah right, Yen Ji Yi, it'll teach you a word that in my previous life, was used to express love. Then, Xiao Yuan picked up a branch and wrote an English sentence on the ground, which was I love you. In his last life, he had practiced cursive, so the words in English looked beautiful and elegant. After seeing this, Yen He Qing asked, Is this a painting? Xiao Yuan smiled, No, it's not a painting. This is a sentence. Come here, it'll teach you how to read it. After reading the sentence out loud a few times, Yen He Qing, who was talented with languages, learned how to say it correctly in a few minutes. This made Xiao Yuan feel that the halo surrounding the male lead was really 360 without any dead angle. Xiao Yuan dropped the branch and said, Well, now we're the only ones in the whole world who can understand this sentence. 
At this, Yan Heqing asked, what's the meaning of this sentence? Xiao Yuan touched his chin as he replied, it has different meanings depending on the person. But it'll tell you what it means in my case. For me, it means Xiao Yuan paused for a brief moment, thought for a little bit, and continued, an everlasting longing for each other, because my Yan Ji Yi is so handsome. When the peach tree is green and luxuriant, its flowers are in full bloom. If Yan Ji Yi marries, he must make his family happy and peaceful too. There are trees on the mountain, and the trees have branches. My heart is happy that He Qin wants to marry me three. I'd like to have Yen Ge's heart, so that we can grow old together four. The Yuan River is green surrounded by irises, and the Li River has fragrant orchids. I think of He Qin, but I don't dare to say it five. Yen He Qin. Xiao Yuan smiled, are you still listening to me? Yen He Qin, am listening. Xiao Yuan said. Yen Ji, why aren't you following the routine? Normally, wouldn't you dislike it when I'm talking nonsense, and stop me from continuing to talk? Yan Heqing looked at him, and replied, I want to keep hearing what you have to say. Xiao Yuan, Ao. All right. Then, Xiao Yuan poured out almost all the literature and ink from his stomach, working hard to express his mind. Finally, he couldn't think of any other poem, and before Yan Heqing let him go, he had to beg for mercy. It wasn't early anymore, and it was time to go back to the residence. Yan Heqing wanted to continue carrying Xiao Yuan, but he refused, and defended himself by saying, My legs are fine, you don't have to carry me anymore. Let me walk by myself. Yan Heqing, you've walked enough for today. Xiao Yuan, I didn't, I'm not tired of walking back and forth. If you keep carrying me on your back, ITLL be too hard for you. It's alright, I'll walk by myself. Don't worry, I. Before Xiao Yuan could say what he wanted, his voice was suddenly interrupted because Yan Heqing grabbed his waist and picked him up bridal style. Then, he began to walk towards the village. Xiao Yuan, who was clearly set up, said, I I understand. The back, why don't you carry me on your back? Yan Heqing, however, didn't have any intention of putting him down. Xiao Yuan was shocked. Yan Ji, you're not planning on carrying me back to the village like this, right? If the neighbors see us, they will misunderstand. Yan He Qing looked down at him, and said, what will they misunderstand? Xiao Yuan, it doesn't matter if they know that my legs are injured, but if they don't, then they may misunderstand. As he spoke, Yan He Qing had already walked into Tao Yuan village with Xiao Yuan in his arms. Aunt Ma, who had eaten enough and had gone to take a walk, came face to face with them. When she saw them like that, she suddenly burst out laughing. Then, she shouted, Yo! Yuan, did you make Yen Gongzi angry? Xiao Yuan. Auntie Ma, why do you think that I made Yen Ji angry? Aunt Ma took out her handkerchief and gently hit Xiao Yuan, who was still in Yen He Qing's arms, you still have the nerve to ask Auntie. You don't have any shame. Does your waist not hurt? You didn't listen to Yen Gongzi's words, and you were cough, outside. It must be. Xiao Yuan. Aunt Ma, I beg you, don't read strange books. Your brain will make up messy plots, okay? Aunt Ma finished laughing, raised her finger, and said to Yen He Qing, this is the right way to treat Xiao Yuan's temperament. If he makes a fuss, you can give him a good punishment, then he will remember it for a long time. Yen Gongzi, I support you. Aunt Ma deliberately said the word punishment in a meaningful way, making it impossible for anyone to misunderstand what she meant. Yen He Qing nodded to Aunt Ma, and Xiao Yuan collapsed in his arms, covering his face with one hand. After teasing Xiao Yuan, Aunt Ma walked away contentedly. At this, Xiao Yuan said, Yen Ji, see. I told you to carry me on your back. Now Auntie Ma has misunderstood that we were having a wild meeting. With Auntie's mouth, this rumor will spread to the whole village and the other ten nearby villages by tomorrow. Yen He Qing hummed in response. Xiao Yuan asked, What do you mean by M M? Hey, 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 Yen Ji Yi. Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand and waved it in front of his eyes. When Yen He Qing regained conscience, he looked down at him. 
Xiao Yuan, feeling helpless, smiled at him and asked, What were you thinking about? You were so distracted. Yan He Qin replied, Outdoor sex. Yan He Qin continued talking thoughtfully, When you get better, well try. Xiao Yuan slapped himself on the face, so that Yan He Qin wouldn't see whether he was being shy, or if he had collapsed. Xiao Yuan didn't reply on the surface, but he was screaming in his heart, I don't care. A righteously open sex maniac Yan Ji is still handsome beyond belief. Akshak XYA is so cheesy. Reciting poetry to hubby and hubby wanting to listen carefully oh oh. And then Aunt Ma thinking they did it outdoor Ajkajdid and YHQ actually considering it. Chapter 169 when Yan He Ching arrived at the residence with Xiao Yuan in his arms, Yang Liuan greeted them with a letter. However, he took five steps back when he saw the situation the both of them were in. Only when Xiao Yuan was put down by Yan He Ching, did Yang Liuan carefully hand over the letter to Yan He Ching. Yan He Ching regained his usual mood, took the letter, and thanked Yang Liuan. After simply glancing at the letter, he didn't rush to read it. Instead, he put it in his palm, crushing it into a ball. Xiao Yuan glanced at the letter. With the help of the spare light, he saw Xue Yan written on the letterhead, which was very much eye-catching and dazzling. After saying goodbye to Yang Liuan, Xiao Yuan and Yan He Qing returned to their wing room. Once they arrived, Yan He Qing lit the candle, and expressionlessly intended to light the letter on fire. Xiao Yuan's eyes and hands quickly stopped Yan He Qing's intentions. Xiao Yuan, Yan Ji, don't you want to read what's written inside? Yan He Qing replied, It's not necessary. There's no need to read it. Yan He Qing already knew what Xue Yan would write, and it can only be one sentence, come back. As Xiao Yuan looked at Yan He Qing, he couldn't help but think, the southern Yan kingdom has just defeated the eastern Wu kingdom. The current foundation is turbulent and the regime is divided. If it weren't because Yan He Qing has the male lead's aura surrounding him, he would have been running around blindly. Besides, in addition to distant relatives, just one person with bad intentions can stir up the world. Xiao Yuan held Yan He Qing's hand holding the letter, and said, Yan Ji, do you want to live in seclusion with me in Taoyuan village? Well no longer pay attention to world affairs again. Yan He Qing looked at him, but didn't reply. Xiao Yuan laughed. Yan Ji, do you even know how turbulent the world will be if you do this? Yan He Qing still refused to speak. Xiao Yuan continued, his voice was as calm as usual, but his words pierced his heart, Yan Ji, I know that a leisurely life of idle clouds and wild cranes is indeed quite attractive, but that's not the ending you deserve. That's not the ending I want to see either. Yan He Qing's eyes, which were calm like a lake, finally rippled. His voice was very soft, as if he was afraid of disturbing him, speaking in such a low voice that it was almost inaudible, you want me to go? Xiao Yuan curved his eyes, and the smile under his eyes was as gentle as ever. He said in reply, Yan Ji, if I go back with you, not to mention everyone in this land, but the people of the southern Yan kingdom will surely curse me in their hearts. They will say that you were charmed by beauty, that you ignored the hatred of your family and country, and that you only spoil the former emperor of the northern kingdom. While me, on the other hand, will be nailed with the words the male concubine from the fallen kingdom for the rest of my life. In folk culture and unofficial history, or even official historical books, I won't be regarded as a good person by the later generations. Seeing how Yan He Qing's expression gradually became colder and colder, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, then said, Even so, I still want to go with you. The coldness that Yan He Qing had built up, broke in an instant. As he slightly opened his mouth, because he was surprised, he heard Xiao Yuan continue, Yan Ji, I'm not afraid of any gossip and am not afraid of any ruthless palace. Because, Yan Ji, I want to see you conquer the world. I want to see you build your powerful and prosperous nation. I want to see you mark your name in history. And I also want to be with you, so Yan Ji, if you decide to go back, Will you take me with you? Yan He Qing was speechless for a long time, but after a while, he replied, You. Xiao Yuan laughed, Yan Ji, I know that you're afraid of me being aggrieved, but am also afraid of your grievances. 
both of us put these emotions in each other's hearts, so instead of being unhappy apart, why don't you take care of ruling the country and the state, while I'm in charge of the chaos of the harem? As for what others may say, I'd love to talk about it and eat their rice. If their mouths are so free that they can gossip, why don't they use it to eat more delicious food instead? Yen He Ching exhaled a long breath, and after gradually relaxing his emotions, he reached out to pull Xiao Yuan into his arms. He immediately kissed Xiao Yuan on the lips, until he couldn't breathe anymore. His eyes became blurred, and his legs felt weak. Then, he said, you're the only one in the harem, who are you going to mess with? Xiao Yuan put his hands on Yen He Ching's shoulders, and replied, with all the flowers, grass, and trees. Yen Ji, should we go back? Yen He Ching hugged Xiao Yuan tightly, resting his forehead on Xiao Yuan's shoulder. After a long time, he finally replied with a mm. After hearing the news that Xiao Yuan was going back to the Northern Kingdom, Yang Liuan, who had never said no to Xiao Yuan, was in a bad mood for the first time, young master. If you go back to the palace with Yan He Ching, do you even know what the people of the Southern Yan Kingdom would do behind the scenes? And what everyone in this land would say? Xiao Yuan smiled, I know. Yang Liuan couldn't speak. He wanted to follow his heart and persuade him against this idea, but he also wanted to ask Xiao Yuan is it really worth it. But when he thought of the past, when they were still in the Northern Kingdom and he had cowed out, begging Xiao Yuan to let him see Xiao Fengwe one last time, Xiao Yuan had never asked him such a question. So, in the end, Yang Liuan couldn't ask. Even if there are all kinds of tribulations and hardships ahead of them, even if everyone is sincerely plotting against their relationship behind their backs, as long as that person takes his hand, he would no longer have any regret or hatred for the world. There will be no turning back. Xiao Yuan smiled and patted Yang Liuan's shoulder, everything will be fine, don't worry. Also, I'm really grateful for you and Fen Yue being by my side all this time. Yang Liuan was speechless, and Xiao Feng Yue, who was standing at his side, said softly, Young master, Liuan's life and my own were saved by you. In this life, we didn't have the opportunity to serve you, we could only remotely kowtow to you. I wish that the young master can live the rest of his life without any worry, and if we have a next life. Xiao Feng Yue couldn't finish his words because Xiao Yuan immediately said, In our next life, we can also be like this. We can still be close friends. Yang Liuan waved his hand in panic, friends? I don't dare. If I say we're friends, then we're friends. Xiao Yuan interrupted him with a recklessly unrestrained laugh. Chapter 170 The matter regarding Xiao Yuan and Yan He Qing going back to the Northern Kingdom was settled for the time being. Yan He Qing sent a letter to Shui Yan and started preparing for the journey. The first thing he did was to go to the medicinal shop, to ask Zhang Chang Song if Xiao Yuan's body could withstand traveling long distances. Only after getting an affirmative answer was he able to rest assured, and went to prepare other matters. When he heard that Yan He Qing and Xiao Yuan were leaving, Zhang Chang Song's family was naturally feeling extremely reluctant. Zhang Baizhu ran to Xiao Yuan to ask him, Why do you want to go there again? And you're even saying that you're going back home to the southern Yan Kingdom. But, aren't you from the Western Shu Kingdom? Before, you even went to visit your relatives in the Western Shu Kingdom, so why are you saying that you're returning home to the southern Yan Kingdom? Xiao Yuan replied, What is the point of clearing up such a thing? In the end, well belong to the same side anyways. Zhang Baizhu then said wistfully, That's what you said after saving that young soldier a while ago. Speaking of which, I saw him outside the village, the one who carried you back that time. Xiao Yuan's eyes brighten, Bao Yingxin. Zhang Baizhu replied, Yes, that one. He said that after saving you, he was discovered by his general, and the group of soldiers that saved you were put in prison. Later, when the southern Yan kingdom conquered the eastern Wu kingdom, the prison cell was broken into, and they took advantage of the chaos to escape. They ended up settling down in a nearby village. Xiao Yuan smiled, that's great. Zhang Baizhu, yeah, yeah, I won't say any more. Anyway, this time, you'll have a comfortable, happy, and prosperous life. Where you won't need to worry about the mercilessness of the sword, 
and where you won't see yourself stuck in a life or death situation. Xiao Yuan saw that Zhang Baizhu was saying goodbye to him, and before leaving, he said, Zhang Baizhu, if you have a son, you should name him Zhang Zhongjing, alright? Hmm. Zhang Zhongjing not bad, it's a nice name. Zhang Baizhu raised his fist and recited the name out loud, excitedly running back to the medicinal shop to tell Lin Xinling. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but smile. Suddenly, his waist was hugged from behind, but Xiao Yuan wasn't surprised. He simply leaned back and comfortably pressed his body against Yan Heqing's. Yan Heqing said, well leave in seven days. Physician Zhang said that your body still needs to recuperate for a bit. I asked for a prescription. Xiao Yuan, no way, I'm alive and I feel perfectly fine, but I still need to recuperate. I'm obviously an energetic young man, but now I'm slowly turning into a medicine jar. Yan Ji, can I stop taking medicine after these few days? Yan Heqing replied, Physician Zhang knew that you would say this. He said. Well. If you want to have sex without worry then. Xiao Yuan. I've been taking the medicine diligently, and I still can't do it. Yan Heqing slightly raised the corners of his mouth, and suddenly remembered something as he asked, Do you know where the Imperial Palace of the Southern Yan Kingdom is located? I know, I know. Xiao Yuan tilted his head and raised his hands. Then he hugged Yan Heqing's neck and pressed his body closer to him, it's the former imperial palace of the Northern Kingdom. In the original book, Yan Heqing set up the capital in the former Northern Territory, and lived in the imperial palace of the Northern Kingdom, because he missed his goddess. This time, his reasons were self-evident. Yan Heqing, whose head was pressed down by Xiao Yuan, had his lips an inch away from Xiao Yuan's mouth. Their breaths were immediately entwined together. Xiao Yuan laughed, Yan Ji, are you afraid that it'll be affected by the scenery when I return to the north? Yan He Qing, yes. Xiao Yuan, it's easy to make it better. If I'm sad, then you just have to kiss me. But you don't have to worry, I won't be sad. Yan He Qing looked at Xiao Yuan's eyes, and he saw how his own face was reflected in Xiao Yuan's dark pupils, as if he was the only one in Xiao Yuan's eyes. Xiao Yuan released his hands and let go of Yan Heqing's neck. Then, he turned around in Yan Heqing's arms, and looked at him face to face, as he said with a smile, Yan Ji, in a few days we'll leave Taoyuan village, so I'm quite sad now. What do you think you should do? Yan Heqing leaned forward and tried to kiss him. However, they immediately separated when a Xiao Ji suddenly came from beside them. Xie Chun Gui, who was holding a small clay figurine he got from somewhere, stood there at this moment. Without feeling embarrassed about interrupting them, he seriously said to Xiao Yuan, Xiao Ji, can I talk to you? Yes, of course you can. What's the matter? Xiao Yuan's voice still had a trace of panic. Who would have thought that Xie Chun Gui would glance at Yan He Qing, and say, Xiao Ji, can I talk to you alone? Xiao Yuan's eyes flashed with a trace of surprise. He and Yan He Qing glanced at each other. Yan He Qing nodded at him, and walked away. Xiao Yuan and Xie Chun Gui were then left alone. After a while, Xiao Yuan finally asked, Chun Gui. What's the matter? Xie Chun Gui, third and told me that you were leaving. Xiao Ji, is that true? Xiao Yuan nodded and wanted to say a few words to soothe him, but before he could speak, Xie Chun Gui added, Xiao Ji, are you going to the north? Can you take me with you? I want to go back and see it again. Xiao Yuan looked at Xie Chun Gui with a blank stare. Clearly, these words didn't sound like the usual words Xie Chun Gui has been speaking recently. But since the smile on his face was still naive and childish, Xiao Yuan didn't know how to reply, Chun Gui, you. He blurted out the word you, but he didn't know what to say afterwards. Xie Chun Gui lowered his head. As the autumn sun shone with a clear light, the young man stood in place, as his voice slightly trembled, I want to go back and see. See the territory, the mountains, and the rivers of the northern kingdom. Xiao Yuan looked at Xie Chun Gui, and thought of the young general in the original book. At the beginning, he was also a great hero. A man who was able to hold the fort by himself, 
and fought against the enemy with the remnants of the defeated army, with only disabled men. But in the end, he was unable to resist the enemy's army, and he was defeated in the battlefield. The white bones of the dead were scattered all over the ground, mixed together with the grass. His head could have grown grey, but he didn't know that the fugitive emperor was harming the people, nor did he hear that the imperial court ate the country's food. The only thing he knew was that he vowed to protect the country with his blood. But in the end, he couldn't grow old. Chapter, 171 In the end, when their day of departure finally arrived, in the dim morning light, the entire Taoyuan village was shrouded in a hazy mist. Xiao Yuan silently said goodbye in his heart. Then, he turned around, and smiled at Yan Heqing as he took his hand. After thousands of miles of traveling, a few days later, they arrived at the imperial city of the former Northern Kingdom, now renamed as the Southern Yan Kingdom Imperial City. It was the first month of the lunar year. Although the weather was cold, and the ground was frozen, only a few snowflakes were falling down. Even if it was supposed to be the beginning of spring, the north was different, since it has already been covered in snow for several days. The walls of the palace were covered with white snow, as the petal-like snowflakes fell from the pale sky. Xiao Yuan, who was wearing a fur brocade, stared dumbfounded at the imperial palace in front of him, and asked the maid beside him, Is, is this your emperor's palace? The maid's servant replied, answering to Xiao Gongzi, Yes. Xiao Yuan. Isn't this my old imperial palace? And even the appearance hasn't changed at all. Xiao Yuan followed the maid into the bedchamber, and was once again shocked. The decorations inside the bedchamber, were almost exactly the same as when he lived there. Xiao Yuan lightly stroked the window shutter. For a long time, he didn't know what to say. After a while, he finally murmured, but these things, back then, weren't they robbed, crushed, were lost or got broken. The maid explained, all of these were specially made for his majesty. I should remind Yan Ji, I've lived in this palace for more than a year, but the previous young emperor of the northern kingdom has lived here for over ten years. It still looks like the place where the young emperor used to bring over his male concubines. The maid didn't notice the subtle change in Xiao Yuan's expression, so she simply said, Xiao Gongzi, his majesty said that this will be your bedchamber. What can this servant do for you? Xiao Yuan coughed lightly, and said, Nothing, I'm fine. Is Yan, cough, is his majesty still busy? Answering to Xiao Gongzi, yes. I thought so. Yan Heqing has just come back, so it's only natural that he will be held up by the government affairs that have been accumulating so far. Not to mention that Hell have to deal with the old ministers, while also having to watch out for people with ulterior motives. I wonder if Yan Heqing's day at court went smoothly today. However, after being apart from each other for less than a day, Xiao Yuan began to miss Yan Heqing, so he quickly tried to distract himself. At this, he asked the maid, Where's Chen Gui? The maid replied, answering to Xiao Gongzi. Xie Gongzi is settled in a palace not far away from here. Does Xiao Gongzi want to go see him? After seeing Xiao Yuan nodding his head, the maid hurriedly led the way. It was still snowing heavily outside. As the snowflakes fell from the sky, some of them fondly rested on their shoulders. Xiao Yuan breathed out a mouthful of white fog and reached out to catch some of the snowflakes falling from the sky, only to watch them melt in his palm. Xiao Gongzi. The maid lightly called Xiao Yuan. Ah. Xiao Yuan suddenly came back to his senses, closed his five fingers, and clutched the ice water in his palm, it's nothing, you can lead the way. Xiao Yuan was led all the way to the closed palace by the maid. From a distance, he saw Xie Chengui playing with the snow, with an excited, childlike expression and a cheerful smile on his face. When he saw Xiao Yuan, Xie Chengui waved his hand from afar, picked up some snow from the ground, and trotted over, Xiao Ji, look. It's snowing. Snow. Yes, it's snowing. Xiao Yuan's smile was warm. Xie Chengui looked at the snow on his hands, feeling how the cold spread on his skin. Subconsciously, he held it close to his cheek, covering the half of his face, until the whiteness on his hand gradually became transparent. Xie Chengui put down his hands and looked around, at the now dark grey sky, 
with the white snow falling down. Suddenly, Xie Chengui felt an impulse coming from the bottom of his heart. Xiao Yuan was about to ask Xie Chengui if he had adapted to the cold weather, when suddenly, he saw him kneeling down the ground to kiss the earth and the snow. He looked very devout, like a wanderer who had been traveling for many years, and was finally able to return home. There were some maids around that thought that Xie Chengui had fallen, and with a cry of surprise, they quickly reached out to help him up. Xiao Yuan took a step forward and held Xie Chengui's arm, who was feeling quite confused, seeing how Xie Chengui's expression was blank, huh? Why did I kneel down? What happened? Xiao Yuan was dumbfounded, and when he reached out to pat the snow away from Xie Chengui's shoulders, he said, nothing happened, nothing happened at all. Xiao Yuan accompanied Xie Chengui to play with the snow for a while. It wasn't until Xie Chengui became tired of playing that Xiao Yuan said goodbye, and left. As soon as Xiao Yuan returned to his bedchamber, someone hurriedly came to report, Xiao Gongzi, someone wants to see you. The maid at his side reminded him, Xiao Gongzi, his majesty said that you can refuse anyone's request to meet you. Xiao Yuan thought to himself is there someone from the southern Yan kingdom who wants to see me? So he asked, who is it? Answering to Xiao Gongzi. It's Chen Gu, General Chen. General Chen. Chen Gu has been promoted. Xiao Yuan was happy at this, and said, bring him over. The person who reported the news hurriedly went to invite Chen Gu over. After a while, before Xiao Yuan could even see Chen Gu, he heard his voice coming from the other side of the door, for the heavens. Physician Xiao, you're all right. I knew it. Lucky people have their own way of surviving. Hu Hua. Chen Gu exaggeratedly whimpered twice as he entered the bedchamber. As Chen Gu held Xiao Yuan's hands, they looked at each other with teary eyes. Immersed in such a scene, Xiao Yuan was also stirred up emotionally, and after sobbing twice, he shouted, Chen Gu, your hands. Loosen them. I'm a married man. Pay attention to the misunderstandings this action could bring. Chapter 172 Chen Gu released Xiao Yuan, rubbed the corners of his eyes, and sighed, Physician Xiao, it wasn't easy for me to see you. Do you know that if someone wants to meet with you, they have to report it to His Majesty first? Xiao Yuan. No, I didn't know. Wait, I still can't believe you're already a general. So, were you in court Toda? Chen Gu poured himself a cup of cold water from the table, and drank it in one mouthful. As he wiped his mouth, and without letting Xiao Yuan finish his question, he exclaimed, Yes. This time, the court was advising His Majesty, but one issue was more complicated than the other. One of them was that His Majesty has always respected old General Shui. But for some reason, after he came back, His Majesty was still the same, but the respect was gone. You could even feel a hint of animosity sparkling between the two of them. Xiao Yuan seemed calm on the surface, but his heart has long been shaken by a stormy wave he slightly curled his fingers, forcing himself to calm down, and asked, what's the second issue? Chen Gu replied, secondly, today almost all of the civil and military officials in the court bowed down and advised his majesty about the same thing but his majesty turned away coldly, leaving them kneeling in the same place. Physician Xiao, do you know what that thing was? Xiao Yuan smiled, what else could it be, but me? Physician Xiao. Chen Gu restrained a smile, and said more seriously, Today, I was among those people. Xiao Yuan expressed a light hmm. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yuan didn't care much. Chen Gu was stupefied at first, but then he touched his head, and smiled. After sighing, he said, Physician Xiao, I sincerely hope that you can be with His Majesty, but I don't want the former Emperor of the Northern Kingdom to be with my Emperor. Because of you, the whole court was shaken, and all of them are questioning His Majesty's ability. The most fearsome thing when establishing a state, is that the heart of the people won't be united. This way, ITLL be difficult for the Emperor to walk his own path in the future. Xiao Yuan didn't have the intention to restrain his smile, as he said, Chen Gu, you said those words so harshly, as if you were trying to force me into wanting to leave was it General Shui who taught you this trick. Chen Gu scratched his head, and whispered, yes, yes. 
Because of His Majesty's instructions, General Shui can't see you, so he asked me to give it a try. Physician Xiao, don't blame me, General Shui is my lifesaver. I admire him very much, and... Chen Gu paused for a long time before continuing, and, I think that every word General Shui said is very reasonable. Xiao Yuan expressed another hmm, and didn't say anything else. Chen Gu knew that this was the end of their conversation, so he stood up, took out a letter from his sleeve, and put it on the table, General Shui asked me to pass this letter to you. I don't think there's any good words written on it. So, Physician Xiao, you can read it if you want, or burn it if you don't. After saying that, Chen Gu got up, clasped his fist, and started to walk away. After he took two steps, he heard the man behind him suddenly shout, Chen Gu. Chen Gu's footsteps stopped as he heard Xiao Yuan say, Thank you for calling me Physician Xiao. Chen Gu hovered in place for a few seconds, and replied, If only you weren't the former emperor of the Northern Kingdom. After saying that, he left with big steps. If I hadn't transmigrated in his body, and if I hadn't pretended to be him, at that time, I wouldn't have been able to protect Yan Ji. Xiao Yuan murmured as he reached out for the letter on the table. After hesitating for a second, he opened it. There was a short sentence written on the thin letter paper, I wonder if the former emperor of the northern kingdom is still able to remember the oath he made a few years ago. Hmm. What oath did I make? Was it? Holy shit. Xiao Yuan suddenly put his hands on his head. At that time, when he left the northern kingdom, he swore that if he stepped into the imperial city ever again, he would die a horrible death. Xiao Yuan now wanted to go back in time, to slap himself in the face. At that time, when I left, I didn't expect that ID be coming back, ah. After all, at that time, I misunderstood and thought that Yan Heqing hated me, so I firmly didn't believe that I would be running back to my death. Life is really full of surprises and excitement, so much that he was even hit in the face with it. Xiao Yuan silently burned Shui Yan's letter, and then recited the principle of the dialectical relationship between matter and consciousness one. Once Chen Gu walked out of the gates of the imperial palace, he saw a man standing in front of him. He was wearing military robes and armor, with snow accumulated on his shoulders. Chen Gu took a few steps forward, clasped his fist, and knelt down on one knee, General Shui. Shui Yan helped him up with one hand, and asked, How was it? Chen Gu replied, I've told him everything that General Shui wanted me to say, but it doesn't seem to have any effect. Shui Yan frowned and exhaled a long breath of white mist, surrounded by the cold snowy night, thank you for your hard work. I absolutely don't believe that the former emperor of the northern kingdom would be willing to bear the humiliation of having lost his empire, and will simply stay here in peace. I'm sure he's plotting something. His majesty is blinded by love, and he's not able to see the truth, even if it's right in front of him. I must send someone to pay close attention to the former emperor of the northern kingdom. While Shui Yan spoke, Chen Gu opened and closed his mouth several times, as if he wanted to justify those statements. But in the end, he never said it. Instead, he asked, but, General Shui, he's well protected by his majesty, how are you? Shui Yan interrupted him, I won't make a move on him. I'm not allowed to make a move, and I'm unable to do so. However, I can still send people to stay close to him, waiting for the right opportunity to observe his every move. By the way, Chen Gu, because of the recent issue regarding the former emperor, and even if people aren't talking about it, I fear that some people are doubting his majesty's authority in their hearts. I think that someone will take advantage of this to gather party members. We'll have to help his majesty on this matter by taking close attention to it. Chen Gu nodded, General Shui's painstaking efforts, I hope that his majesty will understand. Shui Yan gazed at the red walls of the southern Yan imperial palace not far away, and a cold snowflake fell on his cheek. Painstaking efforts. Maybe so. He, Shui Yan, didn't have any regrets for the former emperor of the southern Yan kingdom, who committed suicide by cutting his own throat on top of the city walls. He didn't regret the promise he made at that time, to protect the southern Yan kingdom at all cost, before the former emperor jumped on the wall. He didn't regret being from the southern Yan kingdom, nor did he regret having ruled it for a while. 
because he knew that if Yan Heqin conquered the four kingdoms, then he would be able to bring a prosperous and flourishing united country, in exchange for all that was sacrificed. Therefore, if there were any thorns ahead, as long as he hasn't fallen, he will cut them down with his sword. Shui Yan was willing to do whatever it takes, to sweep away every obstacle in their way to become the strongest country the world has ever seen. Even if some of those things will make Yan Heqin, who has respected him since childhood, to hate him. He, Shui Yan, doesn't have any regrets in his heart. Ah, even if it's really unfair for Zaya, I still can't hate Chen Gu nor Shui Yan after all, they don't know that Zaya isn't really the scum emperor and even then, what that body represents is dangerous to them, so they simply want to protect their land. Chapter, 173 Ah, that's right. Shui Yan suddenly remembered something, and said to Chen Gu, you must also pay close attention to General Huang. Chen Gu was stunned, and asked with some cautiousness, is General Shui talking about Huang Yu, General Huang? Yes. Today, I heard him mention several times to other people, about His Majesty protecting the former Emperor of the Northern Kingdom. He even asked about those people's thoughts on the matter. I suspect that he has the heart of Sima Zhao Wan. Shui Yan said. Chen Gu nodded, All right, General Shui. I'll keep an eye on him. Shui Yan nodded, placed his hands behind his back, and his eyes fell once again on the walls of the Imperial Palace not far away from him. The snow was chaotic, the wind was howling, and the world felt cold. By the time Yan Heqin returned to his bedchamber, the snow had already accumulated above his ankles, making him not only leave deep footprints in the snow, but it also emitted a slight creaking sound. Yan Heqin grew up in the south, so the northern climate wasn't suitable for him. But no matter what, he would force himself to adapt. The funniest part was that Xiao Yuan, in his last life, was also a southerner who was afraid of the cold, so it was clear that this imperial palace of the former northern kingdom wasn't suitable for the two of them to live in. However, Yan Heqin couldn't leave this place aside. After all, this is where Xiao Yuan smiled at him for the first time. Yan Heqin, who didn't have the time to change his snow-drenched imperial court attire, called out the maids and guards, and walked into the bedchamber as quietly as he could. The bedchamber was completely dark, without any candlelights on. With the help of the moonlight, Yan Heqing saw Xiao Yuan lying on his side on the bed, sleeping peacefully. Asleep? But, isn't Xiao Yuan unable to sleep without company? Is he pretending to sleep? Yan Heqing reached out and gently stroked the side of Xiao Yuan's face. When he saw that his breathing was still steady, he quickly withdrew his hand so that he won't disturb him. As he stood aside, he took off his court attire to change into clean clothes. However, as soon as he took off his clothes, and exposed his upper body, he suddenly heard the sound of coughing behind him, as if someone was choking in panic. Yan Heqing's hands stopped midway, slowly put on his clothes, and turned around to look. When he turned around, he saw that Xiao Yuan was still maintaining his previous position, of lying on his side, as if the cough Yan Heqing heard just now was merely an illusion. Yan Heqing wasn't polite either. He leaned over and grabbed Xiao Yuan's wrists, pressing them to the top of Xiao Yuan's head. As he firmly pressed him down, he kissed Xiao Yuan until he was out of breath, making him open his eyes. Yan Heqing lightly said, Were you pretending to be asleep? It took Xiao Yuan a long time to ease his breath, and as he rubbed his neck, he refused to admit it, Who, who, who's pretending to sleep? You, you, you stole a kiss. The great president Xiao was full of calculations. Hell first pretend to be asleep, so when his wife comes back, he might secretly steal a kiss. At this, he will slowly open his eyes, grab his wife's neck, and with an evil smile, Hell say, hmm. Why did this little demon steal a kiss from me? Tell me, what's this about? When he thought about it, ITLL be both an stupid and interesting scenario. However, who would have known that the second he saw Yan Heqing undress, he was exposed. Can you even blame me for that? Can you? Illuminated by the white moonlight, Yan Heqing's back looked like a perfect piece of white jade. The lines of his waist were strong and smooth, his long black hair was gathered on one side of his shoulder. There was a thin scar under his shoulder blade, 
which may even disappear in a few months, but now it looked very attractive. The scar went down his smooth and beautiful back, making your eyes follow that line all the way down, and further down. Then, Xiao Yuan coughed. Can you blame me for that? Yen Heqin's figure would make anyone unable to fucking control their seven emotions and six desires too, alright? Even though his bodice movement was still limited by Yen Heqin, Xiao Yuan knew that he couldn't lose. Originally, he wanted to complain, to arouse Yen Heqin's sense of shame, but who would have known that Yan Heqin would lean down, once again blocking Xiao Yuan's mouth with his own. As he kissed him, the lack of oxygen made Xiao Yuan pant and struggle. It wasn't until his cheeks turned red that he was released. Yan Heqin said leisurely, I'm not stealing kisses, I'm kissing you openly. Xiao Yuan. All right, all right. He was speechless. Yan Heqin let go of Xiao Yuan's hands, and laid down on his side. Xiao Yuan thought about what Chen Gu told him today, and felt that he couldn't ask Yan Heqin about it without being too obvious. After he hesitated for a while, he asked, was it a tiring day? Yan Heqin looked at Xiao Yuan. Since the two of them were lying on their sides, their eyes were facing each other, their faces reflecting in each other's eyes. Yan Heqin reached out to lift Xiao Yuan's black silk-like hair, twisted it between his fingers, and kissed it. Then, he softly replied, I'm in charge of governing the country, and you're in charge of the chaotic harem. The rest, it doesn't matter. Xiao Yuan's heart suddenly felt sore as he reached out and hugged Yan Heqin tightly, burying his head in Yan Heqin's neck and shoulder, and mm. They hugged each other and slept. The next morning, Yan Heqin had to get up early, hurrying to the morning court. Xiao Yuan didn't have anything to do, so he found himself something to distract himself. He took out a wooden box from his luggage, which in addition to clothing, it was the only thing he brought from Taoyuan village. In the wooden box, there were three items quietly lying inside. A vermilion hairpin, a grey broken hairband, and a thin piece of paper filled with the names of the fallen soldiers from the northern kingdom. Xiao Yuan grabbed the wooden box, and asked the maid, is the former northern kingdom's temple of heaven still there? The maid saluted him and replied, answering to Xiao Gongzi, it's still there. Xiao Yuan asked again, then, can I go? The maid smiled, and said, his majesty left an imperial edict for Xiao Gongzi. With this imperial edict, Xiao Gongzi can go anywhere he wants. As she spoke, the maid handed over the imperial edict to Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan expressed a surprised sound, took the imperial edict, and turned it over a few times. He couldn't help curving his eyes, pursing the corners of his mouth, and giggling for a while. Then he raised his head and said to the maid, Could you please prepare three incense sticks and a pot of wine for me? Even though the maid was puzzled, she quickly prepared everything that Xiao Yuan needed. With this imperial edict in his possession, Xiao Yuan was no longer worried. He wanted to go to the Temple of Heaven alone, but the imperial bodyguards said that the emperor had ordered them to accompany him at all times. Since Xiao Yuan didn't want to make it difficult for them, he let them accompany him. Altschksch, it's so funny how Zaya is still trying to act the role of the domineering CEO, but he keeps failing miserably every time. Altschksch's and the fact that he calls YHQ wife in his mind when he imagines these domineering CEO scenarios. Why is he so effortlessly funny? I love him. Also, YHQ's flirting skills are so smooth. No wonder Zaya becomes a stuttering mess when YHQ is around him. Chapter 174 Under the Temple of Heaven, the 99 steps looked as if they were endless, just like in the old days, as if they were going straight to the sky. The ancestral shrine of the Northern Kingdom didn't escape the fate of being destroyed, and it was completely burned down by a fire. The place where the ancestral temple used to be, was now a piece of land full of saplings. After Xiao Yuan thought about it, he walked towards that place. Suddenly, a man came out from the brushes. That man had a beard, his body was burly, and his messy hair covered his face, which was filled with hideous scars. When he swooped over to stand in front of Xiao Yuan, his sudden appearance startled Xiao Yuan. Who's coming? This place can't be stepped in at will. That man's voice was loud as a bell, and his aura was imposing like a rainbow one. 
The imperial bodyguards came forward with their swords, and one of them said, Get out of the way, we have an imperial edict. Xiao Yuan handed over the imperial edict, but the man didn't take it. Instead, he fixed his eyes on Xiao Yuan's face. That man stared at Xiao Yuan with a deadly gaze, as if he wanted to burn a hole in his face. Xiao Yuan was a bit confused by the stare he was receiving, and as soon as he was about to look up, the imperial bodyguard behind him stepped forward, and unceremoniously pushed the bearded man away, go away, go away. You already saw the imperial edict, why are you still standing here for? The bearded man, who was pushed away, staggered a few steps. As he lowered his head, he silently retreated to one side. As the imperial bodyguards led Xiao Yuan forward, Xiao Yuan had an idea in his heart, and couldn't help himself from asking, who is that man? The imperial bodyguards didn't know that Xiao Yuan was the former emperor of the northern kingdom, so one of them replied without hesitation, Xiao Gongzi, that man was originally from the northern kingdom. After the northern kingdom was conquered, he surrendered to our country. General Xue has always been a kind-hearted man, so he gave this man a way to live by giving him the job of taking care of the vegetation at the Temple of Heaven. I heard that he went crazy a few months after he surrendered, and that he's always murmuring about whether he's going to die or not. Don't worry about it. Xiao Yuan's hands were red and painful, because he was forcibly holding the wooden box. Only after a long time did he exclaim a hum sound. Once Xiao Yuan and the imperial bodyguards arrived at the place where the ancestral shrine of the northern kingdom used to be, he saw that there were only a few pieces of ashy grey pine trees and cypress left behind, with fallen leaves on the ground. Xiao Yuan looked around and found a shelter, knelt down, then dug a pit, dirtying his hands with the mud. The imperial bodyguards didn't understand what he was trying to do, but when they asked him if he needed any help, Xiao Yuan shook his head and refused. Xiao Yuan opened the wooden box, and finally, took a look at the three things inside. After taking a deep breath, he buried the wooden box in the ground. After all this, he knelt on the ground, stroked the pit, and said inside his heart, I'm sorry. I'm not your northern kingdom's emperor, and I hope to have the opportunity to repay for the mistakes I've made in this life one day. But now, I only want to be Xiao Yuan. After silently reciting these things inside his heart, Xiao Yuan took out three incense sticks and wine, and respectfully worshipped them. After this, he stood up feeling like he had accomplished something big, and took a long deep breath, as if his lungs would exhale all the dirt inside of him. Then, he turned around to the imperial bodyguards, and said, let's go. The imperial bodyguards nodded and accompanied Xiao Yuan. When they passed by the place where they met the bearded man, Xiao Yuan saw him hunching his back to remove the weeds. How could such an obviously sturdy person look so small? Considering the way he looked at me just now, I guess that he should have recognized me. Xiao Yuan felt that he should say something to him as he stepped forward. But then, he stopped. What can even I say to him? Xiao Yuan kept his hands at his sides, clenching them into fists, until his palms turned red. The bearded man seemed to feel a gaze looking at him, so he stood up and looked over. His face was filled with scars, and these scars seemed to tell the tragic story of a war. Xiao Yuan felt like something was stuck in his throat as closed his eyes, and murmured an apology. The bearded man was stunned at first, but then he clenched his teeth and his cheeks tightened. After a brief moment, he relaxed his face again, and stepped forward, what? What did Gongzi say? This servant didn't hear it. Does Gongzi have something to tell this servant? Xiao Yuan opened his eyes, and before he could reply no, the bearded man, who was slowly approaching him, suddenly ran over. With his hands half-hugging and half-pushing Xiao Yuan, they fell off the cliff that was beside the path. There was an exclamation of surprise, and the imperial bodyguards were too slow to react. Xiao Yuan only felt weightless for a moment, and then his body fell to the ground. But when he didn't feel the pain that should have arrived after falling down, he was stunned. There was a protruding stone wall under the cliff, which was covered with a thick layer of leaves, cushioning the pain from falling off a cliff. When he was pushed down by the bearded man, the bearded man had deliberately put himself below, so that Xiao Yuan would fall on top of him Xiao Yuan wasn't hurt at all. After the bearded man got to the ground, he rolled over, 
grabbed Xiao Yuan without hesitation, and dragged him somewhere. Xiao Yuan then found that there was a small cave behind the stone wall, and if he was dragged into the cave, then he wouldn't be seen by the people above making them think that they fell all the way down. Xiao Yuan fiercely twisted the beaded man's hand, and before he could break away from him, he heard the man say, Your Majesty, Wei Chen will, will help you escape from this place. Chapter 175 Xiao Yuan was stunned for a moment, as he was immediately dragged into the cave when the bearded man released him, he knelt down on one knee in front of him, Your Majesty, in General Li Wooding's Deputy General. You may not know me, but don't worry, I know how to get out of here. Wei Chen will escort you out. I am not. Xiao Yuan's voice was trembling slightly as he reached out to pull up the bearded man. Don't kneel down to me. Get up. The bearded man was unwilling to get up, and insisted on kneeling, Your Majesty, you have to believe that Wei Chen will take you out of here. Wei Chen has already prepared this place and an escape route for a long time. Your Majesty, you've suffered enough. Imprisoned in the enemy's country, enduring the humiliation and being bullied by others. No, I'm here on my own free will. Xiao Yuan suddenly interrupted him. The bearded man's voice stopped abruptly, like a broken string of the guqin, leaving behind a heartbreaking trembling sound. As he raised his head to blankly stare at Xiao Yuan, his shoulders dropped abruptly. When he looked at Xiao Yuan, his gaze was filled with incomprehension, you, you're voluntarily staying here. How can you how can you stay here voluntarily? Xiao Yuan reached out to help him get up, and said, I'm just just living here, the same as you. At the top of the cliff, someone began to shout Xiao Yuan's name, which could be heard vaguely down in the cave. The bearded man knelt down once again, this time with both knees on the ground, Your Majesty, I've spent half of my life fighting for the Northern Kingdom, and I never had second thoughts during that time. I had many Xiongdi, but all of them died on the battlefield. I was the only one who decided to live, and ever since then, my conscience has been tormenting me every day. I dreamt about those dead Xiongdi countless times. In those dreams, they would poke me in the back, asking me why I was still alive. Your Majesty, can you tell me why am I still alive? Xiao Yuan couldn't stand to see the bearded man bowing his head and kneeling, so he simply knelt down as well, and said, I'm not the emperor of the northern kingdom. The bearded man interrupted him, Your Majesty. Even if our country was conquered, you're still our emperor. The monarch of the northern kingdom, this title is engraved in your bones, and it will follow you for the rest of your life. Even if you change your name. Even if you deny it. It's all useless in the end. Your Majesty, let's leave this place maybe, we can still rise again and take back the northern kingdom. The word said by the bearded man was like an iron whip with thorns. Every sentence he said was a huge slap to Xiao Yuan's heart, until the flesh and bones under his skin became blurred, to the point where it was no longer possible to distinguish Xiao Yuan's appearance. Like this, Xiao Yuan could no longer say anything in his defense. The bearded man suddenly pulled out a dagger from his waist, Your Majesty, are you really unwilling to leave this place? However, Xiao Yuan didn't make a sound for a long time. All right. Then forgive Wei Chen for being rude. I will leave first. Wei Chen had such an intention for a long time, but I wasn't able to make up my mind. Today, when I saw His Majesty, I couldn't stop thinking that maybe the meaning of my life was to take His Majesty and escape from the Southern Yan Kingdom. However, I didn't expect that His Majesty would be unwilling to leave that he would be willing to be a prisoner. What am I talking about? Who am I to blame His Majesty? When I also betrayed my Xiongdi, and surrendered to the enemy. Suddenly, the bearded man threw back his head and laughed out loud, until he was out of breath, as if he had lost his mind. Xiao Yuan thought that he meant that hell leave first, but who would have thought that the bearded man would suddenly raise a dagger, which looked very sharp, and cold. Xiao Yuan immediately shouted as he rushed forward, and oh. Unfortunately, it was too late. The bearded man cut his own throat, and the warm blood immediately spattered on Xiao Yuan's face. The bloody smell was extremely heavy. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan was taken back to the time when he worked hard every day, painstakingly trying to save the Northern Kingdom. 
But in the end, Xiao Yuan once again felt powerless and feared the will of the heavens, dragging him into the abyss again and again. Xiao Yuan's body trembled uncontrollably, as his ears roared with the repeated sound of someone calling your majesty. Those voices blended together, were like thousands of ghosts crying and howling in distress. Xiao Yuan suddenly raised his hand, and slapped himself hard on the face. Then he held his head with both hands. When an imperial bodyguard climbed down the cliff to find Xiao Yuan, he found that the bearded man had already lost his breath. Xiao Yuan was curled on the ground, covered with the splattered blood. The imperial bodyguard hurriedly came forward, and said, Xiao Gongzi, are you all right? He'll take you up, and then we'll go to report to his majesty. Xiao Yuan abruptly raised his hand, grabbed the imperial bodyguard's arm, raised his head, and said, Don't tell your emperor. Don't say anything. The two of them had agreed that Yan Heqin would be responsible for ruling the country and the state, so Xiao Yuan should take care of these things. At this time, Yan Heqin was reading the official documents, when he suddenly heard an imperial bodyguard report, Your Majesty, General Xue said that he has something important to report. Yan Heqin raised his head from the memorials, frowned slightly, and said, Let him in. After a short while, Xue Yan stepped in, clasped his fist, and knelt, Your Majesty. General Xue, you may rise. Although Yan Heqin was courteous, his attitude was in fact neither cold nor warm. He didn't even call Xue Yan uncle like he did in the past. Xue Yan stood up, and said, Your Majesty, there were some soldiers in the army who had plotted a rebellion. They were discovered in time and have been dealt with. Yan Heqin, hmm, General Xue worked hard. Xue Yan, Your Majesty, the reason for this rebellion was because some deputy generals in the army heard that you're protecting the former emperor of the north. Yan Heqin interrupted him with a heavy voice, General Xue, is there anything else you want to report? If not, then you may go back, and take a rest. Xue Yan was dumbfounded. After hesitating for a moment, he cupped his fist, and retreated. However, once he turned around, he suddenly said, He Qing, tell me. Do you want love, or do you want your family and country? Do you want to stay together with him, or do you want to conquer the world? Yan He Qing didn't take his eyes away from the memorials in his hands. At the same time he finished writing the last sentence, he said indifferently, Uncle, I want both. The thing that Yan He Qing wasn't afraid of, was to fight with all of his strength. What's the point of telling him to choose between the two, when it's clear that he hasn't put his life in danger? In this world, the hardest thing to obtain is when the person you like, likes you back. At this moment, Xiao Yuan is standing with him, and he no longer wants to leave even if there were thousands of soldiers against him, and even if thousands of people were pointing at him, what does Yan He Qing have to be afraid of? Chapter 176 Xiao Yuan, in order to clean off the blood on his body, spent almost an hour soaking in the bath. Only then could Xiao Yuan press all his emotions back inside his heart, completely calming down. After he changed into dry and clean clothes, he went back to his bedchamber. However, after a wave that had not yet subsided, another wave started again. Xiao Yuan had just stood still when a maidservant suddenly came to report in a hurry, Xiao Gongzi, Xiao Gongzi. Something terrible happened, Xie Gongzi ran out of the palace by himself. Early this morning, Xie Chengui woke up and suddenly began to mumble something about the Xie family to himself. Then he was desperate to get out of the palace, but the imperial bodyguards didn't let him leave he was just like a child, sitting on the ground, and crying out loud. When the imperial guards saw that he was a fool, they wanted to report this issue first, and then take action. But as soon as they stopped paying attention to him, Xie Chengui calmed down, climbed the wall, and escaped. Those imperial guards are too careless. Xiao Yuan was extremely angry and amused at the same time. Although Xie Chengui is very skillful, he's still one person. Aren't they able to stop him? Xiao Gongzi, that's because His Majesty has given the order that you two can't be hurt. Every order must be followed obediently. The maid replied. Xiao Gongzi, what should we do? Xiao Yuan, don't worry, I think I know where he went. Xie Chengui was walking down the street in a daze. He still didn't understand what had happened to him, 
but earlier today, when he was eating his meal, the maid had served him a dish of exquisite delicacies. As she smiled, she explained, Siegongzi, this dish is unique to our southern Yan kingdom. Please try it. Suddenly, Xie Chengui's heart was filled with depression. The appetizing dish in front of him was slowly covered in blood, staining the entire wooden table with a horribly bright red color. Xie Chengui fiercely overturned the table and hurriedly stood up in a panic, raising his head only to observe how the sky turned into a solid golden net, pressing straight down at him. As the word Southern Yen Kingdom echoed in Xie Chengui's ears like a vicious curse, he hurriedly covered his ears and desperately ran away as fast as he could. When he came back to his senses, he was already walking on the main street of the imperial city. All around, there was a bustling crowd of people. The sounds of shouting, selling and bargaining were mixed together, forming a scene of prosperity and harmony. There were stalls cooking noodles and wontons on the roadside. As soon as the lid was lifted, the white mist immediately blurred the whole imperial city. The tragedy of the country being conquered three years ago, seemed to have been swallowed by the people together with the fragrance of wontons. Xie Chengui stood frozen in place, thinking, where's this? What was I going to do? Right, my name is Xie Chengui. But, where am I? Xie Chengui looked left and right, when suddenly, he was surprised to recognize something from his memories upon seeing the corner of the street. The same blue stone slabs, the same corner alley. Here, it looks like my old home and this place looks like my country. A strong sense of familiarity slowly poured into Xie Chengui's mind, along with an inexplicable joy. Xie Chengui refused to let go of this feeling, and went to that corner to observe things more carefully. Isn't that store selling my favorite sweet-scented asmanthus cake? Isn't that the clearing where I used to play as a child? The accent of those people yelling, isn't it the same one I used to hear when I was young? This place is my country. This place is my home. Xie Chengui suddenly became excited as he ran towards the familiar place that lived in his memory. As he rushed through the street, he accidentally bumped into someone. That man exclaimed an ouch as he fell. After he stood up, and was getting ready to blame that person, as soon as his eyes fell on Xie Chengui's face, he was extremely stunned. As he pointed at Xie Chengui with a trembling finger, he was unable to utter a complete sentence, the youngest son of the Xie family. You, you, you how? We all, all thought that you were killed on the battlefield. You, you, you. The youngest son of the Xie family. After hearing those words, Xie Chengui suddenly remembered the reason why he wanted to come here, after hearing Xiao Yuan say that hell go to the north that day. That's right. I wanted to go back home, to see it again. Then, the man pulled Xie Chengui up, and said with emotion, It's good that you're alive. It's good that you're alive. At least, the Xie family's line wasn't erased. Second son of the Xie family, are you in a hurry to go back to worship? After hearing the man's words, Xie Chengui repeated the last words feeling very puzzled. Worship? Yes, on the day when the country was conquered, more than twenty members of the Xie family died together. Your house was filled with too much blood and the resentful energy was too deep. Although it was located in the imperial city, no one has dared to move in there, so it's been empty for the past three years. Speaking of which, where have you been in the past three years, since the Southern Yen Kingdom conquered the Northern Kingdom? The Southern Yen Kingdom conquered the Northern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom was conquered. Conquered. Suddenly, a thousand iron needles were ruthlessly twisted inside Xie Chengui's body, relentlessly grinding his head and limbs. The pain he felt was so strong, that it was like torture. Something was repeatedly being torn apart inside the depths of his memory, on the verge of coming out into the open. Chapter, 177 After seeing that Xie Chengui's face was unnatural, the man knew that he had said something that he shouldn't have so, he tried to give him some advice, you hey, don't be like this. It's been three years. Look at the bright side, although our country's name is now Yen, the taxes aren't heavy, and there are no domineering corrupt officials. Our people have enough food to eat, enough clothes to wear, and we can even have spare money. Isn't it that good enough? As the saying goes, the most important thing, is that people won't have to worry about food. 
Hey, where are you going? While the man was still talking, Xie Chengui suddenly threw him aside, staggering away as he held his head with one hand. Xie Chengui couldn't hear the shouts of the passers-by around him, and he couldn't see the strange gazes directed at him. As he stumbled across the street, he turned left, and a mansion appeared in front of him. The plaque of the house was broken, pitifully smashed on the ground. The two stone lions in front of the door had disappeared, and there was a thick layer of dust on the ground, leaving behind a noticeable footprint once you stepped on it. Xie Chengui stood bewildered in front of the mansion, almost out of breath, and a dull pain coming from his chest. As he walked forward step by step, he slowly reached out his hand to open the gates that had been closed for three years. The strong smell of dust slapped him in the face. As he walked further inside, the once clean front yard was now covered with overgrown weeds and broken walls. As Xie Chengui took a few steps, he suddenly kicked a stone, which rolled away revealing an object underneath. That object was hidden under the weeds, and it was hard to find if you don't look carefully. As Xie Chengui leaned over to pick it up, he found that it was an old, yellowed invitation. The words above were barely legible, and he could merely read a few words, Congratulations to Li Wooding. Great General. Xie Chengui seemed to have suddenly woken up from a heavy sleep. As he straightened his back, he slowly held his head and squatted down, fiercely pinching his scalp with his fingers, biting his lips to the point of almost bleeding. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Not only I'm Xie Chengui, the second son of the Xie family, but I'm also the general of the Northern Kingdom. My military mission is to fight the enemy and protect the country. It was as if he was back to three years ago, on that snowy night, when he delivered the rations accompanied by a song. The smoke from the fire was in front of them, and behind them, there were the ox carts filled with the rations that hadn't been delivered in time. The deputy general in that city fell on his knees and howled. Every word he said was soaked in blood, and his voice pierced through Xie Chengui's heart, as if it was sharper than any sword in the world, General Xie, Deputy General Nye was beheaded by Yen Heqing. He cut his throat. General Nye's soldiers broke through the siege and fled back to tell us that General Li and his men went to seize the rations, but they were trapped in the enemy's barracks. They ended up being burned to death by Yen Heqing. All of them. That day, the Deputy General's desperate cries still echoed clearly in his ears. Xie Chengui pinched himself fiercely, and squeezed his arm until he left behind black and purple bruises. Only then was he able to slightly control his emotions. Then he stood up and walked step by step towards the main hall of the Xie mansion. With every step, he carried the determination he had that day when he tried his best to kill Yan Heqing, when he resisted the southern Yan kingdom from stepping inside the northern kingdom's territory. But in the end, he was still defeated and he was unable to protect the northern kingdom after all. When Xie Chengui slowly stepped into the main hall of the Xie mansion, which has become a funeral hall, he saw that there were more than twenty tablets placed neatly. Behind the hall, there were several coffins covered with dust. When Xie Chengui heard that day that hell have to go to the battlefield, his mother had said to him, Son, do you remember the Xie family motto? Xie Chengui replied, Mother, don't worry, your son remembers it by heart. His mother nodded her head, and said, Our Xie family has been loyal for generations. Your father and your brother died on the battlefield. They don't have any regrets for their loyalty, you must not disgrace them. Xie Chengui, mother, you can rest assured, if the enemy wants to step into the northern kingdom, they'll have to step over my corpse. As his mother gently stroked his hair, she said softly, If that day were to come, don't worry. You won't be alone on the road to the Yellow Springs. At dusk, the sunset looked like blood in the sky. At this moment, Xie Chengui knelt in front of the twenty or so tablets. His mother's words of advice were intertwined with the words of advice that man gave him today, about how the people had enough to eat. Even though both pieces of advice were clearly different from each other, neither was wrong. Xie Chengui cowed out three times, and as soon as he raised his eyes, he saw his tablet placed in the funeral hall. Then, he stood up and stroked the words engraved on the tablet, and walked into the back hall. There were more than twenty coffins disorderly piled inside the back hall, and such a scene was very shocking to see. 
The relatives laying inside the coffins had long turned into white bones. As Xie Chengui looked at every single one of them, he finally found the coffin that had his name engraved on it. When he tried to open it with all his might, he saw that the tattered family motto was quietly lying inside. Xie Chengui picked up the family motto with trembling hands, and opened the first page. Inside, there was only one sentence written on it, the Xie family's descendants will share life and death with the northern kingdom. At this, Xie Chengui couldn't help crying from the bottom of his heart. He slowly climbed into the coffin as he held the old invitation in his family motto, curled up, and almost choked to the point of losing his breath. There was a wind blowing through the hall, and the sound of sobbing was sad and powerless. Chapter 178 When Xiao Yuan found Xie Chengui in the Xie mansion, Xie Chengui was kneeling on the ground, pulling the weeds with his bare hands. His eyes were bloodshot, his hair was messy, and his hands were covered with blood due to the roughness of the ground. But he refused to stop. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, half knelt down beside Xie Chengui, grabbed his wrist and blocked his movements, Chengui. Xie Chengui's movement stopped, but he didn't make a sound. Xiao Yuan's eyes were slightly turning red as he said with a soft tone of voice, Chengui, let's go back, all right. Xie Chengui asked, where to? Where can we go back? Xiao Yuan replied, well go back to the palace. Xie Chengui, the palace? Is that home? Xiao Yuan's throat seemed to have been suddenly grabbed, and he couldn't utter a single sound. No. That's not Xie Chengui's home. Even Taoyuan village isn't Xie Chengui's home. The northern kingdom is Xie Chengui's home. However, the northern kingdom no longer exists. Xiao Yuan wasn't sure how to reply. Xie Chengui pulled up the last weed on his own, and then respectfully kowtowed three times towards the funeral hall. With his head still lowered, making it impossible for other people to see his expression, he said to Xiao Yuan, let's go back to the palace. After sending Xie Chengui back to his bedchamber, and instructing the maidservants to take good care of him, Xiao Yuan went to his own bedchamber. After such a crazy day finally quieted down, Xiao Yuan summoned his maidservant and slowly walked towards his bedchamber. The sky was already dim, the wind was whistling, the snow was falling down, and the cold was piercing. Xiao Yuan walked slowly, allowing his body temperature to be taken away. As he approached his bedchamber, Xiao Yuan suddenly stopped, and looked straight ahead. There was a person standing at the entrance of the bedchamber. That person should have been waiting for a while, looking a little bit anxious. However, after that man saw Xiao Yuan, his eyes flashed with joy. As he hurriedly walked a few steps towards Xiao Yuan, he patted the snow away from Xiao Yuan's shoulders and head. Then he took off his robe to tightly wrap Xiao Yuan's body. As the warmth seeped into Xiao Yuan's body, that man soothed his frozen limbs. Xiao Yuan suddenly choked up, and shouted softly, Yan Ji. Yes, I'm here. Yan Heqing lowered his head, gently kissed Xiao Yuan's cheek and lips, Are you tired? Xiao Yuan replied, Hug me quickly. After hearing this, Yan Heqing didn't hesitate and placed his arms around Xiao Yuan, tightly hugging him. Xiao Yuan buried himself in Yan Heqing's arms, took a deep breath, and said, I'm not tired. Yan Heqing calmly stroked his hair soothingly. When suddenly, Xiao Yuan raised his head, and said, Yan Ji, let's go out of the palace and walk around. Just you and me. All right. It was still early, and the imperial city was as lively as ever. The Gongzis and young ladies passed by wearing fur coats, there were children chasing each other in the alleyways, and there were vendors shouting everywhere. Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan walked side by side. Xiao Yuan was curious about the gadgets on the side of the road, so from time to time he would point at something, shouting Yan Ji look at this and Yan Ji look at that. While looking at these things, Xiao Yuan ran ahead. Yan Heqing, who was a few steps behind, reached out to hold his hand. When Xiao Yuan's body was pulled towards Yan Heqing, he turned his head, and looked at Yan Heqing's hand, raising his eyes all the way to his face. As Xiao Yuan curved his eyes and laughed wantonly, he held Yan Heqing's hand, interlocking their fingers together. 
Suddenly, the sound of a noisy swona could be heard in the distance, playing the tune with great joy. Some idle shopkeepers poked their heads out and stretched their necks to watch. Yen Heqing and Xiao Yuan both retreated to the side of the road, only to see a wedding procession coming from afar. Ten Li of red wedding dress too accompanied with several drums rumbling. It looked so lively. Xiao Yuan laughed, oh, a wealthy family, it's so ostentatious. Hey, Yen Ji look. The bridegroom on horseback is wearing beautiful wedding clothes, they look really good on him. Yen Heqing followed Xiao Yuan's gaze and saw the red sedan carried by eight people. In front of the red sedan chair, the high-spirited bridegroom rode a horse with a red ribbon tied on its head. The bridegroom's face was full of joy as he bowed his hands, thanking the people who were celebrating around him. His red wedding clothes decorated with gold embroidery, seemed to have exquisite workmanship. Yen Heqing withdrew his eyes and looked at Xiao Yuan, as a thought faintly surged from the bottom of his heart. Chapter 179 Yen Heqing considered his words, and finally decided to open his mouth after a series of deafening firecrackers were lit. However, who would have known that a man in his early twenties would appear out of nowhere to ask Xiao Yuan, does Gongzi think that these wedding clothes are good looking? Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, they're beautiful. The man said triumphantly. They were made by my store. I'm not trying to boast, but my family's craftsmanship has been handed down for five generations. We used to be the imperial tailor in the former dynasty, our salary was that of an official, and we even had our own embroidery room in the imperial palace. Xiao Yuan has always had a supportive temperament, so when he spoke, praising words came out of his mouth, Xiao Xiongdi Wan has such a famous background, huh? Wouldn't it be a great honor if I were to get married using the wedding clothes from your shop? Ha! Huh, regardless of honor, our family's craftsmanship and materials are indeed the second best in this imperial city, so no one dares to say that they are the first. The man crossed his arms, feeling so refreshed by the compliment that he found the pretty young man in front of him very pleasing to the eye. As he reached out to pat him on the shoulder, he said, Gongzi, I think that destiny has brought us together. When you get married, if you're willing to come to my shop to make wedding clothes, I'll bargain for you. As the man patted him, the second time failed to land on Xiao Yuan's shoulder, because his wrist was suddenly held. The man was stunned. As he raised his eyes, he saw a man dressed in black clothes with a face as beautiful as jade and eyes that shone like stars. That black clothed man had an extraordinary appearance. Yan Heqing calmly took the young man's hand away, and asked indifferently, where's your store? The young man was brimming with enthusiasm, it's at the entrance of the East Street. Go straight from here, turn a corner, and you'll be there. Yen Heqing nodded, pulled Xiao Yuan, who was still watching the wedding procession, and walked forward. Xiao Yuan was confused, Yen Ji, where are we going? After seeing that Yen Heqing was silent, Xiao Yuan also stopped asking questions, and obediently followed him. Yen Heqing dragged Xiao Yuan to the store that the young man had just mentioned. This shop was indeed different from the ordinary shops. At first glance, it looked more like a mansion, with dyeing, fabric, and embroidery workshops. When a man saw two outstanding Gongzi walking in, he quickly welcomed them with a smile, are these two Gongzi here to buy cloth or to make clothes? Yen Heqing replied, to make wedding clothes. Xiao Yuan was struck by lightning for a moment, standing frozen in place, and staring at Yan Heqing with round eyes. The man said. You may not know, but our wedding clothes are all made by the shopkeeper himself. Only princes and nobles can afford to hire our shopkeeper. I can see that these Gongzi have extraordinary manners, so they shouldn't be ordinary people. Why don't you two sit in the shop for a while, they'll go ask our boss to see if he's willing to meet you too. The man was very polite as he welcomed Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan into the shop, then rushed to report. Only then did Xiao Yuan recover from the shock, Yan, Yan Ji. Wedding clothes. Yan Heqing replied unhurriedly, I saw you say that you liked it. Xiao Yuan said with difficulty, even if I like it, wedding clothes aren't made to be worn normally. Besides. Xiao Yuan's voice stopped abruptly as he seemed to react to the hidden meaning, and suddenly looked at Yan Heqing. 
the eagerness in his eyes almost made his eyes pop out. Yan Heqing stared back at him, and said calmly, Xiao Yuan, I want to marry you. I want to worship too with you when we get married. I want to announce it to the whole world. Xiao Yuan, do you want to marry me? Xiao Yuan, but the southern Yan kingdom is now. It doesn't matter. But they. They. It doesn't matter. Right after those words were said, Yan Heqing asked again, Xiao Yuan, do you want to marry me? Xiao Yuan nodded, and replied, yes. Yan Heqing's eyes brightened for a moment, like the bright moonlight that suddenly appeared in the dark sky. It's too painful to be tangled up in knots, and it's too tiresome to have a thousand thoughts. Instead, it's better to exchange those six words without any harm in them, with a single wishful word. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps came from outside the door, and a middle-aged man walked in. At first, the man was still holding a shelf and touching his mustache. But when he raised his head, after seeing Yan Heqing, he suddenly let out a very high scream, and knelt down, Your Majesty. Yan Heqing and Xiao Yuan looked at each other, and Xiao Yuan asked, How can you recognize the emperor? The shopkeeper trembled like a sieve chaff, a in answering to this master, I had the privilege to see the portrait of his majesty in the past. That portrait was painted so lifelike, showing his majesty's handsome and unrestrained three outstanding and elegant four tall and mighty five distinguished and brilliant six a godlike, refreshing and charming seven appearance. So I was very impressed. Shopkeeper, is your official title, idiom dictionary? Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand to pull up the shopkeeper. While shaking his head, he said, it seems that the portrait wasn't too good. His Majesty's long jade-like bodice handsomeness and elegance 8 unparalleled and otherworldly 9 beauty 10 magnificent attractiveness and gracefulness 11, weren't painted. The shopkeeper was shocked. He thought that he had perfected the skills of flattery, but he didn't expect that there would be mountains outside the mountains, and people outside the people 12. Xiao Yuan, who didn't know that his true feelings were recognized as flattery, smiled and asked, Boss, how long will it take for you to get the wedding clothes ready? Half a month no. As long as I have the size, His Majesty can give Humble Me seven days. Humble Me can make it in seven days. The shopkeeper patted his chest, and swore an oath. Then hurry up and measure me. Xiao Yuan opened his hands, and moved forward. The shopkeeper widened his small eyes, This master, you, you, you. Don't you me. We want two sets of wedding clothes. One set for me, and one set for His Majesty. Xiao Yuan replied with a smile. The shopkeeper hurriedly looked at Yan Heqing. When he saw him nodding his head, the shopkeeper was instantly dumbfounded, frozen in place. It took him a full three seconds to regain his senses. The shopkeeper was a wise man. The first thing he did after coming back to his senses, was to carefully ask Xiao Yuan. Then, young man, I dare to ask, do you want your wedding clothes to have a skirt? Or pants? Xiao Yuan. Pa pants, all right? The shopkeeper replied, understood. The bottom of Yan He Ching's eyes filled with disappointment in the blink of an eye. Chapter, 180. After they were measured, they were sent out with three kowtows from the shopkeeper. It was already late outside, and the wind was heavily blowing with snow. As the street became deserted, only a few stores were still open, with their warm candlelight falling on the white snow. As they slowly walked towards the imperial palace, Xiao Yuan suddenly said, Yan Ji Yi, I think that my body is much better these days. See? I used to stumble before, but these days I've been walking more stably. Yan He Qing's body paused for a bit, and then he made a hum sound. Xiao Yuan's eyes were wandering as he covered his lips, and coughed softly, why don't we wait for the wedding clothes to be ready? Then we will. The last few words were like mosquito sounds, so Yan He Qing couldn't hear it clearly, what? Xiao Yuan stopped walking, looked at the sky and the earth, but he never looked at Yan He Qing, to enter. Enter. The Bri Bridal Cha Chamber. Yan He Qing replied, wait for me here. Right after saying that, he hurriedly walked back towards the cloth workshop. After a while later, he came back and said to Xiao Yuan, 
the shopkeeper said that the wedding clothes will be ready tomorrow. Xiao Yuan. Tomorrow. The original half-month deadline now becomes tomorrow. Wouldn't that make the shopkeeper put his life on the line to reach the deadline? Can you not make things more difficult for the suffering common people? Xiao Yuan, all right then, tomorrow well enter, enter, enter. Yan Heqing finished the words for him, well enter the bridal chamber. Xiao Yuan, all right, why yes. Thank you shopkeeper, for sacrificing. Yourself. To fulfill the needs. Of other people. After the two of them returned to their bedchamber, a maidservant suddenly greeted them, Your Majesty, Xiao Gongzi. Xie Gongzi is waiting for you in the bedchamber. Xiao Yuan was surprised, at this hour. The maid showed helplessness, we've been advising Xie Gongzi that he can talk with you tomorrow morning, but Xie Gongzi doesn't want to go back. His Majesty instructed us to obey everything he asks, so no one dares to make Xie Gongzi go. Xiao Yuan thought of Cheng Gui's unstable mood today and was worried about what would happen to him. After glancing at Yan Heqing, he hurriedly walked towards the bedchamber. Yan Heqing saw that there was something wrong with Xiao Yuan's eyes, so he followed behind him. Inside the bedchamber, Xie Cheng Gui was standing beside the table. The candle that was about to burn out, was dripping with wax that wax condensed on the candlestick as it fell down, twisting horribly. Cheng Gui. Xiao Yuan called out softly. Xie Chen Gui turned his head and his eyes were bloodshot, as if he had cried a lot. When he looked at Xiao Yuan, he walked towards him step by step. Each step he took was like he was stepping on top of someone, since his footsteps were slightly shaky. What's wrong? Xiao Yuan took a few steps forward, until he was only one step apart from Xie Chen Gui. Yan Heqing frowned as he stared closely at Xie Chen Gui. Xie Chen Gui lowered his head and his voice was hoarse, as if he was deliberately hiding something. But it also seemed as if he was waiting for something. When Yan Heqing sensed something strange, he wanted to go forward to pull Xiao Yuan back. However, as soon as he stepped forward, Xie Chen Gui suddenly pulled out a dagger from his sleeve and pounced on Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan's eyes suddenly shrunk and he stepped back. At the same time, Yan Heqing also stepped forward to protect Xiao Yuan. However, Xie Chengui's target wasn't Xiao Yuan at all. He turned around with a false move, and held the dagger tightly. Without any hesitation, he stabbed Yan Heqing's abdomen, who had stepped forward to pull Xiao Yuan back, and then stabbed him again. Outside the window, the wind had suddenly become so strong that it almost uprooted the fragile trees in the courtyard. In a flash, Blood splattered on Xiao Yuan's face and body, like a fire that could burn him alive, making him tremble all over. At that instant, Xiao Yuan heard Xie Chen Gui shouting at him. What Xie Chen Gui said was, Your Majesty. They were two simple words, but right after they were said, a knife was placed on Xiao Yuan's neck. The ones who were holding that knife, were no other than the cold skeletons of the officers and soldiers that had shed blood and tears for the Northern Kingdom. Chapter, 181 The scream of the maidservant escaping, was the first sound to break the silence of the night sky. Before the imperial bodyguards outside the bedchamber could react, Xie Chen Gui had already locked the doors of the bedchamber, and blocked the windows with tables and chairs. As soon as he looked back, he saw that Xiao Yuan had taken off his coat, and was using it to try and stop Yan Heqing's bleeding. His coat was dyed red, and since Yan Heqing wasn't able to support himself, he fell down shakily. Yan Ge. Yan Ge. Xiao Yuan sat in a corner with Yan Heqing in his arms. Because of the massive blood loss, Yan Heqing felt extremely dizzy. As he felt that his consciousness was starting to blur, he struggled to open his mouth as if he wanted to say something, but in the end, he wasn't able to utter a single word. Yan Ge, don't say anything. Don't talk, everything will be all right. Xiao Yuan was on the verge of collapsing, his mind filled with the thought that Yan Heqing wouldn't die. However, Yan Heqing's breathing began to gradually become faint, and his consciousness was lax as he slowly closed his eyes. Xiao Yuan immediately panicked as he pressed his hands on Yan Heqing's shoulders, shouting at him, Yan Ji, don't fall asleep. Don't sleep, look at me, look. 
Xiao Yuan's words were interrupted when he was suddenly grabbed by the collar and pressed against the wall. Xie Chengui's eyes were bloodshot as he tightly clutched Xiao Yuan's collar, Your Majesty, what are you doing? Don't you remember? He's the one who killed the soldiers of the Northern Kingdom. He's the one who conquered our country. Shouldn't you hate him? Why don't you hate him? Your Majesty, do you still remember your own name? It's Zhou Yu. You're our emperor. You're the emperor of the Northern Kingdom. Xiao Yuan couldn't answer. Instead, he kept shaking his head, murmuring sorry again and again. The sound of his voice was like that of a heinous sinner a sinner that was finally punished, leaving only endless remorse and unforgiven sins behind. Enough. Your Majesty, why do you keep apologizing? Why? Xie Chengui roared, but he didn't get an answer for a long time. Suddenly, outside the bedchamber, the sound of the doors being hit, the hurried horse's hooves, as well as the shouts of Shui Yan, could be heard. It seemed that the soldiers who escorted the emperor had arrived in a hurry. Xie Chengui's face was calm and extremely cold. As he picked up the dagger that was still dripping with Yan Heqing's blood, he was about to rush out the door. However, he was pulled back by Xiao Yuan, who shouted pleadingly, Don't go, you'll die. Chen Gui, go away, escape. You'll definitely be able to escape. Go back to Taoyuan village, go back. Your Majesty, there's no way I can go back. Xie Chen Gui shook his head and slowly withdrew his hand. His tone of voice was calm, but it also seemed extremely cruel, as he said, Your Majesty, the descendants of the Xie family have only two ends. They either die of old age in the prosperous northern kingdom, or they die in the battlefield. Three years ago, I was unable to follow my Xiongdi. Now, it's time for me to go find them. After saying that, Xie Chengui righteously waved his dagger and rushed out without any hesitation his determination was so heavy that it could make people shudder. As soon as Xiao Yuan knelt on the ground, leaning on the last unbroken string in his mind, he turned back and continued to press on Yan Heqing's wound, repeatedly shouting at him to not sleep. Then, someone rushed in, stopped Xiao Yuan, and restrained him, pressing him to the ground. After that, Xiao Yuan was dragged outside, and someone hurriedly arrived to treat Yan Heqing's wound and stop the bleeding. Everything seemed to be mute, lost its color, leaving only chaos and confusion behind. Xiao Yuan wanted to ask if Yan Heqing was alright, but he was dragged out of the bedchamber in a mess. Outside the bedchamber, the snow was flying around, and the weather was cold. Xue Yan's face was pale with anger and fear. When Xiao Yuan was escorted to his feet, he heard Xue Yan say, Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, how could you be so cruel? How could you take advantage of His Majesty's feelings for you, and assassinate His Majesty together with the remnants of the Northern Kingdom? How could you be so vicious? Xiao Yuan didn't reply, and didn't try to defend himself. He simply curled up on the ground, without being able to shed any tears. He was a complete mess his whole body was hurting and his limbs were aching. He kept asking himself over and over again why has this happened, but he didn't know where to find such an answer. Perhaps, from the moment he thought that he could protect the Northern Kingdom, he was doomed to end up like this. Xue Yan has always done things simply and decisively, and he knows that the former emperor of the northern kingdom can no longer stay. Yan Heqing's insistence on doing things his own way in the past, can still be considered as acts made out of undying love. But if Yan Heqing still kept him around even after an assassination's attempt, he can only be reduced to a laughing stock. Today, the former emperor of the northern kingdom must die. The wind was howling, the snow was icy cold, and the weather was piercing. Xue Yan exhaled a mouthful of white fog, slowly pulled out his sword from his waist and said, Does the former emperor of the northern kingdom have something else to say? Xiao Yuan's body still carried Yan Heqing's blood on him, and his clothes were soaked by the falling snow. Black and white mixed together. Covered by the snow, Xiao Yuan supported his body, slowly getting up. His limbs were frozen because of the cold, his eyes were numb and lightless when he asked, Yan Ji Yi, is he okay? Xue Yan clenched the sword in his hand, and stared at Xiao Yuan for a long time. Seemingly unable to believe that even at this moment, Xiao Yuan would be thinking about Yan Heqing. 
He was silent for a while before he answered truthfully, His Majesty isn't in a life-threatening situation. That's wonderful. Xiao Yuan's voice trembled as he smiled and burst into tears. Xue Yan then realized that he may have misunderstood the man in front of him. However, for Yan Heqing's sake, for the southern Yan Kingdom's sake, and for the world's sake, he won't be merciful to this man today, if the former emperor of the northern kingdom doesn't have anything else to say, then be on your way. Chapter, 182 Unexpectedly, Xiao Yuan shakily stood up, wiped his face with his sleeve, and said, General Xue, can I request two things from you? You want to request something from me? Xue Yan couldn't believe it. Yes. There's no harm in asking. Xiao Yuan said, the first request, after tonight, can you send Xie Chungui's body back to the Xie mansion? The Xie mansion so is it true that the man just now was the son of the Xie family, who died for the country back then? Xue Yan murmured. Loyalty and righteousness should be respected. All right, I promise you this. What's the other request? Xiao Yuan looked into the distance. The huge imperial palace still has the shadow of the northern kingdom in every corner. Every plant, every tree, every flower, every stone, every sculpture, every painted building, and every pavilion. However, none of them can be reflected in Xiao Yuan's eyes, because his eyes were empty. For this closure, can you let me do it myself? Xue Yan was stunned, but then he nodded, and handed over his long sword. Xiao Yuan took the sword, backed up a few steps looking for a high open space full of thick snow, and knelt down. He took a deep breath, placed the long sword in his hand on the side, and then count out thirteen times. Each time, he would say sorry. At the last count out, his forehead was bleeding, dripping down his face. I'm sorry, they'll let the tiger return to the mountain too. I'm sorry that I couldn't protect the northern kingdom. I'm sorry that even now, I still want to see Yan Heqing ruling over the four kingdoms. I'm sorry that even though I got this body, I still want it to be Xiao Yuan. I'm sorry, I tried my best. But in the end, I was still defeated by the statement of heaven, that I won't be able to change this fate. If that's the case, then can I make amends with my own life? Just like how I once took my own life in order to compensate my brother, who hated me so much for abandoning him. Would it be possible to get rid of all the grudge and hatred this way? After kowtowing, Xiao Yuan endured the pain and dizziness he felt, lowered his eyes, and picked up the long sword beside him. As he placed it on his neck, he turned to Xue Yan, and said, General Xue, I have something that I want you to tell Yan Heqing for me. Suddenly, a cold wind raged past them. The whole world felt desolate, and the roaring snow almost covered Xiao Yuan's voice. At the same time, Yan Heqing, who was in his bedchamber, slowly opened his eyes. The physician beside him said joyfully, Your Majesty, are you awake? How do you feel? Because of the blood loss, Yan Heqing's lips turned white, and his mind was in a trance. It took him a few seconds to remember what had happened before he fainted. Then, regardless of the four people trying to stop him, he covered his wound, and stood up. Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan. Who is this? Ah. Your Majesty. Your Majesty, your wounds. The physician was swatted away by Yan Heqing's arm, the words he shouted were in vain. Yan Heqing staggered outside and ran away from his bedchamber, holding on to the pillar outside. As he gasped for breath several times, he didn't fall down. He raised his head, anxiously looking around for Xiao Yuan's figure. Once his eyes were fixed on the person kneeling in the snow, Yan Heqing's eyes shone with joy. He tried to shout, but because he had lost a lot of blood, he couldn't produce any sound. He could only try his best to walk towards that place, leaving behind a trail of blood on the white snow, which was immediately buried under the strong wind and snow. Not far away, Xiao Yuan, who was kneeling on the ground, placed the long sword on his neck. Then, he turned his head to Xue Yan, and said, Tell Yan He Qing that he has to live well for the rest of his life. I want to see I want to see what his prosperous, peaceful and flourishing world, his country, would look like. This sentence spread word by word rushed into Yan He Qing's ears. 
As he seemed to realize that something was wrong, he wanted to rush over in an instant, but his body was weak, and his footsteps were slow. Everything in front of him seemed to be blurred into the tragic white falling snow. When he pressed on his wound, the wound in his abdomen immediately brought him a sharp feeling of tearing pain, but Yen Heqin only hated that this pain wasn't painful enough to keep him awake a little bit more. As he stretched out his hand, he shouted madly, Xiao Xiao Yu. However, the wind and the snow were too heavy Yen Heqin's voice was too weak to reach him. In the end, Xiao Yuan never looked at Yen Heqin's direction from the beginning to the end. He simply closed his eyes, holding the hilt of the sword with shaking hands. Then, the silver light cut through the sky, and entered the bottom of Yen Heqin's eyes. For an instant, the world turned red and white as Yen Heqin helplessly watched Xiao Yuan's body falling down. This action occurred very slowly, but when he hit the ground, the impact was so heavy, that the snow on the ground immediately flew up a few inches. Yen Heqin also fell to his knees with him his chest feeling like it was pierced as his heart was ripped out of his body, and repeatedly smashed on the ground. Yen Heqin murmured the last word and as he fainted on the snow because of the blood loss. As the scarlet penetrated into the snow, and stained the earth, their hands were only a few meters apart. Chapter, 183 It said that after death, people can see a kind of fairy transport, ox head and horse, face one and meng put two in the yellow springs. But as soon as Xiao Yuan opened his eyes, the only thing he was able to see was a white and foggy chaos. As he stood in place, he looked around in a daze. Suddenly, someone ran past him in a hurry. That person was Xie Chungui. Xie Chungui kept shouting wait for me, wait for me over and over. Then, a figure appeared in front of him. That man slowly turned around. He had dignified facial features, but the smile on his face was quite silly. He held Xie Chungui, who had stumbled while running, and said, I'm waiting, don't worry. I've been waiting all this time. Xie Chungui's eyes slowly turned red. There was a trace of grievance on the face of General Xie, who was known for being intrepid on the battlefield. As he choked slightly, he said, General Li, I. I failed to protect the Northern Kingdom. I couldn't save my Xiongdi. Li Wuding stretched out his hand to rub his hair, You, ah, how old are you? You're always trying to act like an adult, always carrying all the burdens on your shoulders. Why didn't you come back to me as an eighty years old man? What was the hurry? I've been waiting for you all this time, haven't I? Come on, stop crying. Our Xiongdi are waiting ahead, we can't let them see you like this. It's enough for me to know that you look like this. Xie Chungui wiped away his tears, and nodded heavily, yes. Li Wuding laughed and rubbed his hair until it became a mess, then said a few words to him. He then turned around to look at Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan looked at him, and whispered, I'm sorry. Li Wuding shook his head and replied with a smile, Your Majesty, sometimes it's more painful to keep living. Do you think that it would be better to live with the conscience of treason, or to die for your country? Moreover, when you removed the treacherous ministers for the sake of the common people, we all saw it with our own eyes. Protecting the monarch and the country was the path chosen by the Xiongdi themselves. So, what are you blaming yourself for? After Li Wuding finished speaking, he clasped his fists and gave a military salute to Xiao Yuan. Then, he turned around and left side by side with Xie Chengui. The two of them gradually disappeared into the white fog in the distance. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but chase after them for a few steps, when suddenly, he heard someone calling him, Your Majesty. That voice was so familiar, that Xiao Yuan's body trembled as he turned around abruptly. She was exactly the same as the first time he saw her, with her hair styled in a bun and a green pigmented robe. Her voice was as gentle as he remembered, and with a smile on her face, she saluted Xiao Yuan, Your Majesty. Xiao Yuan's eyes widened in surprise, Hong Xiao. Your Majesty, it's me. What can I do for you? Hong Xiao asked with a smile on her face. Xiao Yuan looked at her smile, and said with a hoarse voice, I. Am not the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom. Am not your Emperor. Am not the Monarch of the Northern Kingdom. I wonder if Hong Xiao, 
who gave her life for the emperor in the past, has ever regretted it. Hong Xiao was puzzled. She thought for a moment, and then asked, When I was sick, the one who took care of me and made me laugh, was it you? Xiao Yuan was stunned for a long time before he replied, It was me. The one who allowed me to go out of the imperial palace to visit my sister, and also personally wrote an imperial edict so that I could take the imperial physician with me without any problems. Was it you? It was me. The one who gifted me a carefully selected red hairpin, was it you? Xiao Yuan nodded slowly, it was also me. Hong Xiao smiled, turned to look at Xiao Yuan, and firmly called, Your Majesty. Xiao Yuan suddenly burst into tears like a spring. Hong Xiao stepped forward and gently wiped away Xiao Yuan's tears, What happened, Your Majesty? Is something wrong? Xiao Yuan burst into tears and his voice choked with sobs. Unable to say a single word, he only shook his head incessantly. Hong Xiao smiled and said with a soft tone of voice, Your Majesty, I hope that you can have a good life. Take good care of yourself, and don't take your own life lightly, all right? Xiao Yuan sobbed and nodded his head. Hong Xiao held his shoulders and pushed him in the opposite direction, Your Majesty, someone is still waiting for you. Go quickly. After the sudden push, Xiao Yuan opened his eyes. Chapter 184 The sky was slightly bright, but the light surrounding was so obscure that it was nearly impossible for a person to know whether it was early morning or late afternoon. Xiao Yuan stared blankly at the golden veil in front of him, feeling that this scene was oddly familiar. As he tilted his head to look around, he couldn't help but curse inside his heart. Isn't this my bedchamber? Im. Im not dead. Memories of the past suddenly flooded into his mind as Xiao Yuan sat up violently. His black, silk-like hair slipped down his shoulders and scattered in front of his eyes. Probably because of Xiao Yuan's sudden movement, a person lying beside him seemed to be disturbed as they expressed an uncomfortable hum. Xiao Yuan turned his head to look, and was surprised to see Yan Heqing sleeping beside him. The bedchamber gradually brightened, so it turned out to be early morning. As he looked at Yan Heqing, Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand and pinched himself. Shit. It hurts. There's a bruise. This isn't a dream, ah. Uh. Not a dream. Then, could it be that those events were just a nightmare? Yen He Ching and I are still fine, so nothing happened. But why is the pain, the suffering, and the fresh blood dripping so clearly engraved in my mind? And why can't I forget it? Xiao Yuan was a little confused for a while, but the joy of regaining his life washed over him, making him feel so excited that he almost burst into tears. Xiao Yuan laid down on his side and wrapped his arm around Yen He Ching's waist. As he adjusted his posture and leaned comfortably on Yan Heqing's chest, he found something strange. Yan Heqing's face was flushed. He was short of breath, and his body temperature was unnaturally hot. His eyebrows were tightly knitted, as if he was having a nightmare, and his hands were clenched tightly into fists. What's going on? Does he have a fever? Yan Ji Yi. Yan Ji Yi. Xiao Yuan got up in a panic as he touched Yan Heqing's forehead. When Yan Heqing, who was in a daze, felt a trace of coolness in his forehead, he subconsciously rolled over and pressed himself against Xiao Yuan. His breath gradually turned heavier. A hot and firm thing pressed against Xiao Yuan's leg, making him feel horrified. Only then did he realize that Yan Heqing may not have a fever. Such excitement so early in the morning. Is he at his limit? Yan Heqing shouted Xiao Yuan's name in a daze, and Xiao Yuan hurriedly responded, It's me, I'm here. Yan Ji, let me help you. Xiao Yuan raised his head to kiss Yan Heqing, as he slowly stretched out his hand towards Yan Heqing's lower half. However, who would have known that Yan Heqing would fiercely block his mouth right after he spoke, unrestrainedly invading every part of his mouth? Yan Heqing's hands mercilessly tore Xiao Yuan's clothes apart ravaging his waist and buttocks, leaving behind bright red marks on Xiao Yuan's body. The taste of blood quickly filled his mouth, and Xiao Yuan couldn't bear the pain caused by Yan Heqing's roughness. As he gasped for breath, he subconsciously pushed Yan Heqing away, Yan Ji, it hurts. Wake up you're hurting me. 
Damn it. This foreplay is too wild. If we do it to the end, ill die in this bed. In order to avoid the tragic case of murdering one's own husband, Xiao Yuan pressed his hands against Yan Heqing's shoulders, and shook him a few times, Yan Ji. Hello. Daxiang Di Wan. Bao Bei Tu, dear. Darling. Husband. Hubby. Please wake up, I don't want to be fucked to death, alright? After a few more shakes, Yan Heqing gradually opened his eyes, and immediately stopped teasing Xiao Yuan. Yan Heqing then blankly propped himself up, as if he was thinking about something, and his eyes gradually brightened. Xiao Yuan took a long breath and collapsed on the bed. Most of his undergarments were spread out, and the marks on his body showed a shocking sight. When Xiao Yuan looked up at Yan Heqing, he was about to laugh and complain, but he suddenly saw how wide Yan Heqing's eyes became, filled with disbelief. Our little brat is back to life. Chapter 185. Yan Heqing sat up violently and took half a step backwards. His eyes and voice carried an undisguised anger, Why are you here? Xiao Yuan was confused by the question. Where would I be, if I wasn't here? Ha! Huh? Xiao Yuan didn't even know how to answer Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing began to realize that there was something wrong with his body when a dry heat ran through his limbs and bones, making him feel thirsty and dizzy. At this, he immediately looked down. Xiao Yuan followed Yan Heqing's gaze towards his lower half, carefully swallowed, and then rubbed it over, let let me help you. However, as soon as he said that, Xiao Yuan's collar was suddenly grabbed by Yan Heqing, strangling him until he was almost out of breath. Yan Heqing's voice was extremely cold. The anger in his eyes was like a burning fire, as if he would swallow Xiao Yuan at any given moment. He shouted, you dared to drug me? Drugs? How could I drug Yan Heqing? I don't want to die in the bed, alright? In the original book, Yan Heqing gave a great performance when he spent the night with ten women. So why the hell would he need to be drugged for? As his collar was clenched tightly, Xiao Yuan felt that he couldn't breath. He was uncomfortable as hell. When he reached out to stop Yan Heqing's actions, he argued, I didn't drug. However, before he could finish what he wanted to say, he was thrown off the bed by Yan Heqing. Since Xiao Yuan's clothes were still in a disheveled state, red marks and scratches appeared on his body when his bare skin rubbed against the ground. He rolled on the ground several times, without being able to stop himself, until his head knocked against the corner of the table. Immediately after, blood started to slide down from a wound on his head, dyeing his eyes red. Xiao Yuan's black silky hair was scattered and wretched as he covered his forehead, his eyes were dazed from the pain. He felt like he would faint at any moment. But Yan Heqing didn't even bother to look at him. He simply shouted with a cold tone of voice, Get out! Xiao Yuan was completely dumbfounded, frozen in place. Even if he was slow, he knew that something was wrong, but Xiao Yuan didn't know what was wrong. So, he cried out pleadingly, Yan Ji. This pet name was the final straw that provoked Yan Heqing's anger. Yan Heqing's eyes were filled with bitterness and disgust as he got out of the bed to heavily press Xiao Yuan's head against the ground. Yan Heqing's voice was even more frightening because he was suppressing his anger, will you dare to call me like that again? Right after that, Xiao Yuan was thrown out of the bedchamber. It was snowing outside, and Xiao Yuan, who was half-naked, was thrown into the snow. It was cold, and there were maids and imperial bodyguards who passed by from time to time. They all looked at him with pity and ridicule in their eyes. Xiao Yuan remained in the same position after being thrown out, blankly staring at the closed doors of the bedchamber that were so familiar to him. His body was covered with red marks and scratches, the bleeding coming from his head hadn't stopped. Once he was covered by the cold snow, it was like he was in pain again. A maid who couldn't bear seeing him like that anymore, walked forward to help Xiao Yuan get up and fix his clothes, Xiao Jun Wang Wan, let's go back. Xiao Yuan suddenly looked up at her, and shouted, Xiao what? The maidservant was so frightened that she said weakly, Jun Wang. Xiao Yuan suddenly stood up, pulled up his clothes, and looked around. Because he wasn't wearing boots, 
he had to walk barefooted in the snow, to the point where his feet became numb and red due to the cold. Finally, a shallow pool appeared in front of him, and Xiao Yuan rushed forward only to kneel at the edge of the pool. The pool was covered with ice, and it was dazzling under the warm light of the early morning. When Xiao Yuan looked at his face reflected in the ice, he couldn't say a word for a long time. In the original book, Xiao Pingyang lived in the Northern Kingdom for a period of time before agreeing to Yan Heqing's marriage proposal, in order to protect the Western Shu Kingdom from the invasion of war. At that time, Xiao Pingyang was called Xiao Jun Gongzhu too. At this moment, the frozen lake wasn't reflecting the delicate and beautiful face of the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom but a clear and handsome face, smooth like porcelain, with pupils like the full moon, eyebrows full of tenderness. He showed a curved smile on his lips, but with a wanton behavior, expressing a rare freedom in a world like this. This face was exactly the same as the one Xiao Yuan had in his previous life. To clarify some crazy theories I saw in the comments of the, XYA didn't travel to the original book, nor did he travel back in time, he's simply inside the body of XPY's brother now remembered the one from her wedding. That was the exact copy of XYA in his past life. That one. Chapter, 186. Xiao Yuan's forehead was still bleeding, his lips were pale, his body was covered with a thin undergarment, and his skin was marked with red bruises. If he even moved a bit, he would feel pain. No matter how good-looking he was, he still looked extremely miserable right now. So I did die. And I was reborn again. Reborn in the body of the former Xiao Wangye of the Western Shu Kingdom. How long has it been since my death? And why is he in the Southern Yan Kingdom? There were too many questions, coming one after the other. As Xiao Yuan covered his forehead, he knelt on the ground feeling overwhelmed. His body was trembling, but he didn't know whether it was due to the pain, the cold, or a combination of both. The maid servant who had tried to help him a while ago, trotted over and placed a coat over Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wan, this servant will send you back to your bedchamber. Xiao Yuan nodded his head, and stood up with the help of the maid. Xiao Yuan's temporary bedchamber was on the west side of the imperial palace, which was often used to entertain guests, and was also the place where the foreign envoys lived. The maid went to the Taiyi Hall to ask for medicine for Xiao Yuan's bruises, and cleaned the wound on his forehead. Xiao Yuan looked around the bedchamber until he found a book handwritten by the original owner of this body. After Xiao Yuan read the book, and asked some maids, he finally understood what was going on. Three years ago, the Western Shu Kingdom began to be in a state of regime separation. First of all, the Emperor of the Western Shu Kingdom died of an illness, and for a long time, there was no one who could succeed the throne. The Western Shu Kingdom is a country dominated by women, and both princesses and princes can fight for the throne. The imperial court is extremely complex, and there isn't anyone, besides Xiao Pingyang, who can monopolize the throne. Meaning that during the process of fighting for the throne, there were many instances where both sides have suffered defeat. At the same time, the Western Shu Kingdom was hit by natural disasters, popular uprising, barbarian invasions, and other chaotic events. The country that was once peaceful and stable, had turned into a mess. However, during the past three years, the throne of the Western Shu Kingdom had changed from a highly desirable sweet steamed bun to a burning hot potato one and the people who originally wanted to seize the throne, died during the fight for power. Xiao Wangye is a man that has a being in harmony with the rest of the world too kind of temper, always aspiring for a leisurely and compensant type of life. But since his country has turned into this state, with the matter of survival at hand, Xiao Wangye doesn't have a way to bear such burden on his own. Who would have known that before these internal fights for power could be solved, external problems would arrive. After the unification of the Three Kingdoms, the Southern Yan Kingdom began to eye the Western Shu Kingdom. Ever since the defeat of the Western Shu Kingdom, the country was divided by the barbarians around it. So, in this situation, fighting against the Southern Yan Kingdom would be like hitting a stone with an egg three. In order to save the Western Shu Kingdom, Xiao Wangye reduced himself from a prince to a commoner. By lowering his dignity, he showed his goodwill. Saying that he was willing to pay tribute to the Southern Yan Kingdom every year, with the condition that the country's territory will be preserved, and the Western Shu Kingdom's title wouldn't be taken away. 
However, Yan Heqing didn't want to do it this way, making it clear that he wanted to unify all of the kingdoms into one, and that he didn't want a vassal state. Xiao Wanye was at a loss at what to do, but in the end, he traveled all the way to the southern Yan kingdom to bow his head, and surrender himself. Even if he can only delay it by one day, it's still a whole day. When a monarch reaches such a state, he ends up looking both cowardly and sad, but also laughable and helpless. When Xiao Wanye came to the southern Yan kingdom to proclaim himself as a subject, a year had passed since the assassination attempt, so when Yan Heqing heard the name of Xiao Wanye, he was eager to meet with him. However, he then left with a cold face. Xiao Wanye tried every means to curry favor, but he failed again and again to meet Yan Heqing's eyes, not to mention that he failed to discourage Yan Heqing from sending troops. Xiao Wanye, finding himself in a desperate situation, met a person. With the help of that person, he entered Yan Heqing's bedchamber at night, with the intention of drugging Yan Heqing, so that he would escape after a night of pleasure. But after drugging Yan Heqing, Xiao Wanye felt ashamed and humiliated like a prostitute from the Red Pavilion, who had to rely on being bought in exchange for profit. The years of repression instantly defeated the monarch's last line of defense, filling his mind with suicidal thoughts. Impulsively, he drank some poison. And then, President Xiao woke up. Xiao Yuan closed the handwritten notes, shook his head, and sighed with great emotion. Then, he whispered, Thank you for your hard work. I don't know who's the one who helped Xiao Wanye, since he was vaguely mentioned in his notes. But since he was able to let Xiao Wanye enter Yan Heqing's bedchamber in the middle of the night, he must be a person with high authority and credibility. Unexpectedly, a year has passed since my death. A year isn't a long nor a short period of time, and I don't know how Yan Heqing spent it. Xiao Yuan brought over a brush, ink and paper as he dipped the brush in the liquid, he studied the ink. Then, he turned to the last page of the notebook, and on top, he wrote the word revenge. He wrote, things to take revenge on. Domestic violence, of all kinds. Not letting me call him Yan Ji wait, don't. I won't call him like that ever again. Not anymore. Damn it. Next time he'll call Yan Ji a dog instead. Xiao Yuan aggressively closed the notebook, but after a while, he silently opened it again and added the word barking after the last sentence. Chapter 187 Xiao Jun Wang, this maidservant will help you clean the wound. It may hurt a little, but if you can bear with it, this maidservant will try to be as gentle as possible. The maidservant beside him said softly, as she carefully bandaged the wound on Xiao Yuan's forehead. Before, Xiao Yuan was confused, trying to understand what was going on and felt dizzy. At this time, when he had finally calmed down, he found that the maid had been helping him all along. Xiao Yuan was about to raise his head and thank her, but when he saw the maid's face, he froze midway. The maid hadn't noticed the strange look in Xiao Yuan's eyes, so she carefully applied the medicine for him. Xiao Jun Wang, the bruises on your body should be washed with hot water, this maidservant will go to. Xiao Yuan interrupted her abruptly, and asked urgently, What's your name? The maidservant was slightly stunned as she replied, My. No no. This maidservant's name is Tian, Tian Xiang. Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, and asked, Do you have a sister? Tian Xiang nodded, How did Xiao Jun Wang know? This maidservant has an older sister, called Hong Xiu. As soon as Tian Xiang said those words, Xiao Yuan began to cry and laugh. She was so scared, thinking that she had said something wrong, she quickly knelt down to apologize. However, Xiao Yuan hurriedly stopped her and pulled a stool for her to sit down, why did you enter the imperial palace to become a maid? After Hong Xiu died, Xiao Yuan not only buried her, but he also sent a reward to her younger siblings a hundred tails of gold, so that they could each get married and start a business. This way, even if the northern kingdom fell, Tian Xiang wouldn't have to reduce herself to the point of entering the imperial palace as a maidservant. Although she didn't know why Xiao Jun Wang was curious about her life, Tian Xiang replied with honesty, Xiao Jun Wang, this maidservant doesn't have parents. Since childhood I've been living with my older sister and my brother. A few years ago, my sister had an accident, so my brother and I relied on small handmade items to make a living. 
But later, the northern kingdom was conquered, and for a time, no one was interested in those small items anymore. My older brother is old enough to get married, so this maidservant tried to enter the imperial palace, and got selected. Xiao Yuan frowned tightly, after your sister's accident, didn't the imperial palace send a reward? Tian Xiang nodded, someone came to appease my brother and I. They gave us the reward his majesty sent. Xiao Yuan asked, how much was it? Tian Xiang blinked, and said, it was a lot. One tail of gold. Xiao Yuan. One tail. Tian Xiang, yes. Xiao Yuan. Fuck. MMP. The minister that went to deliver the reward was really greedy. Xiao Yuan was infuriated. When Tian Xian looked at Xiao Yuan's irritated face, she was slightly scared. Since she was the humblest maid in the imperial palace, if there was a hard or tiring type of work, she would be the first one to go. The day before yesterday, when she was sent to serve Xiao Jun Wang, she heard from the other maids in the imperial palace that this foreign official, Jun Wang, had a bad temper. They said that he might even beat and scold the maid sent to him, so Tian Xiang thought that she should pay close attention to her words. Tian Xiang was restless and didn't know what to do as she saw Xiao Yuan suddenly getting up and rummaging through the cupboard. Since this Xiao Jun Wang used to be the monarch of a country, no matter matter how miserable he was, he still should have some money. Sure enough, after a short while, Xiao Yuan found a pile of gold and silver. Xiao Yuan stuffed all the things he found into Tian Xiang's hands, and said, take these first, it'll definitely give you those 99 tails of gold in the future. Tian Xian stammered and asked, 99 tails of Jigo gold. Xiao Yuan nodded his head without hesitation. As a tyrannical president. If you say that you'll give a hundred tails of gold, you will give a hundred tails of gold. Not a single cent less. At this moment, as a woman who just met a tyrannical president, Tian Xiang looked at the gold and silver in her hands with only one thought in her mind. In the end, Xiao Jun Wang was driven out of the bedchamber by the emperor himself this morning. If he became crazy after being subjected to submission, what should I do? In the early spring, the green branches began to sprout, but the few cold snowflakes refused to disappear. Outside the emperor's bedchamber, a man was relentlessly arguing with the imperial bodyguards at the door, let me see your emperor. I've something important to say to him. Xiao Jun Wang, his majesty has gone to bed, please don't shout. Please go back. The imperial bodyguard at the door, with a cold face and his hand on his sword scabbard, ruthlessly drove Xiao Yuan away. Daxiang Di Wan, it's just you sure two hour ah. Uh. The sun is still hanging on top of the mountain. Time to sleep my ass. The imperial bodyguard said profoundly, although it's only Yushir hour, his majesty has his own reasons. Xiao Yuan. Another imperial bodyguard couldn't stop himself, and whispered, Xiao Jun Wang, don't make it difficult for us. After the last incident, his majesty was so angry that he dismissed all the imperial bodyguards that were in charge of his bedchamber. Recently, his majesty has also been in a bad mood. Why does Xiao Jun Wang want to anger his majesty? The imperial bodyguard's words were subtle, but Xiao Yuan understood that the last incident he was referring to, was the fact that Xiao Wanya had sneaked into the imperial bedchamber to drug the emperor. Originally, Yan Heqing intended to drive Xiao Wanya back to the western Shu kingdom, but the ministers advised him to not do it. Xiao Wanya came to the southern Yan kingdom to present himself as a subject. But he was also the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom, so it wasn't in line with the etiquette and rules to drive him away like this. After considering the advantages and disadvantages, Yan Heqing didn't drive him away. But he didn't want to see Xiao Yuan. In his mind, Xiao Yuan had made up a lot of plans to let Yan Heqing know it was him, but it was useless. Today, since Xiao Yuan was still unable to see Yan Heqing, he returned feeling unhappy. Tian Xiang couldn't bear to see him like that, so she tried to persuade him, Xiao Jun Wang, everyone in the imperial palace knows that his majesty is an extremely devoted man, and that there's already someone else inside his heart. This maidservant heard others say that after the death of that man, his majesty would go to his tombstone to worship, as long as he's free, every single day. 
so please, don't provoke His Majesty more than you already have. After spending a few days together, Xiao Yuan found that Tian Xiang's temperament was very different from Hong Xiu's. Hong Xiu was extremely cautious in both her speech and behavior. After having served the emperor for many years, Hong Xiu had long since developed a delicate and understanding personality. Tian Xiang, on the other hand, was simply a young girl. Even though she was deliberately disguising it, the straightforwardness in her bones was still present, so she would often say what she really thought. I know he has someone in his heart. Xiao Yuan melancholy said. If Xiao Jun Wang knows, then why are you still provoking his majesty, ah? Tian Xiang didn't understand. Because I'm the one who Yan Ji Yi has inside his heart. However, Xiao Yuan simply waved his hand and didn't explain. Since Tian Xiang knew that he must have his own reasons, she could only sigh helplessly. Just when Xiao Yuan was thinking about how to meet with Yan Heqing, he suddenly heard that he had a visitor. As Xiao Yuan wondered who would come to visit him, he saw Huang Yu walking in with his hands behind his back. Huang Yu immediately ordered the maid and the imperial bodyguard to wait outside, leaving only the two of them inside the bedchamber. Huang Yu wasn't polite and didn't wait for Xiao Yuan to open his mouth. He directly sat down, grabbed a cup of tea and slowly took a sip before asking, Xiao Jun Wang, have you changed your mind about the plan we've discussed last time? What last time? What plan? Why did Xiao Wangya and Huang Yu collude with each other? Isn't the second half of the original book known for Yan Ji Yi building his harem? How come it ended up turning into a conspiracy plot when in the one involved? When an idea suddenly appeared in Xiao Yuan's mind, he pretended to be serious as he said, I still need to think about it. But, I wonder if General Huang can introduce me to his majesty? However, as soon as he said those words, Huang Yu stared straight at Xiao Yuan, making his back lightly shiver. Chapter, 188 After a long silence, Huang Yu said with a smile on his face, I've long ago advised Jun Wang to listen to me, to don't such a dirty and humiliating thing such as drugging his majesty. Unfortunately, Jun Wang didn't believe me. Is Jun Wang trying to threaten me? It's a pity that his majesty doesn't want to see you. I would like to advise Xiao Jun Wang again. Xue Yan is in a conflict with his majesty right now, he has no power and no influence. If it weren't for the newly promoted Chen Gu, he wouldn't even have a say in the matter. I hope that Jun Wang will see the situation more clearly. After saying this, Huang Yu sneered, got up and left. Xiao Yuan, with a confused expression on his face, went to read Xiao Wang Ye's notes, only to find that there wasn't any mention of Huang Yu. It seemed that their friendship was extremely shady, and Xiao Wang Ye was afraid of leaving any evidence behind, so he didn't mention it altogether. Could it be possible, that even if Li Wuding isn't here to compete for the merit against him, Huang Yu still has the intention to commit treason? A ah, if you want to commit treason, then do it. If you want to scheme, then scheme. It doesn't matter. But could you let me see Yan Ji first? Xiao Yuan put aside the handwritten notes, held his head, and howled, wait. Xiao Yuan suddenly remembered something and hurriedly called Tian Xiang to ask her, Tian Xiang, you said before, that his majesty would go to worship in his spare time every day. Tian Xiang nodded, that's right. Xiao Yuan's eyes lit up as he asked eagerly, where's this place? Tian Xiang guessed what he was thinking about and waved her hands in panic, Xiao Jun Wang, no one is allowed to enter that place except for His Majesty. If you go there, you'll lose your head. Please don't think about that place, Xiao Jun Wang. Tian Xiang, as long as I meet His Majesty, it'll be fine. Trust me. Xiao Yuan said. Xiao Jun Wang, what can you do? That's a forbidden place. Tian Xiang still refused. Xiao Yuan said with a smile, he'll sing a song for his majesty. Sing sing a song. That's right. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat and sang, the river flows eastward. The stars in the sky join the big bear constellation Ah. The stars in the sky join the big bear constellation one. What's with that expression? Don't worry, if this method doesn't work, then I can also recite the party constitution too and influence His Majesty with the brilliance of the socialist values. 
While Xiao Yuan was still talking, Tian Xiang stood aside completely speechless. Xiao Jun Wang is a complete fool. How will that work? As soon as Xiao Yuan's words were finished, Tian Xiang choked and said, Xiao Jun Wang, I know that it's hard to be in a foreign country, but you have to be strong, ah. Wait for me, this maidservant will go to the Tai Hall, to ask if there's any kind of medicine for calming the mind. You have to make sure to rest for a couple of days. This maidservant will take good care of you. However, in the end, she was unable to resist the softness of his words, and Tian Xiang took Xiao Yuan to the place where Yan Heqin worshipped. Unexpectedly, that place was actually the former Northern Kingdom's Altar of Heaven. Tian Xiang led Xiao Yuan towards the altar while telling him about the rumors. It was rumored that Yan Heqin hugged the corpse of that man and cried for three whole days. It was also said that the man was buried in bright red wedding clothes. The rumors also said that when the emperor worshipped, he would often speak nonsense things such as transmigrated soul, rebirth and other confusing words. He would also ask the tombstone again and again, when will you come back to me? I'm sure that you'll be able to come back. He cried for three whole days. Xiao Yuan couldn't breathe right. He has never seen Yan Heqin cry. After all, Yan Heqin's nature has always been stoic. No matter how difficult and sad things were, he would only clench his teeth and swallow them. Besides, in the original book, he has never been described as showing any kind of expression of great joy or sorrow. Tian Xiang nodded, His Majesty is extremely devoted to that person. Ah, Xiao Jun Wang, you must never do the same foolish thing you did before. Xiao Yuan laughed and said, Don't worry, it won't happen again. As soon as Tian Xiang breathed a sigh of relief, she heard Xiao Yuan say with a smile, From now on, we'll have the greatest opportunity to love each other freely. Tian Xiang. Xiao Jun Wang is no longer a fool. He's insane. He's out of his mind. How will that work out? Chapter 189. After they found the forbidden area, Xiao Yuan stood in place for a long time, unable to speak. The forbidden area was located on the hillside where the altar of heaven used to be. This place was renovated into a small house with a courtyard surrounded by a fence, where mulberry and hemp were planted. There was also a small pond, and inside the pond, the leaves of the lotus plants had withered due to the cold winter. In the summer, it must make a beautiful scene of endless blue, with a small fish shaking its head and tail under the floating leaves. That small house was exactly the same as the one where Xiao Yuan lived in Taoyuan village. Tian Xiang whispered, for fear of disturbing the peace of this place, his majesty only arranged the imperial bodyguards to patrol nearby, but they aren't allowed to be here. Xiao Yuan expressed a hollow sound, but when he felt that his voice was choking up a bit, he hurriedly lowered his head to calm his heart. Then he went forward and pushed open the door of the house. Tian Xiang hastily pulled him back, Xiao Jun Wang. No one can enter here except for his majesty. We'd better not go inside. Let's just take a look from outside. If His Majesty finds out, we'll be sentenced to death. Xiao Yuan patted Tian Xiang's hand to appease her, It's alright, Tian Xiang, trust me. If you don't want to go in, just wait for me outside. I'll go in and have a look. Tian Xiang didn't stop Xiao Yuan this time, simply watched him push open the door and walk into the small room. The only thing she could do was twist her sleeves with worry, as she stood outside. The furnishings inside the house were, indeed, exactly the same as the wing room inside the mansion where Xiao Yuan lived in Taoyuan village. The only difference was that there was a tomb in the center of the room. In front of the tomb were offerings, copper coins, paper money and a small incense burner. There were three incense sticks placed in the small incense burner, and the smell was so clear, that it seemed like a dream. When Xiao Yuan approached the tomb, he saw a jade flute hanging on the tombstone, the same one he had gifted Yan Heqin. When he looked at the tombstone unexpectedly, Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqin's names were engraved on it. It was as if someone had heavily punched Xiao Yuan in the chest, making his heart feel stuffy and sour. Xiao Yuan's eyes were red as he squatted down in front of the tombstone, 
carefully tracing Yan Heqing's name with his finger over and over again, whispering, I'm sorry, I made you wait again. It took Xiao Yuan a long time to stabilize his emotions. As he stood up, he couldn't help but mutter, How does this count? This burial can't be considered as my own, right? Xiao Yuan muttered for a while, until his eyes locked on the jade flute hanging on the tombstone. The red tassel of the jade flute had long turned into a dark red, showing how old it was. After Xiao Yuan reached out for the jade flute, he gently rubbed it with his fingertips with a touch of nostalgia. The jade flute was the only relic in the room, after all, it was the only thing he had left behind for Yan Heqing. The scene of Yan Heqing teaching him how to play it suddenly flashed through his mind, making Xiao Yuan feel slightly moved as he put the jade flute on his lips. Suddenly, a loud angry roar came from behind him, put that down immediately. Xiao Yuan was so frightened that he involuntarily trembled. Without being able to hold it steady, the jade flute slipped from his hand and heavily hit the ground. With a clear and crisp sound, the jade flute smashed against the ground, breaking in half and miserably rolling on the ground several times. For a moment, the whole world seemed submerged in silence. Yan Heqing's eyes overflowed with disbelief at first, as he stared blankly at the two broken pieces of the jade flute on the ground. As he staggered forward to pick it up, he frantically tried to put the jade flute back together. However, it didn't matter how many times he tried, the moment the two pieces were connected, they could only pitifully break again. Yan Heqing's hands were slightly trembling. He had once searched all over the land under the vast sky, but he couldn't find any news of that man. He didn't know what brought that person to his side, but he also didn't know what took him away. Yan Heqing blamed himself day after day, asking himself why was I unable to protect Xiao Yuan that time. Questioning himself every night why did Xiao Yuan commit suicide in the first place. He was tormented day and night, and yet, he couldn't get an answer. Even now, the things that he left behind were so easily destroyed. Yan Heqin couldn't even protect the jade flute. He couldn't even protect this thing properly. Xiao Yuan was stiff, but he reacted extremely fast. He stepped forward and squatted in front of Yan Heqin, who was still trying to put together the jade flute, and held his wrist. Then, he spoke quickly and clearly, Yan Heqin, look at me, Im. However, before he could finish what he wanted to say, Yan Heqing suddenly raised his bloodshot eyes, grabbed Xiao Yuan's throat, and heavily slammed him against the wall. Chapter, 190 The hit was so strong, that Xiao Yuan's internal organs were almost knocked out of place. His eyes were blurry and a sharp pain emerged in his throat as the air was forcibly taken out of his lungs. Feeling like his neck would be crushed and twisted at any given moment, Xiao Yuan could only hiss helplessly as he tried hard to struggle but his movements were stopped by Yan Heqing. Right after that, he was slammed into the wall again. But this time, Xiao Yuan's head was hit, making him feel like his mind was buzzing, and his vision blurred. Yan Heqing didn't give Xiao Yuan a chance to explain himself, since he already had the intention to kill Set in his mind. Xiao Yuan tried to make Yan Heqing listen to him, but he was being choked so hard that he could hardly breathe, let alone speak. If this kept going, he really would be strangled to death by Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan's body felt very cold as he relied on pure instinct to keep struggling. At the same time, his mind was filled with all the curses he couldn't wait to shout at Yan Heqing, for trying to murder his own husband. Seeing that Yan Heqing's hands were like merciless iron chains, getting tighter and tighter, a person suddenly rushed in. As that person knelt down in front of Yan Heqing, they kept kowtowing and shouting, Your Majesty! Your Majesty, please don't be angry! Your Majesty, you can't kill in this place! ITLL be stained by the blood! ITLL disturb its purity! Your Majesty! Please, have mercy! This person was none other than Tian Xiang. Tian Xiang's words slightly brought back Yan Heqing's sanity, and when he realized what he was about to do, he looked back at the tomb, slowly letting go of Xiao Yuan's neck. Xiao Yuan then fell to the ground, prostrated himself awkwardly, and rubbed his neck, trying to breathe as he coughed and gasped incessantly. His neck was now filled with blue and purple bruises, where the darkest colors looked like rotten fruits and vegetables. 
He wanted to tell Yan Heqing that he was Xiao Yuan, tell him about their past together. But as soon as he opened his mouth, he found that he had lost his voice. His throat was extremely sore, and he could merely pronounce powerless mumbling sounds. After Yan Heqing coldly ordered them to get out, he leaned over to pick up the jade flute. Tian Xiang hurriedly picked up Xiao Yuan and struggled to take him away. As Xiao Yuan reluctantly turned back, he suddenly froze in place. Yan Heqing, who was half kneeling in front of the jade flute, was holding one of the remains of the jade flute that was still lying on the ground, with one hand. As if he was unable to pick it up, he silently closed his eyes, and shed a clear line of tears. Xiao Yuan broke away from Tian Xiang, desperately wanting to run back to Yan Heqing, and shake his shoulders so that he would look at him. However, the sound of the imperial bodyguards patrolling the place where the Temple of Heaven used to be, was heard. As they entered the small house, they pressed Xiao Yuan on the ground, and then dragged him out. Xiao Yuan struggled madly. Even though his throat was very dry and sore, he wasn't afraid of losing his voice as he shouted with all his might. Until finally, the mumbling sounds formed a word, Yen. Yen. Yen He Ching. Look at me. Please, you have to look at me. The forbidden area had always been peaceful. But this time, it wasn't properly guarded, and it was considered a great crime to let those two people sneak in. Now this man, who was still yelling, was disturbing that peace. If the emperor gets angry, the consequences will be unimaginable, and the imperial guards were really scared as they viciously covered Xiao Yuan's mouth, dragging him away. At the western side of the imperial palace, Xiao Yuan was resting in his bedchamber with a white cloth covering his neck. As he held a brush, he dipped it in ink, and wrote a full page of things to take revenge on. Once Xiao Yuan stopped writing, he looked at the paper in a daze. Xiao Yuan had never seen Yan Heqing act like that, so ruthless, cruel and vicious. It could be said that Yan Heqing has always been this ruthless and resolute, just like in the original book, but he had been hiding these sharp blades from him ever since the beginning, leaving only the tenderness behind. After thinking about it, Xiao Yuan's heart suddenly changed from bitterness to sweetness. Why is the script completely different from what I imagined, before going to the forbidden area? Wasn't it supposed to go like Yan Heqing, after sobbing at the tomb, ran towards me, hugged me with both arms, and heard me say, don't cry, look at me and let me recite a paragraph of the basic principles of Marxism for you? Instead, I was attacked, directly pushed against the wall, and almost choked to death. What's going on? Xiao Yuan was thinking, when Tian Xiang suddenly came in with a basin and medicine, Xiao Jun Wang, is your throat still sore today? This maidservant will change the bandages for you. Xiao Yuan nodded and allowed Tian Xiang to remove the white cloth from his neck. After a few days, the terrible scratches on his neck began to disappear, and Xiao Yuan's voice had returned to normal. Tian Xiang took a deep breath, and said, It seems to be fine, this maidservant has been worried these past few days, always feeling that his majesty will punish you. Fortunately, by the blessing of heaven, his majesty didn't come. I wish he could come. Xiao Yuan muttered. Xiao Jun Wang, don't be silly, and please beg for his majesty to be really busy these days, so that he won't think of us. Tian Xiang sighed shortly. Xiao Yuan bent his fingers, gently tapping her on the head. Then, he smiled and said, you're too young to sigh all the time. Besides, I'm in love with his majesty, so of course I will hope for him to come. Tian Xiang didn't expect Xiao Yuan to be so blunt. As she covered her forehead, and gulped for half a second, she tried to persuade him, but, his majesty has someone else in his heart. Xiao Yuan kept smiling as he replied to Tian Xiang, I already know that. Xiao Jun Wang, his majesty isn't the only man in the world. There are still a lot of very good people out there. You're also the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom, so who can't you meet after you leave the Southern Yan Kingdom? No matter how good other people are, it's none of my business. I like his majesty, even if there are plenty of fish at the sea one, I still think that his majesty is the best option. Tian Xiang stamped her foot anxiously, Xiao Jun Wang, there was once someone who presented a beautiful man to his majesty. Not only was his majesty not happy, 
but he became so furious that he even dismissed that man from his official position. If you go on like this, you'll be looking for death. Xiao Yuan's smile got even bigger. As he clenched his fist, he shouted majestically, drink the strongest wine, tame the wildest horse, sleep. 2. Xiao Jun Wan A loud shout coming from the door interrupted the conversation between Xiao Yuan and Tian Xiang. It turned out to be an eunuch with an imperial decree. The eunuch first kindly inquire about Xiao Yuan's injuries, and after receiving the good news that he was practically healed. The eunuch unfolded the imperial decree in his hands and said, Xiao Jun Wang has come all the way from the Western Shu Kingdom to the Southern Yan Kingdom to become a minister, and since he was indeed sincere, His Majesty has conferred on him the title of Jun Wang. But now, His Majesty feels that it's inappropriate for Xiao Jun Wang to be a minister, so His Majesty kindly asks for Xiao Jun Wang to leave today, and return to the Western Shu Kingdom. After having said that, the eunuch put away the imperial decree, and said to Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wang, the luggage and the carriage are ready for you, so please depart at once. Xiao Yuan couldn't believe it, depart. Yen. His Majesty wants to drive me away. It turns out that he didn't punish me before, because he was thinking of getting rid of me. I know that the runaway wife of the tyrannical president is a classic plot in that kind of novel, but at least in those cases, the wife actually wants to escape. Ah, I tried everything I could to make him throw himself onto my arms, and he's kicking me out. What the fuck? The eunuch didn't reply directly, but simply smiled and said, Xiao Jun Wang, hurry up and start your journey. Then the eunuch made a gesture of invitation clearly acting very polite, but his attitude and tone of voice were in fact quite tough, leaving no room for negotiation. Xiao Yuan understood that if he went back to the Western Shu Kingdom at this moment, he would have to wait several months, or even years, to meet Yan Heqin again. Perhaps, he won't be able to see him again in his life. In history, before this could happen, Sima Zhao invited Lu Chan to a banquet three, where he was very happy and didn't miss Shu four. Later on, Zhao Kuanyin, Emperor Taizu of the Song Dynasty, gave a residence in Bianliang to the last emperor of the Southern Tang Dynasty V. So, how come that when it's Yan Heqin, he would simply drive people away? As the male lead with a protagonist Halo, he really can do whatever he wants, huh? Chapter, 191 Xiao Yuan was really anxious as he stepped forward, and said, I want go, let me see your emperor. As soon as he said those words, two burly, expressionless and oppressive imperial bodyguards immediately surrounded Xiao Yuan, from left to right. The eunuch was still smiling as he said, His Majesty is extremely busy with government affairs, and he doesn't have the time to see you. Xiao Jun Wang, listen to my advice and go peacefully. You must go, even if you don't want to. So please, don't make things more difficult for us or embarrass yourself. Xiao Yuan forced himself to calm down, and said, All right, I'll leave, but as a Jun Wang, my intention was to come pay tribute to the Southern Yan Kingdom so how can I leave so hastily? At least, let me report my leave to His Majesty. The eunuch shook his head and finally lost all his patience. As he waved his hand, several imperial bodyguards came forward and tried to restrain Xiao Yuan, to forcibly take him away. When Tian Xiang saw this, she hurriedly rushed over to protect Xiao Yuan, waving her arms and shouting, What are you doing? This is Xiao Jun Wan. An imperial bodyguard came forward to pull Tian Xian away, but Xiao Yuan wrenched his wrist free and threw him away. Then, Xiao Yuan said, don't touch her. Knowing that to keep persisting like this would only bring more and more difficulties, Xiao Yuan took a long breath, and said, enough. I'll go, I'll go with you. Xiao Jun Wang. Tian Xiang looked at him as her hands were tightly clasped together, feeling extremely uneasy. Xiao Yuan patted her head to appease her, then walked up to an imperial bodyguard, and said, Daxiangdi, let me borrow that dagger on your waist. The imperial bodyguard didn't react nor did he move for a while. Xiao Yuan lost his patience and pulled out the dagger himself. He then cut off a corner of his robe, and looked around to find something that he could use to write with, but since he couldn't find anything, he simply cut his finger with the dagger. Xiao Jun Wan Tian Xiang shouted. 
Xiao Yuan used his blood to write the sentence I love you in English, on a piece of robe. Then he folded it, and handed it to Tian Xiang, Tian Xiang, please help me and bring this to His Majesty. Is this for His Majesty? Tian Xiang was puzzled, Xiao Jun Wang, what am I going to do after giving this to His Majesty? As long as His Majesty sees the calligraphy in painting on this cloth, he'll know everything. Xiao Yuan said solemnly. The eunuch couldn't understand what Xiao Yuan was trying to do, but since he didn't want to keep pestering Xiao Yuan, he simply winked at the imperial bodyguards. The imperial bodyguards, after receiving the order, went forward and restrained Xiao Yuan. Xiao Jun Wang, Xiao Jun Wang. Tian Xiang shouted in vain, as she helplessly watched Xiao Yuan being escorted away. The next morning, Tian Xiang was keeping watch on Yan Heqing's way back to his bedchamber after the morning court. As she clutched the cloth in her hands, she looked extremely nervous, to the point where her hands began to sweat. Last night she stared at the blood stains on the cloth more than a dozen times, over and over again. However, she couldn't understand what that painting was, and inevitably her heart began to waver, feeling at a loss at what to do. What if it makes His Majesty angry? Xiao Yuan and her got along only for a few days, was it really worth risking her life for him like this? Suddenly, she remembered the way Xiao Yuan looked at her when he was being taken away. His eyes were full of desperation and powerlessness, as if he had put all of his eggs in one basket one. As Tian Xiang shook her head, throwing these thoughts out of her mind, she focused on waiting for Yan Heqing to pass by. Tian Xiang's unusual behavior had long aroused the suspicion of the imperial bodyguards. As an imperial bodyguard stepped forward, he asked fiercely, You. What's your name? What are you doing here? Tian Xiang was startled and unconsciously covered the cloth in her hand. I, my name is, I, I, I am just walking around. Walking? With a sneer, the imperial bodyguard suddenly reached out to grab the cloth from Tian Xiang's hand. Tian Xiang's reaction was quite fast as she clutched the cloth with both hands, and yelled, This is mine. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop, let me go. But, how could she compete with an imperial bodyguard? After a few pulls, the cloth was taken away by him. As the imperial bodyguard examined the cloth over and over again, he couldn't find anything weird, only finding that the blood on the cloth was a quite frightening sight, what a piece of shit. All right, go back now. His majesty is going to pass through here. After reminding Tian Xiang, the imperial bodyguard left and threw the cloth into the small pond next to him. Tian Xiang shouted and jumped over to pick up the cloth, but the cloth was already wet. The blood on it was blurred by the pond water, leaving only a vague image. Tian Xiang held the wet cloth for a long time, unable to come back to her senses for a while. Chapter 192 At this moment, outside the imperial city of the southern Yan kingdom, Xiao Yuan, who was holding onto a big tree with both hands, had an I want fucking leave. What are you gonna do about it? Attitude as he kept shouting, I'm dizzy. I won't go back and sit in the carriage. The few imperial's guards that were accompanying him, dragged him back and advised him, Xiao Jun Wang. You don't know how to ride a horse, and you don't want to ride a carriage. We can't go back to the Western Shu Kingdom walking, can we? Another imperial guard with good intentions also advised, Xiao Jun Wang, once you return to the Western Shu Kingdom, you'll still be the emperor. Above all of the people, you can have all of the wind and rain as you like one. So why do you want to stay in this dangerous place? Here, you're always being oppressed by others. How come you haven't killed yourself yet? Xiao Yuan said, I don't want to be the emperor of the Western Shu Kingdom Wawa. I want to sleep together with Yan Heqing. If I can't sleep with Yan Heqing, then what's the meaning of life? I don't have any regrets in this life after transmigrating to this book, but I want to sleep with Yan Heqing. The Imperial Guards. How dare he call his majesty by his name? How dare he call his majesty by his name and make fun of him? How dare he make fun of him? How dare he? In the end, the few imperial guards escorting Xiao Yuan made great efforts and finally stuffed him into the carriage. 
Xiao Yuan vainly tried to lift the curtain and escape several times, but he was forcibly suppressed every time. Because of this, Xiao Yuan began to talk off the ears of the Imperial Guards, trying to poison them mentally, I've consulted someone to read my fortune, and they told me that your Emperor's fate is incomplete without me. It's true, and let me tell you, don't pay attention to your Emperor's usually cold and heartless appearance because in fact, he has taken over the miserable script of the second male lead. Ha! I didn't expect that. Speaking of which, my Yen Ji Yi is actually really good. He once tried really hard to keep his desire from hurting me. This is true love, my friends. Hey, why couldn't I notice his feelings for me earlier? The Imperial Guards were on the brink of having a mental breakdown. However, after the carriage gradually moved further away from the Imperial City, Xiao Yuan began to get quieter and quieter. As he lifted the curtain to look at the back of the carriage without any hesitation, he was eagerly waiting for something, until he finally lost it. His mood was so high, that he could almost lose his mind. But after a short journey, where he anxiously stared back, waiting for someone who never came, Xiao Yuan tasted the joy and sorrows too of life in his heart. Seeing how the imperial city of the southern Yan kingdom was getting farther and farther away, becoming so small that even if Xiao Yuan leaned out of the carriage he couldn't see it anymore, a sudden burst of fear clutched Xiao Yuan's heart. Did Tian Xiang not send the cloth with the I love you to Yan Heqing? Are we going to be separated once again? Then, when are we going to meet again? A few months? A year? Several years? What if I never get a chance to see Yan Heqing again in this life? These thoughts slowly took root in Xiao Yuan's mind, as if they were tiny silver needles stabbing Xiao Yuan all over his body, causing him pain. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan lifted the carriage curtain, looking panicked as he murmured, No, I have to go back. I must go back. I want to see Yan Heqing. Xiao Jun Wang the Imperial Guards didn't react in time when they saw Xiao Yuan unexpectedly jumping out of the carriage, without any second thoughts. Although the speed of the carriage wasn't particularly fast, it was still quite easy to get hurt when jumping off a moving carriage. When Xiao Yuan fell on the ground, he rolled twice, and disregarding the pain, he was about to run towards the southern Yan Kingdom. The Imperial Guards on the carriage hastily pulled the reins, forced the horse to stop, and went after Xiao Yuan. Xiao Jun Wang. However, out of nowhere, several men dressed with black clothes appeared from the bushes around the road, and surrounded them all, completely blocking Xiao Yuan's way. Xiao Yuan was stupefied as he took a few steps back and looked back at the Imperial Guards. Unexpectedly, those Imperial Guards were also at a loss, as they shouted at the men in black while drawing out their swords, Who are you? What are your intentions? But those black clothed men didn't say a word. As one of them stared closely at Xiao Yuan, he made a gesture. In an instant, and without any communication or warning, the several black clothed men fiercely drew out the swords from their waists. With a merciless killing intent, they directed their swords at Xiao Yuan with slashing motions. Chapter 193 Before you try to assassinate me, at least give a long, fierce speech or an explanation of. I've never seen someone swinging their swords so quickly. Why aren't you following the procedure? Xiao Yuan quickly retreated towards the Imperial Guards and screamed. The Imperial Guards rushed over to protect Xiao Yuan, but they were quickly outnumbered, and they weren't strong enough to defend him. The Imperial Guards were injured, with many bloody cuts on their bodies. Some of them even fell to the ground, trembling uncontrollably. A man in black saw that there was a great opportunity and took advantage of it, as he waved the sword at Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan narrowly dodged the attack, hitting the man on the back of his neck with his elbow. The man in black was hit so hard that he fell to the ground, unable to get up for a long time. Hmm. Xiao Yuan was a little surprised as he moved his wrist. In the past, when he was inside the body of the Emperor of the Northern Kingdom, his body was too weak and his hands had the strength of a chicken. So, even with such a simple hit, he wouldn't have been able to knock people unconscious. Moreover, Xiao Yuan wasn't able to use any strength, plus his hands and feet felt extremely uncoordinated. However, this new rebirth didn't feel like that at all. 
Xiao Yuan was slightly distracted by this new discovery that he didn't realize that several black-clothed men had grouped up to attack him, and the shadows of the swords instantly pounced on Xiao Yuan. At that instant, Xiao Yuan retreated in a panic and dodged the sword several times, but it was hard to beat them when he was outnumbered. In the end, Xiao Yuan was unable to resist them. When a black-clothed man saw that Xiao Yuan revealed a flaw, he clenched the sword in his hand, and aimed at the other's chest without mercy. The silver light cut through the sky, and as the carriage curtain rattled, warm blood splashed on Xiao Yuan's face. After a year of wandering around, the separation provoked by death, left behind an air of emptiness and sorrow. In the imperial palace of the southern Yan kingdom, Yan Heqing was attentively listening to a minister's report to the imperial court. But, at the beginning, Yan Heqing was overcome with grief, and some people asserted that he wouldn't be able to deal with the government. Some even took the opportunity to rebel and try to usurp the throne but in the end, they got their heads chopped off by Yan Heqing after the first sign of a plot appearing. Instead of being as depressed as others had speculated, Yan Heqing devoted almost all of his energy into building up the government of the country and the military system. He made himself so busy, to the point where he wouldn't be able to think about anything else, vowing to have a stable society, as well as a peaceful and prosperous united country. Your Majesty, the foreign envoys from the western regions should be here in a few months to pay tribute. A minister leaned down to present his case. Yan Heqing hoofed and asked, Are they the ones who broke apart the western Shu kingdom? Answering to his majesty, yes. This foreign country from the western region can't be underestimated. Even though it's a small nomadic country, it's also filled with fierce and barbaric people. However, even if they were able to break apart the western Shu kingdom's territory, they can't completely annex the western Shu kingdom. So, they'll come to pay tribute because they want to use our hands in order to annex the western Shu kingdom in one fell swoop. Yan Heqing frowned. As the minister saw Yan Heqing's displeasure, he hurried to say, Your Majesty, I know that you also want to take over the Western Shu Kingdom. However, in this minister's humble opinion, we should make an alliance with them instead of establishing such a powerful rival force at a time when our national strength is still in process of becoming strong. Yan Heqing rubbed his eyebrows, thought about it for a while, and then said, Well welcome the envoys first, and then well make plans. After dealing with political affairs and other important matters, it was already noon when Yan Heqing finally got up and walked back to his bedchamber. Since he didn't like to make a big fuss, no matter where he went, he would never bring a large number of people with him, only a few imperial bodyguards. The emperor's indifference was well known throughout the imperial palace. In order to avoid being punished, the moment Yan Heqing returned to his bedchamber, the maids and imperial guards chose to avoid his way back as much as possible. So, when a maid suddenly flew over from one side, the imperial bodyguards around Yan Heqing froze in place. But, right the next second, the imperial bodyguards reacted quickly as they reached to stop the maid, who seemed to have gone mad as she desperately lunged at Yan Heqing. When she was stopped and pulled away, she knelt on the ground, cut her finger, then wrote something on the ground with her blood. Tian Xiang then shouted as she wrote, Your Majesty, please look at this. Please look, this servant begs His Majesty to look at this. What a mad woman. Get the hell out of here. One imperial bodyguard roared as he went forward to pull Tian Xiang away, his action was so rough that he even aimed at Tian Xiang's neck. However, someone suddenly held his wrist, stopping this motion. When the imperial bodyguard turned around and saw that it was Yan Heqing, he was scared to death, Your Majesty, this lowly one failed to carry out his duty. This lowly one will take this mad woman away. Yan Heqing looked at him coldly, and a sense of overwhelming oppression fell on the imperial bodyguard, silencing him immediately. Tian Xiang was still kneeling on the ground, still writing with her bleeding finger. Yan Heqing half crouched down, reached out to stop her, and asked, what's the problem? Tian Xiang shook her head violently and pointed at the ground, Your Majesty, look at this. Look at this. Chapter, 194. Yan Heqing took a look at the distorted blood on the ground, but he couldn't understand what Tian Xiang had written. He could only assume that this girl must be mentally unstable. So, he stood up, and told her to leave. 
When Tian Xiang saw that Yan Heqing had no reaction after seeing that design, she immediately lost her breath. She dejectedly sat on the ground, until someone kindly reached out to help her up. On the other side, Yan Heqing stopped abruptly after taking two steps. As if he thought of something, his breath became short and hurried. Then he abruptly turned around and walked back to the place where Tian Xiang had just painted with her blood. Before, he was looking at the words facing Tian Xiang, so he couldn't understand that pattern at the beginning but now, he was looking at that pattern in the same way Tian Xiang saw them. The bloody words were crooked. There was a great separation between the horizontal and vertical strokes but when Yan Heqing looked at it, his eyes suddenly fluttered and he started to tremble all over. His jaw tightened, his hands clenched, and suddenly, he turned and ran towards Tian Xiang. After being helped up, Tian Xiang was waiting for her punishment to be arranged with a sad look on her face, but suddenly, her shoulder was held from behind with great force. When Tian Xiang looked back and saw that it was Yan Heqing, she was frightened to death. Yan Heqing couldn't even speak fluently at this time. With the last trace of reason, he asked Tian Xiang with a trembling voice, Who taught you to write this? Xiao Yuan stared blankly at the scene in front of him. Just now, the eyes of the man who wanted to kill him were full of consternation and panic. After spitting out a mouthful of blood, the long sword, which was a few millimeters away from Xiao Yuan, fell on the ground with a clang, while a sharp arrow pierced through the man's chest. Just at the most critical moment, the sound of horses' hooves suddenly came from a distance. A sharp arrow whistling through the sky, steadily passed through the chest of the black-clothed man who wanted to stab Xiao Yuan. A man with a bow and arrows, led several imperial guards to a gallop as he shouted, Stop! Who dares to touch Xiao Jun Wang again? After seeing that the situation had reversed, the black-clothed men hurriedly retreated, each running in a different direction, and disappearing in a short while. Xiao Yuan, who had just survived an assassination attempt, sat down on the ground and let out a long breath. Only then did he realize that his clothes had been cut by the sword his body also had some deep and shallow wounds that looked kinda ugly. Chen Gu, who came to the rescue, came forward on his imperial horse, stopped in front of Xiao Yuan and dismounted. As he stretched out his hand to pull him up, he said, Xiao Jun Wang, have you been seriously injured? I was late. Xiao Yuan waved his hand, it's no big deal. Chen Gu took a long breath, fortunately, we arrived in time. Otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized something. He immediately grabbed Chen Ge's arm with shining eyes, and his tone of voice was slightly higher, Did His Majesty send you to come to me? Looking at Xiao Yuan's expectant gaze, Chen Ge's face showed some reluctance. After he deliberated for a long time, he finally opened his mouth, No, it wasn't His Majesty. Ah, it was General Xue who asked me to come, because he had the feeling that someone would have bad intentions, silently waiting for the right opportunity to ambush you on the road and kill you. So, he asked me to keep you safe. Ah right, even though General Shui Yan has already begged for his old bones one, and he's no longer a general, I just can't help to keep calling him like that. I ask Xiao Jun Wang to not mind it. Xiao Yuan's eyes darkened, and with a trace of hope, he asked, Can you take me to see the emperor? Chen Gu scratched his head in distress and said, Xiao Jun Wang, I can't take you to see His Majesty. But he'll let my subordinates send you to the Western Shu Kingdom safely. Moreover, with your status, why do you need to humiliate yourself in the Southern Yan Kingdom? You'd better go as soon as possible and leave the Southern Yan Kingdom's territory. Finally, under the half-persuasion and half-pushing of everyone, Xiao Yuan once again got in the carriage, resuming his journey to the Western Shu Kingdom. After Chen Gu instructed his subordinates to make sure that Xiao Yuan would be sent back to the Western Shu Kingdom safely, he then watched as the carriage went away. A deputy general next to him asked, General Chen, the next time we'll meet with Xiao Jun Wang, will also be the time when we'll meet with the soldiers of the Western Shu Kingdom, right? Chen Gu sighed, the Western Shu Kingdom has good relations with the Southern Yan Kingdom. In order to avenge the destruction of our kingdom, his majesty attacked the northern kingdom, and in order to take back the conquered territory of our kingdom by the eastern Wu kingdom, his majesty conquered the eastern Wu kingdom. 
however, it's against his good faith to attack the Western Shu Kingdom. But, since someone a while ago said that they wanted to see His Majesty's unified land, he. Ah. Forget it, let's not speak about it. We should go back. As soon as Chen Gu said those words, the sound of urgently galloping hooves suddenly came from a distance. When Chen Gu turned his head with confusion, and after seeing the man more clearly, he was momentarily surprised. As the horse neighed in the dusk, the dust left behind by the horse was flying in the air, and the shadow of a solitary figure grew longer and longer. As soon as the man pulled the reins on the horse, stopping right in front of Chen Gu, he glanced at the blood stains on the ground and the corpse of a black-clothed man. The indifference in his eyes became extremely dark and deep as he asked with an unkind tone, where is he? Of course, that man didn't mention any name, but for some reason, Chen Gu suddenly understood who he was asking for, and quickly pointed in the direction, he's not far away. Without hesitation, the man raised the whip, and after hitting the horse, the white horse galloped like an arrow towards the direction pointed by Chen Gu. Chapter, 195 The carriage was forced to stop. At that moment, Xiao Yuan was supporting his head, thinking hard about what to do next. When suddenly, the horse pulling the carriage was frightened as it made the carriage sway left and right a few times before settling down. Xiao Yuan was a little stunned by the sudden movement, and when he heard a noise coming from outside, he immediately became quiet. What's going on? Is it another assassination attempt? Is it not over yet? Xiao Yuan was puzzled. When he lifted the curtain, he saw a white horse in front of the carriage, blocking the way. Riding the horse, there was an elegant and handsome young man. When he looked over, he also met Xiao Yuan's eyes for a moment. Why were we separated for such a long time, when I can't fall asleep alone at night? Why weren't the letters I sent to you with great care replied? Why is it so difficult to mend the broken one mirror in the clear sky too? Why are we looking at each other without saying a word? Xiao Yuan couldn't take his eyes away from him at all. As he jumped off the carriage, his hands and feet didn't dare to go forward, feeling at a loss on what to do. Yan Heqing then dismounted, held the reins, and continued to stare at Xiao Yuan without saying a word. This scene it's too familiar. Even though they were silent, their eyes had already told each other thousands of words. Xiao Yuan had once imagined the scene of meeting Yan Heqing again countless times, and he even thought of the countless types of words that he could say, to prove that he was Xiao Yuan. But now, when he was actually faced with this scenario, Xiao Yuan found himself completely unable to say a word. The only thing he wanted to do, was to look at the person in front of him, greedily staring at his eyebrows and eyes. Xiao Yuan thought to himself, how could I make this man wait for me over and over again? In the year of Xiao Yuan's first rebirth, when they were apart from each other because of the war, he wished that he would just die. In the year of his death, Yan Heqing offered a strong wine sacrifice, asking him to come back. Feeling as if his heart was being pierced by a knife, he was anxious and helpless, as if he had woken up from a dream that was both happy and sad. Finally, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, took two steps forward, raised a warm smile to Yan Heqing, and said softly, When we separated the first time, I offered a toast to heaven and earth for you, my words were the wine, and the three wishes were the cups. Now, I want to ask you three questions, can I be there when you come back from the war? Can I walk the same path as you, and hold your hand? If you're happy and healthy, with no worries in your life, can I watch over you? Now that I finally understand what you didn't want to forget, then don't. But now, can you tell me if I understood too late? After finishing his speech, Xiao Yuan's voice was already shaking and choking. Even though it was early spring, the wind was still bitterly cold. As some snowflakes danced in the air, his eyes were red, and his head was slightly covered with white. Yan Heqing didn't reply, he simply closed his eyes, and took out a hairpin from his bosom. The jade hairpin had some cracks in it, which made it look distorted and hideous due to the re-adhesion. As Yan Heqing slowly raised his eyes, his palm went up, handing over the jade hairpin to Xiao Yuan. If Yan Heqing's fingertips weren't trembling, he would have thought that he was as cold as usual. The year when I was punished to kneel in the snow, surrounded by the cold weather. 
The year when the smell of wine was overflowing in the Yuhua Tower. The year when we parted ways in tears. The year when we didn't know how to communicate our feelings for each other, in the deep of the mountain. The year when I made my feelings clear in your residence in Taoyuan village. The year when you were in danger in the enemy's army, when I searched and searched for you. The year when I wanted to reunite with you so badly that I rode alone for thousands of miles. The year when you waved the sword to kill yourself, when I cried and howled. That was the origin of our fate and demise three, as well as the endless greed and infatuation I feel for you. Now, as Xiao Yuan slowly reached out his hand, he pressed the jade hairpin back in Yan Heqing's palm, and held his hand tightly. Xiao Yuan burst into tears as he said, This time, I won't let you smash it again. At dusk, in the imperial palace of the southern Yan kingdom, at the emperor's bedchambers, two maids were talking as they worked. One of the maids had just been sent to take care of the emperor's bedchamber, and as she shook out the bedding, she said, How come his majesty isn't in his bedchamber at this hour? It is quite normal for his majesty to be busy with the affairs of the country, so he doesn't sleep in his bedchamber that often. The other maid replied. Jijia, is it true that his majesty is as beautiful as the stories say? If so, then do you think that he can't stand being in such a big bedchamber without a concubine to accompany him, because it feels cold and silent? Since there was no one around, the new maid couldn't help but wonder, and asked in a whisper. The other maid scolded her and knocked her head, why are you so curious? We shouldn't be curious about his majesty's affairs. Is there something else we can talk about? The new maid stuck out her tongue, but still didn't hold back, I just don't believe it. Maybe his majesty is hiding a little beauty somewhere here. As soon as she spoke, the door of the bedchamber was suddenly kicked open, and the maids trembled with fear. When they looked back, they immediately knelt, and said with a trembling voice, Your majesty, yo your ma majesty. Yen He Qin walked in with big steps as he held someone in his arms. Of course, his posture was very steady, but Yen He Qin's arms were tightly clenched as if he loosened them for even a little bit, the person in his arms would break free and run away. Get out, close the door and don't let anyone disturb me. After Yen He Qin threw out those words, he went straight towards the bed with that person in his arms. The two maids hastily got up and walked out of the bedchamber with their heads bowed. When the new maid closed the door, she just so happened to see Yen He Qing throwing the man in his arms onto the bed. The other maid murmured, This is the first time I've been His Majesty so angry. The new maid expressed an aha, and said, Could it be that? Shu, don't talk nonsense. At that moment, Xiao Yuan was also a bit confused when he was suddenly thrown onto the bed by Yen He Qing, and before he could react, Yen He Qing had already untied his belt. Then he pulled Xiao Yuan's hands up and used the belt to tie his hands to the bedpost. When Xiao Yuan had just regained his senses, his hands had already been firmly tied. Although the person in front of him was as expressionless as always, Xiao Yuan could feel his anger. Like the calm breeze before a tsunami, where after the breeze brushed the tips of your hair, a sudden gust of wind appeared, followed by the roaring, huge waves that relentlessly swallowed everything. Yen, Yen, Yen Ji. Xiao Yuan shouted cautiously. Yen He Qing, as if he hadn't heard him, stretched out his hand to tear open Xiao Yuan's clothes. Xiao Yuan instinctively shrank his body, trying to cover himself, but because his hands were bound he couldn't move freely. He was like a fish on the cutting board for, at the mercy of Yen He Qing. The moment his clothes were torn open, the deep and shallow scratches on Xiao Yuan's body were reflected into Yen He Qing's eyes. They were left from the fight with those black clothed men. Yen He Qing's eyes were as dark as black jade, and his whole body was covered with a faint layer of anger. As he looked at the wounds and reached out to touch them, Xiao Yuan said softly, It's all right, they don't hurt. They will heal by tomorrow. After saying that, Xiao Yuan leaned forward to kiss Yen He Qing, but Yen He Qing inclined his head, dodging his approach. Xiao Yuan was slightly stunned and his eyes flashed with a trace of panic. When Yen He Qing looked up at him, he leaned down and lightly kissed the scratch on Xiao Yuan's waist. Mm -hmm. Xiao Yuan's body was very tense, and he could only lean against the bedpost, unable to escape at all. 
As the soft tongue licked the wound, he felt an itchy and tingling sensation coming from his waist. It was slightly painful, like dense fine needles and light feathers, sometimes pricking, and sometimes tingling. Xiao Yuan began to breathe quickly, but his reason hasn't been completely swallowed up as he asked softly, Yan Ji, are you angry? The kiss suddenly turned into a bite, and the pain from the wound on his waist made Xiao Yuan frown as his abdomen trembled slightly. When Yan Heqin raised his head, and looked into Xiao Yuan's eyes, he asked, Xiao Yuan, when you placed the sword against your neck, did you even think of me? With a lump in his throat and misty eyes, Xiao Yuan bowed his head and thought, at that time, I said so many apologizing words, and count out so many times, thinking that my life would, more or less, compensate for some of the accumulated resentment. But now that I'm once again reborn, I owe nothing to anyone. But, who would have thought that, in the end, I still had a debt. Even though this time is just to one person, the debt is extremely high, and I don't know how to repay it. Death can feel so easy, because you're just running away without looking back. But from then on, the world has one more person alone, one more person in distress, someone who will grow old, waiting. Those who are alive are the ones who suffer the most. And Yen Heqing's pain was given by me. Even if I could grow a thousand mouths, no matter how clever I am, I would still not be able to argue. Xiao Yuan was still silent, when suddenly, he felt that his own lower body was cold. When he realized that his pants had been taken off, he saw how Yan Heqing slightly moistened his fingers, and inserted them into Xiao Yuan's body. Xiao Yuan was in pain, and he couldn't help but want to retreat, but since his hands were tied in the bedpost, there was nowhere to run. As Yan Heqing inserted a second finger, his eyes were slightly red and his tone was quite cold as he asked Xiao Yuan, Xiao Yuan, you're always thinking about dying for others, but have you ever thought of living for me? Chapter, 196 Trigger Warning, Dubious Consent at the Beginning of the Chapter Xiao Yuan wanted to reach out to hug Yan Heqing and kiss him, but his hands couldn't break free, so he had to softly cry for help, Yan Ji. Xiao Yuan, I'm willing to wait for you, but could you at least tell me, when you go, for how long do I have to wait for you to come back? A year? A decade? Twenty years maybe? Or do I have to stop waiting altogether? Every time Yan Heqing asked a question, his eyes would turn red, but when he asked them, he was trembling with fear. When Xiao Yuan saw Yan Heqing in a state like this, his heart was filled with remorse and distress. For Xiao Yuan, parting ways with his loved one was just committing suicide by cutting his throat with a sword. But for Yan Heqing, it was like the sunny days turning white, and the beautiful flowers blooming in March looking disgustingly red one. After those questions, there was a long silence, and anger gradually engulfed Yan Heqing's reasoning. As he lowered his head, he gnawed at Xiao Yuan's nipples. Yan Heqing wanted to tease this man a little more, so that he could understand that everything in front of him wasn't a dream, letting himself feel that this man had really come back. Compared to a lovingly type of sexual intercourse, for Yan Heqing, it was more like venting his anger. But Xiao Yuan didn't want Yan Heqing to be soft to him, because he thought that the sin he committed was deserving of a punishment. He thought that he deserved the roughness. But after all, it still hurts. Xiao Yuan's hands were tied and he couldn't hug or kiss Yan Heqing, so he felt very aggrieved. He wasn't afraid of pain, and he didn't think that it was humiliating to be on the receiving end, but he wanted to hug Yan Heqing. After being reborn for so many days, he couldn't even hug Yan Heqing once. Yan Ji, I, I want to hug you. Xiao Yuan pleaded in a low voice, his voice was filled with tears and pleading as he said every word while shaking, Yan Ji, let me hug you. After calling at him a few times, Yan Heqing's sanity came back slightly. Yan Heqing took a light breath as a trace of regret gradually flashed in his eyes. As soon as he withdrew, trying to stabilize his mood and stop hurting Xiao Yuan, Xiao Yuan panicked when he saw him retreat, Yan Ji, don't go away Yan Ji. I, listen to me, I. I never wanted to live for others before. In my previous life, I lived in hatred for my father and in guilt for my brother, so when I killed myself, I didn't have any hesitation. But this time, when I cut my throat, I was actually really scared. 
Yen Ji, I was so afraid, afraid that I couldn't see you again. I was really scared. Xiao Yuan's voice was so choked that some words were inaudible, so he had to stop and slow down. After saying all that, tears fell from his eyes as he continued, Yen Ji, I don't know how to apologize, or how to compensate you. I want mind if you tie me to the bed day and night, you can do whatever you want. I really don't mind, it doesn't matter. But, can you at least let me hug you now? Yen Heqin looked at Xiao Yuan for a moment. Then he slowly stretched out his hand to untie his belt as he lowered his head to kiss the tears falling down Xiao Yuan's cheeks and rubbed his red wrists. So devoutly, so gently. As soon as Xiao Yuan's hands were loosened, he immediately put his arms around Yen Heqin's shoulders. When he felt that man's body temperature, his breathing and heartbeat, he burst into tears once more. Xiao Yuan. Yen Heqing said with a hoarse voice, Don't leave me again. I can't stand it anymore. Xiao Yuan, buried in Yen Heqing's neck, nodded again repeatedly, I won't go, I would never leave you again. Yen Heqing reached out and cupped Xiao Yuan's chin, lifted his head, and gave him a tender and loving kiss, which made Xiao Yuan stop crying. Yen Heqing then touched the place where they were connected, but Xiao Yuan felt some shame and stretched out his hand to stop him. At this, Yen Heqing asked, Does it hurt? It really hurts, okay? Xiao Yuan shook his head and stammered in reply, And no, it's fine, it de do doesn't h hurt. Yen Heqing gently raised his eyebrows. Then, Xiao Yuan hugged Yen Heqing tightly, grasping his back and begging for mercy, Yen Ji, slow. Slow down. I'm mm -hmm. Yen He Qing kissed the reddened corners of Xiao Yuan's eyes. Surprisingly, he actually restrained himself and slowed down. Xiao Yuan noticed Yen He Qing's tenderness and his heart softened. As he hugged his neck, he said, Yen Ji, look at me. When Yen He Qing looked at Xiao Yuan, he saw how Xiao Yuan curved his eyes and smiled at him, Yen Ji, I like you so much. His appearance was obviously very different, but that smile was so familiar, as well as those warm smiling eyes reflecting Yen Heqing's figure. Back then, this was the same smile that dispelled the humiliation and abuse he was put into, melting the ice and snow of the north. At this point, the thousands of mountains and rivers, the wind and clouds, the flowers blooming in spring, as well as the everlasting bright moonlight, were no match for that bright smile, the only light of Yen Heqing's life. Yan Heqing kissed Xiao Yuan, who was drenched in sweat and whose limbs were lying limply on the bed, and reached out to pull the quilt, tightly wrapping him. Then he dressed himself and went out of the bedchamber to instruct the maids. After a while, a large wooden bucket filled with hot water was sent into the bedchamber. After Yan Heqing called them to go back, he picked up Xiao Yuan, carefully placing him into the hot water, stepped in as well, and cleaned him up. The wooden bucket was very large, so the two of them didn't feel cramped at all. However, Xiao Yuan would lazily nest against Yan Heqing's body, who then gently wiped his body with a towel in the midst of the hot water. Xiao Yuan rested for a while until he finally recovered his strength, and as he maintained the posture of sitting with his back against Yan Heqing's chest, he said with a smile, speaking of which, Yan Ji I've been wanting to ask. When we parted ways that time, if I had taken the white jade hairpin, would you have tied me and taken me back despite everything? Yan Heqing didn't reply and only looked straight at him. Xiao Yuan thought to himself, I've already been tossed around over and over. Now, it's my turn to tease Yan Heqing, right? So, not only did Xiao Yuan not stop, but he also laughed relentlessly, and said, But, even if you took me back, if I had struggled and begged for mercy, would you have let me go? Yen Ji, you're always specially afraid of me getting hurt, right? But, the day I was reborn again, someone kicked me directly out of bed. At that time, my forehead was cut open and it even bled, it hurt so badly. My eyes were also blurry with pain. Yen He Qing breathed slowly. Xiao Yuan rubbed Yen He Qing's lower body and continued, later, that same person didn't want to see me. I complained and cried bitterly, trying my best to see him, since it wasn't easy to meet with him. But then he grabbed my neck, and almost choked me to death. Yen He Qing, I. 
It was the first time that Xiao Yuan saw Yan Heqing stammering. He was extremely shocked, but also filled with the pleasure of having successfully teased him without limit. As he reached out his hand, he took Yan Heqing's hand and placed it on his neck. As he smiled, he said, Can you help me and take a look at it for me? Do you see any scratches or bruises? Yan Heqing felt like he was touching a burning hot iron, and quickly withdrew his hand. But then, he carefully stroked Xiao Yuan's fair and long neck, where there were still some small scratches and bruises on the skin. Surrounded by the steaming water, Yan Heqing was able to feel the pulse beating in Xiao Yuan's neck. Xiao Yuan pretended to sigh exaggeratedly, moreover, I was even driven away by that person. And when I think about it, I feel really aggrieved. I should just forget him, leave here and go to the Western Shu Kingdom to live a peaceful life. After all, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Before Xiao Yuan could finish what he wanted to say, he was suddenly lifted by Yan Heqing. As the loud sound of the water moving was heard, Xiao Yuan's entire body was surrounded by Yan Heqing, pinned against the wall of the wooden bucket. As Yan Heqing placed his arms on both sides of Xiao Yuan, a very narrow space was formed. Yan Heqing's chest rose and fell violently as waves of shock surged in his eyes. But in the end, he couldn't argue or refute Xiao Yuan's words. He could only hold it back, feeling suffocated and anxious. Xiao Yuan laughed out loud, pecked Yan Heqing's mouth, and said, A day without you is not a peaceful day. Even if you drive me away a hundred times, I will still come back to find you a hundred times more. I don't want anyone else but you. It can only be Yan Heqing. Eh. While Xiao Yuan was speaking, he suddenly felt a hot spot between his legs. As he reached out his hand, making Yan Heqing retreat, Xiao Yuan laughed, Yan Jiyi, are you up again? Yan Heqing didn't say a word, and just when he was about to release Xiao Yuan to solve the issue by himself, a pair of legs suddenly wrapped around his waist. Xiao Yuan smiled and seduced him, What are you doing? Come here. Yan Heqing paused, and said, You. Me. Xiao Yuan smiled wantonly, Are you worried that I won't be able to stand it? I'm full of energy now, even if we do it several times, I would still stand it. If you don't believe me, maybe we can try. Yan Heqing, if you don't hold me now, I'll run back to the Western Shu Kingdom tomorrow. Yan Heqing's eyes sank as he leaned over and pressed himself against Xiao Yuan. After that sentence, for the rest of the night, no matter how much Xiao Yuan cried and begged for mercy, he still had to bear with the fierce and unforgiving impact. In the end, when he was dazed and confused, he could only feel that his insides would regret this in the morning. XYA, baby, a word of advice don't ask more than you can take. Don't forget that YHQ is a former protagonist of a stallion harem novel. His D isn't normal. Can we have these two being lovey-dovey now please? We're so close to the ending. Damn. Chapter, 197 The next morning, when the dawn was about to break in the east, Yan Heqing got up early and went to the court, while Xiao Yuan was still sleeping soundly. Yan Heqing knew that he was already quite tired from yesterday's activities, so he bowed his head to tenderly kiss his beloved. His eyes, which used to be cold as ice, softened a lot. Xiao Yuan, who was kissed twice, subconsciously grabbed the quilt to cover up his head. However, Yan Heqing reached out to pull down the quilt and teased him a little bit more before reluctantly standing up. Yan Heqing walked two steps away when he suddenly turned back in a hurry. After he saw Xiao Yuan lying peacefully on his bed, he breathed a sigh of relief. Knowing that he shouldn't do it, he ruthlessly pushed down his inner fears and forced himself to go out of the bedchamber. It was hard for him to walk away from the bedchamber, but as soon as he got out, he suddenly saw that there was a thick layer of snow outside. Just like how the red and white intertwined in one that depressing day. Yan Heqing was stuck in place, panic emerging in his eyes. Right then he turned around, walked back to the bedchamber, leaned down and pressed himself against Xiao Yuan as he kissed him for a bit. Feeling the warmth of the man in his arms, Xiao Yuan vaguely cried Yan Jiyi before giving up. Yan Jiyi. Are you going to the morning court? Xiao Yuan was still half asleep and asked vaguely. Yan Heqing hummed. Xiao Yuan said intermittently, then, 
he'll wait for you to come back. Yen Heqing's eyes fluttered as he lowered his head and kissed Xiao Yuan on the forehead, all right. When Xiao Yuan woke up, it was already noon and the sun was hanging high in the sky. Xiao Yuan moved his soft limbs and slowly opened his eyes. When Tian Xiang, who was standing at the side, saw that he was finally awake, she hurriedly came forward, Xiao Jun Wang, you're finally awake. This servant was waiting to help you change your clothes. Xiao Yuan looked around and asked, Where's His Majesty? Tian Xiang said, His Majesty has gone to the court. Don't worry, Xiao Jun Wang, His Majesty won't come back for a while, don't be afraid. Hiss. Why is she saying such strange words? Xiao Yuan held his waist and tried to sit up, but when he leaned forward, he suddenly felt pain coming from a certain place. With a miserable cry, he laid on his back again. My waist ah, my waist. Why did I have to flirt with the male protagonist of a stallion novel who spent a night with ten women? This is retribution. Punishment. When she saw Xiao Yuan's miserable appearance, Tian Xiang's eyes suddenly turned red. When Xiao Yuan saw her like that, he forgot about his pain and quickly asked softly, What's wrong? Who bullied you? Tian Zhang shook her head and sobbed, This maidservant is all right. It's just that this maidservant feels sorry for Xiao Jun Wang. Why do you have to suffer like this when you're such a good person? What, what the hell? Xiao Yuan was confused, and Tian Xiang was still wiping her tears, If I had known this would happen, this maidservant wouldn't have shown that pattern to his majesty. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been brought back to the southern Yan kingdom by his majesty, and you wouldn't have been insulted like this. It's all this maidservant's fault. Xiao Yuan, no. No. Tian Xiang, you misunderstood. I'm not. I know what it looks like. But I wanted to do it. It's not what you think. Tian Xiang, I know, Xiao Jun Wang, that you're willing to do it for the sake of the Western Shu Kingdom, but this maidservant thinks that you shouldn't suffer this kind of crime. It's too miserable. Wah wah. Xiao Yuan stroked his forehead with one hand as he thought how the hell am I supposed to explain this. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps came from outside the bedchamber. Yan Heqing, who hurried back from the morning court, walked in at a quick pace. Tian Xian wiped her tears in a hurry, bowed, and retreated to the side in fear. When Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan was awake, he sat on the side of the bed and reached out to touch his hair, do you feel any discomfort? Although they did a lot last night, Yan Heqing did a good job in cleaning him and massaging him afterwards, so Xiao Yuan just felt tired, not really feeling hurt. He shook his head as he said with a smile, no. Yan Heqing asked again, what would you like to eat? Xiao Yuan said lazily, he'll just have some porridge and noodles with a clear soup. I felt really hungry when you mentioned that. Yan Heqing hummed and got up to order the food personally, emphasizing a few times that they should be quick before returning to the bedside. Xiao Yuan asked, do you still have court affairs to deal with? Yan Heqing nodded, mm -hmm. Then you should go ahead, don't worry about me. Xiao Yuan waved his hand boldly. Suddenly, he saw that Tian Xiang was carefully glancing at them, so he waved his hand towards Yan Heqing's hand, and said, Yan Ji, come closer. Yan Heqing leaned down, only to be kissed by Xiao Yuan. Then he laughed and said, Yan Ji, I really love you. How about you? The corners of Yan Heqing's mouth raised slightly as he replied, Em mm -hmm. Xiao Yuan was dissatisfied with that reply, Hum, what does that mean? Yan He Qing, me too. Now Xiao Yuan was more satisfied, even kissing him on the cheek several times before letting him go. After Yan He Qing left, Xiao Yuan looked at Tian Xiang with a smile on his face, thinking my words may be weak, but my actions should be more convincing. Tian Xiang didn't say anything, she simply bowed her head and helped Xiao Yuan change his clothes in silence. While she was still busy tying up his clothes, she suddenly started to cry. Xiao Yuan was startled and hurriedly wiped her tears in a panic. Before he could ask why she was crying, Tian Xiang cried, Why His Majesty obviously has someone in his heart, but he's still deceiving you with your feelings and hurting you. Wa, Xiao Jun Wang, 
please don't get emotional, if you do, ITLL be all over. You will definitely be used. Wah! Xiao Yuan said, I, this. This is. Ah, forget it. Whatever. At this moment, in general Huang Yu's residence, Huang Yu kept tapping the table with the four fingers of his right hand. His frown was also tightly knitted as his subordinate reported, General Huang, Xiao Jun Wang's journey to the Western Shu Kingdom was suddenly interrupted by His Majesty and he was brought back to the Imperial Palace. Our assassination attempt hasn't succeeded yet. General Huang, although your subordinates haven't revealed their footing, it could be estimated that Xiao Jun Wang and Xue Yan have already guessed who sent the assassins. Huang Yu sneered and said, that's not a problem. What waves can be caused by a general who had his armor removed because he had a conflict with the emperor, and a desperate emperor who had to submit himself for the sake of his country? It's just that Xiao Jun Wang took refuge with Xue Yan and won't join us. I originally wanted to assassinate him and then negotiate with the Western Shu Kingdom, but it seems that this scheme had to be put aside. The subordinate said, General Huang, Chen Gu is their other force. Chen Gu shouldn't be underestimated. Huang Yu, although Chen Gu is a general, he isn't an issue because of his restrained behavior. However, I heard that the emperor himself went to intercept Xiao Jun Wang, is that true? The subordinate said, it's true, General Huang. I'm afraid that Xiao Jun Wang will expose to his majesty that you have recruited him as a party member. Huang Yu shook his head and said, no, he should know that I have a lot of incriminating evidence in my hands that can bring him back to hell. With this incriminating evidence, even if I send him to prison first and then report the evidence to His Majesty, His Majesty will still not blame me. The subordinate wanted to say something, but stopped himself and asked meaningfully, Then, General Huang, are we now? Huang Yu's fingers, which were tapping on the table before, finally knocked heavily on the wooden table, don't make a single move. As we plot to take over the throne, we can't afford to make any mistakes. Xiao Yuan rested for an entire day, and he was finally recovered by the next day, completely forgetting about the pain. As he pressed himself against Yan Heqing, he asked for a morning kiss. Come, come, give your husband a smile. Xiao Yuan, lying on top of Yan Heqing, playfully scratched his chin and laughed. As the night light dawned on the tiles and the fog closed on the heavy eaves, Xiao Yuan's long silk-like black hair slipped from his shoulders. The morning light that entered through the widow, as well as that bright smile, were reflected together in the bottom of Yan Heqing's eyes. Just like how the swallows danced and the warbles sang one on that day. Chapter, 198 Xiao Yuan relentlessly pressed himself against Yan Heqing as he playfully laughed, Come, come, come give your husband a smile. Make your husband happy and he'll give you whatever you want. Yan Heqing thought for a moment, and raised the corners of his mouth, revealing a stiff smile. Xiao Yuan was stunned at first, but then he covered his stomach and rolled around the bed as he laughed out loud, with a smile like that, no matter who it is, you'll scare them away. Xiao Yuan laughed enough and then he pressed himself on top of Yan Heqing as he said, or, I can give you a smile. After saying that, Xiao Yuan bent his eyes towards Yan Heqing and smiled. Then, he reached out, waved his hand in front of Yan Heqing and said, I'm selling my smile, you have to buy it. Yan Heqing leaned over slightly to kiss Xiao Yuan's fingertips, but then he opened his mouth to lick and gently bite at them. Xiao Yuan earlobes were slightly red as he quickly withdrew his hand with panic. But then, he heard Yan Heqing ask, how can I buy it? Xiao Yuan coughed softly, calmed his mind, and then replied, it's not expensive. I see that you suit my taste, so I'll give you a discount. How about you give me a kiss and it'll give you a smile? Let me tell you, other people won't get that price. As Xiao Yuan scratched Yan Heqing's chin while waiting for his beloved kiss, Yan Heqing actually narrowed his eyes as he said with a bad tone of voice, others? Xiao Yuan. Yan Ji, you're focusing on the wrong point. Yan Heqing opened Xiao Yuan's belt, reached into it, and rubbed Xiao Yuan's sensitive area as he dragged his voice word per word. What's the price for others? Xiao Yuan, who was being rubbed, shivered and hurried to say, What other people? There is no one else. Even if I, Xiao Yuan, 
sell myself or my smile, the only one I will sell it to is Yen Heqing. Yen Heqing calculated in his mind the hour when the morning court would start, turned over, and pressed Xiao Yuan down. Then he simply stripped them both naked, and Xiao Yuan was able to sell everything he could sell. After Yen Heqing went to the morning court, Xiao Yuan narrowed his eyes and rested for a while, until he finally slowly woke up. As he smoothed the confusion of the past few days, he finally cared about the assassination attempt, as well as the relationship between Xiao Wangye and Xue Yan. According to the original plot, Xiao Yuan guessed that Huang Yu should be seeking power to rebel, so he tried to get Xiao Wangye on his side, wanting to make the Western Shu Kingdom his own force. However, Xiao Wangye didn't form an alliance with Huang Yu, which provoked Huang Yu into trying to kill him. After all, if he died, the Western Shu Kingdom could have another emperor. At this, Huang Yu could once again persuade the Western Shu Kingdom into becoming his own power. Without the support of the enemy, Huang Yu won't be able to compete with Yan Heqing at all. Xiao Yuan muttered to himself, it's not easy to dare to usurp the throne under the dazzling aura of the male lead. It wouldn't have been easy for him to return home, and, if he dared to have bad intentions against my Yan Ji, that means that he should have hated him fiercely. Xiao Yuan thought that, maybe, there would be a clue in the bedchamber where Xiao Wangye lived before, so he dragged Tian Xiang to go there together and find anything. But, Xiao Wangye was a delicate and meticulous person, so Xiao Yuan ended up spending half a day searching in vain. Xiao Yuan sighed as he sat cross-legged, when suddenly, he saw that a man was looking at him. It turned out to be Chen Gu. Chen Gu stepped into Xiao Yuan's bedchamber, and was dumbfounded when he saw the mess inside, what's going on here? Xiao Jun Wang, were you attacked again? Xiao Yuan was struggling to put back the things he had just turned out, and waved his hand, it's a long story. You can sit down wherever you like. Chen Gu stepped over one pitiful object after the other, pathetically lying on the ground, thinking that even if he didn't want to be informal, he could only be informal ah. Chen Gu walked toward Xiao Yuan, seeing that he was squatting on the ground, touching his neck as he faced the mess of objects on the ground in distress. Chen Gu, who was condescending, fixed his eyes on Xiao Yuan's neck, seeing a trace of ambiguous red marks. Chen Gu strangely thought, even though it's spring, it's still too cold, and there shouldn't be any mosquitoes around. So, he asked, Xiao Jun Wang, are you sick and have a rash? Remember to go to the imperial physician when you're sick, you shouldn't endure it on your own. Xiao Yuan was confused, ah. No. But your neck. Xiao Yuan suddenly realized what he was talking about and pulled up his collar with a light cough. At one side, Tian Xiang curled her lips with grievance, rubbed her eyes, and continued to clean the bedchamber. Chen Gu noticed that the atmosphere had suddenly turned odd, but at that moment, Chen Gu remembered that the emperor had gone on his own to intercept Xiao Yuan. As the sudden understanding hit his mind, he started to stammer, His Majesty, he. Has he to you? You. Xiao Yuan didn't bother to hide it. He simply nodded and said, Well, yes. Chen Gu was stunned for a moment, his eyes were filled with a disbelieving look, but then his expression gradually became intolerant. Finally, he clenched his fists and shouted, Is His Majesty torturing you? Xiao Jun Wang, are you hurt anywhere? Is His Majesty forcing you to talk about Huang Yu? Or is it related to General Xue? How can His Majesty abuse and inflict this selfish torture on you? Xiao Yuan. No, you misunderstood. Why do you all? This is, 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 this is. Forget it. What can I do for you? Chen Gu then remembered why he came to find Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wang, when you were attacked on the road, General Xue and I suspected that they were sent by Huang Yu. General Xue is worried that Huang Yu will try to attack you again, so he specially asked me to see if there's anything I could do to help. Xiao Yuan lifted his head, looked up at Chen Gu, and asked, Xue Yan. Chen Gu nodded, General Xue hopes to meet with you tomorrow. I wonder what Xiao Jun Wang thinks. Xiao Yuan smiled, yes, of course we have to meet. Chen Gu said, all right, then they'll come back to find Xiao Jun Wang tomorrow. After saying that, Chen Gu clasped his fist, bid his farewell and went away. But before he could walk half a step, 
he turned back and said, Xiao Jun Wan, take care. In fact, His Majesty is actually not a cruel and merciless person, it's just that. Even after a while, what he tried to say, wasn't said in the end. Xiao Yuan couldn't stand it and completed what he tried to say, it's just that he lost his true love and his temperament changed drastically. But in reality, he's not a tyrannical person. Chen Gu, right, exactly. Xiao Yuan, right my ass. This is a hickey. This isn't torture. What cruel and merciless person. Don't misunderstand my Yan Ji Yi. My Yan Ji Yi is the best in the whole universe. Chen Gu was stunned at first, but then he took a deep breath, and said, What? What? That's impossible. His majesty isn't that kind of person at all. Xiao Yuan said, I am Xiao Yuan. Chen Gu, I know. But even if you have the same name as his majesty's lover, his majesty can't treat you like a substitute. Xiao Yuan. Do you even know about the substitute one thing? Chen Gu, Xiao Jun Wang. Even if his majesty is genuinely mistaken, you should realize it as soon as possible. That in the end, you will be reduced to a situation in which your body will get injured, and your feelings will get hurt. Xiao Yuan. You're trying to figure out my ending now? Thank you very much. Turn to the right and you'll find the door, I won't send you off, goodbye. In the end, Chen Gu was driven away in a hurry. By the time Xiao Yuan and Tian Xiang finally finished cleaning up the messy bedchamber, it was already dusk. Tian Xiang diligently put the bedding on the bed, and said, Xiao Jun Wang, it'll help you tidy up the bedding, so you can sleep directly afterwards. I've been drying the bedding in the sun these days, so don't worry about moisture and dust. Xiao Yuan, ah. I'm not sleeping here. Then where are you going to sleep? I'll sleep with the emperor. Tian Xiang's hands, which were tidying the blanket, stopped as she turned back eagerly and advised, Xiao Jun Wang. Have you forgotten that you were sent away when you went to see his majesty before? Even though you stayed in his majesty's bedchamber a few days ago, it was because of what he did to you. Now that you're not in a serious condition anymore, his majesty for sure. Wa, Xiao Jun Wang, you're so pitiful. Xiao Yuan quickly took a clean plain silk handkerchief to wipe Tian Xiang's tears as he helplessly said, Don't cry, why are you crying again? I'm sure this time I won't be stopped when we go back. Tian Xiang sniffed and said, Really? Xiao Yuan, really? However, when the two of them returned to the imperial bedchamber, they were stopped. The imperial bodyguards, one on the left and the other on the right, clashed their swords against the other, blocking the door of the bedchamber. Xiao Jun Wang, please go back. Tian Xiang, Wa Wa. That last part was so funny. The fact that everyone is misunderstanding XYA and YHQ's relationship, thinking that YHQ is using the prince as a replacement sextoy for his lover when he is the lover in question. But, I mean, how could XYA explain? In the emperor y'all hated in fact, I wasn't that emperor either. I come from another world and this world is a novel I read before throwing myself from a building in like stealing bodies or something lol. Chapter, 199 Xiao Yuan asked, is his majesty not in his bedchamber? The two imperial bodyguards replied, no. So please go back Xiao Jun Wang. Tian Xiang tugged at Xiao Yuan's sleeve and said, Xiao Jun Wang, let's go back. Xiao Yuan patted her reassuringly. It's all right, well wait. It may be that His Majesty forgot to pay attention to this. Tian Xiang said anxiously, Why are you waiting on such a cold day? It might even snow in a while. Xiao Yuan didn't care about his image, so he simply pulled Tian Xiang to sit on the steps with him and smiled, I have to wait. If Yan Ji doesn't see me when he comes back, I'm sure he'll be worried, and I can't make him feel anxious anymore. Tian Xiang was so anxious that she stamped her foot in a hurry, almost blurting out the phrase Xiao Jun Wang, don't flatter yourself. But in the end, she couldn't persuade Xiao Yuan, so she had to wait with him. The imperial bodyguards on the side wanted to say something, but stopped midway. Since Xiao Yuan didn't try to rush in, they were too embarrassed to say anything else. 
they could only feel that this Xiao Jun Wang looked really miserable and desperate as he sat on the steps. After a while, as Tian Xiang said, the temperature dropped drastically and it began to snow. As the snowflakes fell, the surrounding sky was covered with clouds. Tian Xiang then couldn't help but advise, Xiao Jun Wang, you'd better go back. It's windy and cold here. Xiao Yuan rubbed his hands and breathed out a white fog as he smiled, it's indeed a bit cold. Why is it still so cold in the north when it's already spring? Tian Xiang thought that her persuasion may be useful, but then she saw that Xiao Yuan took off his robe and put it on herself. Xiao Yuan then laughed and said, You've been wronged into having to wait with me, so you shouldn't freeze. Tian Xiang's face turned red as she waved her hands repeatedly, but Xiao Yuan's attitude was tough, saying that girls can't stand the cold, so they shouldn't freeze. While, on the other hand, it was alright for him to be exposed to the cold since his body was very healthy. Because of this, since Tian Xiang couldn't stand the cold, he should give her his robe. Tian Xiang sighed and said aggrieved, Xiao Jun Wang, what makes you think that you should suffer? Xiao Yuan laughed, what suffering? Why do you have to suffer these kinds of hardships? Xiao Yuan's smile didn't diminish, I'm not suffering. Not only is there no suffering, but also my heart is quite happy. In the middle of the conversation, a pair of black boots with cloud patterns suddenly appeared in front of Xiao Yuan's eyes. As soon as he was about to raise his head, he was grabbed by a person's hand, who helped him to stand up. Tian Xiang panicked and hastily followed to get up as she saluted, completely terrified, Your Majesty. Yan Heqing covered Xiao Yuan's frozen and red hands with his own. His eyes were full of uncontrollable heartache, why are you sitting here instead of going in? Xiao Yuan smiled and said, I was stopped and wasn't allowed to get in. Yan Heqing suddenly understood what had happened and looked coldly at the imperial bodyguards guarding the entrance of his bedchamber. At that single glance, the imperial bodyguards abruptly felt a cold chill running down their backs, as if they had been nailed to the wall by ten thousand arrows. Xiao Yuan stood in the way of Yan Heqing's gaze and said with a smile, Yan Ji, you can't blame everything on them. Yan Heqing withdrew his gaze, lightly hummed, and lowered his eyes. Looking at Xiao Yuan's frozen fingertips he then lightly kissed them, it's my fault. At that moment, a loud thud was heard as the young imperial bodyguard sword fell on the ground. The other imperial bodyguard, who was more experienced, was still calm as he looked at the younger one reproachfully. However, his own sword fell to the ground right after, when he saw that Yan Heqing had grabbed Xiao Yuan by the waist, only to pick him up. Under the eyes of everyone present, Yan Heqing went towards his bedchamber with Xiao Yuan in his arms. Xiao Yuan was so surprised by this that he instinctively hugged Yan Heqing's neck. After hugging Yan Heqing's neck, he couldn't help but sigh, indeed, my Yan Ji has won the essence of the tyrannical president. Hey! Young comrades, pick up your swords, you've dropped them. Hmm. Don't open your mouth so wide, the snow will blow inside. After Yan Heqing carried Xiao Yuan into the bedchamber, he dismissed all of the maids, and gently placed Xiao Yuan on the bed. Then he stripped Xiao Yuan of his snow-drenched clothes. Xiao Yuan was just about to ask for a kiss when Yan Heqing suddenly stuffed him into the bedding and wrapped him into a tight silk ball. Xiao Yuan. Ove, I can't move. Yan Heqing hugged the tightly wrapped wall, leaned over in front of Xiao Yuan's eyes to kiss his lips, and asked, Are you feeling warmer? Xiao Yuan replied, I, I feel a bee bit wa wa warmer. Hearing Xiao Yuan stammering, Yan Heqing couldn't help but slightly raise the corners of his mouth. As he rubbed his forehead, he said, Then warm up a little more. I'll go change my court clothes. Xiao Yuan nodded, covered half of his face with the quilt, and said in a jarring voice, I, I'll wa wait for you. In the end, when Yan Heqing came back from changing into more comfortable clothes, Xiao Yuan had already fallen asleep. Yan Heqing blew out the candle and slowly laid down beside him. Xiao Yuan rolled sideways into Yan Heqing's arms, and when he finally found a comfortable position, he fell asleep completely. Yan Heqing kissed him lightly on the forehead, and closed his eyes after he hugged Xiao Yuan tightly in his arms. The next day, after Yan Heqing went to the morning court, 
Qin Ge's subordinate soon found Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wang, General Qin went to the morning court, so he asked me to come pick you up. Let's go. Xiao Yuan didn't dawdle, and after confirming his identity, he followed him. The road on the carriage surprisingly wandered out of the imperial palace. When Qin Ge's subordinate saw Xiao Yuan lifting the curtain suspiciously, he hastily explained, Old Xue now lives in the outskirts of the imperial city, he's not in the imperial palace. Xiao Yuan nodded but didn't reply. Chen Ge's subordinate, afraid of his suspicion, continued to explain, when the assassination attempt occurred in the imperial palace in the past, old Xue led his troops into the imperial palace and committed the taboo of moving the troops without his majesty's permission. Afterwards, old Xue took the initiative to ask for retirement, and his majesty didn't ask him to stay. We thought that old Xue would return to his hometown, but we didn't expect that he would live in the outskirts of the imperial city. Xiao Yuan said with a warm smile, Old Xue must be worried that his majesty won't be able to hold back since he's still young. If something goes wrong, he can assist him in time. After all, he was once powerful and mighty in court, he's still an old minister of two generations. Seeing that Xiao Yuan had a thorough understanding of everything, the subordinate was stunned. The carriage slowly drove all the way to the outskirts of the imperial city, until finally, it stopped in front of a fenced courtyard. After Xiao Yuan jumped out of the carriage, he caressed the fence with his hand. His mind was filled with different emotions as he raised his eyes to push open the fence. In the small courtyard, a man with grey temples was sitting at a stone table, holding a worn-out book, and squinting at it with his back against the sun. It was the first time that Xiao Yuan saw Xue Yan without an armor. Xue Yan was dressed in clean and plain grey linen cloth. Although his eyebrows and eyes were still stern, he also had a kindness that Xiao Yuan had never thought he would see on him. After hearing footsteps approaching, Xue Yan raised his head. When he saw that it was Xiao Yuan, he pointed to the stone bench opposite to him and said, Xiao Jun Wang, please sit down. Xiao Yuan saluted and sat down opposite to Xue Yan. Then Xue Yan asked someone to make tea and asked Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wang, I know that it's not easy for you to go out of the imperial palace, so we'll make it short. Has Huang Yu looked for you recently? Xiao Yuan held up the tea brought by a servant and smiled, Is General Xue worried that I will join hands with Huang Yu to plot against the emperor? However, Xue Yan shook his head, his majesty has long been aware that Huang Yu is trying to usurp the throne, he's simply waiting for unquestionable evidence. That's why he hasn't taken any action just yet. After all, Huang Yu is a powerful person with a strong party. If there weren't enough evidence, his majesty may be charged with killing a good minister. I'm worried about his majesty, but also, I'm worried about you. Xiao Yuan lifted the teacup lid, and when he spoke, his tone of voice was slightly raised, me. Xue Yan sighed, at first, when you sent a letter from the Western Shu Kingdom asking me for help in persuading His Majesty into assisting you with resisting the foreign countries from the Western regions in the name of the old days. When the Western Shu Kingdom and the Southern Yan Kingdom had formed an alliance, I didn't have the power at that time. So, I had no other choice than to give you the bad idea of coming to the Southern Yan Kingdom to present yourself as a minister. Now, I regret it greatly. Xiao Yuan, don't regret it. Never regret it. I'm grateful to heart. Thank you for your advice. The flowers bloomed and fell, cough, I almost started to sing. Xue Yan, Xiao Jun Wang is really good tempered. I've made you miserable, but you don't blame me. On His Majesty's side, he'll ask Chen Gu to persuade him for you. Then, I will certainly escort you back to the Western Shu Kingdom safely. As for Huang Yu, please be careful. Huang Yu will certainly attack you again in order to gain the power of the Western Shu Kingdom. Xiao Yuan quickly said, there's no need for Chen Gu to waste his words persuading. As for Huang Yu, he'll be careful, thanks General Xue for reminding me. Xue Yan nodded, then don't delay your time, Xiao Jun Wang. If His Majesty finds that you came looking for me, he will certainly dislike you even more. So, Xiao Jun Wang, please go back as soon as possible. Xiao Yuan didn't bother to explain, and after bidding his farewell, he followed Chen Ge's subordinate out of the small courtyard. 
After he took two steps, Xiao Yuan turned back to see Xue Yan pick up the military book again and squint at the words. His temples were as white as the snow of the north, his cough was similar to that of General Sun, and his posture was similar to eunuch Xiao. Xiao Yuan suddenly spoke, General Xue, His Majesty understands your good intentions. It's just that he doesn't know how to face them. When Xue Yan heard this, he raised his head but then lowered his eyes again, as he faintly said, I know. He's the child I saw growing up, how could I not know? Xiao Yuan saluted again and went back to the imperial palace with Qin Ge's subordinate. Xiao Yuan wanted to go directly back to Yan Heqing's bedchamber, but who would have known that Qin Ge's subordinates would send him to the bedchamber on the west side of the palace? Xiao Yuan didn't say much, thinking that he should walk back by himself. However, when they arrived at the bedchamber, they saw a group of people rummaging through the cabinets and digging three feet into the ground. Xiao Yuan's bedding, clothes and objects were all thrown out of the bedchamber, leaving behind a mess on the ground. Tian Xiang was struggling, trying to stop them, what are you doing? This is Xiao Jun Wang's bedchamber. What are you doing? Let go. Let go. A fierce guard, impatient with her tugging and pulling, pushed her away hard, get out of here. Tian Xian stumbled backwards, and when she was about to fall to the ground, someone grabbed her by the shoulders, stabilizing her. When Tian Xiang lifted her head, she shouted in surprise, Xiao Jun Wang. Xiao Yuan patted Tian Xiang's head and told her to go hide. Then he stepped forward to face the guard by grabbing his throat and then twisting his arm behind him as he pushed the guard to the ground. Xiao Yuan then smiled and said, Dage, are you single? Don't you know that you have to be gentle with women? You deserve to be single. Look at me, they'll write a poem for you there are two orioles singing on the willow, and you're the only single dog one. The guard was in so much pain, that he was sweating coldly as he shouted for help, General Huang. Xiao Yuan was stunned. Just when he was about to look up and around, he was suddenly surrounded by dozens of people. In an instant, the situation changed abruptly. This time, it was Xiao Yuan who got his arm forcibly twisted as his head was pressed down and he was forced to kneel on the ground. Chapter 200 President Xiao began to think about life again. Me. Who once aspired to be handsome and rich. Wicked, charming and wild. A doting lover. The. Tyrannical. President. Me. Who once memorized the 300 quotations of the tyrannical president. Me. Who has once read all kinds of dog blood routines. But now, I suddenly felt. That is better to be tied to bed by Yen He Ching, in all honesty. Let go of me. You're holding down the invisible wings of this tyrannical president. But, ah, it's really fucking hard to be a tyrannical president. Xiao Yuan was still lamenting in his mind, when Huang Yu calmly walked in front of him. The guards forced Xiao Yuan's head up with a scabbard, forcing him to look at Huang Yu. Huang Yu looked down at him, and asked, Xiao Jun Wang, do you know what crime you had committed? Xiao Yuan smiled, I know. Huang Yu was stunned, but his expression immediately returned to normal. Then he said meaningfully, Then, Xiao Jun Wang, what crime did you commit? Xiao Yuan smiled, This fox has charmed the male lead. Ah, uh, I can't help it. Who let me be so good looking? Even His Majesty is fascinated by me. Huang Yu. Xiao Yuan clearly saw Huang Yu's mouth and eyebrows twitching, he couldn't help but laugh out loud. Huang Yu, Xiao Jun Wang is quite optimistic, he even has the courage to joke at this time. No, should I use different words and say that you're actually very pitiful? Since you're still trying to win His Majesty's favor. After Huang Yu said this, he threw a dozen letters in front of Xiao Yuan, Xiao Jun Wang, do these look familiar to you? Xiao Yuan said with all honesty, they don't look familiar. Xiao Jun Wang, I have a witness. Don't try to deny it. Huang Yu thought that he was just a dead duck with a hard mouth one, so he simply sneered at him. Xiao Yuan showed an innocent expression and said, I really haven't seen them before. Alright, then I'll help Xiao Jun Wang remember. 
It turned out that when Xiao Wanye was depressed in the southern Yan Kingdom, he thought of assassinating Yan Heqing. Even if the idea of assassinating the male lead was Xiao Wangye's idea, he inadvertently left the handle in Huang Yu's hands. That's why Xiao Jun Wang had befriended Shui Yan before, but then he had to deal with Huang Yu. It can be said that he was trying to survive through two sides. What a tragedy, no wonder he chose to commit suicide by taking poison in the end. The evidence in Huang Yu's hand was conclusive, and Xiao Yuan couldn't defend himself. Because of this, he was thrown into prison without delay. Outside the prison, Huang Yu's confidant whispered in his ear, General Huang, I saw Chen Ge's subordinate in the crowd before. He left in a hurry after watching for a while, I think he should have sent Chen Gu a message. Huang Yu disagreed, even if Chen Gu knows, what can he do? He doesn't have the ability to erase the fact that Xiao Jun Wang intended to assassinate the emperor. As soon as he said that, there were hurried footsteps coming their way. When Huang Yu and his subordinates looked back, they were so shocked that they hurriedly knelt down, saluted with their fists and shouted, Your Majesty. Yan Heqing didn't even give them a glance. His face was as cold as ice as he hurriedly entered the prison. Huang Yu went forward to kneel down in front of Yan Heqing, blocking his way, Your Majesty, please listen to this minister's words. Then Huang Yu began to recount Xiao Yuan's crimes in detail. He knew that Yan Heqing would ask questions, so he prepared a speech in advance. What he said was reasonable and convincing. However, he was unexpectedly interrupted by Yan Heqing right in the middle of his speech. Yan Heqing's tone was extremely cold, as if he was suppressing a monstrous anger. There was an abyss of ice in the depth of his eyes as he said, Are you done talking? Huang Yu was caught off guard by the interruption and froze, this minister. Minister has finished his report to his majesty. Yan Heqing didn't answer again, directly bypassing him and entering the prison. Huang Yu was shocked. How could this happen? Xiao Jun Wang has been in the southern Yan Kingdom for a year, and Yan Heqing has never looked at him. It's unlikely that Yan Heqing came here to save him. Could it be possible that after His Majesty heard the evidence of Xiao Jun Wang's assassinaten attempt, he became extremely furious, and is ready to deal with Xiao Jun Wang by himself? Huang Yu looked at Yan Heqing's back as he walked into the prison, a trace of cunning and delight flashed across his eyes. Inside the prison, Xiao Yuan was chatting with the jailer. He sat in front of the cell door, raised one leg and leisurely asked the jailer at the door, Hey, Xiao Xiongdi too, come on and chat with me. At first, the jailer was still holding his stance as he reprimanded Xiao Yuan with a stern face, This heavenly prison 3 is very important, don't speak out loud. Xiao Yuan shrugged his shoulders and stretched his hands, I wasn't speaking out loud, I was talking properly. Right, Xiongdi, do you have a girlfriend? Jailer. What is a girlfriend for? Xiao Yuan laughed, it's a wife, do you have a wife? The jailer replied, oh, um, no. Xiao Yuan asked again, do you have a boyfriend then? The jailer asked, puzzled. What is a boyfriend? Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, a husband, husband five, do you understand? The jailer. Xiao Xiongdi, don't be silent, ah. Do you know the words tacit agreement 6? Tacit agreement means. The jailer interrupted him with an impatient tone of voice, I don't. Xiao Yuan, ah. That's terrible. I do. The jailer. When will the other guard come to replace me? Xiao Yuan was so happy that he couldn't help but burst into laughter. After he finished laughing out loud, he began to think about the current affairs as he crossed his hands behind his head and leaned against the cell's door. In the original book, the evidence of Huang Yu's plot for rebellion was exposed by Xiao Pingyang to help Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing once wanted to impeach Huang Yu directly, regardless of what people may say about him, but he was finally persuaded to calm down by Xiao Pingyang. Later, Xiao Pingyang and Yan Heqing acted in a wicked plan. Xiao Pingyang pretended to take refuge with Huang Yu, helping him to usurp the throne on the surface, while secretly joining hands with Yan Heqing. Until finally, they were able to seize Huang Yu's fox tail. Xiao Yuan took a long breath as he thought to himself, how can I help Yan Heqing? 
As he was thinking about it, a panicked shout came from outside the cell, Why your Ma Majesty? Xiao Yuan stood up and turned his head, only to see Yan Heqin walking towards him at a calm pace. His icy eyes became warm the moment he looked at Xiao Yuan. The jailer kneeled on the ground as he shouted Your Majesty. In a panicked state, but Yan Heqin didn't say a word. He simply stretched out his hand and pulled out the sword from the jailer's waist, cutting off the lock on the prison's door. Yan Heqin pushed the door open and stepped inside. Then Yan Heqin pressed down on Xiao Yuan's shoulder as he checked him back and forth, feeling slightly relieved once he saw that Xiao Yuan wasn't injured. Xiao Yuan smiled and said, Yan Ji Yi, I'm fine. Yan Heqin hummed, I'll take you out. Wait. Xiao Yuan grabbed Yan Heqing's arm and said, I've something to discuss with you. When Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan's eyes were gazing at the jailer, he understood immediately and sent everyone away. Then, he looked at Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan said, Yan Ji Yi, you've been waiting for an opportunity to impeach Huang Yu, right? This was the first time Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing would talk about political affairs, and when he saw Yan Heqing nodding his head, Xiao Yuan said everything he knew in detail. Then, he finally said, I have an idea. Yan Heqing asked, What? Xiao Yuan smoothed his thoughts and said, Yan Ji Yi, don't get me out of prison. Lock me up for a few days, and then ill. No. Xiao Yuan's speech had just started when he was suddenly interrupted by Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan froze, and said, ITLL only be for a few days, just tell the jailers to not hurt me. Yan Heqing said inexorably, no. Yan Ji Yi, I'm not afraid of being in the dirty and smelly prison. Besides, a few days of imprisonment won't be a problem. Xiao Yuan. Yan Ji, let me help you. Yan Heqing no longer said any more words and went forward to pick Xiao Yuan up. However, who would have thought that Xiao Yuan would step back, avoiding his hug? Seeing that Yan Heqing's body trembled, slightly angered, and how his eyes suddenly turned cold, Xiao Yuan hurried to explain, I'm dirty, I've been sitting in this prison for a while, don't hug me yet. Yan Heqing, I don't care. Xiao Yuan, even if you don't care, I do. Since I'm not allowed to stay in prison, then wait for me to get out and take a bath before hugging me. All right? Yan Heqing was silent for a long time before he finally nodded his head. When the two of them left the prison, Yan Heqing instructed the servants to prepare clean clothes. All the way back, Xiao Yuan was reluctantly saying that he wanted to help Yan Heqing, until finally, he quieted down for a moment after they arrived at the bath. Xiao Yuan took off his clothes and soaked into the pool, but then he saw that Yan Heqing was standing on the side, seemingly not intending to leave or getting in the pool. Xiao Yuan smiled and splashed him with water, let's bathe together. After being splashed, Yan Heqing reached out to wipe the water on his face, but he couldn't prevent being dragged into the pool by Xiao Yuan, who silently swam to the edge of the pool. The water splashed everywhere as Yan Heqing fell into the pool, drenched from head to toe, looking slightly wretched. Xiao Yuan smiled as he put his hands on Yan Heqing's shoulders. Yan Heqing was wearing black clothes, and his sleeves were floating in the water, wrapping around Xiao Yuan's white body, just like a white space in an ink painting. Then, Xiao Yuan said with a smile, Yan Ji Yi, are you angry because I didn't hug you in the prison? Yan He Qin looked at Xiao Yuan for a moment, until his dark eyes were filled with the water mists. As he stretched out his hand, he slowly traced Xiao Yuan's spine with his fingertips, little by little, from his neck to the end of his spine. Then, he asked, Xiao Yuan, do you want to help me? Xiao Yuan, who was touched so suggestively, couldn't help but shiver with pleasure. It took him a long time to calm down and stop shivering, before he could say, I want to. Suddenly, Xiao Yuan's eyes brightened up, what is it? Did you figure it out? Yan Ji, let me tell you, I have this bitter plan 7. MMH. Xiao Yuan's voice stopped abruptly, because half of a finger was pushed inside him. Yan He Qin leaned over his ear. His breath was warm and his voice was hoarse as he said, Xiao Yuan, why don't you use this to help me down there? Xiao Yuan. Tati talk properly. 
Why are USP speaking with AAY yellow, yellow A, accent 8? Forget it, you can use it. But why do you have to look so handsome as you speak with a yellow accent, why? Chapter, 201 Xiao Yuan was carried back to the bedchamber by Yan Heqing. The imperial bodyguards guarding the doors of the bedchamber had long been accustomed with this sight, and very quickly honed their strong hearts. As a matter of fact, Xiao Yuan wasn't tired to the point where he couldn't walk, but Yan Heqing wanted to hold him, so Xiao Yuan said nothing, and obediently let Yan Heqing carry him back. As Yan Heqing gently placed Xiao Yuan on the bed, he asked him if his body felt uncomfortable. Xiao Yuan smiled and shook his head. When suddenly, he remembered the main issue, and hurriedly asked, Yan Ji, how are you going to deal with Huang Yu after this? At that moment, Yan Heqing's eyes shone with killing intent. Xiao Yuan sensed that something was wrong with Yan Heqing, so he reached out his arms to hug him and hurriedly said, Yan Ji, you can't make a move on him now. Yan Heqing said with a cold voice, if he can make a move on you, then why can't I do the same to him? Without solid evidence of Huang Yu's conspiracy, everyone will accuse you of killing innocent people. I don't care. Xiao Yuan cupped his hands around Yan Heqing's cheeks and kissed him several times before saying, You may not care but I do. No, if you won't let me use the bitter plan, then I won't do it. But you also have to listen to me. Don't make a move on Huang Yu yet, wait for the evidence. All right. Yan Heqing hesitated, so Xiao Yuan bit his lip and kissed him fiercely. After kissing, Xiao Yuan said, Well, let me say it more cheerfully. Don't make a move on him yet and wait for the evidence. Yan Heqing didn't reply, but this could be considered a silent agreement. Xiao Yuan sighed in relief and sat cross legged on the bed, gently smiling at Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing turned his head, and when his eyes, as bright as the moonlight, converged with Xiao Yuan's smile, he calmed down. At that moment, Xiao Yuan clenched his hands slightly, as if he had made up his mind. At this time, in Huang Yu's residence, Huang Yu frowned as he asked his subordinates, was Xiao Jun Wang really taken out of the prison by the emperor? The subordinates nodded with absolute certainty. Huang Yu sneered, it seems that his bed abilities were useful. One of the subordinates proposed, General Huang, why don't we leave Xiao Jun Wang alone for the time being? We'd better be careful. Huang Yu nodded his head, ready to continue waiting for the right opportunity. However, even if Huang Yu wouldn't go against Xiao Yuan, Xiao Yuan actually took the initiative to go against him instead. Huang Yu was skeptical and somewhat surprised to meet with Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan respectfully bowed to Huang Yu, and then said, How is General Huang doing lately? When Huang Yu saw that he was playing dumb, Huang Yu wasn't worried. He greeted Xiao Yuan with a smile on his face, I'm fine. I wonder how Xiao Jun Wang's health is doing. Xiao Yuan laughed, not so good. I've been feeling confused and muddled these few days. No, not only these days. Ever since I came to the Southern Yan Kingdom my mind seems to be confused all the time, to the point where I'm not able to see the current situation clearly. Huang Yu stared at Xiao Yuan, as if he was pondering about his attitude. So, Xiao Yuan added, the first few steps I took were indeed a mistake, and now, it's like him walking on thin ice. I can't even sleep peacefully at night. Huang Yu said meaningfully, oh. Not necessarily, after all, Xiao Jun Wang is now the most favored person around his majesty. Xiao Yuan sneered mockingly and his eyes were filled with sarcasm. As he clenched his fists, he murmured, but I'm just an excuse for him to vent his desire. In the end, I'm nothing more than a replacement. Perhaps, one day, he'll get tired of playing with me. Needless to say, I don't want General Huang to hear more of this. This time, I came to General Huang to analyze his situation. Huang Yu said, oh. Then I'm all ears. Xiao Yuan picked up the teacup sitting on the table, sipped lighty, and said, ever since ancient times, when the army fought for power, it was either in a turbulent situation, or in the midst of founding a country. Now, since Yan Heqing has been in power for several years, the southern Yan kingdom is becoming more and more prosperous the morale of the army and the common people has stabilized as well. 
This is the first problem for General Huang. As for the second problem, although Chen Gu is young, he was single-handedly promoted by the old General Xue Yan. As for the Emperor, he also values him more and more every day. General Huang, your military power is very likely to be taken away by Chen Gu. I can understand the General's caution, but, General Huang, the more you delay it, the worse it will get for you. Huang Yu nodded his head, Xiao Jun Wang has a good point. But, I wonder, why has Xiao Jun Wang analyzed my situation? Xiao Yuan replied with a smile, I thought about it carefully this morning. Originally, I came to the southern Yan Kingdom to ensure the peace of the western Shu Kingdom. However, even after a year, Yan Heqing has turned a blind eye as well as deaf ears to my submission, and even tried to send troops several times to my western Shu Kingdom. Even if I was willing to bear the humiliation of being under him every night, that only brought me a few days of peace in exchange. At this point, am I not allowed to find another way out? Huan Yu said, I wonder what's the way out Xiao Jun Wang has found. Xiao Yuan slowly sipped his tea. When he saw that Huang Yu's fingers began to tap on the table, he put his cup down, and said, Yan Heqing is a good ruler for his country, and he has a stable military mind. But, I think that General Huang has been slow to act because of the lack of troops. I don't know the strength of the Western Shu Kingdom's troops, but I guess General Huang will appreciate them. Although the Western Shu Kingdom has been divided by foreign countries in recent years, it can still support General Huang. Huang Yu's fingers suddenly stopped tapping on the table. As he looked at Xiao Yuan without saying a word, the gloominess in his eyes were like rusty hooks that were aimed directly at Xiao Yuan's face. Xiao Yuan felt a chill go down his back, but he kept his mind steady as he continued, moreover, in a month, it will be the southern Yan Kingdom's memorial for the former emperor. Since ancient times, there has been a rule that the emperor has to worship by himself, so this is a great opportunity to assassinate Yan Heqing. Even though the place will be heavily guarded, I believe that with General Huang's strength, we'll be able to put our own people inside. Then, we'll be inside and outside. I don't understand what Xiao Jun Wang is talking about. Huang Yu suddenly interrupted Xiao Yuan, and his fingers no longer tapped on the table again. Xiao Jun Wang, please go back. Xiao Yuan murmured something. After a while, he stood up and said, I'm sorry I bothered you, General Huang. After saying that, Xiao Yuan left General Huang's residence without looking back. The next morning, Tian Xiang waited for Xiao Yuan to take a bath. But when she saw that he had a shovel in his hand, she didn't know what he was going to do. As she hurriedly rushed to the door, she asked, Xiao Jun Wang, where are you going? Xiao Yuan patted her head and said, Don't worry. Tian Xiang said puzzled, Huh? What? Worry about what? Xiao Yuan simply smiled and said, Don't worry about the next few days. Tian Xiang was about to ask, but then she saw that Xiao Yuan wasn't willing to say anything else as he clutched the shovel and walked out of the bedchamber. Xiao Yuan walked all the way to the north, to the hillside where the Temple of Heaven used to be, and where Yan Heqing would come to worship whenever he had a free time. The last few days, Yan Heqing hadn't come, and many weeds had grown in the small courtyard. And, before that, Xiao Yuan was almost strangled to death by Yan Heqing because he broke into this place. Xiao Yuan looked around, and this place looked the same as that day. With the quiet view of the small pond beside the mulberry tree in the fenced courtyard. After laughing, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, raised the shovel high, and smashed it against the fence. When Yan Heqing arrived, several imperial guards were trying to restrain Xiao Yuan. Unexpectedly, Xiao Yuan jumped into the pond, regardless of the cold weather, and was crazily plucking the dead lotus in the pond. The small courtyard had been destroyed by him, turning it into a complete mess. The imperial bodyguards were pale with fear because of their incompetence. When he saw Yan Heqing, Xiao Yuan wiped off the water on his face and mockingly laughed out loud, Yan Heqing. Only when it comes to things related to him, will you be so attentive. You love him, am I right? Compared to him, I'm merely a plaything to you, right? Say something. Tell me the truth. Am I right? Yan Heqing, who was standing by the pond, coldly looked at the hysterical Xiao Yuan, and replied. 
Yes, you're just a plaything. At that moment, the several imperial bodyguards, who were staring at the scene completely dumbfounded, had only one thought in their minds. Holy fuck. Sure enough, all emperors really fucking love to have an affectionate and sadistic type of love. Chapter, 202. Hearing Yan Heqing's answer, Xiao Yuan lowered his head and slowly covered his face with one hand. His shoulders trembled, but it was impossible to know whether he was crying or laughing. With a cold tone of voice, he murmured, I knew it. I knew it. When Yan Heqing saw that Xiao Yuan's clothes were soaked, he frowned, trying to suppress the impulse to reach out and pull Xiao Yuan towards himself. He had to pretend to be indifferent as he said, Come here, that's enough. Yan Heqing. Xiao Yuan bitterly slapped the water several times, splashing water everywhere, as he cried, I'm the one who has been with you these days, not him. Where have I wronged you? And where am I worse than him? Yan Heqing said, Come here, the water is cold. Xiao Yuan was slightly stunned. Yan Ji, did you remember the words wrong? Shouldn't you say that I'm not as good as 10% of him? Despite the unexpected mistake. As President Xiao. I've read countless sadistic novels with transmigrated souls. The right lines will come out as soon as I open my mouth. Xiao Yuan continued to madly pull the dead lotus plants in the pond as he said, You planted these lotus plants for him, didn't you? All right then, he'll destroy them. Oh, there are lotus roots under these lotus leaves ah, they look delicious and crisp. They should be very tasty, right? Ah, uh, no no, it should be Yan Heqing, have you ever loved me? Even the slightest bit. Do you really think that I'm willing to be your plaything? Am I wrong? Xiao Yuan tugged at the dead leaves, but since the water in the pond was icy cold, he couldn't help but shiver. Seeing this, Yan Heqing's eyes darkened. He then leaned down to pull Xiao Yuan away from the pond. However, Xiao Yuan thought that he wasn't done with this bitter play, so he stepped back. Yan Heqing narrowed his eyes slightly, and then jumped into the pond as well. When Xiao Yuan saw that Yan Heqing had suddenly jumped into the pond, he was stunned at first but he immediately realized that Yan Heqing loved him and was worried about him. After Xiao Yuan thought about it for a bit, he jumped on Yan Heqing. At that moment, the weight of a grown man's body was suddenly put on Yan Heqing, making him fall back into the pond, where the two of them sank together into the water. When the imperial guards saw Xiao Yuan pouncing on Yan Heqing, they turned pale with fear and quickly went forward as they shouted, Your Majesty. However, at that moment, the water in the pond was moving as Xiao Yuan, who was pressing Yan Heqing into the water, held his breath, smiling at Yan Heqing with bulging cheeks. As he hugged Yan Heqing's neck, he bowed his head and kissed him recklessly, relying on the fact that no one could see them under the water. After sinking and floating in the water for a short while, the two of them jumped out of the water again. Then, Xiao Yuan pushed Yan Heqing away, crying, All right. Yan Heqing, since you regard me as nothing more than a plaything, can you let me go? I beg you, let me go. I can't love you anymore, I'm tired of this. The imperial guards were busy pulling them away from the pond, when Yan Heqing coldly threw out the sentence, he's crazy, confine him to his bedchamber. After that, the play came to an end. The next day, the news that Xiao Jun Wang not only went crazy, but he even dared to contradict the emperor spread like wildfire and soon, every corner of the imperial palace knew about what had happened. That day, Chen Gu went to the western side of the palace to find Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan basked under the sunshine in the small courtyard at the gates of his bedchamber, with a pot of green tea and melon seeds, looking as leisurely as possible, as he laid on a recliner. Originally, Chen Gu came with the intention to appease him and try to find a way out for him. But when he saw Xiao Yuan like that, he was dumbfounded, Xiao Jun Wang, you, you, you. Xiao Yuan said with a smile, I, I, am crazy. Don't mess with me. Chen Gu sighed and said, Xiao Jun Wang, I know that you're imprisoned in the southern Yan kingdom, suffering all kinds of hardships, but wait for a few days until his majesty's anger subsides. I will persuade him to let you go back to the western Shu kingdom. Xiao Yuan, don't persuade him, don't persuade him, you can't persuade him. 
I won't go back. I'm still waiting to get married to your emperor. Chen Gu was speechless, sighed for a while, shook his head in defeat, and left. Chen Ge's sigh confirmed that Xiao Jun Wang's madness was, in fact, true. Almost everyone felt sorry for Xiao Jun Wang, and only Xiao Yuan seemed to stay out of it, passing his time by teasing the birds, drinking tea, and eating melon seeds in boredom. That night, Tian Xiang waited until Xiao Yuan got into the bed before quietly closing the door, and left. Xiao Yuan tossed and turned for a long time, but he was still unable to fall asleep. He couldn't sleep without the sound of breathing at his side, and even after changing bodies for the second time, he still couldn't be cured. After staying in bed for a long time, Xiao Yuan got up and started to rummage through the cabinets. After a while, he actually found a pair of night clothes that suited him. Xiao Yuan then put on the clothes, covered his face, and decided to go attack Yan Heqing. However, after Xiao Yuan changed his clothes, he hesitated. Even though his bedchamber wasn't guarded and no one will see him leaving through the window, the emperor's bedchamber will be heavily guarded. Even if he could leave his own bedchamber quietly, how would he be able to sneak into Yan Heqing's bedchamber? Then, Xiao Yuan held his head in thought for a while, until finally, he smashed his fist and said to himself, whatever, it'll go anyway. Even if I get caught, I can simply act mad. Determined, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, stood by the window, and reached out his hand to open it violently. At that instant, a man flipped in through the window from the outside. Xiao Yuan. What the fuck? The man landed and stabilized himself. When he stood up, he wrapped his arms around Xiao Yuan's waist and kissed him without saying a word. Xiao Yuan was kissed until he lost his breath, and then he heard Yan Heqing's voice whispering in his ear, You didn't say that you would jump into the pond before. Xiao Yuan laughed as he gasped for breath. Then, he said, it was needed to increase the drama and tension of the performance. To increase the explosion of feelings. Yan Heqing, but it was cold. Xiao Yuan, it's all right, I'm a grown man. Even if I freeze, nothing will happen. Besides, it was just a small pond, what could go wrong? If I had enough time, I would have dared to swim for seven or eight laps. Yan Heqing's eyes sank as he said slowly, Are you not afraid of the cold? Xiao Yuan raised his head high as he replied without hesitation, I'm not afraid. I'm mm -hmm. Yan Ji. Yan Heqing reached out to untie Xiao Yuan's belt, while with his other hand, he reached out from the corner of his upper garment, rubbing Xiao Yuan's chest and nipples. On this cold day of spring, the night was windy and cold, and since Yan Heqing had waited outside Xiao Yuan's bedchamber for a while, his hands were quite cold as well. When Xiao Yuan felt the cold hand touching his warm skin, he retreated instinctively. However, Yan Heqing put his arm around Xiao Yuan's waist, pulling him back to himself. Yan Heqing lowered his eyes, and said, Xiao Yuan, before you do something, consider whether that will make me feel distressed or not. Xiao Yuan was stunned at first, but then his heart softened. As he cupped Yan Heqing's face, he said with a warm smile, I know. The two of them kissed each other without the intention of being apart, and as they kissed, they fell on the bed. When Xiao Yuan laid on the bed, his clothes and hair were already a complete mess, and as he laughed, he said, this way, it's like we're having an affair. For example, breaking in through the window in the middle of the night, because we can't be seen by others, to have sex in secret. All the requirements for a secret encounter between lovers. Yen Ji, in case someone suddenly comes in, your reputation will be lost. But don't worry, they'll take responsibility. Yan Heqing opened Xiao Yuan's legs with his knee and rubbed it against that place. At the same time, he rubbed Xiao Yuan's sensitive waist and abdomen with his hands. When Yan Heqing saw Xiao Yuan suppressing a moan, he said, Then you'll have to take responsibility now. Xiao Yuan gasped for breath as he licked Yan Heqing's collarbone, With such a beautiful young man, taking a bit of responsibility is not that bad. They'll certainly take responsibility. Later, in the second half of the night, Xiao Yuan was receiving the fierce thrusting of Yan Heqing against his sensitive area. As Yan Heqing kissed the corner of his eyes, he asked, Will you take responsibility? 
Xiao Yuan's legs were trembling and his lower abdomen was twitching. As he shook his head tearfully, he said, Ill take, take res responsibility. After several days of Xiao Yuan acting mad, the people who should come to visit him came, and so did those who shouldn't. However, he couldn't wait for news regarding Huang Yu. In the first few days, Xiao Yuan waited patiently, but he was unable to sit still in the next few days. Seeing how the time for the former emperor of the Southern Yan Kingdom's memorial ceremony was getting closer and closer, Xiao Yuan thought about it, then decided to send a letter to Huang Yu, with only a few words on it, there's no way back. Soon, Xiao Yuan received a reply from Huang Yu. The words written on the paper were even less, and the black ink traced on the white paper formed two words written with exquisite calligraphy. Not yet. Chapter 203 Did General Huang know that His Majesty was almost stabbed by Xiao Jun Wang? At dusk, General Huang Yu's residence looked gloomy under the twilight white moon. After listening to the words of his subordinate, Huang Yu thoughtfully tapped his fingers on the table, and said, When did this happen? The subordinate said, it happened today. After His Majesty went to the morning court, he was stopped by Xiao Jun Wang on his way back to the imperial bedchamber. According to what people said, Xiao Jun Wang first cursed at the emperor. When he was coldly ignored by the emperor, Xiao Jun Wang suddenly took out a dagger from his sleeve, and tried to stab the emperor's chest. Huang Yu let out a meaningful sigh, and said, what happened to him afterwards? The subordinate said, he was temporarily put in house arrest. Because the emperor can't see blood during the ancestor worship period, his death sentence was changed to house arrest. Huang Yu nodded his head, and went back into pondering over the situation. Before, when Huang Yu sent a letter to Xiao Jun Wang, he felt that Xiao Jun Wang wasn't in a desperate situation. However, it seemed that Xiao Jun Wang was indeed quite desperate, to the point of betting everything on a single throw. As Huang Yu's fingertips slowly tapped on the table, the afterglow outside the window was gradually slanting to the west. Until finally, the yellow sun dissipated, and the dust landed on the ground. At that moment, Huang Yu's fingers tapped heavily on the table, and as he raised his head, he said, Bring me a brush and ink, then send this letter to Xiao Jun Wang. The subordinate was surprised, General Huang. Huang Yu said, From the moment I decided to scheme to obtain the throne, Every step I took was with thought of how to take the next three steps. I didn't dare to move forward or step back, for fear that everything would come to an end if I made the tiniest mistake, and I would end up dying without a place to be buried. Rather than being cautious, I've been more like a turtle hiding its neck. I, Huang Yu, have never believed in fate, but this time, I want to believe for once. I want to take a gamble, even at the risk of my own life, and give it a go. Throughout history, there were countless heroes and villains, but only one thing is certain, the winner is the monarch, and the loser is the enemy one. The seemingly calm and peaceful days of the actual turbulent waters passed one day after another, like the treacherous wind and strange clouds too. Until finally, the day when the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom will have to worship his ancestors alone, arrived. At midnight, the moon has curved to shine upon the whole country. Some homes were happy, and some others were worried. As for Tian Xiang, she had been unhappy for the whole day. After having dinner, Xiao Yuan decided to tease her, what's the matter? How can such a young girl frown so hard, to the point where she'll be able to put a piece of paper between her eyebrows? Tian Xiang simply shook her head and said nothing. Xiao Yuan knew she was worried about him. In order to make Huang Yu believe in him, he had to pretend that he wanted to assassinate Yan Heqing. It could even be said that everyone in the imperial palace was now talking about how he would be given the death sentence after Yan Heqing finished worshipping his ancestors. Xiao Yuan couldn't say much, but he wanted to appease her, you don't have to worry, I mean it. Tian Xiang simply sobbed but didn't speak. After nodding her head, she picked up the dishes, and tidied up the bedding for Xiao Yuan. Then she got up and walked out of the bedchamber. The last few days, Xiao Yuan had been under house arrest and was unable to move freely. Since Xiao Yuan was really bored, he asked Tian Xiang to bring him some books but he, who read them with great interest a few days ago, wasn't able to read a single word today. 
Because tomorrow was the day Yen Heqin will worship his ancestors. If everything goes according to plan, Huang Yu will try to assassinate Yen Heqin tomorrow. Therefore, he'll end up exposing his scheme, and will be caught in one fell swoop. Xiao Yuan turned the pages of the book until it produced a loud sound, then he placed it on the table and held his head with one hand as he stared at the candle in front of him in a daze. As the night went on, Xiao Yuan saw that it was almost the right time, so he gently blew out the candle and stood up. Instead of going to bed, he tiptoed to the window with small steps, as he held his breath and squatted. After a while, the window casket of Xiao Yuan's bedchamber was gently pulled open. When Yan Heqin came in through the window, he saw that the bedchamber was dark and he was slightly stunned. Suddenly, he could hear the sound of breathing and a black shadow jumped on top of him, catching him off guard. After the two of them struggled for a while, Xiao Yuan clasped Yan Heqing's hands and pressed him against the wall as he said with a smile, He'll devour you. Yan Heqing looked indifferent as he said, Come. Xiao Yuan kissed him as he thought, How could such a charming and fierce stallion male protagonist fall into my hands? Instead of being part of a bitter love drama as the secondary male lead, I'm in a fascinating plot where he enters through my window every day. I am, indeed, losing my mind. I am, indeed, moved to tears. Indeed, something to lament for again and again. Indeed. Oh my god, my Yan Jie is too cute. Xiao Yuan leaned against Yan Heqing's ear as he held his chin with one hand. He wasn't as tall as Yan Heqing, so he could only slightly press down his chin. The moonlight was as thin and cool as water, illuminating Xiao Yuan's unrestrained smile, young lady, you're quite charming. Who's this young lattice family? How old are you? Do you have any matchmaker offerings? If not, what do you think of me? I'm inexperienced, but I'd like to make this young lady happy. Young lady, you should consider me. What is it? Young lady, say something. When the young pampered wife didn't reply, President Xiao bowed his head and smiled. Xiao Yuan was then suddenly picked up by Yan Heqing, who took him to bed, and Xiao Yuan couldn't stop himself from laughing out loud at the thought of Yan Heqing's expression. As he covered his abdomen and trembled with laughter, he swayed from side to side. Since Yan Heqing could keep steady, he fell to the bed with Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan panted twice, trying to stop laughing. As he reached out to pull up the quilt to cover the two of them, he held Yan Heqing's hand and laid face to face with him. At that moment, Xiao Yuan said, Yan Jie, tomorrow we'll have to deal with Huang Yu. Yan Heqing, mm. Are you worried? No. Then, are you afraid? Not afraid. Xiao Yuan leaned his head towards Yan Heqing and asked, Yan Jie, is there anything that you're afraid of? Yan Heqing looked into Xiao Yuan's eyes, and after a long silence, he slowly nodded his head. Xiao Yuan was surprised, you actually have something you're afraid of. What is it? Yan Heqing said, the black hair in the morning that turns white as snow in the evening three. The old trees that withered into wood, and a man dressed with luxurious clothes becoming old, lonely, and powerless. Ah! Uh, why are you afraid of those? You're no longer by my side. Xiao Yuan stopped breathing for a moment, but then he pressed his forehead against Yan Heqing's, Yan Jie, you don't have to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Yan Jie, I've been so bored lately. Since I had to stay in my bedchamber all the time, I had a lot of chaotic thoughts. I'll tell you about them the day after tomorrow. All right. Yan Heqing gently kissed Xiao Yuan's forehead and eyes. Until finally, he kissed his lips, tenderly and lovingly. After the kiss, the two of them fell asleep with their foreheads touching each other. The next day, the ceremony of worshipping the ancestors of the Southern Yan Kingdom arrived. Since this ritual was a national event in the Southern Yan Kingdom, even Tian Xiang, who was arranged to serve Xiao Yuan, had to help. In the end, she had to leave Xiao Yuan alone in his bedchamber, who was already anxiously waiting for any news. When the time for Yan Heqing's worshipping alone came close, the door of Xiao Yuan's bedchamber was suddenly pushed open. Xiao Yuan thought that it was Tian Xiang who had returned. However, when he was about to ask about the situation outside, 
he became stunned. Because the person who came in uninvited wasn't Tian Xiang, but a subordinate of Huang Yu. Huang Yu's subordinate walked in and placed a set of Imperial Guards clothes in front of Xiao Yuan. Then, he said, I'm grateful that Xiao Jun Wang is willing to lend us his troops, so how could Xiao Jun Wang miss the fun today? Xiao Yuan's heart thumped, as his hands hanging by his sides clenched slightly. Then he laughed and said, but I'm under house arrest, his majesty's orders. I can't go out at will. The subordinate laughed, Xiao Jun Wang doesn't need to worry, I've made some arrangements outside. As for the emperor, General Huang will determine the situation after today. What is Xiao Jun Wang worried about? You just have to change your clothes and follow me. Time doesn't wait. Xiao Yuan clenched his hand, but on the surface he looked calm, right, then please wait a moment. After saying that, Xiao Yuan took the set of Imperial Guard's clothes and went into the inner room. Only then did his eyebrows frown tightly. It seems that Huang Yu hasn't completely let down his guard against him. If he goes to Huang Yu at this time, Xiao Yuan is afraid that he will be imprisoned in a dilemma. But, if he doesn't go, everything will get revealed. If that were to happen, Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing's hardworking efforts for a month would go to waste. Xiao Yuan gritted his teeth as he picked up the Imperial Guard's clothes and hurriedly changed. Chapter 204 The spring breeze couldn't scatter his anxiety, or remove his worries. On the hillside where the Temple of Heaven was located, Huang Yu's figure was hidden behind the thick branches and leaves, surrounded by Imperial Guards dressed in black clothes. In an hour, Yan Heqing would go up the mountain alone to worship his ancestors. According to the rules of the southern Yan Kingdom regarding the emperor worshipping his ancestors, his imperial bodyguards could only wait at the foot of the mountain for him so Huang Yu tried his best to replace all the people on the west side at the foot of the mountain with his own men. Then he sent several people to sneak up the mountain from the west side, to wait for Yan Heqing to pass by. Chen Gu should soon find that the imperial guards on the west side had decreased. Whether the plan will be a success or a failure can only be known in a moment. Huang Yu placed his hands behind his back, took a deep breath and exhaled slowly. Suddenly, he heard the sound of footsteps coming from behind him. When he looked back, he saw that it was his subordinates and Xiao Yuan. Huang Yu greeted him faintly, Xiao Jun Wang. Xiao Yuan looked around and smiled, what a heavenly net one. If it hadn't been for Xiao Jun Wang helping with his military strength, none of this could have been possible. Huang Yu said. I wonder, how is Xiao Jun Wang feeling now? Xiao Yuan, I won't lie to General Huang, I'm feeling nervous and scared. Huang Yu smiled sympathetically, and said, Xiao Jun Wang, do you know why I want the throne? Xiao Yuan replied, Aspiration. Huang Yu shook his head as he said, you chose to usurp the throne with me because you wanted to live. As for me, I also wished to keep on living. General Huang, you once fought alongside Yan Heqing in the war against the Eastern Wu Kingdom and achieved great success. But now, even when you have power and influence in the Southern Yan Kingdom, you're not satisfied with this, and you insist on usurping the throne. Shouldn't it be lying to affirm that your only desire is to live? Xiao Yuan's words were filled with thorns, but when Huang Yu looked at him, he didn't seem annoyed. Instead, he replied calmly, My father was once a subordinate of a deputy general of the southern Yan kingdom. Even though his official power wasn't great, his salary was enough to allow our family to not worry about food. My mother and I had always been quite satisfied with our lives, until I turned sixteen. The deputy general my father was loyal to, was framed and put into prison. As for my father, he was implicated, and was sent to prison as well. Huang Yu paused, lowered his head and his gaze was lax, as if he was lost in his memories, my mother ran towards all the relatives she could, scattered all the family assets and begged all the people she could beg for help. I still remember that time she took me to kowtow and beg for help on a rainy night. We knelt on the ground in a mess, drenched from head to toe by the rain, but even so, my father was still not released. Later, I joined the army, and risked my life on the battlefield, rushing to the front line to kill the enemy every single time. It took me six years and hundreds of scars to obtain the position of deputy general, to use my power to clear my father's name. 
But, by then, my mother had already died two years ago, and my father died soon after he was released from prison. Huang Yu continued with a cold smile, at that time, I understood that when you're a nobody, even if you split your head open, no one would listen to you. However, as long as you have power, you can have whatever you want, even the entire world. Xiao Jun Wang, do you understand? It's better to hold power firmly in your own hands. Xiao Yuan was silent for a while before he could say, it's lonely being at the top too. Huang Yu, it's nonsense to say that those who are in high positions scare those who are at the bottom. But, of course, only when you stand on top of the mountains are you able to see the sky from all directions. Xiao Yuan was speechless. Suddenly, there was the sweet sound of the birds singing in the forest. At this, Huang Yu's eyes narrowed slightly as he said in a whisper, the emperor is coming. Xiao Yuan followed his gaze as he pursed his lips nervously, and his hands clenched involuntarily. Through the gap between the branches, Xiao Yuan was able to overlook the winding path up the mountain. After the singing of the birds, a white figure appeared in Xiao Yuan's eyes. Yan Heqing's black hair wasn't tied up, gathering together on his back. He was dressed in white garments, and as he looked ahead, he held the sacrifices with both hands as he walked up the mountain, step by step. Xiao Yuan bit his lips nervously, without even noticing the taste of blood in his mouth. Huang Yu was also nervous, holding his breath without saying a word. After an unknown period of time passed, in which the mountain breeze was silent and everything became quiet, almost all of the eyes were on Yan Heqing. Like when the swords are drawn and the bows are bent free. Yan Heqing, as if he realized something, stopped abruptly. Then, he slowly turned his head to look over. Huang Yu's eyes suddenly shrank, and he hurriedly made a gesture to his subordinates. Then, another sound of a bird singing resounded through the mountain. A while later, dozens of black-clothed people jumped out of the trees and grass, fiercely waving their swords at Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing took a few steps back to avoid the swords, but when he looked back, he found that his way was blocked by the men dressed in black. He was surrounded by the assassins. Yan Heqing frowned tightly, when suddenly, he heard Huang Yu calling your majesty. Behind him. Yan Heqing turned around and his gaze was instantly fixed on the person next to Huang Yu. He was so surprised that his eyes suddenly widened. Huang Yu thought that Yan Heqing was surprised by his own betrayal, and joked, is his majesty really so surprised? After saying that, Huang Yu no longer talked nonsense as he pulled out the long sword at his waist. As he was about to make a move, the thin sword clanked out of its sheath, flooded with a cold light. Suddenly, someone reached out to stop him. The one who stopped him was Xiao Yuan. Xiao Yuan and Yan Heqing looked at each other. Then, Xiao Yuan took a deep breath, and said, General Huang, can you let me do it? I really have too many accounts to settle with your emperor. Huang Yu thought for a moment, and handed a dagger to Xiao Yuan. After all, it's still regicide. It's better to borrow someone else's hand in this matter. Xiao Yuan held the dagger tightly as he slowly walked away from Huang Yu and got close to Yan Heqing. Their eyes never moved away from each other, as if there was no one else in the world. Xiao Yuan said, Yan Heqing, after all this time, have your feelings for me ever changed? Have you ever loved me, even for a little bit? Do you remember my sobbings and laughter, even if only once? Because, Yan Heqing, I love you. Huang Yu secretly scared, obviously unable to understand those deep feelings of love and hate, standing aside to watch the show with interest. On the surface, Yan Heqing was quiet, but inside his heart, he was anxiously waiting for Xiao Yuan to escape. Xiao Yuan wanted to walk up to Yan Heqing as soon as possible, but he was afraid to reveal anything by mistake, making Huang Yu notice. So, he had to rack his brain to remember the lines of those toxic dog blood novels he read before as he continued to act, tell me. Have you ever loved me? Huang Yu felt a toothache, not wanting to see this drama anymore. Unexpectedly, he saw among the black-clothed guards someone quietly retreating a few steps. It was one of the soldiers from the Western Shu Kingdom that Xiao Yuan lent him to use. For a moment, the winds and clouds surged, and everything became silent in an instant. 
Guan Yu suddenly clenched his long sword and stood in front of Xiao Yuan, dragging him back violently. With a sinister smile, he said, Xiao Jun Wang, even though the emperor is unarmed, I'm afraid that you still won't be able to defeat him. It won't be good if you get hurt. Yan Heqing's eyes had long rippled with shock. At that moment, he only needed to move his fingers to have Huang Yu and his subordinates immediately caught, but at this time, Yan Heqing's body was stiff, as if he was unable to move. At the foot of the mountain, inside the forest, all of Huang Yu's black-clothed subordinates were ambushed by Yan Heqing's imperial guards. However, without the emperor's orders, they didn't dare to act rashly. At this moment, their hearts were slightly anxious. Meanwhile, Xiao Yuan was, surprisingly, the calmest one. As he returned the dagger to Huang Yu, he sneered. I didn't expect that General Huang would be so worried about me. Anyway, I asked General Huang to do it himself. Huang Yu took the dagger, looked at Xiao Yuan, thought for a moment, and winked at his subordinates. The subordinates immediately understood the order as they stepped towards Xiao Yuan's side, seemingly taking some distance away from him, but with a sense of oppression that couldn't be ignored. Huang Yu no longer talked, and as he held the long sword, he walked towards Yan Heqing. Even though Yan Heqing saw that the sharp sword was getting close to his chest with the intention to stab him, he didn't make a move. Because his eyes were completely focused on Xiao Yuan, who was surrounded. Chapter 205 Right at the most critical moment, Yan Heqing dodged Huang Yu's sword, and pulled out a short sword from the offerings. After a few crisp sounds of swords colliding against each other, and a silver light cutting through the sky, the two men had already made several moves, but Huang Yu was still unable to injure Yan Heqing on his own. This, of course, was to be expected, but Huang Yu wasn't annoyed. Instead, he winked at the men surrounding them, and without hesitation, more than a dozen men dressed in black waved their swords at Yan Heqing. Everyone was afraid about the current atmosphere where anything could happen, so they held their breath for a moment. The only thing left between heaven and earth was the rustling sound of the mountain wind, sweeping through the remnants of the early spring leaves. When suddenly, a terrible scream broke the silence. Almost all of them turned their heads to look at the direction of the miserable cry. Huang Yu's subordinates, who were guarding Xiao Yuan, were hunched over and covering their abdomens. The pain was so great that they couldn't recover for a long time. Meanwhile, Xiao Yuan wildly ran down the mountain, shouting at the same time, Protect the Emperor. Huang Yu's face suddenly turned white, but he reacted quickly as he turned around to chase Xiao Yuan. Yan Heqing followed him, but he was suddenly surrounded by a dozen men dressed in black. However, in an instant, the situation was suddenly reversed as Chen Gu, who had been lurking in the mountain's forest for a long time, showed up with hundreds of imperial guards. Huang Yu's men were trapped, like a turtle being caught in a jar one. Even the Western Shu Kingdom's soldiers turned their backs on them. Huang Yu's men were all flustered and confused. Some of them tried to resist, while others had already dropped their weapons and surrendered. Chen Gu rushed into the crowd to protect Yan Heqing, but then he saw Yan Heqing rushing towards Xiao Yuan's way. Xiao Yuan knew that it was because of him that Yan Heqing didn't dare to act rashly, so as long as he escaped to a safe place, everything would go according to plan. Xiao Yuan ran for a while, and when he wanted to turn around to see what the situation was, his shoulder was unexpectedly held down, brutally pulling him back. Xiao Yuan couldn't stabilize himself, and he ended up falling backwards. The two people rolled around for several steps before they could stabilize themselves, and when Xiao Yuan was about to look up, he was suddenly choked by that man. Huang Yu's eyes were filled with malice as he shouted angrily, You dared to set me up. How could Xiao Yuan just sit and wait for death? As he desperately struggled to fight off Huang Yu, Yan Heqing's urgent footsteps were heard, Xiao Yuan. When Huang Yu saw that Xiao Yuan was about to break free from his grasp, he suddenly pulled out a dagger from his waist and violently stabbed Xiao Yuan's leg. It was hard for Xiao Yuan to suppress the loud and miserable cry due to the pain he felt. Soon, his scream disappeared into the noisy and chaotic crowd. Huang Yu grabbed Xiao Yuan's hair rudely and pulled him up. After placing the dagger against Xiao Yuan's throat, Huang Yu turned around to face Yan Heqing. At that, 
Yan Heqing stopped running at once, and his eyes were fixed on Xiao Yuan's injured leg. Yan Heqing's eyes slowly turned red, and he almost shattered his teeth before he could say, Don't touch him. Huang Yu didn't expect that Yan Heqing would be so concerned about Xiao Jun Wang. At first, he was stunned, but then he laughed out loud, it seems that His Majesty still has some feelings for this bed warmer. As soon as Huang Yu finished saying those words, he dragged Xiao Yuan down the hill. Because Xiao Yuan's leg was injured, he wasn't able to walk fast, so he was pulled all the way down the mountain by Huang Yu, leaving a trail of blood. An imperial bodyguard was about to chase after them, but he was suddenly stopped by Yan Heqing. Huang Yu didn't know where he was going or where he should go. The only thing he knew was that he was on the verge of collapsing, and he no longer had the power to return. But, he wasn't willing, he really wasn't willing. Huang Yu dragged Xiao Yuan to the middle of the mountain, until finally, he couldn't drag him anymore. When he saw that no one was following him behind, Huang Yu dropped Xiao Yuan on the ground, which was an open space at the edge of the cliff, where the former Northern Kingdom's Temple of Heaven used to be. Xiao Yuan fell heavily on the ground. His palms were red, and the wound on his leg hurt immensely. As he tried to ease the pain, he laughed and said, General Huang made a huge mistake. If you wanted to hold me hostage, you shouldn't have injured my leg. At that moment, Huang Yu had calmed down, so he simply sneered at him and said, I wanted to take Xiao Jun Wang's life at once, but I didn't expect that the emperor would care so much about you. Xiao Jun Wang, aren't you happy? For over a year, the emperor had never paid attention to you, but at this moment, he unexpectedly became so attentive of you. You probably never thought this would happen, am I right? Xiao Yuan hummed a few times, but he didn't reply. For some reason, at this point, Huang Yu's heart actually calmed down a lot. As he looked around, he could feel the cold mountain breeze filling the mountain forests and rivers. It was early spring, so with the humid wind, Huang Yu's body felt colder and colder as if he was reliving that time when he and his mother went to ask for help under the cold and heavy rain. All of a sudden, Huang Yu seemed to understand what it meant to be lonely at the top. The higher you climb, the worse the fall. Suddenly, the sound of footsteps came behind him. At this, Huang Yu fiercely dragged Xiao Yuan up, who was on the ground, using Xiao Yuan as a shield to protect himself. As Huang Yu placed the dagger against Xiao Yuan's throat, he turned around. Surprisingly, it was Yan Heqing. Yan Heqing was alone, armed with a single long sword. As the wind lifted his clothes, he stood more than ten meters away, staring at the dagger pressed against Xiao Yuan's throat. Without trying to move forward, Yan Heqing said, let him go. If you do, they'll let you go, along with your men. Huang Yu sneered, his majesty must be joking. I don't believe that Xiao Jun Wang is that important to you. His majesty must not forget that Xiao Jun Wang had been a minister for more than a year now, and you've never been interested in him. I know that his majesty wants to capture me alive, so that you can force me to confess who my party members are, so you're using this excuse to make a deal with me. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but say, in that case, Dage should place the dagger against your own neck instead of mine. Ah, uh, Dage. Hiss. Huang Yu slightly added more pressure to the dagger, and Xiao Yuan's neck immediately oozed beads of blood. Yan Heqing stepped forward abruptly, but he immediately restrained his impulse in time. His hand holding the long sword, trembled slightly. When Huang Yu saw him that way, he sneered and said, His Majesty's acting ability is quite good. How about this? Your Majesty, if you throw the sword on the ground, they'll let Xiao Jun Wang's neck go. Huang Yu intended to ridicule Yan Heqing, but he didn't expect to see Yan Heqing throwing the sword aside without any hesitation. Huang Yu was actually quite stunned, and a trace of incredulity flashed in his eyes. He slowly removed the dagger from Xiao Yuan's neck, but then he placed the tip of the dagger against Xiao Yuan's abdomen. At that moment, Huang Yu suddenly noticed something. When he pressed the dagger slightly harder, Yan Heqing's eyes would shrink. With this, Huang Yu's inner doubts became more and more firm. But, he still felt that it didn't make sense. Yan Heqing said, What do you want? Huang Yu looked at Yan Heqing, and after a long silence, 
he suddenly said, I want you to kneel down and beg me. Xiao Yuan's heart panicked as he shouted, Yen Ji, don't do it. Before Xiao Yuan could even finish his words, Yen He Qing had already knelt down. Huang Yu's eyes widened, and then, he burst out in a maniacal laughter. After laughing for a while, he shouted, Yen He Qing. Why the hell did you become an emperor? For what? Look at you right now, you look so pathetic and ridiculous. Yen He Qing calmly said, If you let him go, then they'll let you go. You'll let me go. Heh, let me go. Huang Yu mumbled these words in a daze, when suddenly, he raised his head with a sinister smile, Yan He Ching, even if you let me go, where else can I go? Do you think that I'm afraid of death? Let me tell you, the moment I decided to usurp the throne, I already prepared myself to lose my head. Yan He Ching, I don't need you to let me go. What is it? Are you really worried about him? After saying this, Huang Yu pressed the dagger more deeply. As Xiao Yuan trembled a bit, the clothes on his abdomen were suddenly dyed red. Yan He Qing was breathless. Then, he heard Huang Yu laugh madly, as long as you crawl over like a dog, they'll let him go, all right? Ha 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 ha, the monarch of the country, the monarch of the country looks extremely ridiculous. Ridiculous. All of a sudden, Huang Yu's laughter stopped abruptly. As soon as Huang Yu finished his words, Xiao Yuan suddenly turned around, regardless of the threat of the dagger. When he moved, the dagger in Huang Yu's hand immediately pierced into his abdomen. Xiao Yuan trembled all over, and as he resisted the pain, he cursed, Ridiculous your father! Huang Yu panicked. When he was about to pull back the dagger to regain control over Xiao Yuan, Xiao Yuan suddenly pushed him. However, the two of them stumbled back a few steps, until their feet touched the air, falling down the cliff. Chapter, 206 When the two of them fell off the cliff, they ended up falling heavily on a protruding stone platform. Xiao Yuan seemed to know that there was a stone platform under the cliff, so he didn't hesitate to get up at once. Huang Yu rolled on the ground twice, almost falling down the platform, so he retreated in a panic. Huang Yu's frightened expression hasn't recovered yet, when suddenly, another person fell on the stone platform as well. Xiao Yuan shouted with surprise, Yan Ji Yi. Yan He Qing didn't expect that there was a stone platform under the cliff, so he was briefly stunned after landing. All of a sudden, Xiao Yuan's panicked shout rang in his ears, Yan Ji Yi, be careful. A sharp dagger charged towards Yan He Qing with a frightening silver shine. Huang Yu held the dagger tightly, looking at Yan He Qing with determination and killing intent. Yan He Qing wasn't able to dodge, and his arm was slashed as a shocking amount of blood splashed all over. Huang Yu kept his pace as he turned to fiercely stab Yan He Qing's chest. However, Yan He Qing grabbed Huang Yu's wrist at the right time, and twisted it violently, reversing the dagger's sharp blade's direction, aiming it at Huang Yu's chest. The two men grabbed each other's elbows and arms, using their strength against each other as they struggled for a long time. When suddenly, Huang Yu smiled mockingly. Right after that, Huang Yu was caught off guard as he lost all his strength when the dagger pierced his chest. As he felt the cold sensation of his body being pierced, Huang Yu sneered mockingly, and as he covered his chest, he stumbled backwards. After raising his head to look at the sky, he fell off the cliff from the stone platform. As the mountain wind whistled in his ears, Huang Yu struggled to open his eyes as he thought, this mountain is really tall, ah. Meanwhile, on the stone platform, Yan He Qing didn't even bother to take a look at Huang Yu as he hurriedly turned to look for Xiao Yuan. Once Yan He Qing's gaze settled on Xiao Yuan, his eyes suddenly shrank. Xiao Yuan's clothes were dyed red, right where his abdomen was. Xiao Yuan was covering his abdomen tightly with his hands as he sat against the wall, trying to adjust his breathing. Yan He Qing trembled as he knelt down and gathered Xiao Yuan into his arms, reaching at the same time to cover Xiao Yuan's wounds for him. Xiao Yuan tried to smile at Yan He Qing as he said, Yan Ji Yi, I'm fine. Yan Ji Yi, your eyes are so red, I'm really fine so don't worry. Yan Ji Yi, don't cry. Yan He Qing didn't say anything as he cut his coat into strips with a knife. Then he bandaged Xiao Yuan's leg and abdomen wounds. 
Xiao Yuan nestled in his arms and rambled, Yen Ji, let me tell you, I jumped simply because I knew that there was a stone platform below. I wasn't taking my life lightly. As for my abdominal wound, I now understand how the body works, so I twisted Huang Yu's hand in order to not hurt any internal organs. You don't have to worry, I'm really fine. Yen Ji, do you want to take a break after this? I smashed the small courtyard at the Temple of Heaven. What a pity, Sai. Should we dig a pond near the bedchamber? Raise fish, grow mulberry trees and hemp. I don't know whether mulberry trees are good or not, do you want to know why? Isn't it said two people talking about planting mulberry trees and hemp as their drink wine? But, it seems that the mulberry tree and hemp are used generally in poems to refer to crops one, ah. Yenji, let's make another set of wedding clothes, alright? I wasn't able to see the original set, was it beautiful? Was the golden dragon embroidered on it as majestic as the owner of the shop said? Did it look good on you? I want to see it. Yenji, are you angry? Don't be angry, no, don't be angry now. You can settle accounts with me later. Cough cough. When he saw that Xiao Yuan's nonsense suddenly stopped as he covered his mouth and coughed repeatedly, Yan Heqing's pupils shrank as he said, don't talk anymore. Xiao Yuan tugged at his sleeve and laughed, but, I still have a lot of things to say to you. What will you do? Why don't you block my mouth then? What do you think is the best way to shut me up? Yan Heqing leaned down to kiss him. Xiao Yuan closed his eyes, carefully using the tip of his tongue to rub Yan Heqing's lips, which were slightly trembling out of fear, as gently and carefully as he could. Until we met for the first time, I didn't understand what happiness and sorrow were. I didn't understand life, and I couldn't differentiate between hardships and happiness. I simply watched how the spring, summer, autumn and winter went by. As I look back on this life, so far, I've been keeping the clouds open to see the bright moon behind too. Xiao Jun Wang was imprisoned. Xiao Yuan, the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom, was imprisoned. Xiao Yuan, the monarch of a country, was imprisoned by Yan Heqing, the emperor of the southern Yan Kingdom. Xiao Yuan, what am I imprisoned for? Tian Xiang was so anxious that she stamped her foot, that's what everyone in the imperial palace is saying. Xiao Yuan, they're just talking pure nonsense. Tian Xiang, but his majesty really won't let Xiao Jun Wang move around. Xiao Yuan pointed to the tight bandages wrapped around his abdomen and leg, then said, even if he wouldn't allow me to move, I can't move. Tian Xiang, and, his majesty only comes to this bedchamber at night to look for Xiao Jun Wang, but he will leave early in the morning. Xiao Yuan, that's nonsense. This is his bedchamber. Where else will he go to sleep? Tian Xiang. It seems that there's nothing wrong. Suddenly, Chen Gu, who was covered in mud from head to toe, rushed in from outside, why did his majesty order me to dig a pond in front of the bedchamber? Xiao Yuan, remember to put red koi fish in it, red ones look better. Wait, why are you the one digging the pond? Aren't you a general? Chen Gu collapsed, how would I know? Oh, I know. Xiao Yuan grabbed a handful of candied fruits beside the bed, stuffed some in Tian Xiang's hand, and put one inside his mouth. After His Majesty and I were saved from the bottom of the cliff, I clearly told you to not carry me, but you had to carry me. You even reached out, trying to get me away from my Yenge's arms. Chen Gu replied, I saw that His Majesty's arm was wounded. Besides, His Majesty hugged you tightly and left. I barely touched you. It wasn't a big deal. It's not a big deal at all. Xiao Yuan, some children can't be taught. Go back to dig the pond. Wait, do you want to eat candied fruit? Chen Gu said with grief and indignation, I want. Come on, give me your hand. Xiao Yuan grabbed a handful of candied fruit and handed them to Chen Gu. However, when Chen Gu went to pick the candied fruits, Xiao Yuan closed his palm, and Chen Gu just so happened to hold Xiao Yuan's hand by accident. At that instant, the sudden sound of a stool falling to the ground was heard. Everyone looked back in horror as they saw Yan Heqing expressionlessly standing behind them. 
Beside him was a pitiful stool that had fallen to the ground. Chen Gu reacted quickly as he knelt on one knee and clasped his fist, Wei Chen salutes his majesty. Yen He Qing, the pond. Chen Gu shouted, Wei Chen will go to resume digging right now. After saying that, Chen Gu rushed out energetically. Yen He Qing took a few steps toward Xiao Yuan, and asked, Do your wounds still hurt? Xiao Yuan stretched out his hand with a smile on his face, quietly pulling Yen He Qing's sleeve until it touched the bedding, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt anymore when you're here. It even feels as if I were healing faster. I'm mm -hmm. Yen He Qing pulled back his sleeve and said, Have a good rest. After saying that, he turned his head and walked away. Tian Xiang took a long sigh of relief. Then, she got up to ask Xiao Yuan what he wanted to eat for lunch, but she stopped the moment she saw that Xiao Yuan had a sad expression on his face. Yen He Qing is angry. My Yen Ji Yi is really really angry. Ten days have passed since Huang Yu's mutiny, and Yen He Qing has been busy dealing with the remaining members of Huang Yu's party every day. Because of this, he was only able to return to the bedchamber at night. Since Yen He Qing knew that Xiao Yuan wasn't able to sleep alone, no matter how busy he was, he would definitely come back to rest with him. Sometimes, he would wait for Xiao Yuan to fall asleep to leave and keep dealing with political affairs. Yen He Qing would ask about Xiao Yuan's injuries, change his bandages, and even kiss Xiao Yuan carefully when he's feeling pain. But, Xiao Yuan wasn't able to seduce him anymore. He can't seduce or touch him. Whether Xiao Yuan asked for a kiss or wanted to do some unspeakable activities, Yen He Qing would ignore him every single time. He's ignoring him. Xiao Yuan lived for so many years, and for the first time in his life, he met with a problem he didn't know how to solve. How should I coax a former stallion novel protagonist when he's angry? Chapter 207 What's wrong, Xiao Jun Wan? Why are you frowning all the time? After dinner, Tian Xiang saw that Xiao Yuan seemed distressed as he held his head in a daze, so she asked after cleaning up the dishes. Xiao Yuan said, I've angered his majesty, and am trying to find a solution. Tian Xiang's eyes widened, there's no way. His majesty would come back every night to sleep with Xiao Jun Wan. His majesty even changes your bandages himself, he doesn't seem to be angry at all. Xiao Yuan. When you say it like that, I suddenly realize something. How can my Yan Jie be so good? Tian Xiang said, Xiao Jun Wang, if you ask me how to coax a woman, I may be able to give you advice. But it's hard to figure out what His Majesty is thinking. Why don't you ask General Chen, who's still digging the pond in front of the bedchamber? Xiao Yuan patted her head. That's right. How could I forget about Chen Gu? Chen Gu had been digging for a whole day, and he was finally able to take a rest. As soon as he sat down and drank a mouthful of cold water, a faint, ghostly voice suddenly came into his ears, where does a happy life come from? It depends on hard labor to exist. 1. Chen Gu spewed out the mouthful of water, almost choking to death. Xiao Yuan kindly stretched out his hand and patted Chen Gu on the back to help him calm his breath, slow down, slow down, don't rush. Chen Ge's heart was wailing as he thought, I'm not rushing. You scared the shit out of me. When Chen Gu finally calmed his breath, he exhaled softly, and asked, What is Xiao Jun Wang doing here? Is your injury alright? I'm fine. I just wanted to ask you something. Xiao Yuan sat down next to Chen Gu, with a serious expression on his face, How can I coax my sweetheart when he's angry? Chen Gu gulped and asked, It depends on what your sweetheart is angry about. Xiao Yuan said, I promised him that I wouldn't do anything stupid, but in the end. But. The situation was critical at the time, so I didn't have any other choice. It's just. Chen Gu nodded thoughtfully, then, did he argue with you? Xiao Yuan, no, if he was willing to scold me, then maybe after scolding me, we could resolve our differences. But he's so angry that he won't even scold me. Chen Gu, he must be extremely angry then. 
Xiao Yuan held his head in distress. Chen Gu then said, Xiao Jun Wang, don't be upset. If you want to coax him, then why don't you do something unexpected to surprise him? Before, Xiao Yuan reassured himself that in order to coax Yan Heqing, he must lose face. But when Xiao Yuan sat on top of Yan Heqing, almost naked, he failed to seduce Yan Heqing. Could this be regarded as something unexpected? Chen Gu seemed to see through Xiao Yuan's thoughts, and said, if not, then it must be because Xiao Jun Wang didn't come up with the right idea. Think again, is there anything that he has been waiting for you to give him, but you didn't? Xiao Yuan held his head and thought for a while. When suddenly, happiness struck his heart, I understand. Chen Gu nodded with a naive smile, and said, as long as Xiao Jun Wang understands. Wait, no. Xiao Jun Wang, because you haven't been with His Majesty lately. Are you seeing someone else? Xiao Jun Wang, I understand that you and His Majesty have a physical relationship with no feelings, but you can't get in trouble at this time, ah. Uh. If His Majesty were to find out. Ugh. Xiao Yuan picked up the water pouch, put it aside, and blocked Chen Ge's mouth with his hand. Are you really stupid or are you just a fool that seems wise? At the same time, Yan Heqing was dealing with court affairs, when suddenly, a minister hurriedly advised, Your Majesty. The foreign country of the western regions sent a letter to us, saying that they heard that the monarch of the western Shu kingdom has submitted to our country as a minister. If we don't send the monarch of the western Shu kingdom back to the west, then they will send troops to harass our border cities. Yan Heqing's hand, which was following the words on the memorials, suddenly stopped. As he slowly raised his head, there was a bottomless coldness in his eyes. The minister hadn't realized that Yan Heqing's expression was wrong, so he analyzed the situation in a methodical way, Chen Tu believes that the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom should be sent back to his country first. Your Majesty, this foreign country in the Western regions is nomadic, reckless and belligerent in nature. If they harass our borders every day, the towns and people on the border will suffer bitterly. This foreign country has only coveted the land of the Western Shu Kingdom, they are worried about our country being on good terms with the Western Shu Kingdom, which is why they're requesting such a thing. Why don't we wait for these two countries to fight each other first? Like the Oriole waiting in the back three, well conquer the Western Shu Kingdom, unifying the whole country in one fell swoop. The minister made a good analysis, so Yan Heqing didn't criticize him too much. Still, he said coldly, well fight anyone who dares to approach my borders. The minister was stunned, fight? With the foreign country of the western regions? But, your majesty, the western Shu kingdom is between us. If your majesty wants to fight, we can only take a detour. It's too exhausting, and the soldiers will be too tired to fight. Besides, ITLL be hard to support the army's food this way. Yan Heqing shook his head, we won't go around, well go through the Western Shu Kingdom's territory. The minister said, Your Majesty, Chen knows that you have always wanted to send troops to the Western Shu Kingdom, but if we conquer the Western Shu Kingdom at this moment, then the foreign country will become the Oriole. Unexpectedly, Yan Heqing shook his head again, and said, well unite with the Western Shu Kingdom through marriage, and well fight that foreign country. The minister couldn't believe his ears. Union by marriage. In the past, when the Western Shu Kingdom wanted to befriend the Southern Yan Kingdom, they sent several portraits of princesses for Yan Heqing to choose as concubines. However, Yan Heqing burned every portrait, and became determined to attack the Western Shu Kingdom. But now, Yan Heqing suddenly said that he wanted to marry. Which princess does he like? Hey! The emperor can marry whoever he wants, but he kept saying that he wouldn't get married over and over, right? Wait, it does seem like he can do whatever he wants, ah. The minister still wanted to ask which princess caught his eye, but at that moment Yan Heqing suddenly got up, he'll retire in advance, he'll announce it tomorrow. The minister didn't dare to say more, so he had to leave in a hurry as he secretly thought to himself, I heard rumors that no matter how busy His Majesty was, he would always return to his bedchamber at night. Just now I saw it myself, it turned out to be the truth. It's so cute that XYA is looking for ways to make YHQ less angry while YHQ is already organizing their wedding LMAO. Chapter, 
208. Yen Heqin tidied up the memorials and went back to his bedchamber. It was late, and since Xiao Yuan couldn't sleep without company, he had to hurry back. When Yen Heqin returned to the bedchamber, he dismissed the imperial bodyguards who followed him back, and pushed open the doors. As soon as he stepped into the bedchamber, Yen Heqin noticed that something was different from usual. Usually, no matter how late Yen Heqin came back, Xiao Yuan would always wait for him with a candle lit. A few days ago, when Xiao Yuan was still seriously injured, he had to lie on the bed and wait for him. Once Yan Heqin was back, Xiao Yuan would call him Yan Ji with a smile. But today, the bedchamber was dark. Even Tian Xiang, who served Xiao Yuan, wasn't present. Yan Heqin hesitated for a while, but still walked into the bedchamber with the help of the bright moonlight. In the corner of the bedchamber, there was incense burning with an unknown meaning, and the white smoke curled up, dancing with the moonlight. When Yan Heqin finally approached the bed, he suddenly stopped. On the bed, Xiao Yuan's hands were bound by red silk. His whole body was curled up in a corner, tied to the bed, and his black silk-like hair was scattered all over. The clothes on his upper body were wide open, exposing his skin white as snow, looking quite tempting. Xiao Yuan had been waiting for a long time, so his hands and feet felt numb. Since Xiao Yuan had been waiting for so long, he was a little nervous to see Yen Heqin. After he swallowed dry, he stammered, Yen, Yen Ji, are you back? Yen Heqin stared at him for a while, but then he walked to the wooden table and lit the candle. After that, he walked back to the bed and reached out to touch Xiao Yuan's body. The slightly cold fingertips made Xiao Yuan shrink a bit. Xiao Yuan thought that Yen Heqin was finally no longer angry at him, so he tilted his head, asking for a kiss. However, who would have known that Yen Heqin would turn his head instead? As he rubbed his fingertips against Xiao Yuan's abdominal wound, he asked, Did you change the bandages today? Xiao Yuan hurriedly replied, I've changed them. Yen Heqin med lightly, untied the red silk on Xiao Yuan's hands and body, tidied up his clothes, then stuffed him into the quilt. Xiao Yuan was so anxious that he grabbed Yan Heqing's wrist and pulled him towards himself, Yan Ji, I really know that I did something wrong. Yan Heqing looked at Xiao Yuan with dark eyes as he said, Xiao Yuan, I dreamt of you more than two hundred times. Almost every time, you would cut your own throat and die in front of my eyes. For the past few days, I no longer dreamt of you killing yourself. Instead, I dreamt of you jumping off a cliff. I saw your body crushed in pieces, not a single bone left intact, and this time, you no longer came back to me. Xiao Yuan had a lump in his throat and his eyes became teary as he said, Yan Ji. Xiao Yuan couldn't explain himself and simply bowed his head, holding back the tears gathering in his eyes, thinking about what he should do. Yan He Qin looked at him and suddenly remembered that when Xiao Yuan's soul came back, he threw him out of the bedchamber. That day the snow was falling heavily, and Xiao Yuan was dressed in thin underclothes. Probably because of the pain and cold, his eyes looked as red as today. Yan Heqing suddenly felt distressed. After sitting on the bed, Yan Heqing leaned Xiao Yuan against the bedpost and kissed him. He kissed the corners of Xiao Yuan's eyes, and then kissed his lips devoutly. After the kiss, Xiao Yuan pointed to the sky and the ground as he said one word at a time. They'll make sure that you'll dream of the me who is alive and can do backflips. Yan He Qing Humed in response. Just when he was about to let Xiao Yuan rest and recover from his injuries, Xiao Yuan suddenly grabbed his sleeve, smiled, and stammered, Hus husband, since since the mood seems right, wh why don't we? Right before he could finish what he wanted to say, Xiao Yuan couldn't say it in the end. As he touched his red cheeks, looked at the ceiling and the ground, he said, Cough. I can't say it, how shameful. However, before Xiao Yuan could finish his words, Yan Heqing suddenly pushed him down on the bed. Yan Heqing's breathing was a little faster, his eyes fluttered, and his voice, although restrained, trembled slightly, what did you call me? Chapter, 209 After being suddenly pressed down on the bed, Xiao Yuan was stunned. Over the past ten days, in order to coax Yan Heqing, Xiao Yuan had racked his brain thinking of ways to flirt with him, but he was rejected every single time, 
which made Xiao Yuan doubt his own charm. Today, after listening to Chen Ge's advice, Xiao Yuan thought of a bondage play, but he didn't expect that Yan Heqing would remain indifferent at the sight of this. As for the sentence that made Yan Heqing react like this, it was something Xiao Yuan just suddenly thought of. But since it was too shameful, he ended up stammering every word, and he couldn't even finish what he wanted to say. Xiao Yuan seemed to realize something. As he hurried to hold Yan Heqing's shoulders, he sat up slowly. After sitting face to face with Yan Heqing on the bed, Xiao Yuan smiled and stretched out one hand to untie Yan Heqing's clothes. With the other one, he held Yan Heqing's hand and wrapped it around his naked waist. Yan Heqing frowned, your wound. Xiao Yuan said, it's fine already. Yan Heqing was adamant, no. Xiao Yuan smiled, but Yan Ji, you're already up. Xiao Yuan's hand reached into Yan Heqing's clothes restlessly, teasing and rubbing his lower area. Yan Heqing took Xiao Yuan's hand and pushed him away from himself, your wound isn't healed yet, I'll solve it myself. At a fucking time like this, you want to solve it yourself? Xiao Yuan gritted his teeth with hatred, and his attitude became stubborn. Yan Heqing's clothes had already been untied by him, so Xiao Yuan leaned down, close to Yan Heqing's belly, and kissed his skin. When Xiao Yuan was about to go further down, Yan Heqing held his shoulder. Yan Heqing was already short of breath, but there was still some reason left behind in his clouded mind. As he looked at Xiao Yuan's injury, he said, I'll do it myself. Xiao Yuan replied, I'll do it. Yan Heqing pressed Xiao Yuan's shoulder slightly harder and said, No. Xiao Yuan's eyes were smiling and his tone of voice was pleading, Husband, let me help you. Yan Heqing's body stiffened all of a sudden, and his breath was slow. Xiao Yuan took advantage of Yan Heqing's dazed state and took him into his mouth. The tip of his tongue was wet and soft. As he swallowed hard, he carefully pulled his teeth back, rubbing his lips until they became red. Yan Heqing froze as he looked at Xiao Yuan like that, with his black silk-like hair scattered everywhere, and his bulging cheek as he swallowed his thing into his mouth. As the candle flame flickered slightly, Xiao Yuan raised his head. His eyes were slightly curved, showing a boundless natural charm and greedy happiness in the depths of his eyes. While he looked this way, he laboriously uttered a word. Even though the word was vague, Yan Heqing was still able to recognize it. Xiao Yuan called, Husband. Yan Heqing couldn't bear it anymore and pinned Xiao Yuan on the bed. The first few deep throats actually made Xiao Yuan feel a little uncomfortable, so he tilted his head to cover his mouth and cough a few times. When he found that Yan Heqing was about to restrain himself again, Xiao Yuan turned his head and smiled, Husband, did I make you comfortable just now? Xiao Yuan was determined to succeed in seducing him, so he did everything he could. As he looked at Yan Heqing's endurance being swallowed up by his desire, Xiao Yuan wrapped his arms around Yan Heqing's neck, pressing him against himself. Then Xiao Yuan chuckled in his ear, whispering, Do you like me calling you like that? Which one do you like the best, hubby, husband or my lord one? Do you want to hear me moaning husband? Or when I can't stand it, do you want me to say husband slow down? Ah! Yan Heqing blocked Xiao Yuan's mouth right away, kissing him fiercely as he used his fingers to prepare and open Xiao Yuan's lower body. When Xiao Yuan felt that he was short of breath, he instinctively tried to escape the kiss, but suddenly, Yan Heqing got inside him. Then, came the merciless ramming. Xiao Yuan raised his head and bit his lower lip fiercely. His gaze was lost, and his hands were trying to grab onto something, but he accidentally grabbed the red silk that had just been placed on the side of the bed. Yan Heqing took the red silk, covering Xiao Yuan's eyes and bare chest. Because he was covered with a layer of red silk, he wasn't able to see anything clearly. Xiao Yuan felt flustered for a moment, when all of a sudden, he felt Yan Heqing rubbing his chest across the red silk. The red silk was much rougher than the palm of a hand, so Xiao Yuan couldn't help shivering all over. As he arched himself up, his breath was disorderly, immediately tightening around Yan Heqing, husband, do don't. The man on top of him had his first meal, so he started to go in and out of Xiao Yuan's body more vigorously. Xiao Yuan whimpered, 
but then he burst into tears, feeling itchy and numb all over his body, until a pleasurable sensation burst into his spine. Xiao Yuan then begged for mercy, Yan Ji. All right, all right. I won't tease you anymore, I won't call, I won't call you like that anymore. However, instead of getting a chance to rest, they kept going until Xiao Yuan almost fainted. When he came for a third time, Xiao Yuan's mind went blank. As his body bounced up and down, his eyes were blurred, and his breath was between urgent and weak. Once Xiao Yuan adjusted his breathing, he closed his eyes, trying to restore energy. However, he suddenly heard Yan Heqing say in his ear. Xiao Yuan, let's get married. Chapter 210 Xiao Yuan had spent the entire day giggling at the vase of daffodils sitting on the table. At first, Tian Xiang wanted to ask him what had happened to make him this happy, but now she was hesitating to call for a doctor. The buds of the daffodil had a light color and a fine fragrance. Xiao Yuan reached out and stroked the slender emerald green leaves with a smile, it smells so good. Then he stood up, walked to the window, and said, when the sun rises at the sea of clouds, the sky looks so blue. After taking a deep breath, he continued, the breeze is slightly cool and comfortable. As he raised his eyes, looking at the plum blossoms in the courtyard which had not yet withered, he said, a touch of red among the frost looks so stunning. Tian Xiang. Xiao Jun Wang, what's the matter with you? Xiao Yuan curved his eyes and replied, I'm happy. Xiao Yuan praised all the things he could, even the flowers, plants, bottles and jars weren't spared. But still it didn't feel enough to express how happy he was, so happy that he even ran to the courtyard. Today, General Chen was also persistently and tirelessly digging the pond. The pond had already taken shape, and Chen Gu was at the bottom, wiping sweat from his forehead with one hand resting on his hip, feeling a sense of accomplishment. Suddenly, a man came along. That man sat at the edge of the pond, which had just been formed, with one leg bent up and the other swaying freely. That man looked down at Chin Gu with a smiling face. Chin Gu raised his head, smiled, and saluted, Xiao Jun Wang. Xiao Yuan greeted him, Hey, does General Chin know how to do the Yanga One dance? Chin Gu was visibly confused, the dance what? Xiao Yuan replied, Yanga, you don't know. It's fine. It'll teach you. Lift your chest, stomach and hips. Raise your hands up and pinch your orchid fingers. Come on, don't be shy, what's wrong with a big man pinching his orchid fingers? Then step your right foot on your left foot, twist your waist, twist it. Yes, that's right. You're a fast learner, General Chen. Chen Gu collapsed and touched his face, Xiao Jun Wang, what's the matter with you today? Xiao Yuan laughed, nothing, I'm just happy. Ah, dance and I'll accompany you. Xiao Yuan cleared his throat and began to sing, today is a good day all the things you want can come true too. Hey, why aren't you dancing? Chen Gu said, Xiao Jun Wan. Wei Chen still has a pawn to dig. Forgive me for not being able to accompany you. Xiao Yuan laughed out loud, and finally, let Chen Gu mercifully go. Chen Gu breathed a sigh of relief. In order to avoid being punished again, Chen Gu hurried to finish today's work so that he could go home as soon as possible. In the end, on his way back, he saw several ministers, who had just left the morning court. All of them seemed shocked. Some of them were running wildly, wanting to go back to their residence immediately to share the news with their families, while others were gathering together in twos and threes, screaming about what was going on. Puzzled, Chen Gu grabbed a familiar minister and asked, What's the matter? Did something big happen? As soon as the minister saw that it was Chen Gu, he howled immediately, General Chen. You've been taking care of an important business these days, and since you can't come to the morning court for the moment, you don't know. Do you know what His Majesty said this morning? What did he say? Our emperor is going to marry Xiao Yuan, the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom. The news will be announced to the whole nation today. Half a month later, the Western Shu Kingdom and the Southern Yan Kingdom were united by marriage, and the two countries celebrated this unification. At this point, the four kingdoms became one big nation. Naturally, there were various rumors circulating among the people. 
Some said that the two monarchs had to get married, in order to defend themselves against the foreign countries of the western regions. Some others said that the emperor of the western Shu kingdom agreed to marry the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom, because he was desperate to protect his country. It was even said that the emperor of the southern Yan kingdom forcibly imprisoned the emperor of the western Shu kingdom, forcing him to marry him. As various rumors spread, one person would tell another, and the other would immediately spread a new version of the story. However, none of this mattered, since time will wear away the edges and angles of doubt, as well as washing away the sharp thorns of slander. At this time, one of the protagonists of the spread rumors, the monarch of the Western Shu Kingdom, was standing in front of his bed, decorated with a red veil, staring at two sets of wedding clothes. What's this? For the past few days, Tian Xiang had finally realized that Yan Heqing was sincere in his feelings for Xiao Yuan, so at the moment, she was smiling happily for the wedding, a set of Phoenix Crown wedding clothes three, and a set of groom's wedding clothes. His Majesty said that Xiao Jun Wang should choose himself. Xiao Jun Wang, you should choose the Phoenix Crown one. Look how beautiful the gold thread embroidery looks. Look how delicate and exquisite the Phoenix Crown is. Xiao Yuan stroked his chin and thought for a moment. Then he stretched his hand to pick up the phoenix crown on the bed, surprised at its weight, it's too heavy. If you fall, you'll break your neck. Tian Xiang stood aside and covered her mouth as she laughed. Xiao Yuan carefully put down the phoenix crown and picked up the big red veil on the bed. As he turned it in his hands two times, his eyes suddenly saw that in the corner of the red veil, their names were embroidered with golden thread. Xiao Yuan couldn't help but bend his eyes, fixing his gaze once again on the bed. Then he pointed to something as he took a deep breath, do I have to wear that too? Tian Xiang's eyes followed Xiao Yuan's finger and replied with a smile, of course. Naturally, ITLL looked beautiful with the set of wedding clothes. What Xiao Yuan saw was a pair of phoenix-headed shoes, with silver edges, golden phoenixes and emerald patterns, of about three inches tall. Xiao Yuan picked up the phoenix-headed shoes and stared at the soles of the shoes, how can I wear such high shoes? These shoes are supposed to be worn together with the phoenix crown. The top will be too heavy and the bottom is too unstable. It'll fall three times before I can walk a single step. Tian Xiang was slightly disappointed, as she asked in a small voice, then, Xiao Jun Wang, are you going to wear the groom's wedding set? Xiao Yuan paused and asked, did the emperor choose the phoenix crown set himself? Tian Xiang replied, yes, after the tailor came to measure you, his majesty chose the pattern and the style himself, in order to keep it a secret from you. Xiao Yuan was silent for a long time. But then he suddenly clenched his fist, and with an expression as if he was about to die on his face, he shouted, "Ill wear it. Yen He Ching, that man, would never admit defeat. Outside the bedchamber, the pavilions, terraces and open halls, as well as the green tiles, vermilion ridges and corridors were decorated with lights and red lanterns with the double happy word engraved on them. All the officials came to congratulate and celebrate with the people. The whole imperial city was bustling and the imperial palace was illuminated with candles, with big red lanterns hanging everywhere. If you stand on a high building, your eyes would be able to see the endless mountains, the sky full of stars and the bright moon. All this land was the land under heaven for. No one knew at this time, but in ten years, due to the efforts of the two monarchs, a prosperous period of time was welcomed. While everyone was celebrating outside, inside the bedchamber was quiet and peaceful. Yen He Ching, dressed in bright red wedding clothes, walked through the long corridor decorated with red gauze and lanterns on both sides, until finally, he stopped in front of the bedchamber's doors. The gilded red door was decorated with the double happy characters five in golden powder. Yen He Ching looked at it for a moment and then slowly pushed open the bedchamber's doors. Inside the bedchamber, there was a congratulatory screen six, and behind that screen, was the man he longed for. Yen He Ching walked around the screen, but his steps suddenly stopped. Although he was wearing a phoenix crown and dressed with finer wedding clothes, Xiao Yuan wasn't sitting upright. His red veil was lifted, placed on the phoenix crown, his left hand was supported against the side of the bed. And his legs were crossed as his whole body was slightly leaning back, 
while his right right hand was curiously playing with the pearls hanging from the phoenix crown. When he heard the sound of footsteps, Xiao Yuan sat upright in a panic as he reached out to put down the red veil. However, after exerting too much force, the red veil fell directly on the ground. Yan Heqing gently raised the corners of his mouth, and took a few steps forward. At this, Xiao Yuan's cheeks and neck turned bright red. He wanted to bend over to pick up the red veil, but the phoenix crown on his head was too heavy for him to move. He felt that if he were to lean down even for a little bit, he would fall. Xiao Yuan was still pondering over how to bend down, when Yan Heqing had already walked to the bed to pick up the red veil for him. Xiao Yuan was too embarrassed to look at Yan Heqing, so he simply lowered his head, stammering, Yan, Yan Jiyu, you're here. Yan Heqing humed in response. As he leaned close to Xiao Yuan, he opened the red veil in his hand and slowly covered the two of them. The moment their lips touched, the red veil fell. As the candle flame flickered, the moonlight was bright and the love was everlasting. As they were engulfed in the passion, they didn't even notice that the red veil had slowly slipped off again. When the kiss came to an end, Xiao Yuan lowered his head and rubbed his neck as he gasped slightly. The phoenix crown was too heavy, so his neck hurt after having his head raised for a long period of time. When Yan Heqing saw this, he whispered, if it's too uncomfortable, you can take it off. Xiao Yuan replied, no, it's all right. You, you don't like it. If you like it, then I'll wear it. I'll wear it for you, so take a good look. Yan Heqing's mouth raised in a faint smile, it doesn't matter, there will be many opportunities for you to show me in the future. When Xiao Yuan heard this, he also smiled brightly, yes, that's also right. That unrestrained smile, warm and moist as water, was just like the blooming flowers in spring, and the bright moon of autumn shining on earth. It was like the stars brightly reflecting into Yan Heqing's eyes, and engraved in his heart. When I think of you, even for a brief moment, I want to accompany you for the rest of my life. If I had to put it in one sentence, it would be because I love you. As I always had, and always will. Ah the end.